Ten years ago flashback. I was on my way to give Raphael a drink that he had asked for only to discover him disappearing on me once again. I then decided to go and look for him. It was hard finding him cause we were at a random house party. Not any party his club's party was always huge with lots of people pitching up minute by minute. Raphael Haunt was the first guy I had trusted in years of my existence. Growing up for me was hard cause my mother always took my sister's side as my father tried to take both. My sister and I were twins believe it although we had our differences like my hair was dark while hers were light. She was the drama queen while I just wanted to get away from the family. I found Raphael by the pool talking to some guys I went over to give him his beer to my surprise he pulled me closer to him. We stood there for a few minutes when the guys were summoned by their girls. Great leaving me with my one crush. He leaned in for a kiss and I could not wait for our lips to touch, it was like electricity going through our bodies. We were interrupted by a dude that needed Raphael in the house immediately for some reason. I followed them in only to find my friends there. We started to party until one of them fell sick I then decided that it was time to go home. I went upstairs to Raphael's room to say goodnight and just to check if he is fine. I knocked twice on the door and when I got no response back I opened the door. I felt like my whole world was about to come down on me. There he was making love to another woman no other than my sister Bridget. He was thirsty for her cause not one of them realized that I was in the room. You are so much hotter than your sister baby. I felt broken and all I could do was to turn around and walk away. That night I could hardly sleep with all of these feelings going through me. I got up to take my run and when I got back I saw that he tried to phone me more than ten times. I took a shower and got dressed for class only to find him waiting for me by the entrance. I glared at him and tried to walk past him only for him to grab my wrist. What's up with you? You're not picking up your phone you blocked me on everything? I don't think that we should be friends anymore cause one person here is going to get hurt. That person will be me right? No, it's me we are done, Raphael, I'm done with whatever this is between me and you. No, it's me we are done, Raphael, I'm done with whatever this is between me and you. You are a sick bastard that needs help. Come on M what did I do that was so wrong to let you cut me off just like this? He said with a smirk only an idiot will try to flirt once he is in trouble. It's Emily for you from now on. What did you do? Let's quickly see if I can sum it up for you in the nicest way possible. You make out with me treat me like your girlfriend then I find you fucking my sister in the next room, saying how she is much hotter than me. L. Leave me alone I'm done with you if you think just for one second that she cares about you so deeply then you're wrong. I'm her sister I know her better than anyone in this whole world. Now let me go I have to get going otherwise I'll be late. He let go of my arm saying. You're going to regret this Emily. I turned to face him with a smile. Not as much as you are. Those were our last words until six years ago. I went home for Christmas that year cause I've been missing so much lately since my sister and Raphael became an item. I finished school and moved out as distant enough from both of them. At this Christmas dinner, Raphael asked my sister Bridget to marry him and so they did. Little did I know what was waiting in store for me. Present day it was a warm summer day when I decided to go to the beach just to cool off since the heat was way getting worse by the hour. Once I decided what to wear for the beach I got interrupted by my older sister who was standing in the hallway looking at me like I'm silly to be questioning every piece of clothing that I was trying on. She had little Alexa in her arms smiling at me. She walked towards me and almost threw poor Alexa into my arms. Alexa's face was red from crying and that made me mad as fuck. She was like my own daughter from the day that she was born. I took the most care of her than her parents did. Why was she crying? Please that little brat could not wait to see you, now I need to get to a meeting will you take care of her until I'm done? Sure anything for my baby Daisy. She did not care about Alexa as a mother should, no she was just after Raphael's fortune. There are a few things that I also did not know about Raphael Haunt, for instance, his father had a multi-million dollar company and in London, he was a freaking lord. He has the estates and money to show it. 
When she found out that she was expecting she was devastated if it wasn't for me she would have gotten an abortion. Once she left I placed her on the bed with some toys and surrounded her with pillows while I changed into other clothing. I went to the kitchen to get her favorite snack and to get some milk. Damn. Bridget forgot to pack the milk and if I try to phone her now she will most probably strangle me herself. I took my car keys and grabbed my baby from the bed where she was playing. I drove to the nearest supermarket to get some milk since I used to buy everything it wasn't hard to know which one to take. Once we got the milk I decided to make a pit stop for ice cream at a small diner that I loved. Alexa got a small bucket of ice cream that looked like a clown that made her face light up. I got myself just a cone. I tried to feed her but at this age, she wanted to feed herself which was adorable. She looked so much like her father and non like her mother. The detail of her eyes her mouth. It's been six years that I have not seen or spoken to Raphael, to be honest, the last day I saw him was at his wedding. Once Alexa was done eating she looked like a horror movie gone wrong but cute. Look at my baby she is growing up so fast. I asked the waiter for a wet cloth then cleaned her up. The waiter made jokes with Alexa and even tried to give her more ice cream the teamwork was there. The waiter was also my best friend Stacy who I have known now for almost seven years. She knew about everything she even asked me why am I still staying here in the States when I could be traveling the world. Didn't you just have this cutie pie yesterday? Yes, apparently Bridget has some meeting again. You know she doesn't even have a company yet she always has meetings going on. Maybe it is those fancy breakfast and stuff that the ladies go to every day to gossip about their husbands and stuff. You know like in the movies. We seriously need to get you a boyfriend cause this TV nonsense is going to make you mad and grow old alone. Do you know how long has it been since I had sex? Stacy do you mind there is a baby here with us, is that bad huh? Sorry Moon Pie, yes how about tomorrow night? I nodded my head and paid the bill then I took her to the beach where we played in the sand under an umbrella for hours. When I checked my phone it was nearly 5 o'clock. I took Alexa and placed her in the car seat while driving home I started to wonder where Bridget was, cause it was not like her to be late at all. When we got home I started a bath for baby Alexa then got some fresh clothes from the bedroom where she was busy playing peacefully with her toys. I grabbed my phone from my purse and tried to call her once again but the phone just went to voicemail. This was not good at all and I did not even have Raphael's number so it pretty much sucked at this moment. After I bathed the little princess with golden hair I gave her something to eat and that is when she finally fell asleep. I phoned the company of Raphael to try to speak with him, but he was apparently on a business trip to Europe or some nonsense like that. I went to go lie on the bed by Alexa and must have drifted off to sleep. It was about 3 o'clock in the morning when I got woken up by a loud knock on the door. I tried to avoid the bang that was coming from the door, but it seemed to get worse by minutes at this point I was scared that it will wake Alexa. I wrapped my black nightgown around me as quick as possible then headed straight to the front door once I was there I peeped through the glass window only to find my father there. This was not good as he took a five hour drive to my house in the city. This did not make sense at all. Father? I said with a concerning voice making sure he heard the tone only to find him walking past me. I was about to close the door when a foot stopped me from closing the door any further. To my surprise, it was Raphael who entered my apartment. I have not seen him in years he looked so much different than before. He wore black pants with a button-up shirt. His face looked furious once the light shined on him. My heart skipped a beat when our eyes met. Where is she? Where the fuck is my daughter? He said taking a step forward towards me. She is sleeping in my room Raphael, what is going on here where is Bridget? I tried to phone her but it went straight to voicemail. She fucking left, now I will be taking my daughter cause this is abducting what you did here. He tried to walk past me till I pulled him back. I knew what I did cause I heard my father's voice yelling my name. You listen here you rat bastard I did try to phone you, but you did not pick up. You are angry and reek of alcohol at this very point and I don't think that you should take her now. I will bring her home at the earliest sunrise. He knew what I have said made sense cause he nodded at me with the same agreement. 
If I do not see my child by sunrise you will regret the day you took your first breath. In this reality, you are just as fucked up as your whore of a sister, now do I make myself clear. He was now standing right in front of me only a few inches away. Last night I went home without my wife or daughter it made me mad as fuck. I could not get an eye shut last night. I tried phoning Bridget again and again but I could not get a hold of her. I took a shower then got dressed when my butler came in with the news that Alexa has arrived. I stormed downstairs with the single thought that Emily will just leave her at the front door, but to my ignorance as, she was busy playing with Alexa by the fountain. I walked up to her and hearing how Alexa spoke to Emily made my heart stop right there. She spoke to her as if she was her mother, she has never even spoken to me that way. Emily turned around facing me with a smile which has dropped the minute I wanted to open my mouth. She was different from the girl I used to know back then. She seemed so protective over Alexa. I greeted them then she handed me, Alexa. Here you go, princess to your daddy safe and sound. She looked at me with a smile and said. I made a fresh bottle of chocolate milk and I packed some fresh fruits for her. I made a fresh bottle of chocolate milk and I packed some fresh fruits for her. Please Cal if you have found Bridget. She threw a fake smile then walked away. I took my daughter to the living room that's when I got a cow from a detective regarding my wife's case. I hope you got something for me and not nothing. Yes, sir we found her in London well. Well, what dumb fuck? She is with another man sir she will be getting married to him in a few weeks. She is with another man sir she will be getting married to him in a few weeks. The chances of her returning are not good sir. I see, keep a close eye on her and her whore do you understand me? I said ending the cow. This was the worst nightmare ever. I looked at my daughter who started to cry out of the blue. The nanny rushed in trying to calm her, but nothing had worked. I looked at the nanny who was picking her up then nodded in approval to come forward. Sir Alexa is crying cause she misses. Not her fucking mother that I can assure you. No sir she misses Ms. Emily Duke sir they used to play like this on the sofa for hours until she fell asleep. When was Emily in my house? I asked with a raging voice this made me mad as fuck. This could mean that all of the time that Bridget was supposed to watch Alexa her sister did it. Almost every day sir. Take Alexa and give her a bath I have some business to attend to now. Mr. Duke please meet me at my office in town with your daughter in 20 minutes. If you are not there it will be very fucked for you and your family. Emily. I could not think clearly after my father had phoned me with the news of Raphael. I hate that man so much that I even feel sorry for him. How was that even possible? I pulled into the parking lot of his company, the man knew how to make a first impression. The building was very modern with big white windows. As I walked in I found my father in the waiting area his eyes were empty. Before I could open my mouth a lady came in asking us to follow her. She had blonde hair with red lips and her body was built for a swimsuit model. I found myself in Raphael's office in a wink of an eye. He stood by the window holding a glass of whiskey. He made Zeus look like an animal next to him, damn he was so hot I can't remember when last I had seen him. Please take a seat we have some business to discuss. Even his voice sends chills down my spine all of a sudden I heard a voice saying that I must sit down that when I knew he was looking straight at me. I took a seat then looked at him with glaring eyes. Bridget has left me and my daughter just like a common person would do, but I have some things on my list that revolves around my daughter Alexa. I need a mother for Alexa someone she can look up to I was thinking of you Emily if not. If not then what Raphael? Then I will have to find someone worthy of the position. Then take me I'll be more than happy to be her mother. My father's arm grabbed mine then he asked me if I was sure about this decision. So you agree to this? Yes, I do I love her with all of my heart and a bit more. The wedding will be in two weeks from now, so get packing darling cause it's going to be a long day for you. Wait what? I will not marry you. To be Alexa's mother you have to become my wife if not you both can say goodbye to her. You're selling her of like a transaction that needs to be done. If one party doesn't agree then there will be trouble. Glad to know that you understand the situation that I'm in, it's a fair chance Emily are you going to take it or not? Both the men looked at me with angry eyes. 
I felt that I had no choice maybe I should run away or maybe I should just take the deal. I took a look at the door and started to calculate how far it will be and how long it will be for them to find me. Then I heard a growl coming from Raphael. Answer me now. I'll do it but only for Alexa do you understand me. His face lost all expression then he called in his assistant to help me with my things as everything is going according to his devilish plan. My father gave me a small smile then he said that I must go and pack as Alexa is waiting at home for me. I walked out of the door with this feeling that I will only get hurt like a years ago. Everything starts to play over in my head about that night that he used and manipulated me. When I got to my apartment everything was already packed and was being loaded into a big truck. This was insane I was going to make the worst mistake of my life. And you want to know what sucks the most? The part where I had no control over this situation anymore. My fate was sealed with the devil himself. Four years later. It has been four years already and everything fell into place. I met a nice lady Nicole Hartford and she is amazing yet not the person I would like to settle for since I am married to the one and only Emily. Shit that hits me I have a family dinner to attend to with her I have to cancel with Nicole and reschedule. When I got home Alexa was already waiting for me by the stairs with a red ribbon in her hair with pretty pink cheeks she ran to me. She was my joy my pride everything that I could have wished for. She told me that her mother is just finishing up. Baby why don't you go and tell grandma that we will be leaving in a bit. We'll do so daddy. She hopped away with giggles yet she never reminded me of Bridget at all more like Emily. I headed upstairs to freshen up when I opened my bedroom door Emily was standing there with a beautiful blue gown hanging my tux on the hanger. I always thought that the servants did this in the four years yet it was my wife. She gave me a fake smile one that I got used to since that day in university. I'll leave now as I would just like to touch up. Why leave? To my surprise I felt empty yet bursting with flames to ask this question. It has been four years and last night I waited for you like a dumb fool once again Raph, now if you will excuse me. I grabbed her by her neck and pushed her lips on mine with a burning kiss she gave and then pushed me away with my surprise I stood there looking like a fool. It was our anniversary Raphael and you had booked a special dinner for us yet you never showed up. That reminds me you never do. She left me just like that standing there wondering what I did years ago if I made a mistake with my decision to marry her. She made the demons in me die when they saw her beauty, but she was not worthy of me yet she made Alexa the happiest child on earth just with her presence. That was the only reason why I kept her around was for the sake of my daughter. We headed to the dinner when I got called by my butler who asked that Emily would like to see me in my office with a pale face. My house workers knew that I was not an easy man and for him to come up to me like this took balls. I wondered what Emily promised the poor guy cause my wife was flat broke. I let this act slide as I had enough of this bullshit of Emily. When I got to the office she sat in my chair with a smile on her face. She threw me photos of me and Nicole having steamy sex in a hotel room. I want a divorce you low son of a bitch. You think it will be that easy sweetheart? Don't try me this time Raphael, this four years taught me enough to take you down. How dare you threaten me sweetheart after all I have done for you? Oh please cut the bullshit Raphael, you can have steamy sex with any other female from now on since you will be a divorced man, now if you would excuse me I need to inform your family about this new development. I was about to open the door when he stopped me in my tracks. His eyes were burning with rage yet he said nothing I knew that after four years he would feel nothing but pity for me. You will keep your mouth shut about the little stunt that you have planned, do we understand each other? Get your hands off of me you're a man whore that is all that you are, take our agreement and read it you have nothing left anymore except that little whore what's her name? I pushed him away then through a devilish smile and said. Nicole! Then I left with the bit of dignity that I had left in me. Then I left with the bit of dignity that I had left in me. I felt weak and if I was about to have a breakdown yet his facial expressions gave me a different feeling. I felt powerful as he was about to endure what I had for the last few years of my life. As I walked out of his office I heard glasses break and he yelled for his assistant immediately. Not long after that, I heard that the lawyer has been summoning to Raphael himself. I felt like I was free at that point for a few minutes after it has passed I felt weak again like my whole world came crashing down. 
Raphael P.O.V. What the fuck are you saying, Johnson? Sir, it looks like if the contract is broken by adultery, then a divorce can be implemented in. Speak up, Johnson, because it might be your fucking last few words. It seems like she might have custody over your daughter as well. All of you get fucking out now. I said now. I yelled with everything that I had left in me. She was right I was about to lose this one, my daughter. I took a bottle of whiskey out and started to drink my butler made an excuse for me down at the party hall saying that I had business to attempt to. Mother was of course not happy not was my father but that did not stop me. I started to walk down the hall and stopped by her room after midnight. I walked and seen her slipping on her white satin robe over her naked body. Shit, she looks gorgeous how could I miss that? She threw me a stare that left me longing for air. I walked up to her slowly to my surprise she did not back up an inch. Emily P.O.V. He pulled me closer to him then kissed me leaving me speechless he smiled at me then kissed my forehead. We can tell everyone tomorrow at breakfast after we have spoken to our daughter please? His eyes were soft and sensitive I have never seen him like this even in his drunken moments. Our daughter, that the first time that you have ever said that? She reminds me of you every day she does not remind me of her mother she has your eyes and your kindness. Please promise me tomorrow? Ralph. I. He kissed me deeply this time with meaning then he smiled at me with a surprise he handed me a document that was signed. I could not bear myself to look at it not now and I could not cry at any cost to give the rat's bastard satisfaction. Promise me am? I promise Raphael. He smiled then walked towards the door before he reached the door I had to ask him one question that was on my mind since I shared the divorce with him. Ralphiel are you mad about me playing one of your cards on you? How could I be my love as I will be losing the one jewel that is most precious than them all? Raphael I will never take away your daughter from you I'm not Bridget, please believe me. I said with my hand on his back I could feel how tense he was. I was not talking about my daughter. Enjoy your last evening in the mansion my love. Raphael wait what is going on? Are you going to kill me cause? Nobody gets to kill you except me and nobody gets to love you except me. Then he left once again I felt empty. Did a divorce just really show me his true colors? That's when I looked at the papers. Our divorce papers with a sticky note on. You were never like Brigitte my love you were more than that. I woke up feeling empty and alone yet I felt happy and relieved that things went rather well with Raphael I thought that he would have gone crazy just for the fact of mentioning the divorce my thoughts got cut short when Alexa ran into my room with a wide smile on her face. She jumped on the bed and hugged me after that I heard a knock on the door when I looked up our eyes met. He was standing by the door already dressed for work as always and looking sexy as hell damn he was hot. Stop it Emily that idea's got you into this situation don't fucking forget it. Morning mommy. Morning my baby how did you sleep? I asked brushing away the hair that was in her eyes. She looked at me with a grin on her face thank goodness it was Saturday and that there was no school cause my little munchkin does not like school so much. Baby girl why don't you go and tell the chef to prepare a meal for breakfast for mommy? On my way dad. She walked past him then she hugged him. After she was gone the mood of the room turned into a total tense situation. He was not as relaxed as last night instead he was back to his old self. He came in then closed the doors behind him. I will be going to Rome for a quick business meeting and will be back this afternoon, then maybe we can talk to Alexa otherwise you are more than welcome to leave now? I got out of bed throwing the blankets of me not thinking straight at that point as he always gets my blood boiling. He looked at me then he threw a smirk. That is when I realized that I was only standing in my satin nightgown that is a bit lacy and half see-through. If you wore that more we could have still be a married sweetheart. Take a good look Mr. Huant as this will be your last time that you will be seeing me like this ever. He was about to say something when we got interrupted by a maid that brought me a letter. She bowed her head and walked out silently at this time I was surprised to see that it came from Raphael's father. Please be ready at 10 o'clock as we will be going to a meeting and I would love to have you accompany me. I could hardly believe my eyes at this present moment yet I got a feeling that the boss was already waiting on an answer. When I looked up his hands were in his pockets and his face was full of rage. Who the fuck was that who sent you a letter? 
Relax, Raphael, it was your father stop being such an ass, and it does not concern you who I get to see at least not anymore. Don't overplay your tokens, dollface, as I learned you the tricks I can easily outsmart you. I was about to say something when he took his phone out to answer it, but he did not instead he silenced it. Then he looked up at me with a straight face at that moment I did not know what to expect. I do not hope that you brought an attorney into the shit cause if you did dollface he might just get hurt. Is that a threat that I hear? No sweetheart it is an invite to the party it's been a while since I last shot someone straight in the face. Try me you have already taken everything you and your fucked up sister. Oh please if you want to kill someone please start here as I'm ready to go to hell or heaven whichever way it might be, because any place is better than here with you. I said walking past him in a split second he was standing right next to me and whispering in my ear. I'll let you live to suffer what I have been through, now get dressed and nothing sluttier still my wife till we have finalized the divorce, do you understand em? He said with a cold voice leading shivers down my spine. At that point, my body was so close to his that I struggled to breathe yet there was no air for me. I could feel his cold breath on my skin while his one hand resting on my lower back. Shit, I needed to get out of this position I could not bear to go to bed with the devil I had to take a stand. I turned to face him then pushed him until his back was up against the wall. Don't worry the steamy sex will be better once I'm out of this shithole, maybe you'll just take that counselor to bed. That's when I turned around and went straight to the bathroom, locking the door behind me. I could still feel his stare on my back cause it felt like daggers. What was I going to do as my body was looking for Raphael like never before? Raphael P.O.V. I have never in my being felt the way that I did now. She left me speechless with her actions. What happened to Emily the soft-hearted girl that could never say anything bad to me? Even her eyes have changed everything of her has changed towards me. She made me feel alive after she handed me the divorce paper cause no one has ever tried to take me on like this. I felt a burning sensation when our bodies touched after the first kiss I had to do it again to make sure what I felt was real. I remembered every action of how I treated her in the past every word as it was yesterday. Flashback to the day that they got married, I was waiting by the door when I felt a pain in my chest. I betrayed Bridget yet I have to do what is best for my daughter. After finding out that Emily always took care of Alexa while Bridget was partying made me mad as fuck. I could take revenge on that bitch, but I had no energy left in me to fight. I felt a hand on my shoulder and when I turned around there she stood with her plain white dress. I saw an angel in front of my eyes. I shook her hands of me then walked towards the door that is when the door opened and everyone yelled at us cheering this relationship on while I felt dead inside of me. My heart was only made for my true love which was Bridget, not this horse's shit. I looked at everyone and saw that they were pointing at Emily. When our eyes met she threw a fake smile at everyone then kissed my cheek. I should say one thing is for sure is that she knew how to keep up appearances. I pulled her close to me with one hand then I whispered in her ear. You are mine now sweetheart, I can do with you what I please to. Let's just get one thing clear you will never be like Bridget. You aren't even pretty you are just one mood, fucking killer. After we have parted our separate ways, my father came up to me waiting for me by my office. He looked mad as hell while he should have been happy or drunk. Don't mes this up, Junior. What are you talking about father I saved the day we should celebrate this occasion. He said then straighten up his jacket to walk away. Please dad is that a threat that is coming from my own father? She is a weak soul and means nothing to me. My son this is a friendly warning by the way if Bridget left you just like this in a blink of an eye, just imagine what Emily could do to you, besides I like this one much more. Seems like we have a fighter. My thoughts got interrupted by the flight attendant. Could that possibly be that my father was in on this divorce I need to know? Does she want to leave me and be with another scumbag? Ask Henry to get some intel on where my wife was these last few days and what is she up to regarding her schedule today? The flight attendant just nodded then walked away leaving me once again with my thoughts. Emily P.O.V. We arrived at the haunt company first before we went inside I saw a couple of black SUVs pulling up into the VIP parking lot. Raphael's father opened the door for me and lead me straight to the conference room. Not long after we took our seats a group of businessmen entered the room then took their seats. 
I was not sure about what was going on at that point so I tried to ask Ralph's father what all of this was about then he stood up with a smile while he buttoned his suit he said. Thank you all for being here after the Japanese deal when have I thought we could do a deal again together as a team. Roland let me know last night that we have a great deal that can be closed so please let's start, but Roland today you will not be doing a deal with me, but with Miss Duke. Sir with all respect she is not even part of this company. I stood up then walked towards him with a smile I went to sit right next to him leaning on the table. I took the folder in my hand then started to look at the presentation by myself. Mr. Ronald please advise why do you think that this new warehouse will be up and good if your statics is wrong? Excuse me this warehouse have everything that we need and probably got the best price. Did you do your background check on this building? Uh. Let me answer you no. You see last week I went with my daughter to this site. It is invested with bugs and should I add that the structure is falling apart any fool will be able to see that. I stood up then stepped behind him laying my hands on his chest then looked at the rest of the board. They all seemed shocked with my actions or could it be that I knew more about business than they thought I would. The price can be dropped by otherwise this deal is of, now how about that for a girl. Now, gentlemen if you would excuse me I have some meetings to attend to with Mr. Haunt. Our feet were not even a meter away from the door when the poor slim guy came running up to me. He was out of breath probably from the running and a boss that is a total as. Ms. Duke the British has decided to drop the price by. Since the electricity is not working and was never brought under our attention, he got on his phone and tried to explain then he threw me a smile while ending the phone call. Miss Duke, you have got a deal of the deal as the boss likes your guts. Raphael P.O.V. Not long after I got of the plane Henry sent me a photo of my wife. She was laying on a conference table near a man. My eyes went black with rage when I saw how she touched another man. What the fuck is she think she's doing? The meeting went smooth and I had no trouble in sealing the deal. After I signed the papers I immediately said my goodbyes and left. As I got into my ride to the airport I unlocked my phone to see if any news came back from my father about the deal with the British investors. Once the phone was unlocked I saw the pictures of Emily with one of the investors. Shit, my mind was going crazy with what I'm going to do with her once I'm back home. She had one fucking job to do one and she showed me that she gave a fuck. The flight back home was not so long as I hoped for at this point. I went inside the mansion only to find Alexa playing in the hall with her dolls. Alexa loved her dolls so much that she could hardly sleep without them. Trust me if one doll was missing she was prepared to burn down the fucking house. Once her eyes saw me she ran towards me jumping up so that I could catch her. Daddy you're home. Yes, baby did I miss much or not at all? Nah, mommy is just busy throwing out her clothes and grandpa gave me a new doll while granny was out. That's nice baby, listen daddy is just going to change then we can have dinner. I said placing her down by her pile of dolls. She started to play again with giggles in between. I was not going to lose my daughter to Emily not now and not ever. I walked up to the bedroom dropping my briefcase by the door startling Emily so much that she gasped for air. When I saw her face I saw the pictures of her and that bastard. I walked up to her remaining cool and calm. You had one job to do until the divorce was final, yet you showed me how you really felt. I should say that I'm rather surprised in your actions. Tell me when did my wife grow a pair of fucking balls like this, cause last time that I remembered you didn't have any. Try marrying a bastard then maybe we could talk again, or should I say asshole? She made her move once again on me yet she was as smart as it could be, but no one was as smart as the owner of the game himself. I took a step closer to her then gave her a cold smile. Her eyes changed color as she knew what that smile meant. She knew that I was a bad person when it came to protection what was mine and I could have had her head for all she knew. Once dinner is finished then you can leave as for the news we can tell Alexa together at dinner. Raphael. Don't ever call me that again did you sign the papers as I requested. Yes, I did hear you go can we have dinner now. Emily P. O. V. Raphael was acting like himself again so I was scared for my life. Yes, he learned me a few tricks and traits on the way but he was right he invented this game so I can easily be beaten. 
Once we were at the table the tension grew with every minute. Alexa was eating and once everyone was done Raphael stood up announcing what I have dreamed for in years yet it all felt as it was coming down on me. I had tears which I had to hold back. I looked down then heard him ask that the nanny take Alexa up to take a bath. The nanny did what was asked of her otherwise her head would have been off. Once Alexa was out the door Raphael broke the long silence which felt like years. Emily and I are getting a divorce and she will be leaving as of tonight with immediate effect. Thank heavens you came to your senses son this woman was going to take you down into the mud where she belonged now Migra and daughter can have what other girls have education. Should I remind her you mother that there is nothing wrong with my daughter's education as well as Emily. You should thank her for what she did these last years. What about Alex? Ah, will you be taking her away from us? That is it. I will never see my grand daughter again thanks to this whore. Enough! His words was cold and his eyes were dark. I knew him all too well. He was going to rip my head of it this instant. No one will disrespect Emily in my presence as she is the mother of my child and yes mother she will have custody over Alexa. Now if you would excuse us we need to speak to Alexa. We headed upstairs while the maids came down with my luggage. This was it I'm finally getting out of this hell. My heart was racing at a pace that not even I could understand. This feeling was breaking me into pieces then I saw her playing with her dolls. Raphael and I went inside her room while he was putting her to bed he threw me a glance to join him on the bed. I went to sit right across from him our hands fell onto each other with speed I wanted to move but Raphael took my hand into his. Baby mommy and daddy need to tell you something okay? Okay daddy am I getting another sibling cause that will be fine with me. I saw how his eyes had a spark in them regarding this question. Raphael might have been one scary as wolf but deep down inside he wanted a family one he strived for and lived for. I never got pregnant as we never shared a room together if we did it was because of Alexa. It is funny how life kicks you to the curb once you make a choice. I was pulled out of my thoughts when Alexa asked if she is going to be a big sister. Raphael did not know how to answer so I swallowed the tears and placed my hand on her tiny little cheeks. Daisy you know how sometimes mommies and daddies just fight all the time and just need alone time? Like Jenny's parents? Yes, baby mommy and daddy are having some issues and we think that the only way to solve it is to separate from each other. My words were hardly out when she grabbed me with tears pouring from her eyes. My tears were about to break free but I stopped them before anything like that can happen. Daisy I'm not leaving you okay? I'll always be here for you. How mommy? Baby you will stay with me one week and the next with mommy. We will never leave you baby we love you so so much. Raphael said while giving Alexa a big hug. Raphael and I stayed in her room until she fell asleep in our arms. Once she was stone cold out we headed out by the bedroom door. Once I was in the hallway I checked the timed and looked up only to find Raphael's grey eyes staring at me. He came a step closer while his eyes was staring straight into mine. I had to do something otherwise this night might be a regretful evening. So this is it right, I'll be on my way then with immediate effect. Before any other words could come out he pulled me into a hug, I did not even fight against it anymore as I was so broken at this moment. Never did I imagine my life turn out this way. Emily please stay the night I felt his hands on my back trailing down towards my as then he pulled me away from him. Our eyes were still locked on each other at that moment I saw his eyes sparkle like stars lost in the galaxy. I tried to look away only to feel his soft minty voice in my neck. Just this once I would like you to sleep in my room after all we are still husband and wife baby? Raphael I don't think that it will be a good idea at all. I think I should get going. So you would rather spend a night in a cold bed than with me? He asked me with dark eyes. I slept alone for four years in a cold bed and one night more won't hurt me. Now if you'll excuse me I have to go with immediate effect as requested. I said turning around to walk down the stairs only to stop once he called my name with a frightening tone. I stopped in my tracks waiting for his words to come out only he did the opposite he grabbed me from behind so hard that I had to gasp for air. He lifted me sitting me down on the stairs handrail holding me tight in his arms. It felt like there was no breath inside my lungs as if I was busy drowning. 
I looked him straight in his eyes only to find him smirking at me. Raphael was going to kill me tonight, yet he could have done it differently than this. You're dead to me and I don't want anything to do with you as of this moment. You're a M.E.S. of a person and you were never part of my destiny, but let me tell you something that you will walk out of my house with nothing except the things you walked in here with. You will only be able to see Alexa once you have a fucking job that pays everything. Now get the fuck out of my house you lowlife bitch. He said then took a step back lifting me of then placed me on the stairs. Raphael's P.O.V. I kept my eyes on her while she disappeared in front of my eyes. I stood there once she was gone I left to go to my study for some work to be done. Once I got there I poured myself a whiskey then let it down with a burning sensation in my throat. Shit. I recall the time she was just a little chicken afraid of the world and to stand up for herself only to see what she had become now. My father was right she was worse than her whore of a sister. I sat down while staring into the fire of my fireplace. She made me feel alive, but that almost cost me my daughter for fuck's sake. She will never see my daughter. I must have fallen asleep on the couch when I woke up only to find my father looking at me. His eyes were cold and fearless. He seemed angry at something maybe a deal that went south again. How late is it? Time to teach you a lesson son. He said then stood up and walked out by the door. He left me speechless yet I wanted to know what he meant by that. One week has passed with no sight of Emily. After I heard nothing of Emily I knew that she gave up on my daughter. I was running a little late this morning as my assistant messed up my fucking schedule once again. I fucking fired her as I do not like to repeat myself and that is a fact that everyone knew. I headed into the office when I saw my father with one of the investors. He looked happy, but my eyes spotted a woman behind them with beautiful long legs and a man who had the most beautiful hair they were headed straight towards me with a loud laugh the lady in the nice black dress walked into me. There was something about her smell that made me go crazy. Shit, I wanted to take her here and no. Son you just in time to meet one of our new managers from the construction site. I remembered that my father said that he was giving this job to someone else who was more talented and educated yet I never imagined it would be my nephew Lucas Gray. Good day, Raphael. Emily? Her eyes looked up into mine and that is when I lost my words and my total human being. I felt lost in those perfect eyes of hers. Emily's P.O.V. His eyes were shocked and full of rage. I guess he was not ready to see me again this fast. I wonder if his father mentioned that I will be working for Lucas his nephew. Father a word. I said and showed him to my office while Emily left with the Lucas down the hall smiling. Cut the bullshit old man. What the fuck is she doing here? Lucas gave her a job since you're keeping Alexa from her as she has no income and house at all. Now if you'll excuse me I have a meeting to attend with the British investors. Father you're going to regret this. No my son I believe that you will, now if you will excuse me I have to make a deal with the last one since I'll be retiring soon. He left my office with one big fat fucking smile like nothing has happened over these past years. I loved my father but sometimes he could have been over the top of his actions. My blood was boiling where I was standing now. I rather watch her work in a diner than here between a bunch of investors. And with a bunch of investors, I met fucking Lucas. Why am I feeling this way with her? I should be happy that she left yet I feel protective over her. Why? I called my assistant in to ask if she can find out what Emily's day is looking like. She nodded and left my office with speed as she knew that this was very important. I sat down on my chair looking at the cameras only to find Emily hugging Lucas. I felt how anger took over me once again. She is mine and mine only. Shit, I needed to get her out of my head and as soon as possible. Emily P.O.V. After the meeting, I greeted Lucas then headed out the door only to find a handsome man waiting for me. He showed me towards the car then we headed to the coast as I had an appointment for a house. After I left the mansion I knew that I will need a place to stay and once I saw this house I fell in love with it. The walls were brown with white old windows looking out on the sea. The wind was so refreshing and made me forget my troubles. The real estate lady showed me the whole house with its beautiful features. Mrs. Miss Duke please if you don't mind. Of course, 
please advise if this house came close enough to your dream house as I have a few more if you would like to see more. That won't is necessary, I think I have found my dream home right here. I said with a bright smile. I had to move on without him starting from today. I felt my phone buzz so I took it out only to find a message from him. You gave me a terrible fright today at work, guess you missed me. Bastard. I sent back then turned around only to find him behind me. Wait where did the lady go she was just here a second ago. Why don't you say that to my face sweetheart? He was dressed in his black jeans with a white t-shirt showing of all of his muscles standing out. His tattoos were more visible than before. Shit, I don't think that I have ever seen him like this not even when we were married. He threw me a smirk then shoved his hands in his back pockets. What the actual fuck was happening? He came closer to me with the speed that I didn't even think he had. He was wearing a Rolex watch that I had bought him once in France. He grabbed me behind my neck pulling me into him. How about you say that again just this time I want you to look into my eyes. As he brushed his lips on mine. Raphael. That is my name the last time that I have checked. We got interrupted by a low-key voice that was coming from the front door. Yes, Miss Logan, what seems to be the problem? Mr. Haunt, I'm so sorry I can come back another time. Please do share what is on your mind. He said cool and calm while staring at me. Mrs. Duke, unfortunately this house will be taken of the market since it was bought just a few minutes ago. Raphael answered her before I could even get to my sentence. I see that you took your maiden name back, sweetheart. I should say I like the new attitude that you have developed. Mrs. Logan, I double the offer and if this house is not sold to this lovely lady here then we will have some serious issues. I will get the paperwork ready while you enjoy your new house, Mrs. Duke. I said while wishing that he was not standing here at the moment. He never spent so much time with me in years, he would have rather left the room. After the poor woman flew out of the room we stood there staring at each other. Guess he made this a starting tournament. He took a step back then headed for the door. You are an ungrateful person, you should have thanked me for what I did for you and your family. Yet you decided to leave me. You left me no choice as you decided to whore around, and let's get one thing straight here baby. You blackmailed me to stay with you only that I could see Alexa. The driver will drop of Alexa tomorrow afternoon, enjoy your pathetic life. Those were the last words that he spoke. Two years later it has been months since I saw Emily since we parted ways. I had moved on over the Duke family's daughters finally. I have been dating a nice blonde girl from France but I haven't told Alexa that yet. I only get to see Alexa on weekends since I'm always traveling and leaving her at home alone is not going to work. After I had breakfast I picked my Lamborghini to drive to work as I had a few paperwork to be done. Saturdays are usually a very calm and relaxing day at the office so I get to catch up on all the agreements and documentation that needs my signature as well as my attention. I took Alexa with me so that she can see what her father does for a living and maybe one day she will follow in my footsteps. I left her by the couch in my office with crayons and paper so that she can keep herself busy. As I was busy signing a document I looked up into Alexa's eyes. She had so much of Emily in her that I felt bad for what had happened years ago, but it was for the best even still we work on contracts regarding Alexa and I never get to see her, not even with her working here. There was a knock on the door when I heard it was Lucas he came in only to get run over by poor Alexa. Are those for me Uncle Luke? A prince is always needs a beautiful rose, he said handing her a red rose out of the bouquet. So who is it this time Lucas, whose heart is going to break? Oh I'm not planning on breaking her heart, hell I'm still getting my guts together to ask her out on a date, he said with a chuckle then out of the blue Alexa said something that made my mind go crazy. Mommy will love them, she never gets flowers anymore. I looked up at Lucas then back to Alexa with calm eyes I smiled and turned to my computer again. This was foolish of me to feel this way about poor flowers. Emily has the right to live her life the way she chooses. I heard voices outside then my phone went off. Mister, haunt a lady with the name Rose is here to see you. What was she doing here? She must have known that I had my daughter with me today. 
I replied smoothly to her then saw the door burst open only to see Alexa flew out of the office. I stood up with speed chasing after her only to find her hugging a black-haired woman. Mommy, you came to visit me and Daddy? The woman's words came out sweet and seductive. Actually I brought some documents for Uncle Lucas's baby, but it is nice to see you here with Daddy. She said then picked her up. When she looked up our eyes met for the first time in two years I saw Emily again. She smiled then gave Alexa to me. Hi, so is it bring your daughter to work day nor did I miss something? Hi there. Daddy can we go into your office now please it's so cold here. She said as she threw her hands around my neck. I wanted to stay and talk to her, but due to the circumstances, I could not. I said goodbye then headed straight into my office placing Alexa on the couch with her crayons while I went to have a seat. Great Rose was here how could I forget? She stood up and walked towards me, but before she could have done anything I threw her a warning look as Alexa was in the room with me. She only smiled then went to sit on the couch by the window. I sat down only to find my eyes on Emily outside having a blast with Lucas, he even gave her the flowers that he had earlier. He tucked her hair neatly behind her ear then smiled as if he was the one for her. She handed him the files and left the office. I was going nuts with the thoughts of him and her so I decided to grant her a visit. Emily's P.O.V. I got home from the office and headed straight for the kitchen only to hear a knock on the door. Could it be Lucas I guess I did like him after all he was happy with who I was? I walked up to the door with a smile, but it had dropped the moment I had opened the door. He stood there with his hands in his pockets and his tie was loose. His hand went through his hair with a move he went past me. This was the first time after our last encounter that I saw him. Alexa came in greeting me then ran to her room with a big smile on her face. I was shocked about what was happening at this moment. I turned around and headed for the kitchen to finish my coffee. Would you like some coffee or tea? Coffee would be nice thank you baby. Those words sent shivers down my spine just the fact of him standing there was enough to send me to fucking Mars. I took the cups out to make the coffee only to be trapped by none other than Raphael himself. His eyes were dark with a soft voice he whispered in my neck. So you have a thing for Lucas now? No I don't or maybe I do. I said then he answered me with the most frightening words that I ever heard him say. You're mine and no one else, the one who dares to touch you will die. He said then tucked a string of loose hair behind my ear, only to feel his lips crash onto mine. Our lips were burning into each other as we needed water to let this flame go out. Once I came to my full senses I pushed him off of me only to find him smiling. He came closer only to hear Alexa laughing in the kitchen this was not like I remembered him, he never cared about me like this. He walked up to me saying, goodbye, then kissing me on the lips then left. Next morning I took Alexa to school then headed straight for the office. Today was going to be a very long day as the construction site that Raphael has invested in is having some problems since last week. I arrived at work then went straight to my desk only to find a huge folder on it. I was about to open the folder when my phone rang within a minute I answered it as the line came from Lucas's office. He asked to see me regarding that huge file that was glancing at me dead in the eyes. I knocked on the door then waited for permission to enter the office. Enter. I heard him say and with that I entered the office at once. He sat in his chair overthrown by paperwork. Good morning Emily, I'm afraid that I have to ask you a big favor. Good morning Lucas, of course. I need you to take those files down to the construction site that I have placed on your desk please. I'll quickly take it, is there anyone specific that needs to have these documents? Yes Martin Holland. He said without looking up from his computer. All right, I'll be on my way then boss. I said to him turning on my heels only to hear him say that. Oh and Emily you look beautiful today. I replied with a simple thank you and headed out the door with the files in my hands. I took the elevator to the basement where my car was only to find Raphael getting out of his car. I moved as quickly as possible for him not to see me, cause yesterday's episode was enough. As I opened my car door I felt a warm strong hand push it close again. Did you think that you can run from me, sweetheart? Good morning Raphael. 
Would you please excuse me I have some business to attend to. What type of business baby? His abs was pressing me hard against my back, leaving me in a very difficult position. I have some business with Mr. Martin Holland down by the construction site. I said with a smile. No fucking way are you going down there looking like this, I will not allow that. He said pressing me hard against the car. What was going on with him and with me since when did I like him this much? Don't make me punish you, sweetheart. No thank you, now could you please get off of me? I said trying my best to push him back with my little strength. I felt how his hands moved up towards my breast. He kissed me in my neck then grabbed my breast leaving me to let out a soft moan. This man was going to be the death of me. I decided to push him away and to get into the car leaving him speechless in the basement. Raphael. When I saw her this morning she looked amazing. She wore a black dress that complemented her body beautifully, her cleavage was showing and that drove me insane. She wore black high heels which made her legs look even more beautiful. Yesterday when I saw her again I felt sparks in my body that I never felt with Bridget. I was about to take her here in the basement if she had not pushed me away. I felt anger coming over me at the thought of her going down to the construction site between all those low-life men. I hated the idea of someone looking at her the way I do as she was my possession. I went to my office then gave a cal to one of my assistants. I needed to see what the day had in store for me. I went to several conferences when I received a cal from one of my bodyguards, whom I have sent to check on Emily. She told me that she was in his office now for about an hour and a half. That made my blood boil I will kill that dick if he had touched her. Before I could answer my assistant came in by the door and said that she has a teacher on the line from Alexa's school and that it is quite urgent. I told the guards to keep their position while I took the cal of the school. Good day Mr. Haunt, I'm so sorry to bother you. But I could not get hold of Mrs. Haunt so I had to give you a cal. Good day, is there a problem Mrs. Green? Mr. Haunt, I know that you and your ex-wife are very busy people. But I think that you need to make Alex our priority. My blood was boiling from these words. If she stood before me I would have ripped her fucking tons out. Please get to the point, Mrs. Green. Alex R has not been picked up from school, and it has been over an hour. I'm on my way. I said hanging the phone up. What the actual fuck was wrong with Emily, she is never this careless. Come to think this is the first cal that I have received from a teacher regarding this. I got into my car driving straight to Alexa's school. I tried to phone Emily, but her phone was of which was unlike her. Once I got to the school Alexa stood outside waiting for her mother to show up. Once her face saw me she ran to the car and got in. Hi, Daddy. Hi, baby. Let's go home you must be hungry. Yes, please, Daddy. Emily. I got caught up longer than I had hoped for. He kept giving me coffee and spoke to me like we're old friends. As I got into my car I saw the dozen phone calls that I have missed from the school and Raphael. I immediately phoned Raphael's number. He picked up then told me that I can pick up Alexa at his house with a deadly voice. It had been two years since I had been there which made me feel uncomfortable. Once I arrived at the gate it went open without me asking for permission guess the devil himself is waiting for me inside. I parked the car only to find a maid approaching me once I got out. She said that Raphael would like to have a word in the study before I leave. I threw a fake smile then said yes, and thank you. Could my day get any worse than this? I walked down the long hall straight to his study, I knocked on the door when I heard him say come in that was my cue. You fucking forgot our daughter at school Emily. I know and I'm sorry but I had a few problems at the construction site with Martin Raphael. So Martin's dick is more important than Alexa Emily? What are you fucking talking about Raphael? You spend more than two bloody hours in his office, should I add that you could not even pick up your phone? Or was he so busy banging your brains out that you forgot how to answer the fucking phone? Those words was enough for me to lose my cool. Without thinking straight I walked up to him slapping him hard through the face. He looked at me with amusement and pitch black eyes. Don't ever talk to me that way again, and as for my bedroom choices it does not concern you, just know that you're not fucking one of them.
I said walking out the door seeing Alexa already by the door waiting for me. We went straight home from Raphael's. I sent an SMS to Lucas about my whereabout and headed into the kitchen. I took a glass out then Alexa walked up to me showing me her drawing that she made today. That is beautiful baby, why don't you go freshen up while I make the dinner? I said and planted a kiss on her forehead. Raphael's. I replied the scene in my head from this afternoon the whole time while sitting in my office. I was about to go to another meeting when my son's phone rang. When I saw who it was I answered quickly. Daddy. Baby I'll have to call you back. Daddy is going into a meeting all right. Daddy is mommy. She said then started to cry which made me stop in my tracks and asked her what about Emily. Daddy mommy is not breathing. Those words made my soul leave my body. Daddy mommy is not breathing. Those words made my soul leave my body. Alexa what do you mean with mommy is not breathing? Daddy she fell and she's bleeding. I'm on my way baby just stay with mommy okay? I said rushing towards the elevator only to be stopped by my mother. You have more important stuff to do than to run after that foolish slut. Get your fucking hands off of me or would you like me to remove it myself mother? Her facial expression changed as soon as those words left my mouth. She took a step back and told my assistant that she will handle the situation with the investors. She knew just how to push my buttons on time every fucking time. Marcus moved the meeting to another day and after that have my mother escorted out. Get an ambulance to meet me there in five fucking minutes. If my wife dies today so help me I will fucking end all of you and that means you to mother. I said then stepped into the elevator rushing to my car. I drove fast enough to catch most of the lights green then I got a cal from Emily's phone again. I connected it with Bluetooth and answered the phone with a heavy heart. Daddy. Yes, baby I'm almost there. Daddy mommy's lips are turning blue. Shit. I cursed without thinking I heard Alexa crying on the other side. Baby open the door I'm here. I said parking the car and running with the speed of light towards the door. She opened the door just in time for me to run into the house without any problems. Kitchen daddy. Was all I heard from Alexa's scared voice? I ran towards the kitchen to find Emily on the floor with a pale face and a puddle of blood by her head. She must have tripped or something I thought so I told Alexa to have a lookout for the ambulance as they will be here any minute. I tried to feel her for a pulse all over her body until I found it. Her pulse was not beating fast but it was still there which was the most important part. I was about to pick her up when the EMTs came running in. I backed up to give them enough space to work. I took my phone out and dialed her best friend's number. I needed someone at this moment to look after Alexa, I could not put her through anymore, cause she already looked like a ghost with pale skin and eyes swollen up from tears. I picked her up then I saw that the EMTs were busy strapping her on a bed ready to take her to the hospital. I nodded and said that we will follow them. I let Alexa climb into the back seat while my eyes were stern on the ambulance. I drove behind them the entire time wishing that it could have been me in that ambulance yet it was not me, it was Emily the girl I hated for years cause she left me just like that. I saw in my rearview mirror a car from behind it was Emily's friend, she looked pissed. As we arrived at the hospital Stacy took Alexa while I went with the doctor. Mr. Haunt I know that you want answers, we have to prep for surgery, she lost a lot of blood, and the wound to her head is really bad. I nodded and went to take a seat by the operation room. It felt like my head was spinning from all of this craziness. I checked my watch every second hoping for any news while staring at the doors hoping that the doctor will come out to bring me some good news. An hour felt like an eternity and without any news it made it feel worse. Minutes turned into hours and my eyes could barely stay open. I laid my head on my hands watching the floor beneath me. How I wish that it was me at that moment. I felt like a dick for talking to her the way I did this afternoon. I felt a hand on my shoulder and my eyes shot up staring into the doctor's eyes. He looked tired from the surgery. I was about to talk when he interrupted me. She will be fine mister. Haunt, she just needs rest. Can I see her please? I begged for the first time in history I begged just to see her. You can, but I should mention something very important to you mister. Haunt. What? The damage to her skull from the fall was terrible. She might wake up knowing you, 
or she can wake up not remembering you or her surroundings. He said with a low voice leaving me scared as fuck. I turned around to see that Alexa was fast asleep on Stacy's lap. She nodded at me and I turned to the doctor again with a deep breath I asked to see my wife. I walked to her room hoping that she would remember me or maybe by not so that we can start over. Shit. I stopped when I saw her in the hospital bed. Her skin was still pale, but the doctor did say that she lost a lot of blood. I took a seat next to her bed placing my hand into hers. I felt tears form in my eyes. This woman broke me more than Bridget ever done. She was my goddess and I was too blind to see that. I must have sit for a few minutes when I got up as the waiting killed me. Emily. My head was pounding with pain that I can hardly explain. I tried to open my eyes as it was heavy and I felt sleepy. As my eyes opened with the struggle I saw the most handsome man walking up and down the room. What is he doing here? Where am I? I tried to move but got caught up in two strong arms that trapped me on the bed. Baby take it easy alright, please tell me do you remember me? Something about his voice and eyes made me feel safe and sound. I must know him, right? Baby? He asked then he kissed me without hesitation. The burning of our lips made me want more here and right now. That is when it hit me. Raphael Haunt. I blurted out without even thinking straight. Thank goodness baby, don't ever do that again to me. What happened Raph? Where is Alexa? I started to panic and threw the blankets off of me. I needed to know where my daughter is. I was about to get up when Raphael's strong arms pulled me back into the hospital bed. She is fine baby, you had an accident in your kitchen, can you remember anything? I was about to answer when the doctor came in looking stressed. He handed Raphael a folder then they both looked up at me. What the hell was going on? I was scared as fuck and I could not take it anymore. I broke down in tears yet I felt Raphael's arms around me pulling me into a hug. The warmth of his skin made me relax a little bit, his voice made my crying stop. He stood next to me while the doctor asked me a few questions regarding my daily activities. I did the same things as any other day doc, but I should say I drank a lot of coffee today. I see please rest Mrs. Haunt, can I just see you for a moment please? Why him he is my ex-husband? I asked then received an angry stare from Raphael. Rest Emily cause you are going to need your strength if you keep this up. He said then they walked out of the room down the hall. What is the wrong doctor? Mr. Haunt your wife was drugged. I threw a punch at his desk hard enough to leave a mark. Who the fuck will do this to Emily? My blood was boiling at this moment, I was ready to kill. Doctor and Raphael were gone for almost an hour when they came back to my room. Raphael walked in with eyes pitch black darker than night, which means someone pissed him off. I just wanted to go home, but from the look of things, I guess it means no. Raphael stood in front of me crossing his hands over his chest while the doctor decided to talk leaving Raphael to glare at me waiting patiently for my reply. He told me that I had a heart problem and it was caused by stress or it could have been something that I ate. If you ask me this was a bullshit story, cause when he mentioned that problem Raphael's eyes turned blood cold. I swear if the veins could have poked that he had from anger then the man would bleed to death. We will be keeping you the night so that we can just keep an eye on your body's reaction to the medicine that we gave therefore I want you to get some rest as of today you will be booked off for a few weeks. This is crap and you know it, doctor. Mrs. Mrs. Duke so help me I will kill you if you say haunt doctor. I'm going home. I said then tried to stand up with the bit of power that I had left. I began to feel lightheaded. I have to get up so that I can go home tonight not tomorrow that was all I knew. I was about to walk when I felt two strong arms catch me from behind. His arms were so strong and yes, he made my heart beat faster with every second in his arms and he knew that. I tried to fight against him but had no idea what I got myself into. He picked me up then he placed me on the bed leaning towards my face with dark eyes looking down on me. Don't fucking move Emily and don't make me repeat this sentence.
I just nodded and played on the bed like a sick person should watching him closely. He asked the doctor to continue his sentence since I interrupted him. You're going to need someone who will help you at home since you are struggling to walk and if you overdo it misses. He said then I threw him a glance with a pale face he was stuck between two choices. Say haunt then get his ass kicked or say Duke and his life might end since Raphael was here. After our divorce, I never wanted that surname again as it reminded me of all the pain it caused me throughout the years. Raphael and I did not always have bad times yet the ones we had were horrible. Emily, the doctor said with a low voice leaving me satisfied. I need to work and I have a daughter to take care of doctor. I'll look after her doc. Please arrange for her medicine and her release papers. What no? The doctor excused himself leaving me with the devil as always people run from him. His attitude was worse since he was short-tempered. He walked up to me taking a seat next to me on the bed with a smirk he looked sexy as hell. I hated this position that I was in as I knew whatever he was about to say he was going to be right. I'll take care of you Emily that was my vows to you not long ago. Raphael we are divorced and I can take care of myself I have been doing it for years without you. That is not true and you know it Em. Raphael, what do you want from me? Nothing I just want to see you well that is all. Please remember that you are Alexa's mother after all. Still Raphael you are an owner of a multi-billionaire company that needs more attention than me. Your business is not going to fall because of me plus you have meetings and... He pressed his finger on my mouth so that I can keep quiet. His eyes changed into a beautiful color. He never showed me this side which made me more afraid of the big bad wolf. I can work from home and don't you ever fucking dare to say that you will be the reason for my fall in the company Emily. If I do it is because of my ignorance as. He said while keeping his eyes locked on mine. We stared at each other which made it felt like a lifetime. Something was different from Raphael haunt he changed since I last actually saw him. He was a handsome bastard with the wrong intentions since I have ever met him. Flashback. Emily you're going on the yacht trip with me and Lucas this afternoon. He said while drinking his whiskey. I have plans for this afternoon. I stated with a soft husky voice. Cancel your plans, the investors would love to meet you. He said with a sarcastic voice. The way he spoke to me made me mad as hell so I got up from the table and was about to leave when I heard his cold words. You will go with me or would you like to be the downfall of the company since you are only good for one thing? Al because you could not take one for the team? Tell me Emily how does it feel to be fucking owned cause I can always make you fucking remember sweetheart. Those cold words haunted me ever since that day. I was a thing to him and his pride. Never have I imagined him saying those words that he said now. I guess you can change if you want to, so does this mean he wants to change? I placed my hand on his face seeing his reaction was priceless. Our bodies were pulling each other together like magnets that were looking for release. His eyes were strictly on mine while he came closer I felt this heat wave over me. Emily thank goodness, I came as soon as I heard what had happened. I heard a voice say taking my eyes off of Raphael and seeing Lucas by the door. He threw a smile then walked up to me giving me a hug leaving Raphael to stand up. The softness in his eyes was gone and I was once left with the beast. Lucas gave me the flowers and told me that I don't have to worry about my job. Everything seemed to go as Raphael planned I guess even in my dark times the bastard still rules. We got interrupted by the nurse who brought my medicine with the release papers. Thank the heavens I'm going home thanks to Mr. Big Shot. Is that the release forms for Miss Duke? Yes Mr. Haunt the doctor asked me to bring it to you since Mrs. Duke wanted to go home early. That won't is necessary, I think you can give her the medicine I'll pick her up tomorrow morning. Did I just heard correctly to his words? A few minutes ago he wanted me to leave and now not even five seconds later he wants me to stay the night. As the nurse approached me he asked to see Lucas outside the room. Lucas threw a smile and said that he will be back in just a second. I hoped that he will be back, cause a talk with Raph could easily go south especially with him being short-tempered. Raphael's. I went outside the room waiting on Lucas patiently. 
He gave Emily flowers and he showed up here like he was her knight in shining armor. He was way out of line if he had that little idea in his small head. My father only gave him the job cause he was family and had a good background for the position if it was up to me he would have never been hired. My mind drifted of to what had taken place earlier. She had some feelings for me, but I knew that she was scared which made sense. I did treat her like crap for almost five years plus I demanded her to marry me for the sake of Alexa. I got taken from my thoughts when I heard Lucas calling my name for the second time. Raphael, are you listening to me? Lucas why was Emily at the site today? I sent her to Marcus cause you gave me a shitload of paperwork that needs to be finished before day end. So you sent Emily instead of moving the fucking meeting? Yes, she is capable of handling herself Raphael. I guess you made sure that after the marriage she will be rock hard. Don't complete your fucking sentence, cause you don't know a thing about our marriage. What is up with you are you blaming this on me? Trust me you do not want to be that one, cause I'm going to kill that bastard who caused this. I said walking towards him while he took a step back I knew deep down inside something was up. I remember sending him that paperwork, but I don't recall seeing the appointment on his schedule. My gut was telling me a lot of things and the one thing was that I was going to kill the bastard who did this with my bare hands. I stayed until Alexa fell asleep on the bed with her mother. I decided to go home since she had school the next morning. I got up to pick her up only to hear the sweet words coming from her beautiful mouth. She whispered the following words in her sleep which sent shivers down my spine. I need you Raph. The next morning I went to the hospital after dropping Alexa at school. I knew by the time that he'll get there Emily will be waiting patiently for me to pick her up or so I hoped. As I reached the hospital I checked to see if my men were still there. After what the doctor said I had to give her security by her room and also by the hospital's entrance to make sure that nothing happens to her. I did not know from where this feeling came from, but all I knew was that I had to protect her at all costs. I was once a monster towards her and I will not allow the rest of the world do to treat her the way I did. I reached her room in no time and heard voices mumbling, I looked at one of my men in anger when he said that it was only the doctor. I felt relieved should I say when I walked into her room calmness took over my body. Her skin was back to her tan olive color, her eyes color also changed into a brighter green almost like a forest color. I knocked on the door then entered the room. She looked shocked when she saw me. Is everything fine? Yes, Mrs. Emily's health is looking good but I would still advise her to rest for a while before going back to work. Trust me she is not going back to work anytime soon doc, can you get her stuff ready? No need the nurse was here early this morning. She said looking into my eyes with a bunch of questions. Once the doctor took some blood samples he left with a smile, but a bit of nerve was touched once I sat down while he took the blood samples. I guess after what I did in his office yesterday, he understood my orders loud and clear, I looked up at her while she took her phone in her hand smiling. Fuck how did I miss that while we were married? Since I saw her the other day she has been on my mind non-stop, I've seen more sides of her these last few days than in the few years we were together. I brought you some clothes to wear since you will be going home. Her head turned towards me with a sarcastic smile. Did you pack it or Alexis? She packed and I unpacked otherwise you would have looked like one of her dolls. I said with a smirk. Wait so you packed my clothes, Raphael? She asked surprised as if I gave her a car for her birthday. Yes, is that a problem Emily? She stood up taking the bag from me then whispered into my ear with sweet deadly words. This is going to be an interesting few weeks, just note that this was the last time that you were to be set foot in my room sugar. Then she walked towards the bathroom to get dressed. She left me speechless with no teeth and no bloody comeback the fall must have triggered something in her or has she just gone crazy? I got up only to get attacked by a girl. She ran up to me only when I saw her face I knew who it was. What the fuck was she doing here? Rose what are you doing here? I asked calmly could be at that exact moment. Well, baby your mother called and told me that you're in the hospital so I came as soon as I could. She said then kissed me only to be interrupted by a door that hit the gray wall. Rose turned around then looked at Emily then back at me. Ho oh, please tell me you're not together Raphael. Before I could answer her questions like always Emily got straight to the point. Rose relax we're divorced. 
Well, well, if it isn't Emily Duke, the one who broke my fiancé's heart. It was a pleasure to meet you, Rose. Please note that if it wasn't for me then you would have never had your... Fiancé. Yes, fiancé O, oh, and congratulations on that by the way. She said then took her bag and left the room as nothing had just happened. I flew past Rose looking for Emily only to find the hallway empty. Find her now. I gave an order to my man with rage I turned towards Rose leaving her to take a step back from me. Go home I'll meet you there and don't ever pull this bullshit stunt again of yours. Raph I tried. I said watching her firmly as she nodded and walked out of the room. I took my phone out to phone Emily only to find out she fucking blocked me. I didn't know what was worse Rose or Emily. Emily. After the encounter at the hospital, I left carefully enough not to get caught by his guards. I walked to a small coffee shop three blocks from the hospital. I had a few changes on me enough for a cappuccino and a slice of cheesecake. I needed time away from Raphael, cause since we met everything has gone down south. I knew he moved on and I am happy but hearing of the engagement was a shock, but I was not going to show him how I felt. I must have sat at the coffee shop till late until I decided to go home and just have a good night's rest. I used this moment to walk home, cause I knew Alexis would be at his house so getting home late was not going to be a problem at all. I arrived home and took my mail out of the mailbox when I saw his face. The devil was on my front porch looking straight at me with heavy eyes, I walked closer to my front door. Where the fuck have you been and don't fucking dare to lie? Look who is talking. I said opening my door only to get pulled into a corner of the door. His eyes were filled with rage and pain almost like I wounded the poor man. Don't fucking dare to play that card on me, cause you don't have the right, Emily. I was at a coffee shop three blocks from the hospital, feel free to ask the waiter if you don't believe me? Don't ever do that again Emily not now and not ever. Got it now if you'll excuse me I just want to go to bed and hopefully when I wake up things will all be a dream. I said then pushed him off of me. I walked up to Alexis' room before going to mine. She was fast asleep and looked like an angel. I could not have imagined my life without her. I tucked her and then headed straight to my room. I fell on my bed and everything went dark. Raphael. Once Emily was safely at home I got myself a strong coffee then went to take a seat in the living room. I heard when she got home her first intention was to see where Alexis was. The thought of that warmed my heart, cause not even her mother cared that much about her. These last few days I was a bit on edge as I received news from a detective that Bridget went missing again. Fuck knows why they always phoned me probably because I kept my private investigator on the case. My phone interrupted my thoughts only to find Rose's message. I loved her and I was crazy about her, so what on earth was I doing here? I took my phone then dialed her number. I needed to explain myself to her since we were engaged. Hey babe, you asleep yet? No, Raphael I can't sleep, not after our fight. Look baby I'm sorry if I had hurt you just doesn't ever places me in that position again. Raphael all I wanted to do was to show you how much I care about you, I guess that was wrong of me. No that was not baby, look Emily is Alexis' mother and if something had happened to her I could not forgive myself. I know baby, when are you coming home? I took a sip of my coffee then answered the question in the nicest way that I could think of. I'll be spending the night with Emily just to keep an eye on her. The doctor gave me a few orders and I need to keep to my word Rose. Screw the doctor off I'll if this is your way of screwing your ex-wife I'm glad you're home tonight. She said then hanged up the phone. The thought of screwing Emily crossed my mind yet I could not see that plan through. I turned on the TV and watched a bit of the stock market before I drifted off to sleep. Emily. I got woken up by a wonderful smell that made my tummy pain. I was hungry as hell and world eat a whole chicken if I get the chance. I got up then found a note from Alexis saying that she went to school and that she loves me. I decided to take a hot shower then got into my black jeggings with a white t-shirt. I pinned my hair into a bun and did my makeup my white pumas, the look was complete. I went down to the kitchen only to find Raphael making breakfast. The poor man was still in his clothes from yesterday so I guess he slept here. His black hair was messy and he was shirtless standing in my kitchen. Like what you sweetheart? 
I guess I was drooling since he had asked that question. I looked at his face with a smile then walked to the fridge taking out the orange juice. He handed me two glasses so that I can pour in the juice. I took your medication out so that you can take it after we have eaten. Thanks, so you're engaged now with Rose? Something like that. How do you like your bacon? Anyway is fine, so any news on Bridget? No, want some pancakes also? No, I'm fine. He handed me my plate then we sat at the table in silence. When we were done I stood up and started to pack the dishwasher only to get stoked by strong arms. I felt sparks went of inside of me and decided to ignore him. Raphael. I wanted to help her, but as stubborn that I knew her, she was not going to let me help. Without thinking I picked her up and placed her on the island looking her stern in her eyes. Fuck she looked sexy as hell with her body shaped like an hourglass. Might I add her cleavage was to die for and was visual as fuck. I felt her strong hand on my chest pushing me away. The doctor said to take it slow em. I'm just doing the dishes Raphael, please this is my house and if you're staying the night again then, I would like you to sleep in the guest room. Got it now take your medicine. I said showing her the small glass with pills. The doctor said that she needs to take the pills as the drug can still attack her immune system and cause problems. She looked at the pills then back at me with a serious face she said. How about you make me cause I am not drinking those pills. Sweetheart you don't want that trust me. M.M. She said while her hand took a root down my naked chest. Our eyes were gazing at each other leaving me speechless with her actions. The Emily I knew would have never done this, the way she spoke and touched me made me beg for more attention from her. My lips were close to hers when out of the fucking blue I heard a geeky voice coming from the kitchen door. Where would you like the conference to be set up, sir? I mentally saw his death ten times in my head with those words. Who are you and what are you doing in my house? Mrs. Haunt. He is here to help me set up my office since I'll be looking after you or have you forgotten. I said when my phone interrupted our conversation with any hesitation I picked it up wishing I didn't. Rose! Even my voice made me surprised yet it did not surprise Emily. She gave me the glass then got hopped of the counter. So you know how computers and stuff work right? I heard her say to my tech guy only pissing me of even more. Yes ma'am, graduated top in my class. How about you show me some of your tech stuff and I'll forget that you called me Mrs. Haunt. I don't think it would be a good idea ma'am. I ended my cal and threw a signal at the tech to leave at once as he is not needed here. I walked past her straight to the dining room where most of my people were busy setting up my office. I wished I knew what the hell was wrong with Emily. Emily. Once he left the kitchen I decided to finish up the kitchen then take a book and relax a little. I felt alive ever since I came from the hospital, never have I imagined doing things like this to Raphael. I never imagined us this close in my entire life. I took a book from the pile of books that I wanted to read now for a few months, yet I could never as I always had something to do or somewhere to be. I took a seat by the window only to get attacked by my best friend. After she decided to let me go we went to go sit outside in the garden with our tea and slices of cake. I should say that Stacy knew how to bake damn this girl should have been partners with a buddy. I took a bite from my cake only to taste the delicious taste while the chocolate melted in my mouth. This was heaven on earth. You look better than yesterday? I feel better, but I think that the fall might have injured my brain some way or somehow. Why what's up to him? Are you feeling unwell should I call Raphael? No. I said with a pitched voice almost wishing that she did. What the hell was wrong with me? Are you falling for Raphael M? No, don't talk that nonsense here Stacy. Please I saw the way he looked at you in the hospital, he went insane not knowing that you would survive the blow to your skull. Please, I might be the boss of that, but whatever it seems like the poor soul might have changed his ways. Crap that bastard could never change, you know he kissed me while he is engaged to that rose girl from France. You kissed. Great I should have kept my mouth shut. I looked at Stacy dumbfound by her reaction towards this situation. That is all that you heard from what I just told you? Yes, well the rest was boring I should say I like the new man he became. I wanted to throw her with a wet fish at this moment, she was being so childish. I felt lightheaded while I got this warm feeling over my entire body. 
My eyes started to burn as if the sun was inside of me. Em, are you listening? Raphael. I was on my way to the kitchen when I hear Stacy scream my name. Without thinking I ran towards where they were having tea. The first thing that I saw was Stacy holding Emily in her arms. I took my phone out while walking up to her body. I studied every inch of her that I could have seen. When Emily saw me she tried to get up only to fall into my arms. Her body was burning up almost like she had a fever of a hundred degrees. I picked her up bridal style then took her to her room where the doctor was already waiting for us. I made sure when she came out of the hospital that there will be a doctor on Cal for the next few weeks. I laid her down on the bed leaving the doctor to do his job. He gave her an injection that would help with the pain and also changed the bandage on her head. He told us that she needed rest and that she would be fine. I left her with Stacy to pick Alexis up from school. Once we got back home Emily was still sleeping and Stacy helped Alexis with homework while I made dinner. After Alexis ate she went to bed while I took a tray of food up to Emily, cause she needed all the proteins, after all, she got drugged and her body is still in shock. Thinking of this made my blood boil again, as I came in by her door I saw her looking at me. This time she looked pissed. She even looks fucking sexy pissed. Here I brought you some food. I said while placing the tray on the bed taking a seat next to her on the bed. Thank you, but you can leave now. I thought that maybe we can have dinner together tonight and maybe watch that movie that you like. What the fuck do you want Raphael? I was fine without you, do you think that I'm weak? No, Emily I told you that I'm here to look after you, that's the promise I made. Yes, also the promise that you will never look for another woman right? That was four years ago Em, when will you let it go? You lied and used me don't you think I knew, I know how Rose is feeling and I will not let her walk down that road with you as I did. Are you mad at me cause I'm here with you and not with Rose? No, I'm mad cause you want to watch my favorite movie with me and I should chase you away. You can try baby, but I'm going nowhere not until you're healthy, now I'll get the movie while you just relax. I said then I went to her favorite movie which was Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I sat on the couch by her bed watching the movie when all of a sudden she asked me to sit on the bed. I stood up while taking a seat next to her when she threw a blanket over me. She left me speechless with her actions. We talked and laughed most of the time. I fell in love with her all over again, but this time I was scared as I knew she hated me after what I did to her. I fell in love with the woman I hated the most, the one who played my own game against me. I felt her head on my shoulder leaving me to drift into the darkness of peace and calmness. I woke up with a pounding headache I was about to get up when I felt strong arms around my waist. I know who it was at that moment. I stood up Rayal quite trying not to make a noise so that he can get some sleep since he has a big meeting in a few hours. After I got up I went to get his tux from the extra room that I had bought for him as Alexis wanted to give it to her father for Father's Day last year but never got the chance as he went on a business trip. I took the black tux with a blue shirt out and hanged it in front of my closet. I felt grateful for what he did for me but I think that it is time for him to go home before his mother shows up. I was about to make breakfast when I saw Alexis busy in the kitchen. She reminded me a lot of Raphael with her stubbornness. When she saw me she ran up to me embracing me in her arms with a giggle. After we said good morning I asked her to lay the table as I will start with the breakfast so long while we wait for Sleeping Beauty. A loud noise came from the front door leaving me half terrified I told Alexis to wait in the kitchen for me while I check on the door. I opened the door only to see a red angry face with a swift move she went past me. Rose was in my house, this must really not be my week cause nothing goes the way it should. I turned around facing her with calm eyes only to see her lose her shit even more. Where the fuck is Raphael Emily? Good morning to you too, he is upstairs getting ready for his meeting would you like to join us for breakfast Rose since you're waiting on Raphael? I said with the most calm voice that I could have think of. You slept together. With that question I got so irritated that I closed the door walking up to her. No. Please I'm not that pathetic, I know that you drugged him to stay here with you and your little monster of a child, oh wait she is not even yours right. With those words I had enough of her shit talking to me this way in my own home, to top the fucking score she spoke about Alexis that way. 
You know what I changed my mind, how about you take your no good as and your fiancé that is upstairs and fuck of. Excuse me, do you know who you're talking to? Yes, the person who will be in the morgue before the end of this fucking morning. What the fuck is going on here? I heard a deep voice ask from the stairs only to see the goddess one more time. Raphael was standing there with his hair still wet from the shower that he must have taken a while ago. His shirt was still open leaving me speechless with that v-line and shit did he get a new tattoo. Our eyes met and his was dark with anger and with a smirk I lost it this time. You know what you're just in luck Raphael, your fiancé is here to fetch you so that you can plan a wedding and have that monster daughter there as requested by Mrs. Pornstar here. What the actual fuck is going on here and please don't make me repeat myself. He said walking down the stairs with the most frightening face in the entire universe. He walked up to me then looked at Alexis in the hall then back at me. His face was emotionless and cow me a bitch, but I knew that this motherfucker was about to let hell loose on me. You want me to leave? Yes. I said only to feel his eyes tearing me apart with a step closer to me I felt my spirit leave my body that instance. Rose get the fuck out of this house and the fuck out of my life. Raphael we have something special and you would like to throw it away for your ex-pathetic wife. She is more than a fucking woman than you will ever be and you fucking now that now get the fuck lost. He said watching my every move. I wondered if he saw the shock face that I had regarding that episode that he just pulled. Rose left the room with total silence leaving everything even more awkward until we heard a cry coming from the kitchen. Alexis must have heard what have happened a few minutes ago, Raphael and I rushed into the kitchen seeing her crying on the floor. Raphael picked her up embracing her into his arms, without thinking I joined in. Rose. Seeing him in her house and at her rescue made me mad as hell. I walked into the bar where the moron was sighting who caused most of this shit. I ordered myself a drink then walked up to him. Hey boss. How is heaven treating you? You are a work of art do you know that, cause your plan fucking failed once again. It worked years ago boss when she left the bastard, and now you get to have her for yourself. He said with a huge smile. Yes, your plan worked years ago yet this fucking one failed she is playing housewife with that dipshit ex-husband of hers. Wait you mean you never got to her? No I never got to I got caught up with some business you low life idiot. Shit boss. What are we going to do? We are going to get another plan, one that fucking works. With that words my eyes landed on a beautiful young lady and she threw me a smile. I wanted to know her better with that nice as I needed to shit she could not beat Emily but she had a sexy ass. I walked up to her buying her a drink and started to make small talk. She wore a short red dress with long blonde hair and a sweet smile. Raphael. I was about to take Alexis to the park when Emily reminded me about the meeting. Where is Alexis? She fell asleep while watching Beauty and the Beast, how was your meeting? I took my tie of and threw it on the couch while taking a seat next to her. She asked if the meeting was that bad with concern in her eyes. I wished. I wished I was home more during our marriage. Shit did I just say that out loud. She stopped folding the clothes looking down to the ground then continued. I knew that those words might have cut her deep since she wanted it back then. I'm not sorry for saying that Em. Just stop please Raph, we both had our faults during our marriage. No I had, Emily, I'm really sorry about Rose this morning. I said taking her hand in mine. She did not look into my eyes so I turned her face towards mine and for a moment I felt complete. Raphael, please. Shoo. I said leaning in to kiss her only to be stopped by a phone that was ringing. Emily. A few weeks went by and as time took a toll so did my relationship with Raphael. He has changed into a different person than he was years ago. He took over the chores that I had while I rested. He took care of Alexis and did his work from home as a decent husband should. I guess I miss that idea sometimes thinking this could have been us yet, we didn't get that chance in life. I woke up going downstairs only to find poor Raphael on the couch sleeping. His eyes had dark circles underneath and boy he had a beard. I mentally laughed at the idea of him with a beard, cause he hated the idea, yet he looked so handsome. I threw a blanket over him and went upstairs to Alexis's room to see what she was up to as I opened the door she stood there trying to make a bun with her long brown hair. 
When she saw me she looked irritated with the fact of not mastering the technique of a bun. I want a bun mommy, but I'm struggling to make it myself. Come on baby, let's go to my room so that I can show you how to make one. I said taking her hand in mine. I let her sit on the chair while I showed her the secret to a bun. Wow! I told you that there is a secret to making a bun didn't I? I said showing her the brown sponge that I used. Yes, you did mommy does this mean that I will be able to make one myself? Yes, lollipop you will be, tell me how would you like to sleep at Aunt Stacy's tonight? That will be cool mommy, but what about daddy? It was daddy's idea, so would you like to go? Yes, can I tell Aunt Stacy the news? Yes, baby, get my phone from the charger and give her a call, okay? Okay, mommy, I'll get my stuff ready so that we can go. Good, I'll just take a shower real quick then dressed so that we can leave, and Alexis doesn't wake up your father. I said with a sharp tone making her understand that she should not wake her father up, cause the poor soul was exhausted. After I hopped out of the shower I got dressed in a black summer's dress with sandals since I had no strength for heels today, then I did my makeup. Today I felt like making smoky eyes with a nude color lipstick. I left my curly hair hanging and just added my bangles to finish the touch. I took my bag while taking Alexis' things in the other hand. Once we were downstairs I saw poor Raphael still sleeping so I decided to leave him a note saying that I will be back. We drove up to Stacy's home that was close by. Once we arrived at Stacy's house Alexis jumped out of the car running to the front door. She loved Stacy since she was a baby. Hey, stranger how about a hug? I heard Stacy screaming. Great Alexis was already inside doing who knows what. Hey, Stacy thank you for doing this I know that you are a very busy woman. I said sarcastically with a smile she hugged me. Anything pumpkin, would you like to come in for a coffee? Can I get an rain check I promised Raph that I will be back soon? We go by nicknames now? We get along well which is a total surprise trust me, usually we will be at each other's face or trying to kill each other yet we have not even tried? Haha, <laughs> I told you he had changed the player finally gave in to his needs. Which is what Stacy? You who else am, look go home and enjoy the time with him since he is a single man. I think I'm going to leave you before you start another conversation about how great he is. Love you and take care of my baby Stacy. Trust me she is in good hands and by the looks of it, so are you. Bye, Stacy. I said walking away as quickly as I could. Ever since I came from the hospital Stacy took Raphael's side, hell knows why. She thinks that his spirit has guided him towards the well of true love if you ask me it's a ton of bullshit. I stopped by a cafe for coffee and got Raphael his favorite breakfast a burger. Trust me even a millionaire has his ways with fast food. I got a burger from McDonald's and left straight home. I pulled up into my driveway then headed inside only to find Raphael, not on the couch. I placed the coffee on the counter heading upstairs only to be stopped by Lucas. Lucas, what are you doing here? Well, I came to see how you are doing. I'm doing fine thank you, I'll be back at work on Monday that I promise you. Where is Raphael? Oh he is already in a meeting, I came here to get a glass of water. Oh, don't worry I'll get it for you quickly. I said getting a glass of water for Lucas only to be trapped by him in the corner of my kitchen. His eyes were full of lust and without thinking he kissed me. This was wrong so I pushed him off of me. He stood there looking at me with a surprised face I knew that he liked me, but not that much. Emily we should talk about this. Talk about what? I heard a strong voice say from the back. I liked Lucas, cause he was never like Raphael he treated me with respect and love. Raphael's. As I ended my meeting I heard Emily in the kitchen with Lucas which made me skeptical. I saw how he pinned her against the cupboard then kissed her as soon as their lips met she pushed him away. I heard how he wanted to talk to her, but the bastard that I was I had to seize the moment. Talk about what? I said with a surprised face Lucas said nothing leaving poor Emily to explain. Just work that's all, how was the meeting? She said with a big smile. Whatever he thinks is going to happen will not be happening not for as long as I'm alive and fucking kicking. It was fine, Lucas will you make sure that you have that contracts on my desk by Monday? 
Yes, you'll be returning to work Raphael? Yes, would that be a problem Lucas? No not at all. He said looking at me with confused eyes. He hated my guts just like I hated his, still today I don't know how he got the job. My father hated his guts as well after he lost a big deal with the Chinese. Well, then I'll be on my way, see you, Monday Emily. Actually regarding that Emily will not be returning to work for the next week, I hope that you will be able to cope without her. I said waiting for his reply walking closer to him. I'll be fine, you just get better Emily that's the most important thing. He said looking at her with flirtatious eyes. I held back my anger saying that I'll walk him out, leaving Emily in the kitchen. Once he left I went inside only to find Emily in front of the television. She looked so comfortable with her dress. Should I say that hers looked bigger than before? She amazed me with her beauty and she was a fucking magnet. I decided to go for a swim just to relax a little bit, before Monday since I'll be going home tonight. I changed into my swim were changing my watch into another that is water protected. I walked downstairs seeing Emily bored out of her mind, cause she changed the channels more than once. Where is Alexis? Oh, I dropped her of at Stacy's they're having a girls night. I see so how about we go down to the beach then? I asked seeing her freeze when those words came out. She turned her head towards me with a rising brow. Are you asking me or telling me? With those words I was on top of her. She looked surprised with sparks in her eyes I felt as if I could take her here and now. The thought of resisting her kills me mentally. I placed her hands on top of her head with a smile on my face. We're home alone do you think that I'd be asking you anything baby? Then stop assuming, can I at least change first before we go? Fine, I'll give you five minutes if your is is not down here then there is going to be trouble got it, baby? With a nod I let her go feeling her skin sliding against mine sending sparks down my spine. It took all of me not to take her here, I was hardly five minutes when she came downstairs leaving me speechless. She had a one-piece, olive green bikini on which showed a bit of cleavage. She looked like a goddess with that as in breast. I never got to see her like this before it made me feel bad, cause I really had a jewel and I found it out too late. Take a picture it'll last longer sweetheart. She said taking me from my dark thoughts. Maybe I should baby. Jerk much sweetheart? Can we go now please? She said then pouted at me damn she had a way to make my heart melt. We went down to the beach enjoying the sun with the calmness of the water. I learned Emily how to surf only to get beaten by the woman. Once we were done we headed home as it started to turn dark. The first thing that I did was taking a shower, while Emily did the same. Emily. I took a shower then got in the most comfortable clothes that I had. After I had lotioned my body I changed into a spaghetti top with shorts that were black. I loved the color black on my ass cause it made it look bigger and since Raphael's attention was on me I had to make him beg. These last few weeks we got close and with close, I mean real close. With satisfaction, I went downstairs to see if the pizza guy came since I had this urge for pizza. Raphael was already busy with the pizza when I got to the kitchen, his tattoos were a work of art. Damn with a sleeve he looked sexy as fuck. He looked up with a smile he asked me if I wanted some juice. How about you check in the cupboard in the dining room? I said leaving him to go and check. Shit, you had whiskey this whole time without telling me? Don't judge me, I can always take the bottle back? I dare you to. He said with dark eyes. He looked like a wild animal searching for his prey. How about you throw us a drink if you don't mind? Got it, baby. He said then paused for a minute walking up to me until I can feel his breath on my body. Since when do you drink whiskey? Since I kicked my husband on the as with his tricks. I said taking the pizza to the deck outside. The view was beautiful from my house. The sun was about to set when I felt someone's eyes on my back. I turned around to see Raphael there watching my every move. He did not look mad at me after my words in the kitchen. I wished he could have been called Asa me old fashioned, but I missed that side of him. We sat and watched the sunset with a drink and good food. Do you remember when Alexis said her first words baby? Oh my. How can I forget she was so cute with the bow in her hair that your mother made for her. 
Your mother asked her if she was her grandmother's favorite. Then she said shit. Raphael said while we both broke down in laughter. How about that time when you had to change her diaper, only to get peed on? Shit, you still remember that part? How could I forget you were my husband? I said only to feel the tension rising I was about to say something when Raphael broke the silence. Lucas kissed you this morning, didn't he? I see his eyes darkened with those words I knew that the bastard would not stay this normal for long. You saw that? Your mind did you think that I'll miss that scene, while now in thinking of killing the bastard for even thinking of it. Raphael, you're the one who ended us not me I had no choice but to leave your ignorance ass. I said with high-pitched voice only to find out what mistake it was. You left me, you never fought for me. Please not this crap Raphael, you know as well as me that it would have never worked. We were doomed since day one and I guess you were right about one thing. Emily. That is one mood fucking killer right? I said standing up ready to leave only to get pulled back falling on Raphael's lap. His smell made me go crazy for him, but I needed to prove a point. You're not a mood fucking killer Emily and I wish that I can take those words back but I can't. Just let me go, Raphael. Let me love you Emily just this once. He said slipping a strand of hair behind my ear. Our eyes were on each other with those words my whole world exploded. Would you love me and hold me when I told you that it hurts, I just need someone who would love me. My words were hardly released when his lips crashed on mine demanding entrance. The urge to fight him stopped when I felt his whisper by my ears. I have loved you since the day I saw you em, you're so fucking hot and you make me want to take you here and now. Then do it, Raphael, take me and make me yours. Emily, there will be no turning back after this, are you sure? Raphael's. I asked her with a soft voice trying to make her understand what could happen if we take this a step further. She threw her hands around my neck with the sweetest lips she kissed me passionately deep enough to drive me crazy. I pulled her head back by her hair kissing her neck, with kisses that burned my lips. I heard a moan coming from her lips I picked her up, carrying her to the bedroom while she kissed my neck softly. She got loose then took my hand, leading me towards her room pushing me down on the bed. Her eyes were full of sparks while her body was so playing the fucking part. I wanted to get up only to be pushed down to the bed. Behave. I heard her words come from her delicious mouth. Shit, she was killing me with her eyes. She took her shorts of with eyes on me taunting me with a smirk on her face. In the blink of an eye, she was climbing on top of me kissing my neck with one move I switched positions with her. I laid her on her back looking into her perfect eyes, our bodies were craving for each other. I could not stand the feeling anymore so I ripped her shirt off with a smirk. Her amusement turned to torture when I saw what she had on. Shit. Black lace underwear I felt how my heart stopped for a second. I saw the lust in her eyes finally, after these years she wanted me as much as I wanted her. I threw a devilish smile before leaning in to whisper something into her ears. You're mine and mine alone love. My words were not even out when I unclipped her bra. I looked into her eyes taking her breast into my hands. She closed her eyes with a smile so I started to suck her beautiful fully round nipples. A loud moan escaped her mouth with hands on my neck she begged for more so I ripped of her black lace panties leaving her in shock. Raphael was all that came out before I pressed my mouth on hers demanding entrance. Our tongues were fighting for dominance, yet she gave up as one of my fingers slipped in by her wet private part. She was so fucking wet and ready for my entrance, the thought of her body reacting to my touch gave me a rush. I wanted to make love to her slowly so I kissed her down her neck down meeting her clit in my mouth. My mouth was sucking and licking the shit out of her wet pussy while adding a finger. Her hands were holding onto the bed covers while she moaned in pleasure. Her body started to enjoy pleasure so much that she rode my finger, that was it I wanted to be inside her making her go over the fucking edge crazy with my hard member. I was about to enter her when she stopped me with a concerned tone in her voice. What is it, love? Be gentle please. She said with those words I felt how small she was. Shift. She was still a virgin, how the fuck could this be possible? You're still a virgin baby? I asked with a smile on my face. Yes, I kind of saved myself for my husband all this time. 
With those words our lips collided with heat covering our bodies. I kissed her neck with hands playing with her breast, just to get her attention of me entering her wet dripping pussy. I started slowly till she felt comfortable enough so I moved my speed up. She started to scream with nails digging into my back making me growl with pleasure. She threw her legs around my waist as her body started to ride me I felt how her pussy tighten around my dick. She reached her climax screaming while holding onto the headboard of the bed as soon as she exploded I reached my climax. I kissed her deeply then laid on my back while she fell asleep in my arms. This moment felt so unreal that I took a glance down to my chest seeing her angel face, knowing that it had happened after all these years. Emily. I got woken up by soft kisses on my neck, which made me through a low growl. Wake up baby, we can't lay in bed all day. I remember what had happened with every bit of memory flashing through my head. He loved me yet I still had this odd feeling in my chest that something wasn't right I opened my eyes only to find Raphael looking at me with caring eyes. Why not? Cause the doctor is checking up on you plus I would like to show you something. How late is Alexis coming home? This afternoon. Please explain what do you want to show me? Let's have breakfast first. He said walking out of the door. He was already dressed while I laid but naked, oh boy I just wanted to sleep. I took a deep breath then took one of his shirts from the cupboard that he threw away a week ago. I kept the black shirt, cause it reminds me of him and also it was a perfect fit. As I headed downstairs a wave of freshly breakfast eggs hit me making my tummy twirl. Raphael already placed the breakfast plates in the dining room with a warm smile he walked up to me planting a kiss on my forehead. We enjoyed our breakfast talking about random topics that was brought to mind. This sight of Raphael was shocking to see it he left me speechless. Shit if I knew this years ago maybe then we should still be married with a family. Emily, what do you think about the idea? What idea Raph? I asked looking out of the window. I knew that I was a broken record yet he fixed my broken pieces in just a few weeks but I could not help thinking of the next disappointment. Are you even listening to me babe? He asked with a high-pitched voice. Yes, look Raphael this. I got interrupted by a knock that came from the door in an instance Raphael went to answer the door. I sat there looking at the beautiful sea the way the waves splashed on the rocks made me feel calm until I felt Raphael's presence in the room. Hi, Emily, how have you been? Fine, thank you, doctor. I'm guessing that you're here to check up on me, right? Yes, have you been taking your medicine, as I asked? Yes, I have. How does the wound look? Well, you heal quickly, Emily. It is safe to say that you are out of the danger zone, but you still have to take it slowly, my child. Got it. Thank you, doc. Now, if you would excuse me, I have to get dressed. I said giving the doctor a hug leaving straight to my bedroom. I got into the shower then hopped out only to find Raphael staring at me. He threw a smirk then picked me up placing me on the counter. My body was reacting to his kisses on my neck. He felt like a drug that I could not get enough of. His lips were soft yet they had a dominant sting to them. I felt his hands moving up my legs making their way to my private parts. His fingers entered me leaving me to squeal from the explosion that I had. His eyes had darkened from lust so he picked me up while I wrapped my legs around his muscular body he carried me into the shower. You're not showering without me babe and I think that I should teach you that. Without even noticing he was already naked with me wrapped around his body. Our skin was brushing on each other's which made my heart beat five times more faster. Our lips crashed onto each other with a rush he pressed me against the wall. Raphael. I teased her only to get awoken by my demon to take her here and now. I wanted her to scream my name. When our lips collided I felt a rush going through my body. This woman was my answer to all my problems with the exact level that we were on, I didn't even realize that she was free of my grip. She pushed me against the wall changing places looking irresistible. She threw a smile with a wink she started to kiss me down my body to my hard dick. I felt her mouth slipped over my heart member. Shit. This woman was fucking amazing, she knew just how to make every muscle in me beg for more. She teased me every time I was on the verge to let go which made me go insane. Her hands were around my member playing with it while her lips trailed kisses down my inner thighs. 
I wanted to pick her up only to be stopped by her compelling eyes. Fuck she was going to kill me if she keeps this up. She stood up letting me sit on the seat in the shower only to feel her body slide in on my member. She rode me like a fucking cowboy like there was no coming of. I was about to reach my level when she did leading me to dive in a bit deeper hearing her screaming my name was a turn on. She threw a smirk with a shy face she kissed my lips once again. We got dressed once we got out of the shower only to wait for Emily for almost 10 minutes making me a grump. I never used to wait for a girl, not like this. She came downstairs with her jeans and a short crop top with her white puma sneakers. She looked so fucking hot with that tight ass. Her hair was loose with big earrings she made my heart feel things that I never have felt before I took her hand walking to my BMW 8 series coupe opening the door for her then closing it again. I climbed into the car starting the roaring engine. We drove up to the docks where my yacht was waiting for us. She had her sunglasses on with the music she enjoyed herself. As we arrived at the dock she was confused as to why we were here. Oh, my word you're going to kill me aren't you, just like you killed that Mexican dude. How do you know about that Mexican? I asked raising a brow facing her sweet lips, then she took her glasses off with a serious face. My mother taught me to keep my friends close and my enemies closer baby. So who am I love? You are just an as who I was married to while fucking around with other women becoming my enemy baby. You're gonna have to watch that mouth of yours baby, it might get you into trouble someday. Please daddy stop lecturing me. She said with a kiss on my cheek. She just knew how to press all the wrong buttons at the wrong fucking time. I got out of the car opening Emily's door leading her to the yacht. She froze in her steps with astonishment she threw a smile with eyes containing the galaxy. We went for a little cruise on the yacht before having dinner. I needed to check on the captain regarding some small arrangements made so when I got back I saw her by the lower deck with her feet in the swimming pool. She looked relaxed in her way she made me calm. I got taken from my thoughts when my phone vibrated, I looked at the caller ID it was the lab. Any news? Yes boss seems like someone gave her a drug that is commonly used in the In the fucking what Winslow? Boss in the abduction of woman or girls. But whoever gave her the drug used an overdose if you had not found her. I don't think that Mrs. Hoant would have survived. Listen to me very carefully Winslow, cause I'm only going to say this fucking once, find out if Marcus could have drugged her or if he is busy with any illegal shit. Got it, boss. And Winslow doesn't even fucking dare to spill the beans. I said hanging up the phone. I felt sick to my stomach thinking of the idea of her being drugged. She is an innocent woman who has done nothing but good in this world. I decided to join her by the pool for the last few minutes before we got back to the city. I want you to move back home with me. Not going to happen, Raphael. I build this life from scratch. I'm not going to give it up just like that. Why not, M? Raphael, I'm not going to drop everything just like that after one night of steamy sex and attention. I know I messed up, M, but I'm trying here. She looked into my eyes with worried eyes. How about we start off slow, when it is Alexa's weekend with you I'll come along to spend the weekend with you and with her of course. I'll take that deal M if that's the best option that you have. Like you have a better one. She said sarcastically. I pulled her closer till our lips met with a burning sensation I pleaded with her to change her mind, but she stuck to the plan that afternoon. We got into the car driving towards Stacy's house when Emily's phone went off. I focused on the road while keeping my attention on her move once I heard her say the bastard's name. Hi Lukes, what's up? She said when answered the phone only to smile. Yes, you're already missing me? She said with a sweet voice that my hands gripped the steering wheel tighter. I was getting frustrated with this bastard only to think of her going back to work made my blood boil. Once she dropped the phone we had reached Stacy's house just in time before I had lost my shit. Emily. Raphael opened the door for me with dark eyes which means he was pissed at something. I got Alexis from Stacy with a struggle why? She loved her aunt Stacy and wanted to be like her. Daddy. She said running past me leaving Stacy to stare at me with wondering eyes. I knew what she was thinking from the very first start. How about lunch tomorrow so that we can catch up on this? She pointed between me and Raphael with a laugh escaping me. You got it, 
Thanks again for today, I appreciate it. I said giving her a tight hug then headed straight to the car where Raphael was waiting for me to climb in. We drove home with a few words between us he and Alexis spoke non-stop. We got ice cream before going home within a few blocks Alexis was fast asleep so Raphael carried her to her room. I was about to head into my closet when two strong arms pushed me against the wall. I never saw this side of Raphael before, hell I never imagined this side. I felt how he moved my hair from my neck placing soft kisses on my neck. He pressed my whole body against the wall leaving me to beg for air with a quick move turned me around facing him. He kissed me deeply with one move he had opened my legs, his hand slipped into my jeans while the other pinned me tightly against the wall. I felt a warm heat wave coming over me when he whispers into my ears with the most deadly words. You're mine and mine fucking alone. Her moans begin to increase as my fingers played with her clit. She bit her rosy sweet lips with one move I pressed my lips against hers so that she can be quiet. I trailed kisses down her neck down her body while I took her jeans off. Her sexy red lace underwear made me go insane for every inch of her body, especially for her tight ass. I went down with my tongue only to feel her wetness. Her eyes were closed from all of the excitement that was coming from my fingers so I tore her lace panties off. She was about to say something when my lips met her sensitive spot while I had a finger in her, making her gasp for air. Fuck she tasted so good and I wanted more than just a taste. She tasted like strawberries with a bit of cream, fuck my favorite. This girl is going to drive me fucking insane. I picked her legs up one by one placing them on my shoulder so that I can get a better taste of the desert that was coming from her body. Once my tongue went over her silt she placed her hands around my neck. Fuck Raphael. She said breathing heavy trying to get loose, but my hands kept her hips steady while my tongue tasted the most beautiful flavors. You're mine and you're going nowhere, baby. I said as my mouth entered her tiny entrance leaving her to bite her lips with a fast move she pushed her wet pussy more into my face. Her sweet juices came once again on my tongue with that I pulled my head back looking at her with blazing eyes. She was my fucking drug that can cost me everything. Come for me, baby. I said while I placed a finger into her wet entrance with my mouth over her sweet sensitive spot. I felt how her muscles started to pull together leaving me to add another finger. Her back arched from the wall with her wiggling under my touch. My fingers went in slowly only to speed up as I felt her tights tightened around me. She grabbed the arch that was behind her digging her nails into the wood hissing. Fuck. Which made me go even more crazy for her she needs to know that she is only mine and mine fucking alone. I added another finger hitting her g-spot leaving her to breathe in pain. Raphi. She said while writing my fingers when I felt more of her juices dripping from her wet pink pussy. Come love. With those words I moved my fingers faster thrusting it into her while I sucked her clit. Fuck. She whispered with those last words I felt her juices explode leaving me to lick it of her. I took her legs around my neck of lifting her into my arms. Fucking remember who you belong to baby. I said with a smirk. We both went for a shower and after that. We laid in bed watching movies. Hey babe I need to get going I have some business deals to check before tomorrow morning. I said seeing her pout at me. She keeps surprising me with her adorable actions. Fine, let me walk you out then. I think I can let myself out babe, rest tomorrow is going to be a very long day. I said kissing her forehead then left her to be. Emily's. I got woken up by an alarm that went of only to find Alexa up and ready for school. Ever since Raphael stayed over she had changed her behavior well it's not like she had hassles, but one thing is for sure she was a stubborn kid. I made some breakfast for Alexa and me, then went to take a shower as quickly as possible. I got dressed into a black Chanel dress that had a sweetheart neckline with my stiletto's high heels with a smoky eye I was good to go. I just let down my hair with a pearl necklace and earrings I went downstairs seeing that Alexis was done with her breakfast and was already waiting by the door for me by the front door. Ready to go, baby? Yes, mommy are you going to pick me up today or daddy? I think it's going to be me baby, but I'll ask daddy alright? I said seeing her face lit up a bit. Raphael was not that much around cause he had a company to run so after these few weeks I think it did well to their relationship. 
I opened the garage door and was about to climb into my car when I heard Alexis screaming her father's name with those few letters I turned around seeing him. I did not expect this from him, what the hell happened to Raphael? He kneeled to pick up Alexis then walked up to me with a smirk. I guess my face had a different expression than I thought. He kissed me on my cheeks with a giggle that came from Alexis leaving me speechless. Daddy will pick me up from school mom. She said with a huge smile which made my heart skip a beat. I just nodded then looked into Rachel's eyes only to see pure desire. Come on Alexis you're going to be late for school and I'll be late for work if we don't get moving. I said with a stern voice opening the back door of my Audi. I saw Raphael whispering something into her ears with a wide smile she fucking mocked me back. You'll never be late for work mom, as your daddy's wife. All right get into the car young lady, and as for you Raphael I'll see you this afternoon. Closing the door of the car climbing into the car with a smirk on my face. As I drove of I watched him in my rearview mirror smiling at me. Shit he looked gorgeous as fuck his tux was black with a dark blue shirt with his hair gelled I think I'm going to die. After I dropped Alexis of I went straight to work, cause I knew that Lucas needs my help these few weeks were hell on him. I parked my car then headed upstairs only to find Lucas by my desk with tired eyes and sloppy hair. Relax I'm here Luke. I said leaving him to gasp for fresh air. Thank heavens, I never believed in miracles until now M. Hey, keep that up and there might be one. I said with a laugh only to hear Rachel's voice behind me. What the fuck was he doing here again? Lucas I would like an update on a few construction sites before lunchtime, also remember that I would like you to join me for the interviews that will be taking place this afternoon. Interview for what Mr. Haunt? I asked teasingly. For your job position, Mrs. Duke as an investor saw your talent and would like you to handle his sights from here on forward. That's great news Emily. Lucas said hugging me with confusion I looked at Raphael. I knew this Raphael far to better than anyone. Now if you'll excuse me I have to check up on a few investors, please enjoy your last day as a personal assistant Mrs. Duke. He said then he left with a smile on his sexy as face. I guess that I should be happy for this position, but I'm not sure if this decision was as true as he stated. I decided to finish up the filling that was waiting for me and to rearrange the appointment book of poor Lucas while he was stuck at his desk. Emily. I looked up only to see Mr. Haunt in front of me with a huge smile on his face. Since my divorce from Raphael, my family broke all ties with me while Mr. Haunt treated me as his daughter. He was more than a father to me than my dad had ever been, yes, I had a soft spot for the guy could you blame me. He looked handsome for his age while his wife tried harder to look younger. What a shock to say hi. I got up hugging him then looked at him with a curious smile. Vacation does look good on you. I know so how about lunch my treat. I wish I could, but I have a pile of paperwork that needs to be sorted out before this afternoon. I said looking over at the folders on my desk. Raphael's orders? Yes, so how about a rain check? Get your purse was going to get lunch and I don't want to hear anything from you, missy. He said waving me of to get my purse then I followed him towards the elevator only to get ambushed by his lovely wife and Raphael. Where are you going darling? I'm taking Emily to lunch would the two of you like to join us? He said while keeping my hand around his arm. Raphael was a gentleman like his father as well as the Playboy episodes. Raphael's eyes met mine and before his mother could object he accepted the offer for the both of them. We will be delighted. You did good, now we just have to lure her in a bit more, she is already yours boss. I asked them to get the drug tested again for insurance. Good I don't want her fucking dead I want her alive and kicking, soon we will have an empire. I watched her walking away leaving me breathless with anger racing through my body as I saw Raphael with her, my knuckles turned pale from the anger. What about Mr. Horn Boss? We will just simply have to eliminate him, buddy. I said hanging the phone up. We sat at a fancy restaurant out on the terrace with fresh flowers all around us which made the city fade away. We had a private table since the Haunt family was billionaires and kept their life private. Trust me when I mean private I mean another level, not just guards and cameras, they pretty much have influence on the media as well as the police don't get me started with the mafia. 
My divorce with Raphael never even leaked to the media nor did Bridget's disappearance. As far as the world is concerned we are still happily married or something like that. They keep their life private and love it that way. Emily what would you like to have? I heard Mr. Haunt's voice taking me from my deep thoughts. I'll just have a salad. I said while giving the menu to the waiter. He threw a smile leaving me to smile in return. I'll add my usual thank you. Raphael said shooting daggers at the waiter who threw a smile at me. The waiter left us alone to get our drinks. So how have you been Emily? I heard that you had an accident a few weeks ago. Yes, please don't remind me that poor Alexis has nightmares about what had happened that day. I'm glad my son got there in time otherwise you might have not seen the broad daylight again. To think mother tried to stop me. Raphael said with a low laugh, shit this is going to be the most uncomfortable lunch ever and here I think that my divorce was awkward. Do you blame me? That meeting could have cost you millions Raphael. Thanks to Emily I got the deal mother, they like the knight in shining armor. Plus he got to save Alexis's mother sweetheart. I need a drink so I asked to be excused to go to the restroom. I loved Raphael's father, but not his wife she reminded me of Bridget. She had that fifty shades of bitchiness. I went to wash my hands and to cozy up. I went outside and saw that they were still in a deep conversation so I decided to take a shot by the bar before I go to my table. One shot of vodka please. I asked the barman immediately. He poured my drink then handed it to me with a smile. Day with the fam. Something like that trust me don't ever get married. So the pretty lady is married. Divorced. I said throwing the burning vodka down my throat. So you're not just hot and smart but single as well. She's taken asshole now get the fuck back to work, or you will not have anything to get back to. I heard an angry voice from behind sending chills down my spine. I felt how his eyes were throwing daggers at me. I turned around then headed straight to the table with a huge smile as if nothing just had happened. After a few seconds, Raphael joined with a dead stare at me. I know we slept together and maybe we are something or maybe not, but I didn't think it was that big of a deal to say. Divorce. What did you just say? Raphael's eyes darken and that is when it hit me. The bastard was sitting next to me and I did kind of mumble about my thoughts out loud, without thinking once again I whispered in a low voice. Fuck. I would love to, maybe you have not yet learned your lesson. His breath hit my skin making my heart tremble in excitement. Emily, how about dinner tonight at our house, just to say thank you for what you have done for Alexis? That sounds wonderful. I'm sorry for interrupting the two of you, but we need to get going I have an appointment with an old friend. Will you take Emily back to work son? Of course father. We greeted them then waiting on our food. The atmosphere was very heavy and silence surrounded me while Raphael was on his phone. The waiter brought our food then left as soon as Raphael looked up. After this, we can pick up Alexis, then you can go home to get ready for the dinner. I have no problem with picking Alexis up, but I do have a problem with you being the boss of me. I said laying the napkin on my lap. So I am a problem now. He said with raised eyebrows. Raphael, let's just enjoy our lunch so that we can leave, all right? I said with a swift move his lips were on my lips. This was an angry kiss I could tell, yet it felt as if I was on cloud nine. He drew back and started to eat his lunch. After we ate we went to pick up Alexis from school. Once she saw her father's car a biggest smile came on her face. I'm happy that she gets to spend time with him, cause she needs her father in her life. She got into the car and Raphael drove straight to work where I got my car to go home. The boss gave me orders to go home as always. I feel alive ever since Raphael came back into my life. I had never imagined us being like this. Raphael closed the door after he said, goodbye, to Alexis then walked up to me. So I'll see you, two ladies, at dinner tonight babe? Most probably. Most definitely. He said pushing my back up against the car door. I looked down to see what Alexis was doing and as usual, she was on her iPad. I looked back at Raphael with a smirk mocking him back. Should I bring a date or is that taken care of? I think I can handle you, 
bring a male person into my home then you might just end up in court. Protective aren't we? You're mine and I don't like to share baby. He said kissing me deeply leaving me breathless. He hugged me and was about to let go when he said something into my ears. I'll take care of the wetness tonight after dinner baby, now if you'll excuse me. Then he left with a smirk making me wonder how the fuck did he know that. He had an impression on my body and I was not afraid to admit it. I mean he was gorgeous with a tanned body and muscles. I came out of my thoughts going straight home. Once I pulled into the driveway Alexis hopped out running towards the door. I guess the family dinner was more exciting for her than for me. Raphael. Once I got back to the office I saw the hallway was full of female girls waiting for their interviews. Get yours out of my building now. I threw her with the CV that she gave a few minutes ago. Lucas's eyes showed a shade of scaredness. I looked at him with a smirk guessing it made me look like a psychopath scaring the living shit out of him. Pick five girls and send the files to my office, cause we both know that most of these girls are fake. Pick wisely cause they will be working for you and if shit happens then your is on the line. I said taking my jacket then left work to go straight home. Being the boss had its perks and that was the best part. I got home just after 6 just in time to jump through the shower. I got dressed in another dark tux as my mother kept her dinners formal as fuck. I had some cologne on and a Rolex watch. My hair was in a messy style and with that, I was finished hoping that Emily would be here already. I tried to call her but there was no answer which made me stress about her whereabouts. I was about to head to the garage to get my car only to be stoked by a charming sweet sexual voice. Leaving so soon? I wanted to reply but was speechless once I saw her face to face. She had a red dress on that was short with her hair and a ponytail. She looked breathtaking like always. She walked up to me with a whisper in my ear. You should see the underwear, honey. Emily, I'm glad to see that you made it. My mother said interrupting us with a fake smile she greeted my mother. After all these years I knew when she was being sarcastic or serious. I followed the two of them to the living room where we were served drinks. Emily sat next to my father having a delightful conversation about a new project. I should say for her beauty she had quite the brains I never knew this side of her. I remember years back how my father praised her for her accomplishments in life, yet I never cared cause she was nothing to me. I mentally hit myself every time I see her beautiful face, thinking of what I could have given away. I sat across her with a smile hearing a few words from my mother begging me for a conversation while my eyes were glued on Emily. Her dress complimented her perfect hourglass figure, with her cherry lips that made me drool. Her long neck begs for attention until she saw me, with a devilish smile she touched her neck giving me a wink making me frustrated as hell. If I could have my way with her here and now we would have been like animals. I her body is killing me silently with a sip of my whiskey I studied her body more intensely. Dinner is ready everyone. My mother said leading us towards the dining room. I took a seat on the end the same as my father. Alexis took a seat next to my mother with a huge smile, I kind of felt bad for the times that I missed with her, thanks to Emily she always sent the most important thing to me well to my butler. She hated my guts and I could not blame her, but she never kept me from Alexis and for that, I loved her even more. Shit, what am I saying, love? Thank you so much Emily for taking care of my sweet little princes here, so I thought I might invite a friend that is fond of you. I looked up at the door only to see Lucas there with a smile on his face. He came to greet my parents as well as Alexis. His eyes met Emily's and for a moment I thought I have seen a spark in her eye until she greeted him formally. I stood up shaking his hand asking the butler to get us another chair and plates. He sat right next to Emily which made my blood boil, but I could not show it just yet. You see Emily Lucas is just like you alone. Diane. It is fine Mr. Haunt. Please continue Mrs. Haunt. Emily said with a smile that I never had seen before. She looked dangerous as fuck and that made my heart beat faster even got me fucking hard. Both of you are single and well Lucas is like family maybe you will get to be together without breaking your vows. Alexis get your stuff we are leaving now. But mommy, I want. Louis take Alexis so that she can get her stuff now. 
Alexis was hardly out of the room when a glass plate hit the wall leaving my mother speechless and afraid. No offense Lucas to what I am about to say now. He just nodded with eyes full of lust. I had enough of your shit Diane, you think that I wanted a divorce? Well guess again I wanted to keep going, but think of how my husband's face was between another girl's legs made me sick as fuck. I am not a whore but your son is, while my pathetic sister left him I stayed yet you never saw that did you? I might be a bitch, but trust me I changed a lot more than you think. How about you move out of your son's house and back to your husband? Thinking back while you and Bridget were sipping wine and staying out all night, I sat with Alexis when she was sick or had a fever of a hundred degrees. So don't you ever try to think that you are above me, cause sweetheart you're underneath me and if it makes you feel any better I have been sleeping with your son. She said then left to greet my father surprisingly he seemed happy about this episode. Emily. Give me a cow when you're in town again, maybe we can catch up again old man. Who is your bloody old man? I will indeed that is a promise, my child. Mr. Haunt said hugging me. This was my cue only to be stopped by Diana. You are worse than Bridget will ever be. Really, how about you tell your son about the tickets you bought Bridget? What tickets? I heard Raphael's deep aggressive voice say. Get the fuck out of my son's house. With pleasure. I said walking out of the room with a swift move I was pressed against the wall. His body was pressing hard against mine leaving me in total shock. His eyes met mine with a connection he tried to see inside of me, but could not succeed. What the hell are you doing Raphael? Do you want to lose everything once again? Diane get the fuck out of my house, maybe while you are on your way out leave the spare keys. Raphael, what are you doing? What the fuck happened to Emily the innocent little girl? She changed, cause she needed to survive. Well you're not going anywhere, you're going to tell me about that letter that you just spoke of. His eyes changed into a darker shade of grey, this was the Raphael that I knew the invisible son of a bitch. Raphael. You know even better how about the both of you tell me, just so that I know both sides. His angry voice said leaving Diane to stop in her tracks. Even his bitch of a mother knew when to listen when it came to a certain type of voice tone. He pointed at the living room leaving us to walk towards the room as always we fall in line like stray cats. Diane sat on the sofa across me with worried eyes. So who was going first? Son, do you believe the words that are coming from her mouth? Do you think that I even believe you mother? You see ever since Emily left you tried everything to keep her out of my life. So why is that? Cause she does not belong with you. But Bridget did, I hope you see who the traitor was here. You bought the tickets Diane not me, hell I didn't even have money to pay my rent that time. Why would my mother buy the tickets? Maybe cause you cut Bridget from her bank accounts, leaving her to beg by your innocent mother. Is this true mother? Please I would never help Bridget, not with that to be precise. I stood up looking down at her with an emotionless face, yet deep down inside I was ready to kill the bitch. My name was not on that ticket nor did any of my money pay it, yet here you are laying to your son. Just tell the fucking truth Diane you booked it before she disappeared. Wait are you saying that this ticket was booked before she left Alexis and me? Yes. Both of you were making me sick, I could have saved my marriage, but the two of you decided otherwise. A knock came from the door. What? Raphael and I said at the same time while the poor butler stood there in total fear giving me a gap to speak. You want to fix your marriage with Bridget, yet you never wanted to fix ours? You amaze me you do, I wish you the best on that journey Raphael. Before he could have said anything I looked at the butler saying. We are finished here. I said with the most cold-hearted voice ever. We are finished here. I said with the most cold-hearted voice ever. I walked out of the room turning around looking at Raphael and Diane. Like mother like son. I said then left picking Alexis up walking towards the car. I was about to close the door by Alexa when she called her father. I was paying him no attention to his presence so I walked around the car about to open my door only to be stopped. Emily we can. Just leave me the fuck alone Raphael, find your wife maybe she is waiting for you. I said getting into the car. 
As I drove of I felt broken yet again for some reason I trusted him again. How could I have been so stupid to trust him? Raphael POV. I went inside straight to my office. I felt worse than a piece of shit for what had just went down. I guess deep down inside of me I wanted that picture of a happy family, yet I wanted it with Emily and never with Bridget. I threw a cold whiskey down my throat feeling the burning sensation that made me feel a bit better. I was about to get myself another one when my mother came in by the door. Her face lost all expression once she met mine. Son. Pick your words very carefully mother. You should look for Bridget's son, I know what she did was unbearable, but. Get the fuck out of my house before I lose the bit of insanity that I have on you. I said leading her to scrap out of the room with quick footsteps I saw my butler asking for permission to enter my office. With a head nod, he walked in handing me a folder with photos of the bastard who gave Emily the drugs. Surrey cooks them daily shipping them to different countries and this drug is already on the low class streets. Was Emily a rat that needed to be tested? Sir it looks that way. He could hardly finish his sentence when I threw everything from my table leaving me mad as fuck. I needed to calm down otherwise I would go crazy. Seems like we have to visit the bastard, maybe he can elaborate who the fuck gave him these orders. I said. The butler just nodded then gave me a fresh whiskey with a quick move he had ordered maids to clean the MES then left me alone. This night could not get any better than this. I took my phone out trying to call Emily, but it went straight to the mailbox. I know that I deserve this shit, but she can be so fucking stubborn. I decided to take a shower after that to go to bed. The next morning I went to work without seeing Emily, I asked my assistant about her whereabouts, only to find an email from her. Emily P.O.V. Thank you so much Alice for the files, I will make it up to you promise. Please, you're my boss, and I could not wait to get out of the office as Mr. Horned was scolding everyone again, she said with huge eyes. Already out for blood that sounds like the poor bastard. Something like that, will there be anything else that you will need? No, I think I got everything Alice, thank you once again. I said walking her out. Once she left I went inside dropping myself on the couch only to be interrupted by a knock on the door. What did she forget this time? Is it too much to ask for peace? Did you forget anything? My words dropped when I saw his face on the other side of the door. Raphael stood there with gray eyes while his hands were inside his pockets. He threw a smirk then walked past me with a soft whistle, I stood by the door hoping that this was a dream. I felt his eyes undressing me so I closed the door walking past him towards the kitchen. So where is Alexis? She is fine Raphael. I will let her know that you were here. How about I do it myself? Maybe she just needs her dad right. He was about to turn around when I stopped him. She is fine Raphael, I will let her know that you were here. How about I do it myself? Maybe she just needs her dad right. He was about to turn around when I stopped him. She is sleeping Raphael, please leave. Is she? How about I check on her while you do whatever you were about to do? He said pushing me out of the way, he was about to go up the stairs when I stopped him. Alexis is at school Raphael. I had to say it otherwise the demon inside him would have killed me, since I lived with his daughter's name. He stood still looking at me with a smirk he kept walking towards Alexis' room leaving me to follow him. I was about to enter her room when he pinned me against the wall. Do you think that I regret you, us? Raphael, please just leave. You left not me baby. I had my reasons and I still do. Then tell me to fuck off? Just get the fuck out of my. His lips crashed on mine begging for air he was not letting me go that easily. A week went by quickly without seeing his face or hearing his voice. My life seemed easier, yet I felt empty as if I was a pure missile without any powder inside just an empty shell. Today was Friday and it's Alexis weekend with her father. Raphael ignored me at work as well as at home when he came to visit Alexis. He hated my guts at this moment almost the way I had hated his guts a few months ago. The office was as quiet as a hearing that went down in court, luckily for me, I only had one appointment with my client then I get to go home. As soon as I finished my appointment that took about two and a half hours I stopped in my tracks when I saw Lucas yelling at his employees. 
I never knew this side of Lucas ever, he made me think of Raphael for a minute. I was about to walk past when I heard how he spoke to his assistant calling her names that took enough of me. I walked up to him in his office without a knock on the door. I looked over to the poor girl who had tears in her baby blue eyes. Why don't you take a break, I need to speak to Lucas for a minute okay? She was about to nod when Lucas threw her with a file out of the blue, saying that she need to sort out the MES before day end. She picked the papers up which flew a few minutes ago in the air, then hurried out by the door. What is up with you Luke? Nothing Emily. What do you want? Ouch. Emily I have work to do I don't have time to lay around like you. Are you being serious Lucas? Get the fuck out of my office. You are such an asshole. I said walking out of his office throwing the door closed with an echo through the hall everyone looked at me. Nothing Emily. What do you want? Ouch. Emily I have work to do I don't have time to lay around like you. Are you being serious Lucas? Get the fuck out of my office. You are such an asshole. I said walking out of his office throwing the door closed with an echo through the hall everyone looked at me. With a fake smile, I left to get my bag and just leave this hell hole. As soon as I reached my office I took my bag only to be stopped by a powerful presence. Raphael stood there with full gray eyes following my every move. Where do you think you're going baby? I'm leaving this shithole of a place. I said trying to push him out of the way but did not succeed, since he was strong as an ox. Fuck, my phone ranged then went straight to voicemail as the person on the other side decided to leave me a voicemail. Hi Emily, I would just like to say thank you for what you did back there, sorry though for the way he spoke to you. Lunch is on me. Shit. I mentally cursed hoping that Raphael did not hear that oh well who the fuck am I kidding they are the same monsters maybe he finds a bit of amusement in this. Want to explain? Oh please. I said when he stopped one of the employees in the hall asking for an explanation. I said when he stopped one of the employees in the hall asking for an explanation. Raphael's eyes turned dark when he faced me. Maybe you should have explained. He said storming into Lucas's office before I could even get a word out. Raphael was mad as fuck and no one could stop him not even ten security guards would help. I followed him finding him bending over across the table. He spoke to Lucas in a furious tone so bad that even Lucas' face turned pale. Say it again to her I fucking dare you, family or not brother I will kill you. He stood up looking Raphael into his eyes challenging him. What the actual fuck is wrong with him Raphael will eat him alive. Maybe you should think about that statement again brother. I'm not that po'boy who used to listen like always. Yeah, well I'm not that man that you used to know brother. They were about to go head on head when I jumped in between them, trying to push Raphael away from the table only to feel him more tensed up. Relax Raphael, this was just a misunderstanding. He looked even more pissed when I mentioned that part, he was about to throw a punch when I grabbed him by his shirt pulling him towards me. Before I knew it I had kissed him feeling every bit of muscle relax in his body making me feel at ease. I pulled away seeing both of their facial expressions. Both of you are assholes, I don't even know why you are fighting since you have the same animal manners. I said then stopped by the door looking over my shoulder to the two boys who stood there in total shock. Get your shit sorted out, the both of you. I said leaving the office. I knew that I had about five minutes to escape from whatever shit might happen. I picked Alexis up then went straight home only to find Raphael waiting patiently for me with his arms crossed over his chest. He looked so hot with his messy hair and loose tie, keep your shit together Emily. I knew that he was here to pick Alexis up and for no other reason. I barely parked the car when Alexis got out just to jump into her father's strong arms. I seriously need to change the back doors to child lock. I got out taking Alexis' bag from the back into my hand only to find Raphael staring at me with a smirk. Raphael P.O.V. She looked pissed at me, but that did not bother me even a bit. I pulled her close to me until she was trapped between my chest and the car. She looked at me with a surprised face leaving me only to take the bag from her hand. You know that I can carry that by myself right? Yes I know dollface, but you're gonna need your hands for your bags. 
I said walking away from her. Raphael. Wait a moment. She said making me stop in my tracks looking over my shoulders. Yes, love. What are you talking about? She said walking up to me close enough that I can feel her breath on my skin. I pulled her close. We are going to Paris, baby. But. I remember that you wanted to have a honeymoon there. Now if you don't get moving we might be late for our flight. Emily P. O. V. He left me speechless with a huge smile inside my heart I felt alive, not like a broken doll waiting for her hero. He had changed and his actions are proving more and more every day even more than I thought, but even good moments can come to an end. After a four hours flight, we had finally reached our destination, Paris. I fell in love with the bright lights and most of all I started to fall for Raphael all over again. As we exited the jet we got into a limo that took us straight to our destination where we would be staying. The view was breathtaking I got taken from my thoughts when I heard Alexis giggles from the side. As my eyes turned I saw her and Raphael out of the roof window. Raphael was never a bad father a bad husband, yes but his daughter was his everything one thing that made my heart beat even more for him. We stopped at huge black gates that went open leaving me to gasp for air with the most amazing view from up front. The house was built in a vintage Italian modern art way. Never in my life have I seen a mansion this beautiful, it had lights that complemented the paint and texture not like the old soggy mansion these days. The color was a light brown with a beautiful garden laid out in front of it. The car had stopped at the entrance where I got out with a swift move Raphael took my hand in his tightly. Alexis ran into the mansion guessing that she had been here before with an expression on my face Raphael answered my thoughts with a smirk. Last summer she wanted to see Paris so I decided to bring her here and now it is your turn my love. His words echoed through my head like a recorder playing the same tune over and over. He gave me a tour of his beautiful house and told me some interesting stories about it as well. Raphael was a smooth talker, yet he never expressed his words in conversation like tonight leaving me yet once again astonished. We had our dinner and like always Alexis went to play with her friend that she had here Ezio if I'm correct. He was a young Italian boy the same age as Alexis he adored her. I felt tired as hell, but luckily for me, Alexis has a friend that can keep her busy and a caretaker as well. Raphael took my hand in his then walked up the stairs leaving me to admire his sexy ass. He stopped at a closed door where a maid handed me a blindfold to put on. You're not going to kill me are you? I asked raising an eyebrow. Maybe or maybe not that depends. Depends on what Mr. Haunt? Keep that tone up and I will show you sweetheart. He said then pointed at the blindfold. He took my hand leading me inside the room and I felt the wind blowing through my hair which made my legs felt uneasy. Keep that tone up and I will show you sweetheart. He said then pointed at the blindfold, he took my hand leading me inside the room and I felt the wind blowing through my hair which made my legs felt uneasy. He directed me to stop when he pulled away only to feel his hands on my waist. With a sweet whisper said. You can take the blindfold of love. It's beautiful. I said mumbling half of the words out of my mouth. The Eiffel Tower was in front of us with the most beautiful view I can imagine. His hands got tightened around my waist feeling his heartbeat I felt lost in his presence. Not as beautiful as you Emily. Raph. Look up at the starts M, each one of them is alone out there, yet they shine even brighter once they meet their other half. Tell me this Emily is your love for me gone as you claim? I took my folded my fingers into his making my heart tremble to his touch. Every movement sent a spark towards my heart. I can't Raphael. Why is that M? Cause I just can't Raph. I felt his hands unfolding mine as well as his body moving away from me with a quick move I grabbed his hand looking at him. I know that your love is not gone, Emily. Don't go, Raphael. I might not answer your question now but I know one thing and that is that I'm falling madly in love with you if that is worth it. He took a step towards me picking me up placing me on the railway of the balcony. You're worth it Emily Duke. With those words, he crushed his lips on mine leaving me breathless only wanting more and more. I tried to push him away from me thinking of Alexis walking in on us. Alexis is fine baby. He said kissing me down my neck leaving chills down my spine. 
I threw my head back feeling his lips in the crook of my neck. I have never felt this fearless with a high feeling of ecstasy I was drowning in his pleasure. I threw my legs around his waist leaving him to pick me up walking towards the room making me stand before him. He threw his tie on the floor taking his jacket off while I unbuttoned his shirt with every button my heart went wild with the sight in front of me. I slipped the shirt of his body with a smirk I looked up at him biting my lips, he looked so fucking hot with his v-line and tan skin. He unzipped my dress while placing kisses down my body. As my dress hit the floor he pushed me to fall on the bed with a swift move he was on top of me. Our eyes met one more time before he ripped my panties off of me. I gripped the covers in my hands holding them tightly. The pleasure shot right through my body leaving me wanting even more. Drugs were nothing compared to his touch. His mouth was already busy doing what he does best. I felt the lust rising in every touch. He grabbed me by the legs pulling me more closer to him. Raphael P.O.V. I felt how her body shivered underneath my touch that is when I knew that she was near her climax, but I could not let that happen that fast. I pulled away kissing her deeply one more time only to go down to her full round breast. The way she bit her lips made me go insane for her body. She did not dare to close her eyes when I touched her. With every move, I felt how her heartbeat increased. I sucked on her tender breast only to take her thoughts away from what was going to happen next. My pants were of and my dick was hard and ready for her. I kissed her on her neck then with a swift hard move I was inside her paradise. She grabbed me by my neck and before even a sound could escape her sweet mouth, mine met hers. She could not fight the pleasure anymore, I felt how she reached her climax yet I could not stop. I need her now more than ever. Her body is my salvation ever since I laid eyes on her. I started to move a bit faster hitting her G-spot even more leaving her to gasp for air. If you come now you will have shit to deal with baby. I said feeling how she got tight around my dick. I decided to spell it out here this time I hit her harder on her spot leaving her nails in my back making me lose every bit of insanity that I had. I took her in my arms switching positions with her. She was on top of me with burning eyes I felt how she started to move on top of me slowly. I felt how she got tight around my dick once again this time I kissed her neck while playing with her nipples. Her pussy relaxed a bit only to get pushed down by her hands. She started to ride me once again this time I felt how I was about to lose control, so I played with her clit only to feel her so fucking tight around me. Raph. R. Let go, baby. I said with those words I felt how she reached her climax leaving me to pound into her harder and faster. I heard how she screamed my name, I grabbed her by the hair pulling her to me. I kissed her before I lost control reaching my climax as well. She got up of me then fell next to me in my arms. I fell asleep with the most beautiful girl in my arms. Unknown P. O. V. What the fuck do you mean that he found you? Do you want me to spell it out for you? The fucker found me I need fake passports to get out of the country tonight still. You are going nowhere since you got us into this shit. Do you think he will make a deal with me if I tell him who is actually behind the drugs boss? Don't you fucking dare. Passports tonight you have two hours after that I will make a deal with the devil. Were the last words before the line was cut short. I threw my phone against the wall letting it splatter in millions of pieces. I heard a knock on the door leaving me to answer it. I took the gun that I had hidden out underneath the couch for insurance purposes. As I opened the door my eyes were completely shocked with who stood in front of me. Hello. I got woken up by a bright light that came creeping through the window. I battled with my eyes to close again but felt Raphael's lips moving down my spine whispering sweet words. Somebody, please pinch me so that I can just wake up, cause this feels like a perfect dream so good to be true. This was almost like a ticket to Disneyland the shit just keeps getting better and better. We need to get up baby, breakfast is already waiting for us. My eyes flew open when he pulled the covers of me. His baby blue eyes changed into lust. I threw a smirk at him then walked over to him. I gave him a deep kiss, taking his shirt of then pushed him to fall on the bed. I looked at him then pulled his shirt over my head heading out of the room downstairs. I heard how he cursed out loud leaving me to only laugh at his actions, maybe this will teach him to not wake me up in the future. I was about to enter the kitchen when a young maid guessing that her age was the same as mine, walked up to me. 
She smiled at me then showed me towards a balcony where we would have our breakfast. I saw Alexis already up and playing with Ezio. Is Ezio your son? Yes, ma'am he was so excited to find out that Miss Alexis is coming to visit he could barely sleep. I can see that he cares deeply for Alexis, you raised a fine young man there. Thank you, if it wasn't for Mr. Haunt, we would have been out on the streets long ago. I saw the tears in her eyes starting to form so I took her hand in mine with a smile I convinced her that everything is going to be fine. She smiled then asked to be excused so that she can help in the kitchen. I looked over the beautiful landscape of Raphael's house, it was perfectly private and safe. My mind drifted off to a memory a few years ago. Now that you are married, maybe you should buy a house. We have a house thank you, father. I think that your father is quite right. His eyes darkened making me regret my choice of opening my fucking mouth once again. We are not buying a new house, hell we are not even thinking about buying a new house. Raphael, please. I said with a defense voice. You're not her Emily you don't deserve this life, let's just face it the only reason that you are here is, because of Alexis and nothing else. Raphael that is enough. Why lie to her father? He said throwing a vicious smile at his father. It's fine Mr. Haunt, but Raphael is right we have to focus on Alexis, she is indeed our number one priority. Were the words that I got out before I practically ran out of the room. My heart got broken on a daily basis so bad that the hurt actually started to make sense. Most people would have advised me to file for a divorce at that moment but I was scared to lose Alexis and my family. The fool I was to believe in my family's words cause once they learned of my separation with Raphael they immediately cut me off but I had Alexis which was more than enough. Here is your breakfast Mrs. Haunt. I got taken away from my thoughts. It was an old lady that took the position of a cook in the haunt mansion. She sat the plate in front of me with a huge smile. It's Duke, Mrs. Grace, ma'am. Well, it is nice to meet you, Grace. You can call me Emily, please. I am afraid not. Mr. Haunt and I are divorced, Mrs. Grace. Are you sure, Miss Duke? Why, yes, for a few years now. Well, Miss Duke, one word of advice. Always remember once a haunt, always a haunt. She said then left me with a mouth full of questions. I was about to get up when I felt two strong arms around my body squeezing me tightly. Something about her words made me feel uneasy regarding my divorce from Raphael. So we can go sightseeing and after that, we can stop for lunch at the small restaurant that I know of. He said taking a seat across me with a smirk on his face. What had happened to Raphael and what the hell am I doing with him? Sure. I said looking down at my plate only to feel his hand lifting my chin up till our eyes met once again, he looked so innocent with those eyes and messy hair. What is wrong honey, and don't dare to lie to me. Nothing, I was just thinking of a few stuff to do once I get back home. Fine, but on one condition? Name it love? That is a deal, Alexis decided to stay at home so it is just going to be me and you today. Well, this is going to be interesting. I said then took a sip of my juice. The taste was different yet it was refreshing. We ate our delicious breakfast and laughed at Alexis and Ezio who were playing in front of us. After breakfast, I took a shower then got dressed in a peach-colored dress which complemented my body shape completely. I let my curly hair down with big hoops in my ears I was almost finished for the finishing touch I did my makeup with a cat eye and perfect full matte lips. I was about to get my shoes when Raphael came around the corner with them, he had a smirk on his face like always he looked damn adorable. You are not wearing these shoes today. You're right I will be wearing those shoes today. You look even cuter when you get frustrated baby. Keep talking Mr. Haunt, do take note that those aren't my only pair of high heels that I brought with. Keep the tone up Mrs. Duke and we might be missing our entire day of events. Oh please, stop this nonsense you're not my father and not my husband anymore. So in reality you have no say over me or my shoes. That is what you think my love. He took my hand and asked me to take a seat just so that he can slip my shoes onto my feet. His words made me remember Grace's words. What does this mean a haunt always a haunt? He looked up into my eyes then kissed my hand with a swift move he got up taking my hand into his. Unknown P. O.
V. Morning. You should learn to buy more food for when you get visitors. Cut the crap, won't you? What are you doing here? The same as you. Why the surprise face, baby? You have five minutes to get your whore of out of my house. Raphael knows that she was drugged, so what is your next plan? Letting him find out about how much you love his wife. I have this under control, so please hop along. Under control, more like chaotic pest control. You know that he always finds out. So what is your plan B, Batman? He was about to get closer when I stopped him with my laugh. He seemed confused with the whole situation that was going down in his kitchen. I'm here to help you with your stupid as of a plan. Like your plan is going to work here. Oh yes, on the contrary. I think that it is a marvelous plan so good that she will be yours in the next few weeks. Really what is your whore of a plan then? Well, we start. Raphael POV. We did sightseeing most of the day. I took her to my favorite restaurant on top of the Eiffel Tower where we stayed for hours until it was dark. I learned a lot from her these last few weeks. She made me mad over her. Never in my life had I think of bringing her to Paris, well not after Bridget anyway. We went home after our last drink, when we got home Emily went to play with the kids leaving me just to finish some of my business work. I took my phone out dialing one of my men that was back in the city taking care of some minor business issues. Boss, is he awake yet? Yes, so he has been asking for you. Let me talk to the fancy bastard. I heard how chains moved leaving me a bit satisfied with the situation. I made sure that my men knew what their job description was, and so helped the asshole who betray me. I want to make a deal. Deals are of the table once you decided to fucking poison my wife. Do you know what I want to do with you cunt? Plea. Was all I heard when a punch must have hit him since he could barely get the sentence finished. Enjoy the time with my friends, cause I will be seeing you soon. Was the last words when I ended the cow. I decided to head towards the kitchen when I heard a loud noise from our room. I burst into the room only to find the maid banging on the bathroom door. When she saw me her facial expression changed to fear at that exact moment I knew that something was up. Care to explain why you were banging on the bathroom door? Yes sir, Mrs. Hunt took a taste of the dinner we had prepared and out of the blue, she ran out of the kitchen with a pale face. I followed her here to check if she is alright but... But what? She does not want to open the door nor talk to me. What did she eat? An oyster, sir, the ones that you asked us to prepare. She said while looking down at her feet. I walked up to the door asking her to open it, yet I had received no answer. I started to knock loudly on the door with no response yet again. Emily, open this door. I said keeping my tone calm with no answer yet again I got frustrated. Then it hit me what if she had been poisoned or worse. The rage took over my entire body so that I kicked the door open seeing her on the ground. She must have passed out, I rush towards her to check if she is still breathing. Get the doctor up here now. I screamed at the maid with a quick move, I picked her up carefully laying her on the bed. I took a cold cloth to put on her forehead, cause she was burning up. The doctor came rushing in and took over from me. I made sure to have a doctor on Cal when I found out that we will be coming to Paris. After the drug episode, I took safety more seriously than before. The doctor looked at me with a smile on his face something that creeped the shit out of me. I'm not scared about a lot of things, but this is some next level shit. She is going to be fine, she just passed out, since her body was under pressure. His words were almost out when her eyes started to go open. Her skin tone turned back to normal after the doctor gave her some injections. What happened? She whispered with a breaking voice tone. Well you fainted, my child, your body took too much beating today, and as of now you might want to look more careful after your health. We will doctor, could this possibly be caused by her fall about a month ago? He said then took a sample of her blood. Doctor why are you taking a blood sample? I thought that I had just fainted and that there is no big deal. Dear I'm taking your blood sample to get tested, just to let your heart rest. He said with a smile then looked up at me. Congratulations should be in order to both of you Mr. and Mrs. Haunt. Emily flew out of the bed looking at the doctor with confusion, her eyes changed into fear as if someone was about to shoot her point blank. Before I could ask what the doctor meant by his fascinating assumption she looked at him then asked the question that I was dying to know. With all respect, but can you kindly just say what the hell is wrong with me? She practically screamed at the poor guy, 
I tried to get closer to her to calm her down only to be STPPED in my tracks when the doctor got his words out. You are pregnant, Mrs. Hart. What? Are you sure? I asked with a fast beating heart. Why yes. That can't be a doctor. Why do you think that I took a blood sample, my child? This is impossible. She looks at me with shock written all over her face. Everything is going to be fine, my love. Just relax and take a seat. Doctor, how long will the results take? About two hours. Make it an hour. My dear, we can't rush the results. I will have it sent to you as soon as I received it. He was about to leave the room when Emily walked up to him. In an hour, doctor. If it was that asshole over there who would have asked, then it would have been done yesterday. She said pointing at me. Emily, calm down. The doctor will get the results back to us as soon as possible. Emily P.O.V. What the actual fuck is happening? How could this be? I mean there is no way in hell that I can be knocked up with Raphael's baby. I took a seat on the huge ass of a bed at this moment. I wished that I never slept with the devil. We sat in silence for almost an hour until his phone went off. My heart was beating so fast that it could have climbed out of my ribcage at the sound of his ringtone. I looked at his face seeing how he threw a smile and just for a moment I saw him being a different person. He looked happy could it be because of Bridget or his ex? Please tell me that it was the results? M. If you say yes, Raphael I swear to the heavens above I will murder you with my own two hands. Do you want me to lie honey? Being sarcastic is not going to help this situation, it will just make it worse buddy. Tell me um what will be so wrong if we have a baby together? Do you hate me that much? Do you even hear yourself, Raphael? Our marriage ended, cause you cheated on me might I add that. We had our problems Emily and we moved on haven't we? A month Raphael. A baby is much different than a one night stand or a romantic getaway it is a full time commitment. I was about to open my mouth once again when he pinned me against the hard wall. His eyes changed into a different color that I have not yet seen before. He kissed me passionately until every muscle in my body relaxed. Emily you are pregnant with my child. I will never do anything to hurt you or our unborn baby. I have wished for this moment ever since I saw you again that day at my office. Now I know we said that we will be taking it slow and we still can my love. This changes nothing it only changes my feelings for you. I meant it when I said that you are only mine. Raphael. Do you trust me, Emily? I do. I said with a shivery voice. We don't have to tell anyone soon, but you will be moving back home with me just so that I can keep an eye on you. He said taking my hand in his. He seemed happy about the news more than I ever was. We sat and talked the rest of the evening until I fell asleep in his arms. Years ago I would have killed to have this moment, but would I have felt the same way as now? Unknown POV. Walking down the hall straight into the living room where I know she will be it was that time of the year where your rank got used against you. As I walked into the room she sat there with her glasses and vodka enjoying a good book. She really has not changed her hair has not even turned gray. She was a total babe and just the right person to see again. It's nice to see you again mother. What in the world are you doing here? Well, let's just say that I'm here on a simple request, you know I received that letter that you sent. You came all this way to talk about a stupid letter. She asked laying her glasses on the couch next to her. I should say she did not even look shocked to see me after all we are family and I am her daughter. Hell no I wish that I could, but then I will be laying to you. Then what are you doing here? I'm here to take my life back, the one that was taken from me by Emily. So what are you going to do her beat her up or make her disappear? Oh no, she is not going to be that lucky, I'm going to kill her with your help of course. I said with a smile leaving her to walk up to me with a grin on her face. And why would I help you, when all you did was use me for your little bitch parties? Cause a son always trusts his mother even if he despises her most of the time. Once those words left my lips she threw me a cold smile she responded. Quote well this is certainly going to be fun. Our trip to Paris was amazing Alexis and I was treated like queens. Once we got home Raphael went straight to work while I took a few days to stay at home since I was on bed rest. He helped around the house and took care of Alexis. We haven't told Alexis the news of her being a big sister, 
because I wanted to keep it quiet for as long as I could. I was busy packing when someone knocked on my front door as I opened, my eyes saw Lucas with a bouquet of flowers in his hand and the other chocolate that was carved out saying, I am sorry, I mean it, Emily. Yeah, I know come and I'll make us some coffee. I said taking the flowers from him walking into the kitchen where I switched the kettle on. I felt how he was looking at me making me feel bad for not telling him anything. Lucas and I were close, but since Raphael came back into the picture Lucas has changed. Are you redecorating again? I wish, actually I will be moving back to Raphael's. I said throwing the milk into the cup with a smile I handed him his coffee. Are you serious M? That does not sound like you. Heck did he drug you or something? Look Luke Alexis needs both of us in her life and you know that. Yes I do, but why go back when he treated you like shit in the first place? I think he had changed Luke, can't you just be happy for Alexis? I am him it's just how do you expect me to let you run back into his arms with the way he treated you the last time? Just trust me on this one alright? Fine, but does this mean that you guys are back together or what? Hold your horses there rodeo, stop overthinking everything and help me pack won't you? I said punching him on his arm. He smiled then asked me where he can start. Lucas was back to being his old self and that made me feel a bit more relaxed, cause after the other day I thought he hated my guts. At this point in my life, I needed friends and not enemies I think that I had enough of them. Raphael P.O.V I got out of the last meeting that I had for the day then went back to my office. Being back at work got me worked up all over again, cause I have idiots working underneath me. I tried my best to stay calm this whole day, but once I saw one dumbass I lost my cool. I took my jacket and left the office to go blow with some steam. I went straight to one of my warehouses where I had some unfinished business to attend to. I took my jacket of and threw it on the couch walking into the one room where the asshole was kept. Once I was inside of the room he was hanging on chains that kept him straight up. His face was all bruised up with blood all over his suit. Poor guy looked miserable. I threw a signal to my man making them back up a bit, the other took him from the chains placing him on the ground. I rolled my sleeves up while one of them poured some water over him just to wake him up. Wakey wakey! I said that is when his eyes shot open and fear was written all over his face. I gave you a business and I was the one who helped you when no one else wanted to, yet here we are might explain why is that. Mister, Haunt I promise you that I was forced to do this. You know every man that was in here had said that exact same thing to me, so why should I believe you? Cause I know what they want with Mrs. Haunt. I said when I took a blade from the counter walking towards him. His eyes changed in fear with a shivering body he pleaded me to stop. Why should I show you any mercy, did you show my wife any motherfucker? Please he is not going to stop, and if you kill me you will never know. Know what? I screamed at him while holding a knife to his throat. That he is deeply in love with your wife. He wanted to make it look like it was you who had drugged her. How is that working out for you? I said before I punched him in the face. Look I can help you, I'll be your ears. Who the fuck is this asshole? I can't tell you that, cause if I work out of here then I'll be a dead man. Either fucking way you will be one. I said stabbing him with the knife hearing him curse loudly. I got in a few punches after that I asked my men to lift him in the air so that he could hang upside down. You're gonna bleed out like a fucking animal just like the one you are. What do you think will happen if she gets pregnant, huh? Don't you even fucking dare go there you low life cunt. You will never have an heir as long as you are with her. Were the last words I heard before I shot him in the face. Nobody and I mean nobody threatens my wife or my unborn child. If they think hell is worse than they have not yet met me. I changed my shirt and went straight home where I know Alexis and Emily will be. As I reached the gates of my home, Emily phoned me and said that she is running a bit late as she was waiting for Alexis to finish with her swimming lessons. Alexis was at the top of her team with swimming and I couldn't be more proud of her. I parked my car when I headed straight to the kitchen asking them to prepare some of the chocolate brownies that Emily loved so much. Understood sir, we have prepared the rooms as requested and will get baking, but sir you do have a visitor. A visitor? Who? Sir, I think it is better if you see for yourself. My butler interrupted us with a worried face. Emily P.O.V. 
Alexis has been doing so good at school and after we decided to move back in together, it's like she had developed a new attitude. I waited patiently for her when I decided to call the doctor to get an appointment for us. This is crazy with us I mean Raphael and I. My life turned upside down years ago and now it seems like things are finally working out or so I hope. I took my phone out dialing the doctor only to be stopped by Alexis's sweet little voice. Mommy, I'm finished for the day, can we go home now? Of course baby, are you tired? Yes, plus daddy promised to spend some time with me tonight. I see, well then we should get going since he had already called asking where you are. You mean us, right mommy? I said while walking into the parking lot with her straight to my car. As she climbed and I saw two men wearing black suits climbing into their car observing me. I had enough of this crap of Raphael's bodyguards. I walked up to them with a smile. Having fun so far boys? Mrs. Haunt, we were just here waiting on you and Alexis, boss. Let me tell you boys something, call me Mrs. Haunt one more time and I will personally inform Mr. Haunt that you two are perverts. Yes, ma'am. I walked away with a smile leaving them to stress their asses of. I got into the car and asked Alexis to put her safety belt on then took my phone out dialing Raphael. Raphael P.O.V. My phone went off when I saw who it was I answered it immediately. Hey, baby, we are on our way home do you need anything from town? My love I have everything. I said when I walked into my study seeing strangers in my office left me a bit uneased. Why don't you get us some of that milkshake that Alexis loves? All right, see you soon. She said before hanging up the phone just in time when a woman ran up to me embracing me with these next few words that escaped her mouth that left me stone cold. Raphael, honey, I'm home. She said with a hiccup that escaped her mouth. Bridget? I asked pulling her away looking into her eyes and at that moment I knew that it was her. Fuck me sideways, but Bridget is back. My eyes could hardly believe what I was seeing in front of me. Her arms were wrapped around my waist tightly almost like she was scared of someone killing her right here and now. I wanted to kill her for leaving Alexis, I didn't care about myself that much, cause I had Emily to be thankful for. I pushed her away looking at the man beside her. She looked like a hobo that was living on the street, yes she had some cuts well as a pair of black eyes as well. Something wasn't adding up to me. I looked at her then back at the man with a harsh voice I yelled for my butler. Once he was there he looked very unhappy about the situation almost like he knew what I was thinking. What the fuck are you doing here Bridget? Raph. It's Mr. Haunt for you bitch, now I will not be asking the same question again. Mr. Haunt, my name is James and I work for the FBI. He said showing me his badge. Good for you. Still you're not answering my fucking questions gentlemen. I said taking a seat by my desk. Sir your wife was part of a conspiracy that took place about five years ago. Oh really, please do go on? I said looking at Bridget with hateful eyes. The smell of garbage took my office over, great the whore even smells like him. She was kept as a prisoner, cause they thought that she can give intel on some of your corporations, but she denied and kept her mouth shut as a good little girl would. Indeed she did, I said, and the next moment she was about to approach me when my butler stopped her. Rav, they threatened me with Lexus and you, I could not bring myself to hurt the both of you. I took the pictures out from my desk then threw them at her and handed one of them to Detective James. Does that look like kidnapping to you, Detective? I asked with a smirk until his words came blabbering out of his mouth. This was planned, Mr. Haunt, she has been a victim just like the rest of the other women that we have found. Well that is unfortunate, now would you please be so kind to leave, I do appreciate your help regarding Mrs. Duke's arrival. I said showing them the door once they were out I looked at the time feeling anxious. Finally, baby can I take a hot shower then we can have some time alone? Since you came here you have not even asked anything about Alexis, rather try to get your way with me, so my butler will show you to your apartment downtown. This is my home Raphael. Please escort Mrs. Duke out of here. We're divorced. Can you please follow me, Mrs. Duke? Raphael answer me. Yes, Bridget. I love you, hell I even kept your shitty little secrets, and this is how you repay me? That is enough, Bridget, you, cause this not me. I said hitting my fist on the table. I was forced to leave you, you broke me, Raphael. 
Mrs. Do you please? Get your hands off of me. Tell me, Raphael, do you think that I had it easy, huh? I was kept in a basement for years and was raped and abused just because I kept your secrets, you know what? I think going back to that hellhole is better than to look into my husband's face who broke all of his vows. She said then turned around before walking out she turned to face me. I'll take care of myself, I don't need your help. Then she walked out of the room. I felt numb with those words. I asked the butler to follow her and make sure that she is fine. I got myself a drink from the top shelf this time I needed it more than I ever dreamed of. Emily P.O.V. As I got home I saw a black SUV drove of, it must have been one of Raphael's men. I parked the car and got the parcels out then headed straight into the house. I felt uncomfortable when I saw how the maids were looking at me. I decided to go to the kitchen when I heard how the ladies were talking unfortunately the only words I got to hear was. Permises. Duke. I opened the door smiling at them, I was not in a fighting mood since I'm pregnant I didn't want to put more stress on the baby. I greeted them formally then asked where Raphael was. In his office, Mrs. Emily. Thank you very much, please have my dinner sent up to my room, Grace. Is everything all right, Mrs. Duke? Oh yes, I am just tired that's all. I said leaving them in the kitchen. I walked towards Raphael's office without a knock I went inside seeing him frustrated as hell. His perfect gelled hair was now a messy bunch and his tie is already loose. I smelled strong alcohol then I noticed that he had a drink in his hands. Hey, baby, are you alright? Hey, baby, are you alright? I asked leaning in from behind him, he took my arms and guided me around him then he grabbed me forcing me on his lap. His eyes changed to a darker color making me wonder what is going on with him. Why would you ask if something is wrong my love? Top shelf whiskey, a loose tie, and messy hair am I forgetting anything else? Oh, and of course the clients that just drove off? Please tell me how did you know that it was top shelf? Cause whenever you had a bad day or fired someone you took the bottle from the top shelf, I saw you taking it twice from the shelf honey, and let's face it the smell is strong. He looked into my eyes then threw a smirk. The first time? He said kissing my neck passionately. The business deal with Hong Kong fell through the mat. I said as calmly as possible even though I wanted to climb him here and now. I blame this action on the pregnancy hormones. The second baby? The second baby? He asked and without thinking I answered his question. The night we got married. He stopped kissing me with a bloodshot glare he looked at me. No, I don't raff remember we were to different people at that time and we have changed so much these last few years. Just some minor issues that need to be sorted out that is all. What issues? I asked curiously. Nothing that I can't fix sweetheart, now please tell me how are you and my baby doing? Giving me morning sickness, but otherwise, we are doing great. I said with a smile. His facial expression changed to happiness something that he never knew or maybe with Bridget. I got up telling him that I wanted to check on Alexis before dinner leaving him to moan. I got up then walked down the hall on my way upstairs I heard a voice calling me. Mrs. Haunt? I stopped then turned around only to see a man in his late thirties with blonde hair standing by the door. He had a suit on with an envelope in his hands. I walked down the stairs slowly up to him. This time I felt like I should just go with Mrs. Haunt, cause his eye color differed from what I saw from far. How can I help you Mr. Duh. Before his words could come out of his mouth I felt a strong arm around my waist. I recognized that smell immediately it was Raphael who stood next to me with a challenging face, he looked at the man in front of me. He was just leaving right? Of course I just forgot to give you the paperwork for the new contract. My boss went it over and made a few changes, please do have a look at it. He said then looked at me with a smile. It was a pleasure to meet you Mrs. Horn. I should say Mr. Horn surely knows how to fix them. Those were his last words before he left. I felt uncomfortable with this man and with Raphael protecting me like a pit bull I felt safe. Once the man left I turned towards Raphael who had the envelope in his hands. His eyes were full of rage and something else that I have not yet seen. Raphael, who was that? I asked with a demanding voice. Just some personal assistant from one of our clients that is all, 
Now I will go and take care of this while you get Alexis ready for dinner, my love. Unknown P. O. V. So this plan of yours, if it does not work out, what then? Then you can kill me, but don't get your hopes up, dear. And why is that? Cause we have him right where we want him. You really must change this place if you're thinking of bringing her here. Raphael P. O. V. Once Emily went to sleep, I got up and went to the kitchen to get myself some warm milk. I could barely close my eyes thinking about what had happened today if Emily showed up earlier. I went to my office and took the envelope that I had received earlier. I opened it and found a tape and photos of Bridget being held captive. I ignored the photos and played the tape that said play me. I saw Bridget being chained to a wall with a white dress on. She looked scared and cried most of the time. A tall man came in and kicked her a bit with a few punches. Telephone me everything I need to know about Raphael Haunt or face the consequences bitch. He said choking the living hell out of her. She kept begging and pleading but to no success, he slapped her right through her face. You're going to be sorry after this bitch. With those words a few men came in and tore her clothes from her body in pieces while laughing. She screamed and cried and then the one thing happened, something that I feared for the most. They raped her repeatedly for hours even when she passed out. I took the envelope in my hands and a note fell out from it. I hope that this will convince you that your wife took your side. I hope Mr. Haunt that the choices you made in her absence were worth it. It was only four years of torture and hell. You once said that the system failed you, but I think it was you who failed your wife. James got up from the chair throwing the files from the table. What the fuck had happened a few years ago with Bridget, things did not add up. I called my butler asking him to get me all the information on the detective that I hired years ago. I felt confused and I had a child on the way with the one person that I had loved the most. I closed my study locking it up walking up the stairs when the memories hit me. Flashback. I love you Raphael Haunt and I will always love you. She said looking into my eyes. We had overslept that morning yet we did not give a damn about the rest of the world around us. Promise you will find me one day if I get lost? Promise baby, you're my beginning and my end. Will you do the same for me one day? Always. She said crashing her lips on mine. Flashback ends. Emily P. O. V. I got woken up with an empty bed next to me. Almost like he never slept here at all, I got up taking a shower then changed into a summer dress. It had flowers on it with a golden waist belt. I fixed my hair and did a green smoky eye after that. I went to check up on Alexis only to find out that she has already left for school. Things had changed and I had this bad feeling regarding my relationship with Raphael. I went downstairs finding Raphael by the table busy reading on his iPad. He was so distracted that he could barely see that I was behind him until my lips met his cheeks. Hey, baby, you're up early. Could not sleep, my love. How are you feeling? Fine, Raph. Relax, won't you, baby? I made a doctor's appointment for this afternoon. So I was thinking of going into the office today. One of the clients asked directly for me. Love, why don't you go and change? Then maybe I will reconsider this silly idea of yours. You're mine and I don't like the way other men look at you. You're not Bridget Emily. I made a doctor's appointment for this afternoon. He said facing the iPad leaving me irritated as hell. So I was thinking of going into the office today, one of the clients asked directly for me. I said when he looked up meeting my eyes only to look shocked by words until he saw my dress. Love why don't you go and change, then maybe I will reconsider this silly idea of yours. What is wrong with it? Your breast is too exposed and might I add that it is a little tight around your waist. Forget it, Raphael. Now can we have breakfast? I said before I could even take my seat I got cornered by his strong arms. You're mine and I don't like the way other men look at you. Good, then it is clear that you have competition. I said laughing at his facial expression until his eyes changed to a darker color. You're not Bridget Emily. You're right I'm not Raphael, but you're not going to tell me what to do. Hell, it hasn't even been a week and you're already a protective bastard. Don't ever say those last words to me ever again, he said while holding my hands behind my back tightly. He threw a smirk as he was about to lean in for a kiss we got interrupted by his butler. 
Can it wait? Unfortunately not, sir. It is regarding that contract of Mr. James. When Raphael heard those words he left me immediately and kissed me on my forehead and left the room. Raphael was acting strange lately. I decided to explore the mansion a bit, cause I know that he expanded a few yards of the property since I have been gone. I grabbed my earphones then headed straight out of the back door. I heard a few glasses broke in Raphael's office which made me more eager to leave. I decided to start with a small house that was built in the late s they had changed it into a cottage for house guests, which made sense he had the money and time. As I was about to change direction I saw that the door was open which made me scream with curiosity since Raphael never allowed me to explore his property made me even more excited to see what was in this beautiful home. I opened the door slowly and went inside the view was gorgeous. Wooden floors with golden chandeliers hanging from the ceiling. I felt of balanced and at that moment I realized that I was busy sliding on something that seemed to be blood. What the fuck? Before Myas has hit the floor I got caught by one of the guards. He helped me up and explained that one of the cleaners fell and got badly injured, he then escorted me back to the house. What the actual fuck was happening, the blood pile was enough for someone to bleed out and all that he said that it was an accident. Mrs. Haunt? I heard a familiar voice said from behind, as I turned around I saw the same man as yesterday. I'm afraid that Mr. Haunt has already left. Is there something that I can help with? I was just wondering if you could telephone him that I stopped by. Of course, you wanted to see him regarding the contract, right? MM yes, but it is fine I will just go straight to his office. Please excuse me Mrs. Haunt. Have a blessed day. Thank you. I could hardly say when he left in a hurry. He seemed odd today that is when I started to feel nauseous again. I ran towards the bathroom with the only speed I had left in my legs. Raphael P.O.V. I got out of a meeting just in time for the doctor's appointment. I got Emily from home and drove straight up to the doctor. She seemed pale something was up. I got information that she was indeed in the cottage house earlier this morning. Luckily for me one of my men covered the tracks once again. Are you all right my love? You look a bit pale? Oh, it is nothing just the morning sickness once again. She said throwing her head back. I should say this baby kept her busy with the morning sickness, but I was getting concerned about her health. I took her hand in mine placing it on my upper leg feeling her relax a bit. Your client was there this morning looking for you, he said that he wanted to talk to you about the contract, did he get hold of you baby? My hands gripped the steering wheel so tightly that I felt as if I could kill that cop right here and right now. I took a deep breath just to relax only to see how Emily was looking at me with worried eyes. He is not a businessman, is he? What makes you think that, my love? He had a badge, Raphael. What is going on? And please don't lie to me. Nothing is going on, my love. He happens to be a cop that would like to invest in one of our buildings. I met him in Boston last year from the entrepreneurship conversation. I told him if he is ever in the big city that he must come and see me. Oh, I am so sorry. This pregnancy is getting the worst of me. She said with a crooked smile. She even looked more beautiful with that smile on her face making my heart jump with happiness. Once we arrived at the doctor we went straight and finding out that our bundle of joy is healthy and fine made me a proud father. I got Emily some medication regarding the morning sickness and bought her ice cream on the way home. As we got home I saw my mother's car in front of the house parked. I didn't need this right now, but Emily was fast asleep with the long drive home I picked her up bridal style walking towards our room. I suspected that mother will be in my study waiting on me so I placed Emily softly on the bed with a blanket over her small body then headed downstairs. She waited patiently for me with a glass of wine in her hands. Mother? I said walking into my office closing the door behind me. She looked furious with a nod she greeted me. I saw Bridget today, she told me everything, Raphael. Oh, really and what does everything include mother? You threw her out like a stray dog. She is the mother of your child's son. Why not let Emily go and work things out with Bridget? So you would like me to kick out Emily, the mother of my child? I said taking a seat with my whiskey in my right hand. She answered that it would be in the best interest for Alexis and I. Even if it means that she is the mother of my unborn child your soon-to-be grandchild? 
I practically spit it out for her only to see her drop the wine glass that was in her hand. She looked scared and shocked something that I never have seen on my mother's face. I was about to laugh at her face when my butler came rushing in. Sir, you better come quick, he said with a shivering voice. I followed my butler up until the security room. The room was filled with camera on televisions. The man in the control room showed me the camera by the gate. It was two men yelling and pointing guns. They demanded to come in. Their faces were unrecognizable since they wore clown masks. Kill them already! I said when I was about to return to my study, I heard a gunshot coming from inside the mansion. Show me all of the cameras that we have in the house, get my men upstairs to Alexis and Emily now. I screamed at the butler. No one will ever dare to pull a stunt like this in my house, not with all the security guards around. I looked through all the footage and saw nothing I saw the guards approach Alexis's room and that is when it hit me. My room has no camera inside. I cursed out loud and grabbed the guard's gun with speed I ran towards our room. Emily P.O.V. I got woken up by someone yelling at me. Once my eyes flew open I saw a man standing in front of me. He had a clown mask on his face with a swift move I tried to press the panic button only to be stoked by a gun that went off. Press that button and you are dead do you understand? Y. E. S. I said almost crying, but I kept my shit together. Now get up and get shoes on, hurry. He screamed at me, I did as he asked I got my Nike run shoes on. The man that was tall with the mask on came closer taking my hands to strap it together tightly. I would not want my prize to run away. He said then grabbed me by the neck walking outside of the closet. My room was full of guards aiming at the man that was behind me. He used me as his fucking shield this time I could not bear it tears started to roll down my cheeks. My baby, we are here for you not the rest of the fucked up family alright. He said as he moved me forward he started to laugh like a psychopath. I will kill her. He said then the butler gave the order to back of. He took me down the stairs where I saw Raphael pointing a gun at us, his mother came running down the hall towards us. Please take me not my daughter-in-law, I beg of you. No deal grandma this deal is better. I will fucking kill you if you take one more step from that stairs. I do understand Mr. Haunt. His words were cold but the gun that was pointing at my head was now pointing at my belly. Ask your husband to put down the gun. He whispered into my ears then his grip got tighter than it was before. Raphael please put down the gun, please. He was too angry to listen to me pleading at that point. I faced his mother with a pale face she looked at me as if she felt sorry for me. Please ask Raphael to lower his weapon, this man is not afraid to die neither afraid to shoot. I said in a calming voice leaving her to walk over to Raphael. They argued a bit, but then he lowered his weapon. How the fuck are you going to get out of here? With your mother's car, and your little wife here will be the driver. I only came for Mrs. Haunt. Things could have been a lot worse. I will find you and I will kill you motherfucker. He said then walked towards the door only to stop by Raphael's mother. Key's grandma. He said to her with a shivering hand she gave it to me. I was inches away from Raphael wishing this could all just be a nightmare. I have never wished to be this badly in his arms before this day. Look after Alexis baby, I love you, Raphael. I said before we were out by the front door. He opened the driver's seat for me then let me in. All right sweet cakes you will be driving. So if something happens you will be to blame. He said once he got into the passenger's seat still pointing the gun at me. I started the engine, and he yelled at me to drive. Raphael POV. We looked at the camera footage that was outside. Emily started the engine to drive yet the gate was not open yet. Sir we need to open the gate otherwise they will crash into it. My butler yelled at me making me come to my senses. Sir? Open the fucking gate and get me intel on these bastards now. I yelled then left the room, I headed for Alexis's room. Once I got there I saw her all rolled up into a little bun fast asleep. I stood there looking at her feeling powerless in this situation. I doubled the guards and no one can paw the gate. I clicked this was an inside job one of my people betrayed me. I went downstairs into the control room. 
check all the camera footage of the last 24 hours. I said leaving the room as I got into the hall all the workers stood there already waiting on me. If one of you were involved in the kidnapping of Mrs. Haunt, please step forward now if you think that it is better to stay silent think that part over again. I will kill your entire family maybe leaving you to watch the entire show. I said before going straight to my office. Emily P. O. V. He directed me where to drive. We must have been more than a few miles from town. He asked me to turn in by a gravel road that led us straight to a swamp. There was an old house that stood there in the middle of nowhere. He ordered me to stop the car as I turned of the car, he climbed out just to help me get out. The house looked creepy as shit. It looked like it came from the movie The Cabin in the Woods just a bit creepier. He shoved me in by the door throwing me on the couch. I heard a few men whisper in the back which made me even more scared. He brought a chair and pointed the gun at me. Sit. His deep voice came out and I did just exactly what he said. Please, let me go Raphael will give you anything that you desire. Sorry lady I already have a deal with someone else. You're a coward for hiding your shitty face do you know that? I said with rage taking over me and the next thing I knew he punched me in the face leaving me to blackout. Raphael P. O. V. It has been more than five hours since they took Emily. My men got info that these three men are brothers, but they had no home or even a last name to go on. I kept my head high hoping that they will not hurt her or my unborn child. Thinking of it made my blood boil so bad that I threw everything from my table with one swipe. I heard a knock coming from the door, before I could give permission Bridget came barging in. She looked angry and frustrated. Where the fuck is my so-called sister, the one you remarried? Now is not a good time Bridget. Oh so you're fucking her then even with me back. She said and that is when I lost my cool. I grabbed her pinning her against the wall facing her with daggers. I was about to say something when she kissed me. Her lips were sweet and warm for a moment I enjoyed it until the butler came bursting in. Once he saw what was happening he looked down to the floor staring at his feet with disappointment. I took a step back from Bridget asking if they had received any new information. Yes sir they have a house downtown I have already sent men there. Thank you, please let me know if anything else comes to the surface. I said stern to my butler. What is going on Raph? Bridget asked with a worried face leading me to rethink my choices once again. I took a seat on the couch hoping that all of this shit was just a nightmare, but it wasn't hell I lost my girlfriend in one day with my unborn child might I add that as well. Then Bridget showed up ready to wrestle Emily over me. I was confused as fuck and all I cared about was my unborn child. Nothing, can you please leave me in peace? Raphael you know that you can talk to me about anything I used to be your best friend and wife. I know Bridge, but this is different can you just give me some space? I asked looking into her tearing eyes. She gave me a nod and left the room. Emily P. O. V. I got woken up by cold water that was thrown on me. My eyes flew open then I saw one of the men with his clown mask before me. He walked up to me then laughed with a swift move he slapped me through my face. What has a pretty lady like you done to end up in this position? I don't know. I said holding my guard up. I remember my father used to say to stay as hard as a rock in situations like these, hell how I wished he was here now seeing this. You're a liar. He said before his hand had hit my face once again. I tasted blood inside my mouth, but I tried to stay cool for the baby and me. You kidnapped me, so you must surely know why I'm here, or has your employer not even tell you? I asked leaving him to only slap me once again. He punched me like a punching bag for a while before he had stopped. He yelled for someone to come in and clean the wounds on my face, then he had left. The man came in with a bucket of salt water and a towel. He kneeled before me starting to clean the wounds in my face. Every touch stung as a fucking bee, but I needed to sit still since I was not sure what this man would do to me. Once he was finished he looked around to see if there was anyone there with us. What are you going to do to me? I asked in a low helpless voice. Drink up, you're going to need the strength. I asked a bit confused. I'm not like my brothers, they will go to jail for kidnapping you. 
But if your baby gets hurt, they will die. Raphael won't kill them. He might lose his shit but killing is not like him. I said taking a huge sip of the water that he gave me. He hanged a man like an animal leaving him to bleed out, cause that man poisoned you not long ago. He said then he got up walking away leaving with speed as soon as a roaring engine stopped outside the cabin. Out of the darkness came a man to untie me from the chair leaving me to stand on my own feet. Let's play a game sweetheart, the rules are simple, if you fall to your feet then I will kick the living shit out of you got it? I tried my best not to fall so he kept coming with punches until I blacked out once again. This time I got woken up with the same man who cleaned my wounds hours ago. Don't move, you're badly bruised and can cause harm to the baby. I was scared as shit, I remembered that I tried to stand my ground, but he was too fucking strong. Let's play a game sweetheart. Those words sent shivers down my spine. The rules are simple, if you fall to your feet then I will kick the living shit out of you got it? Well that is not much of a game is it? I said without thinking he threw a punch at my face leaving me to tremble back. I tried my best not to fall so he kept coming with punches until I blacked out once again. This time I got woken up with the same man who cleaned my wounds hours ago. Don't move, you're badly bruised and can cause harm to the baby. I was scared as shit, I remembered that I tried to stand my ground, but he was too fucking strong. I said without thinking he threw a punch at my face leaving me to tremble back. I tried my best not to fall so he kept coming with punches until I blacked out once again. This time I got woken up with the same man who cleaned my wounds hours ago. Don't move, you're badly bruised and can cause harm to the baby. Two full days and the worst is still to come. What is the worst? I asked only to see him getting up leaving me once again with pain and confusion. I was scared as shit, I remembered that I tried to stand my ground, but he was too fucking strong. I got taken from my thoughts when one of them came back. He picked me up walking outside. His brother took my shoes off and they made me walk on warm rocks. Once that was done they showed me to get moving. Run sweetheart it is hunting season after all. With that, I knew exactly what they meant so I started to run as fast as I could with burning feet I had to rest for a minute until I saw a road that was not far from me. I gathered up all my strength and run towards the road that is when I heard wheels swerving. As I looked up I looked right into the light with luck the truck stopped right across me without hitting me I felt relieved to still be alive. Miss are you alright? I hear a man's voice said and all that I could get out was a simple hi until I fainted. Raphael P.O.V. It has been three days since Emily's kidnap the detective said that they will cal for ransom still I had no cal. The fear of losing both mother and child made me lose control. I started to take pills just to stay awake if the phone rings or some news do come up then he was at least awake. I just came home from picking up Alexis when my butler ran towards me. Sir we found her. With those words I felt as if I could breathe again, the butler asked one of the caretakers to take care of Alexis while we went to Emily. I did not care much about myself at that point, but all I wanted to see was Emily. We drove at full speed towards the hospital that she was in, with a quick stop my butler dropped me of at the door while he went to park the car. I ran towards the front desk till they pointed towards the waiting room where a man came up to me. He looked like a professional hunter, cause he still had his gear on as well. Is she your wife? Who are you talking about? The girl that I found in the road not far out of town. Emily is her name and yes she is my wife, how? I don't know much, she passed out the moment that I saw her. Can you explain to my man over there, where you had found her please? Of course. What is your name? Jace sir. Jace sir. Well thank you for saving my wife I owe you so much. I said shaking his hand until I saw the blood that was on his clothes. Oh please tell me that those aren't Emily's. You would have done the same for me. He said leaving me to speak to my butler. I didn't care what the fuck he had planned for them until I was in my right mind to fuck them over, I stood there for almost six hours until a doctor came walking up to me. I recognized him the moment I had seen him. He was the doctor that helped Emily a few months ago with the accident. He sat right next to me with a heavy sigh he continued to look down to the ground. How bad is it doc? They didn't trape her if that is what you are thinking son, but they did beat her up real good. 
She has multiple broken ribs and her face is swollen from all of the punches she took. She has also lost a lot of blood with the running and with no food intake she suffers from amnesia or so we think. What do you mean think doctor? I asked looking at his pale tired face. Her body took a hard beating and she is in a coma. We will be moving her to the high care unit. Meaning what she will not wake up today or tomorrow right? The same as before well she made it the first time doc, she can make it the second as well. Son the first time was just a blow to the head. They starved her and beaten her every second that they had with her. Her feet are swollen and burned. They terrorized her son. What about the baby? I asked with a fearful voice hoping that the baby was still okay. Emily P. O. V. I heard loud noises around me beeping constantly. I tried to open my eyes, yet I struggled with all the power that I had in me, I fought against the tiredness. My eyes went open for a while before they went shut again, this time it felt easier to open them. Once my eyes gathered enough strength they had open with a white ceiling staring straight at me. I heard a voice coming from beside me hoping that it was Raphael only to find the nurse there. You're finally awake Mrs. Haunt. I will have to get the doctor immediately. Wait, will you please help me up? I asked with a sore voice. I remembered everything that had happened to me in these last few hours. The nurse helped me up and asked me to drink some water. Where is my husband? I asked when I heard a familiar voice coming from the door. You can leave now, please do call the doctor I think Mrs. Hunt would like to see him. There he stood Raphael's right hand his butler. His facial expression changed as soon as the nurse left. You have been in a coma for three weeks, waking up is truly a miracle. My baby? I'm sorry Mrs. Duke, you have lost the baby. Why are you here, huh? Where is Raphael? I asked with tears rolling down my face. I was sent by Mr. Hoang to help you surprise Raphael, he has not been taking things easy. He said before the doctor came running in. He started to check if my eyes followed every move until he was satisfied. You look very healthy, Mrs. Haunt. We will be keeping you just another night for observation. Unfortunately, I will be discharged today, doctor. Mrs. Haunt, walking out of these hospital doors is a risk that I am not willing to take. Mr. Haunt will have me fired. No offense, doctor, but you two go way back since I was drugged a few months ago and I was not even told about it. As soon as those words left my mouth I saw how shock was written all over his face. He does not even have words for a comeback. I looked at the butler and told him to get me some fresh clothes with a smile I thanked the doctor. If you mentioned any of this to Raphael, then there will be shit to deal with. Got it? I said with a satisfying smile I took the drips needle from my arm and laid it down on the bed. I went to the bathroom to change into more comfortable clothes that were a pair of jeans with a black t-shirt and a pair of sneakers. I used all of my guts to see how I looked in the mirror. The swelling is almost completely down and most of the wounds that I had in my face are healed. I just made a pony and brushed my teeth. After I was finished I walked out of my room leaving the doctor sitting on the bed with a worried face. Mrs. Duke, I have never seen this side of you before. I'm just as surprised as you, now can you take me to Raphael? I said climbing into the back seat of the black SUV. He closed the door and walked around the car to pop in by the driver's seat. As we pulled off I took a bottle of water that was in the mini fridge. Flashback I just came back from an auction that took place. Being a haunt you had standards to uphold. After Raphael's outburst these last few months I had to find something that would keep me busy. Living with the bastard made my life already a living hell, so I decided to spend most of my allowance on things that would keep me occupied. If Raphael was not on business trips he would be out working till who knows how late. I got home just a bit after 6 in the evening, yet his car was not here yet. I took the time to bath Alexis before putting her to bed. I then headed downstairs to have dinner alone like usual. I was about to get ready for bed when I heard something coming from his office. I walked towards the room hearing glasses break. I knocked softly only to get no response so I opened the door. There he stood the man with all of his power wrapped in one. 
He looked furious with a swift move I ducked before the glass could hit me. What the fuck are you doing here? He asked with a strong breath of whiskey I could hardly breathe. He was drunk and when I mean drunk I think he could have been throwing up on himself without knowing it, still he looked as handsome as always. What on earth is going on here Raphael, you reek of alcohol. Good, you see I lost a contract the most important one in history. Well, boo ho everyone loses get over it buddy. I said with a swift move he trapped against the open door. You could hear his loud footsteps on the ground in between the broken glasses. You know nothing of losing Emily. And that was the first time that he used his sweet seductive voice with me. I felt goosebumps crawling all over my body. I gave everything up to stay here with you, don't get me wrong here you just lost a deal I lost my freedom to a man that I despise. Flashback ends I got taken from my thoughts when I heard a car horn from behind us. I felt scared as shit just wanting Raphael next to me was all I wanted. I remembered the time that we used to fight so bad that I could hardly sleep, yet these past few months changed my life. I met a different man and I was falling head over heels for the bastard. We stopped in the driveway of medium-sized building. It had security right around it like the mansion. The butler got out opening the door, where he showed me to the front door. I have never seen this place, yet again knew of it. The building was a medium-sized modern home. The windows were huge with silver chandeliers hanging from the ceiling. His study is upstairs, Mrs. Duke. He said opening the door with only a few steps inside he spoke once again. I'll keep the engine running for you, Mrs. Duke. Were his last words before he left me. I admired the beauty and art that was used in this house. I reached a door opening it and saw an empty room. I moved to the room right next to where I heard loud music coming from. As I opened the door my eyes caught something that I wished I have never walked into. Raphael. I screamed only to see his hands around a woman's head while she is sucking his dick. I was about to turn around when I saw who the slut was. Bridget his ex-wife was sucking his dick in front of me. I turned around walking away as I got to the car I got stopped by Raphael. Emily I can explain. Get your fucking hands off of me before I break them for you. I said climbing into the car locking my door. Drive, drive. I yelled with tears running down my eyes. Emily? Alcohol now. I said walking past Stacy with a fuck given. I went straight to her kitchen taking out all of the alcohol that she has. She and the butler followed me with speed into the kitchen looking at me with worried faces. Relax it is just alcohol. Mrs. Duke you were just discharged from the hospital, I don't think that this is a good idea for you to drink now. The butler said, with a smirk I took a sip from the vodka bottle leaving him to back of a bit. Stacy took two glasses out of the kitchen cupboard placing them in front of me. What is going on M? She said while I threw clean vodka in the glasses. I just found Bridget sucking Raphael's dick. I said before our glasses made a cheers noise. Her facial expression just changed to total shock with a confused laugh. And I thought I had a tough breakup. Yeah well at least you were informed, yet I was invited to the party. That is when it hit me. I looked towards the butler at that exact moment his face lost color. You took me there, why? I asked taking a step towards him. I asked taking a step towards him. He stood there before he had opened his mouth to answer my question. Mrs. Duke with all respect but you needed to see that side of him as well. When he can't handle situations he does overdoses but... But what? I didn't think that he will do what he had done. He meant it as he looked disappointed with Raphael's actions as well. He has been around Raphael almost his entire life so it must have hurt just to see him suffer like this. Why do I still feel something for that moron? You never saw me, do you understand me? I said turning towards Stacy. I just lost my baby and just walked in on a porno, where my whore of a sister was sucking my boyfriend's dick. What do you think am I going to do? Mrs. Duke please don't try to wake the beast inside of him up. He pleaded with me. I will teach him a lesson that he will never forget, even if it means war do both of you understand? I asked with both of them agreeing to my terms, 
I took a bottle of wine with me outside to the pool. I sat there with my feet playing in the water. Flashback I wore a beautiful nightgown that was designed just for me. Tonight was the annual ball of the Haunt Towers, where they thank every investor for investing in their company. I took my tasks as a mother seriously as a wife I struggled but made it work in the public eyes. Raphael hasn't spoken to me ever since our last encounter, but tonight was a big moment for him. I took his suit out and hanged it by the closet door ready as ever. He came in from work looking half happy until he saw me. I will let you be. You will never be her, so kindly advise where did you get that dress? I had it made, please get your hands off of me. I said trying to loosen my hand only to get pulled in by him. We were so close together that I could feel his heart beating. Your mind remember that, to have and to hold so behave like a sweet little girl that you are. Flashback ends. Raphael P.O.V. I got woken up by a hell of a headache. I can't remember much, but as soon as I was fully awake I felt someone laying next to me in bed. I turned to look at the person who was next to me with shock. What the fuck did I do? Why would I pull such a stunt? I got out of bed and headed straight for a shower and left for the hospital. As I parked the car I took aspirin with water before I headed inside the hospital. I stopped for flowers along the way to the hospital. I walked up to her room seeing how the nurses were staring at me with confusion. I felt sick to my stomach after this morning, but once I see Emily everything. What the fuck? These were the only words that came out once I saw an empty bed with no sight of Emily. I looked around and saw no nurses in the hallway until I saw a nurse coming from the elevator. I remember her as the nurse of Emily, so I decided to walk over to her. Where is my wife? I asked hoping only for the best, I can't lose her not now not ever. Sir she left. Why wasn't I informed about it? I asked with a furious tone leaving the nurse to turn a bit pale. Sir she asked us not to inform you. She wanted to surprise you. Those words brought a climbs back where I saw her at one of my hideouts. Could it be possible? How the fuck would she have found that place in the first place? I took my phone out calling my butler cursing as much as I can as his phone was turned off. I am going to kill him if he was involved in any of this shit so help me. I got into my car driving towards the mansion only to find the butler washing the car. He looked happy until he saw me. Where the fuck is my wife? I said trying to hold back the anger with every breath that I took. Mr. Haunt she is at Miss Stacy's house she did not want to come home to an empty house. He said looking down at his shoes. Fucking great she ran away from home once again, just fucking amazing Raphael. Where is Alexis? She is at school sir, she asked for you this morning, but we informed her that you are with Mrs. Haunt. He said then I just showed him to continue his work. I got into my car once again driving towards Stacy's house wondering what had happened last night. Shit, I could barely remember what happened a week ago. I messed up this time and I was going to fix it even if it meant taking her back against her own free will. I stopped in front of the house with a heart that is racing over a hundred kilometers per hour, I decided to walk up to the front door. I knocked maybe twice when the door swung opened. What do you want? Where is Emily and why the fuck do you smell like alcohol? Did she drink as well? She left Raphael. I took the stick from her asking what it was for only this time she did not know. I got into my car driving full speed to work, leaving me to go over 10 red lights. I parked the car and headed up to my office. I asked my assistant if she had come to work only to find out that she is not here as well. I took a seat closing my blinds laying on the couch thinking of a solution to this problem. If I even had one. I took the USB out of my pocket walking over to my laptop inserting it. The only file that was one there was a video before I could play it my phone went crazy. I looked at the caller ID and picked it up immediately. Where is Emily and why the fuck do you smell like alcohol? Did she drink as well? I said walking past her calling for Emily, yet I had no response. She left Raphael. I took the stick from her asking what it was for only this time she did not know. I got into my car driving full speed to work, leaving me to go over 10 red lights. I parked the car and headed up to my office. I asked my assistant if she had come to work only to find out that she is not here as well. 
I took a seat closing my blinds laying on the couch thinking of a solution to this problem. If I even had one. I took the USB out of my pocket walking over to my laptop inserting it. The only file that was one there was a video, before I could play it my phone went crazy. I looked at the caller ID and picked it up immediately. I said walking past her calling for Emily, yet I had no response. She left Raphael. What do you mean left Stacy? You had one fucking job to do. She said giving me a USB stick. I took the stick from her asking what it was for only this time she did not know. I got into my car driving full speed to work, leaving me to go over 10 red lights. I parked the car and headed up to my office. I asked my assistant if she had come to work only to find out that she is not here as well. I took a seat closing my blinds laying on the couch thinking of a solution to this problem. If I even had one. I took the USB out of my pocket walking over to my laptop inserting it. The only file that was one there was a video, before I could play it my phone went crazy. I looked at the caller ID and picked it up immediately. Where are you? I'm coming to get you. You got my present honey. Yes Emily, now tell me where are you so that I can pick you up. I asked her with a dominating voice hoping that she would just come to her senses. Play the video Raph while I'm on the phone, then I will tell you where I am. The video was of Bridget and me making love more than 10 times. I was about to stop when I heard Emily's voice over the phone saying that I must let it play. I felt sick to my stomach watching this, I was heavily drugged and could not even remember half of this. Bridget was busy sucking my dick when the door went open. There she stood pale and emotionless. You got my present honey. Yes Emily, now tell me where are you so that I can pick you up. I asked her with a dominating voice hoping that she would just come to her senses. Play the video Raph while I'm on the phone, then I will tell you where I am. I did as she said wishing that I never had pressed the fucking button. The video was of Bridget and me making love more than 10 times. I was about to stop when I heard Emily's voice over the phone saying that I must let it play. I felt sick to my stomach watching this, I was heavily drugged and could not even remember half of this. Bridget was busy sucking my dick when the door went open. There she stood pale and emotionless. She called my name making me ask Bridget to suck harder. What the fuck did I do? The door burst open and in came Emily with a white rose. Emily I can explain. Just for you my love. She said giving me a white rose. We can talk about this M. A white rose for someone in my past, may you have a blessed day. She said turning around only to turn around facing me once again this time her eyes was empty. Oh and Raph I quit as well. She said walking out of the door. I walked behind her following her till we stood by her car. Come on Emily, what do you want for me to beg hell I would? All these years I was the imperfect wife and now, my lovely husband I'm going to break you piece by piece showing you what imperfect looks like. Those were her last words before she left with squealing tires. I hit my fist against the wall thinking of what she had just said if she had only knew that I was trying to protect her all those years. Raphaelp.o.v It has been two days and I have no idea where Emily might be. I had guards looking all over town some even kept an eye on Stacy's house. I was busy losing my mind. I stayed at home since the office will be too much to handle at the moment. Did you find her yet? I asked the head of security with a simple nod I lost my shit. I'm fucking paying you to do your job, now get the fuck out of my office. I yelled at him then walked up to the bar taking a shot of strong tequila. I called my butler and only to see Bridget with him. She stood tall with a smile walking up to me kissing me on the cheek, then she took a seat by the window looking out on the garden. Sir I hate to interrupt but the project that you have given to Mrs. Duke a while ago, the meeting will be in a few days and they expect Miss Duke to be there. Not my fucking problem now. Sir, that project is worth millions. I will have Lucas handling it, now excuse us as I need some time to think. Of course, sir. He bowed leaving me with Bridget all alone. Emily P.O.V. I arranged for a meeting with one of my biggest clients that I had by Haunt's Investment Company. I got dressed in a beautiful pink loose dress with my hair all tied up in a bun, with golden hoop earrings and natural makeup I was ready. I took my nude high heels and left the hotel room. 
I heard how Raphael was looking for me so I decided to keep a low profile until I have the correct weapon to strike back. I knew that my daughter would be kept from me, yet I did not see that as an option even for a minute. I withdrew cash from one of my cards and kept it on the down low, without any identification needed he hadn't found me in two days. I bought few clothes from different stores just to mix the pattern up. I got into my car driving up to a small restaurant that was by the docks downtown. I parked my car taking the number plates of throwing them into the boot. I was going to make him pay with his fucking ways. I walked into the restaurant ordering two coffees then took a seat outside. The weather was perfect with a strong perfume scent I knew who it was from the moment that it has hit my nose. Miss Duke. I heard a low cheerful voice say from behind me with a swift move I greeted him. Hi Roberto, I hope that you found this place easy? I said hugging him. He looked rather handsome with his grey suit. Of course, you picked the best spot in town. Now please enlighten me on what do I owe the pleasure to. We took a seat just in time when the waiter showed up with our coffee. Thank you, I will cal if we need anything else. I said to the young lady then turned my gaze on the man who sat in front of me. Well, I owed you a lunch date, before I say, goodbye. Ah, uh, so you are giving my project over to another partner. Please don't be selfish, I got offered another job from the Petrova family. So you are leaving Hornstowers for another opportunity, that is where exactly, my dear? Well, all around the globe, I promise you the person who is taking your project over knows what they are doing. I said taking a sip from my coffee. I needed to play it cool even though I did not get another opportunity one had to make it look like I did. Is the investment worth it, Miss Duke? He asked with a serious voice, leaving me to laugh out loud. Of course the investment is worth more than you think, I would take the deal even if it comes with a high price. You're a smart young lady, so tell me why would a smart young lady like you take that risk to leave Hornstowers for the Petrovas? The pay is good. I hated lying about this but the Hans family security did not leak any information about my miscarriage nor my abduction. But your daughter will never see you, Miss Chu. I am well aware of that, but all things in life have a cost unfortunately, Roberto. I said taking a sip of my warm coffee looking out on the Pear Beach. These people had no worries being out here, yet I had a nervous breakdown a few minutes ago just thinking about this plan and how it can turn out. Have you accepted the job opportunity that was given to you yet? No, I have to be there this afternoon to sign my contract and get everything ready for next week. I said as he raised a brow I had to just fill him in on the subject. They want me to do a business deal in Africa for a few weeks. I said seeing his reaction he almost threw the coffee over. You're not thinking of taking their deal, Miss Duke. Why not? Cause you will be taking my deal. We both know that you will be better off with my company than the rest. Sure, Haunt Towers is the biggest, but my company is the second biggest on the globe. So you're offering me a job now? I'm giving you an opportunity that you can't miss. He said then called his assistant closer to us. She was a short girl with a long neck. She wore her suit with proudness and spoke like a lady from the 18th century. He told the lady to get my office and contract ready before day end leaving me to relax a few of my muscles. He took a phone call then asked to be excused with that he left greeting me with a kiss on the cheeks. One down, now I just have to get back into the game, like the demon himself. I decided to visit Alexis at his house since my plan was in motion already. I got into my car driving of towards his house knowing that he will be at the office. I felt invincible for the first time after my divorce to that bastard. I knew that I wanted to make him pay and trust me he was going to beg once I was finished with him. Once the security guards saw my car they opened the gate without even thinking twice. I pulled into the garage like usual then walked into the house with a surprise I saw his car pulling up from the gate. Shit. I said out loud trying to get into the car when I saw Alexis, she was in his car and she saw me. I decided to act as normal as can be even meaning that he will kill me here and now. I walked up to the car where he had parked the car, before I could get to Alexis I felt how he was aiming towards me. Emily. I ignored his words opening Alexis's door taking her into my arms walking upstairs with her. 
he followed us until his butlers stopped him, asking him to give me a bit of time alone. I stayed with Alexis until she fell asleep for her afternoon nap. I knew by this time Raphael would have taken his office apart hoping that it would distract him from me until I could at least get out alive. I got my handbag then tiptoed out of the room only to walk into a wall. When I looked up the bastard was standing right in front of me. He yanked me towards our bedroom leaving me to fight against his strength. Once we have reached our room he closed the, the door behind us with an angry face he was now scaring the living shit out of me. Where the fuck have you been Emily? It's my fucking business, now please just get out of my way. You're not staying at Stacy's and sure as hell not staying here so where the fuck have you been sleeping? I yelled at him leaving a knock coming from the door with that Raphael turned pale. Please tell me that is not who I think it is. He stood there rushing his hands through his messy hair. He tried to find the words to speak, still there was a silence. I pushed him out of the way opening the door finding Bridget there in her nightgown with red lipstick on her mouth. He's just waiting on you like always. He knows what is worth more Emily. She said so I decided to open my big fucking mouth for once and for all. The girl who kept quiet had died days ago. Worth. Fuck you thought you were worth something, Bridget. You might have Raphael fooled with your stupid excuses, but you see I can see right through you. I said walking away with a smile. Lucas POV. It has been three days still no answer from Emily. Raphael does not want to talk to me regarding her disappearance at all. I went so far just to hire a private investigator, yet they refused to help. I was about to get ready for bed when I heard a knock from my front door. I took my phone placing it on the kitchen counter. As I opened the door Emily was in front of me with a smile on her face. I was about to ask her if she was alright when she crashed her lips on mine. As much as I wanted to take her into my arms I couldn't do it like this. Em, you're drunk. Nope, just a bit tipsy, so are you going to invite me in or not? She asked with her arms folded across her chest pushing her breast up. I nodded and led her into the house. This was the first time that she has ever seen my house. I took her hand and guided her towards the kitchen. I gave her a tall glass of water to drink so that she could feel a bit better. But she refused. Stop being a child, Emily. I thought that you liked me and wanted me, Luke. She said when I lifted her chin. Her eyes were focused on mine with every bit of detail she studied my appearance as I did to hers. I do want you Emily, but not like this not in the state that you are. I want you to freely come to me not rush things all right. I said waiting on her reply, instead, she got up and kissed me on the cheek. Something was wrong with Emily I could see it in her eyes, yet she fought against her emotions like always. Come on I will get the guest bedroom ready for you. I said walking down the hall on my way upstairs I heard a car engine. I ran towards the window watching how she left my house in the middle of the night in a drunk state. I rushed downstairs to get into my car to follow her only to lose her on the highway. I decided to go to Raphael's house asking for some answers about Emily's strange behavior. I pulled up leaving the guards to search my car as well as me. We were just done when I could drive further only to find Emily's car missing. I got out seeing Raphael waiting for me outside with a glass of whiskey in his hands. He looked mad as fuck, but I wasn't here for him I was here for her. I walked up to him with a quick move he stood in front of me. What do you want Lucas? Where is Emily Raphael? I asked grabbing him by his shirt. He looked down at my hands with a serious voice he answered me leaving me to rethink my actions. Get your ugly hands off of me, while you're at it back up a bit Lucas before I lose my temper. I did as he asked and backed up a few steps. Where is Emily Raphael? She came to my house in a state. By state, I mean drunk as fuck Raphael. Are you fucking kidding me, Lucas? He said turning around walking into the house, so I followed him like a little doggin. His butler came running towards him saying that they have found out where she has stayed these last few days. 
I followed Raphael into his office where a man stood with a suit on. He had tattoos from his neck down that were visible. I heard how Raphael asked him questions and each time he could not answer his questions. Raphael grew impatient with the man in front of him with a swift move he punched him in his stomach with another punch flying through the air hitting him on his nose. The sound of a broken nose echoed in the room leaving silence all around me. The tall man was now helpless against the beast with a bloody nose he just kept looking down to the wooden floors. Fucking find her now, if you can't then you're useless to me. He said pointing to the po man laying on the floor in pain. He looked up at me with angry eyes. He asked me to call Emily immediately. I took my phone out, dialing her number. Yet it went straight to voicemail. What the fuck is going on? Her phone is switched to Raphael. What the fuck is going on here? Oh, you know, Emily, she is just trying to teach me a lesson like always. He said walking out by the door. Emily P. O. V. Welcome home, my dear. I felt strong arms taking me in, making me feel safe once again like a little girl. I didn't know where else to go. I said breaking down in tears feeling overwhelmed. I heard how he told me that everything will be all right. He showed me to my room and asked if I will be fine with a simple smile. I said yes, even though I was breaking inside piece by piece. Remember my child when embarking on revenge to dig a grave for yourself as well, cause once you start with revenge, Nothing is ever merciful from there on out. Then he left the room. I took a warm shower then took a seat on the balcony looking at the stars. He was right about one thing that life is never easy, but this is my chance just to show him how powerful I can be, even if it means breaking me into pieces. I was madly in love with the beast so much that I wished that it was him being here right now. I took my phone going through my voicemail box. Most of them came from him as soon as I played the first one I almost felt sorry for the poor bastard. I decided to give him a cal after all it will be only 5 minutes, cause he will have geeks tracking my cal. I dialed his number with heavy breaths I decided to end the cal until he picked up. I don't know where you were neither with who you are, but mark my words love I will find you. I heard his sweet yet angry voice say. Oh, I know you will my dear Raphael, just like in a game of chess there will be a checkmate. I learned you well love, I am enjoying this little stunt of yours. I find you even more attractive now with all of this power in your hands. What can I say I learned from a cold-hearted beast, now I have to go see you soon Raphael. You're mine Emily and mine fucking alone remember that. Were his last words before I ended the cow. I felt powerful almost unstoppable for a few seconds until I realized that I was alone yet again in this awful world. Raphael P.O.V. After our phone call, I decided to get some sleep in, cause I will get her back soon enough. I took a shower and once I got out Bridget was waiting on me with white lace underwear. I looked at her then at the door hoping that she would have left, yet she bit her lower lip in front of me. I walked towards the door opening it for her throwing some kind of hint. I thought we could spend some time together tonight. She said walking up to me pressing me against the wall with a swift move I pressed her against the wall leaving her to gasp for air. Once her back had hit the wall she noticed that it was full of hatred. Guest bedroom Bridget. I'm back for you Raphael. It's me or her Raphael you can't have both. You're right I can't have both. I got woken up by an alarm going crazy. I got up taking a hot shower changing into the last clothes that I had left. I wore plain bootleg jeans with a crop top and sneakers. I did my makeup as natural as possible with a messy ponytail I then headed downstairs. I found the living room empty until I heard a few voices coming from the dining room. As I approached the dining room I saw how breakfast was neatly prepared with a maid showing me to my seat. I felt at home like I used to feel in my own home yet this time I could not go back. I looked at the table with huge eyes. The table was covered with the most delicious food which made me very hungry. These last few days living at hotels did a toll on me since I could barely sleep which more to say about food. You're awake my dear. I heard a strong voice say from behind me. He gave me a small white pill while one of the ladies handed me a glass of ice cold water. Drink up dear. It will help with the hangover trust me I had Raphael to deal with most of my life.
he said giving me a faint smile. Thank you so much for everything Mr. Haunt, I don't know what to say or how to thank you. Oh my dear you know exactly how. He said while he took a seat across the table. How? You're already busy thanking me, you see I made a vow to Raphael the night of your wedding. If he ever tries to harm you in any way my dear then I will have to teach him a lesson. Indeed my dear, I am not a supporter of Bridget Duke, I despise her with everything in me, where my wife adores her. I watched him closely with every word he spoke he told the truth. He had no reason to lie to me not after getting me released out of the hospital a few nights ago. He loved me like I was his own daughter so for him to ever lie to me was impossible, or so I hoped. Where is Mrs. Haunt? After your abduction, she moved into the cottage at Raphael's house. He said with a huge smile making me laugh out loud. I can see why Raphael has chosen you twice in a row. I think you mean once Mr. Haunt. On the contrary Emily you were his first choice, but then Bridget got pregnant forcing him to marry her. I don't understand. I said confused about his words. The arranged marriage should have been with you, but like always my wife had her fingers in the pie. Once she disappeared and Raphael got back up he married you, but with the wrong intentions. He said looking at me with a consent look until he spoke further. You're in love with my son the cold-hearted beast as much as he is with you my dear, and you can fight against it but unfortunately the heart does not lie Emily. It doesn't matter anymore, he proved his love to his beloved ex-wife like always. He killed three men in one day without blinking just because they could not report about your whereabouts. Those words left me stone cold. He pulled the trigger on innocent people and for what for my life? He also killed the man that drugged you if that is what you're wondering my dear, see Raphael is more than just a businessman, he has his own business on the down low. Cartel? Bingo my dear, so please tell me if you are still willing to keep to this plan of yours? Why tell this to me now? Well, I wanted to see if you would proceed with the plan, once you have discovered who he truly is. Trust me I'm going to make him beg like a little dog. I said taking a toasted Sam witch. I got up walking out only to be stopped by his next words. Take the car on the left my dear, he has already figured out your plan regarding your car. I walked over to him thanking him with a hug and a kiss on the cheek. I got into the car driving towards Roberto's company. Raphael P. O. V. I headed straight to the deal that was supposed to have taken place with Emily only to find out that they have moved it to their boardroom. I parked the car in the corner then headed for the entrance only to be a stunt by one car that was parked right across mine. I walked up to the car looking inside of it since it was a limited edition of BMW. I should say that the color was unique, it was a deep sea blue color. I checked the car out then headed towards the entrance only to wait for the bloody elevator. I took a look around only to see a woman who looked familiar to me. How could I forget that body walking up to her only to be stopped by the security? I took my eyes of her for a few minutes only to see no one standing there anymore. Fuck. Emily is getting on my nerves the few that I have left. I went into the meeting only to find that they will be taking it without any questions or hassles. I was about to get up when I got stopped by the CEO of the business. Thank you for coming all of this way Mr. Hoant, here please do attend. I took the envelope from him only to see that it was a ball that would be hosted in a few days. I will see what I can do. Please do. We would be introducing one of our new members to our clients. I heard his words practically fall out from his mouth with excitement. Everyone knows that it is not a party if I'm not there. I greeted him then left hopping into my car. As soon as I closed the door I got my phone out dialing my butler's number. Any news? They found her car outside of the airport, sir. We are already looking at the footage as we speak. She is still in town. I said looking at my watch. How do you know, sir? He asked when my eyes caught the owner from the BMW walking closer to get in. Cause, I have just seen her. I said dropping the phone in his ear. She wore a crop top that showed cleavage with a tight jean around her as I wanted to take her here and now just to fucking punish her. She was busy waking the beast up inside of me, I loved this new Emily with a swift move I got out of the car walking towards her. Without her noticing my existence, I pushed her body up against the car. 
Her breathing started to increase with a heartbeat that you can hear from a mile away. I took her hair out of her neck kissing her slowly feeling how each touch of my lips took her body of balance. Raphael. Fancy seeing you here my love. I said before she could open her mouth I continued. You're playing with fire love, just see how easy it was for me to find you. Congratulations, you should get an award for being a total asshole. She said sarcastically. How are your plans working out my dear so far? Right on track. I know you hate me Em, but we need to talk about this. I know that I screwed up. Like before right? Yeah, this conversation is boring maybe try something else? Her words cut through me like a knife when I could clearly hear the pain in her tone. My love I am so sorry for what you have been through, but stop pushing me away Emily. The next time that I will be seeing you, you will have a choice, my dear. I said backing up a bit, yet before I walked away I had to get my last few words out there. You're mine Emily and mine alone, I will kill another for just looking at your glorious face. I will get you back even if it takes an eternity. With those words I left. I got into my car when I had heard her door closing. She drove of leaving me with even more questions than before. I hated myself for my behavior towards Emily all these years, yet she had awoken me as no one else has. I got my phone from my pocket, putting a trail on Emily's car only to find out that she had vanished from the face of the earth once again. She wanted me to work for it and that is what I'm going to do. Emily P.O.V. After my encounter with Raphael, I drove straight home. I could not let him find out where I lived. The road home seemed long and endless. I thought about the words that he had said earlier. Never in my life did I imagine hearing him state those words, usually he would have taken me against my own will back home. Raphael was a strong-willed man who took what belongs to him all of these years since I have known him, so why the change of heart now? I remembered those exact words that he had used minutes ago that I would have a choice next time which left me clueless. I entered the gate and parked the car in the garage only to hear a sweet voice yelling out. Mommy. As I heard that voice my car door flew open with Alexis hugging me tightly. Hi baby, how are my big girl doing? I miss you, mommy, I don't like the other lady, please don't make me go back. She said with tears rolling down her sweet face. I felt horrible for leaving her like that with Bridget, but what could I have possibly done? If I took Alexis the devil would have haunted me down for kidnapped and hell knows what more. I got out of the car carrying her in my arms into the kitchen. I placed her on the counter with a smile I asked her to stay while I got her an ice cream. Her face lit up as soon as I showed up with the ice cream. While she was eating the ice cream I made her a ponytail over so that most of the hair can be out of her face. Mommy when are you coming home I miss you and daddy too, boo. She said with chocolate all over her mouth. I know that you miss me baby, but I have a surprise for daddy for his birthday. So for it to stay a surprise mommy needs to stay here otherwise. Otherwise it won't be a surprise and daddy will not have a nice birthday. I felt like a proud mother except for the part where I had lied to my daughter. Shit. His birthday is this weekend how could I forget? Mommy I will keep your secret I promise. You better pumpkin, otherwise you will never see Froggy again. I heard Mr. Haunt's voice from behind me. Alexis's eyes grew big with her grandfather mentioning Froggy. So Froggy was her pony's name which did not make sense at all, but when you're at her age anything made sense. Mr. Haunt took Alexis from me asking if I wanted to join them for a swimming lesson. I need to work on the surprise for daddy baby, but go have fun with grandpa. I said with a kiss on her cheek. Raphael P.O.V. I sent Alexis to my father's house for some peace. I kicked Bridget out of the house leaving her to stay with my mother in the small cottage. I tried to call Emily once again yet I had no success. I felt hopeless with every might in me. I never thought of being in this position ever. I wanted to take my keys from my drawer seeing the small box in front of me. I opened the box remembering the moment we had. Flashback I just got the ring from the jeweler back therefore I needed to make sure that it was a great fit so I decided to see Emily. She has been obedient ever since she has moved in. I walked up to our room where I found her fitting on her ball gown. 
In these last few weeks I had hated her, yet at that moment I saw something in her something that I was afraid of knowing. Her dark hair was perfectly hanging down her back with a perfect red lace dress she looked breathtaking. I must have stood there for a few minutes gawking over the beauty in front of me. This feeling was different from before. I got taken from my thoughts when her eyes fell on mine. I'm so sorry, I will change quickly. She said about to walk out of the door when I had stopped her. I pushed her up against the wall. I looked at her beautiful dazzling eyes with the most admiration that I had ever seen. She was about to look down to the ground when my hand stopped her. Don't ever look down, my love. I said in a warning tone. Yes, sir. She said with those words a heat wave came over me. I attacked her lips right there without thinking about it. She pushed me away to catch her breath when we got interrupted by my butler. He asked that he would like to see me immediately as there was an emergency at Hans Towers. Without thinking I left the room with no words only a smile. Once I was in my office the butler handed me a letter that was just sent a few minutes ago. I opened it only to find photos of Bridget kissing another man. I knew that I had to be a cold-hearted bastard from there on out. I placed all of my feelings aside from what I had for Emily and stopped it before it could grow any further. I was not ready to get broken once again. Flashback ends I got up to change so that I can go for a run to clear my head. I knew that Emily will be my downfall, but I have never realized how it would feel up until this moment. I went on my run and came back home just to find my butler already waiting for me by the door. He looked a bit shocked to see me. Sir Mrs. Duke would like to have dinner with you tonight. Is that so? Indeed sir should I decline the invention. He asked with a low voice. Arrange for dinner to be ready at seven, I have some business to attend to. I said while walking to my room. Bridget POV. After the butler came to give me the good news I just had to buy something sexy since Emily threw most of my clothes out. I took Raphael's mother with me to a few shops before getting ready for dinner. We walked in by Chanel just around the corner of Gucci. I picked a sexy sleek white dress which would mean that I surrender to all of his questions. I tried it on and walked up to the mirror only to hear a mumble coming from Diane. Something wrong mother? I asked with a smile only to see her emotionless face. Tell me Bridget, what are you going to accomplish with that slut of a dress? I'm getting my husband back Diane, what happened to Team Spirit? Team Spirit my A's, with your Team Spirit, I had lost my grandchild Bridget. Oh, but that was your plan you see I taped everything. Raphael will never know that it was me maybe his mother, but not his ex-wife. I said seeing how her face lost color turning pale. I turned around looking at myself in the mirror then at Diane. So what do you think mother? What is your real reason for being here Bridget? We all know that you got bored with your lover. I'm going to kill Emily softly and slowly. Diane looked at the dress then back at me for a few seconds she seemed convinced until she opened her big fat mouth. You better hope that she does not kill you first my dear plus that dress makes you look fat. Do you want a man or a one night stand? With those words, I felt nauseous just thinking of the way Emily has changed. I have never seen her like this fierce and unstoppable. What's the matter dear cat caught your tongue? I could hear the sarcasm in her voice clearly. After we had shopped for the most relevant dress we went home so that I can get ready. Diane went to her room leaving me to get ready on my own. After I had finished I went to the dining room where Raphael was already waiting for me. He was in his black suit with a smirk on his devilish face. I took a seat across him then looked up into his dark eyes. Is something wrong Raphael, is it the dress, is it too revealing? I asked with a smile, hoping that he would to return a smile only to be left in the dark. Oh the dress is nice Bridget, but I'm not so sure about you. Me? You're hiding something from me sweetheart and we both know that I'm not the person to be messed with. What are you talking about Raphael? I asked cool and calm. Those detectives were frauds Bridget, you of all people should know that I have the police in my back pocket. I. Relax Bridge, I don't know what your plan is from here on out but if you as so much try to go near Emily, I will fucking kill you. He said then slammed his fist on the table. Do you understand love? Yes, also the mother of your child since you ran after Zack a few years ago. I said. He got up walking up to me with a soft whisper in my ear. Whatever helps you to sleep at night, love. Just keep the fuck away from Emily, she might just skin you fucking alive before I do.
ufilp.o.v. I got woken up by an intense light that was peeking through the window. I got up and headed downstairs to eat some breakfast. The house felt like a mausoleum all alone without the two people that I loved the most. My butler already stood by the door waiting on my arrival, as I sat down one of the maids brought my cup of coffee while the others left the room. The coffee was bitter the way I liked it, yet I had missed Emily's coffee. I took the newspaper that was handed to me by one of the ladies. I read through the highlights only to be interrupted by my butler's voice. Permission to speak, sir. You have five minutes to speak your mind. I said looking at him with a nod. I agreed to let him speak his mind after all he has been an asset to the family for years. I think that you should accept the invention of Mr. Roberto's ball. He said with a clear and straight face. You think that I was about to turn down the opportunity of not going, you were wrong my friend. I said seeing how his face lit up. It has been a year since I have attended any functions, so I do think that this will be good for me. I will arrange for your suit to be made sir as well as new shoes, should I ask Mrs. Bridget Duke to join you? I said picking up the newspaper to read further. After I had eaten I left for the office only to be overwhelmed by one of the HR men. I asked him to meet me in my office as I had to get ready for a meeting. He walked into my office then handed me a hospital form. I took it from him asking what this was for. Boss Lucas is in the hospital and he will be booked up until Monday. What happened to the poor dwarf? I said seeing how he tried his best not to laugh. He got food poisoning boss. I see. I called my assistant and before she could say anything, I showed her to write a note down. Send Lucas a tray of donuts as well as rotten steak. I said leaving both of them clueless. Boss why would you want to send him a rotten steak? The man asked with curiosity, with a polite smile I got up showing my assistant out by the door. Lucas wanted something that was mine and if he got food poisoning, I bet you know where he got it from Blaine. Boss I don't. Please why else would you be standing in my office where you would usually send it via an email? I just thought that you should know boss since he has close family. Family doesn't have crushes on your wife as well try to get in bed with them, now you may be excused before I learn you a lesson as well. He just nodded and left without any words as soon as the poor guy left my butler came in with a brown envelope. He handed it over to me taking a step back. I took a seat and opened it only to find pictures of Lucas kissing Emily in her kitchen. When were these pictures taken? A few days after the accident sir also she had shown up by Lucas the other night when he was here. With the last words he took another step back. My temper was over the top and I knew that I should kill the bastard, yet I want to make him suffer. I will make him see what I have his mind to keep. I controlled my temper and left to attend the meeting. Emily P. O. V. I arrived at the office early enough to meet all of my co-workers. I walked up to the cafeteria to get a coffee and rushed towards my office so that I can be on time for the morning meeting. I just got of the elevator when I heard how all of the employees were called towards the boardroom. I took a seat by the far corner to the left hearing whispers all around me. I guess they all wondered why I left Haunts Towers for this place, if I could have it any other way, I would have stayed, but unfortunately, that is not how things work. I decided to keep quiet waiting for the meeting to begin. Everyone got quiet then took their seats while Roberto started with the highlights. Thank you all for meeting me on such short notice, as you know we will have an annual bowl this weekend like always, he said when everyone clapped their hands for him, how did I not know about this? Also I would like to welcome one of our new dealers, Mrs. Duke, please stand up. He asked looking at me with a smile I stood up while some of the employees threw daggers at me. I know that I took some of their clients away, most of their clients away yet that was not my fault. Mrs. Duke will have her first deal this morning as I would be out of the office the entire day. Now Mrs. Duke from our side we wish you just the best, I will have the folder delivered to you before I leave. His tone had excitement in it. Once he left all of us went to our office where I found the folder already waiting patiently for me. I took it and headed straight for the elevator only to bump into someone. I am so sorry, I said and when I looked up at the person in front of me, my eyes could not believe themselves. It was a young tall man with blonde hair. He wore a grey suit and had a smirk on his face. 
He looked Italian with bright green eyes. You're new here, Muffin. Is it that obvious? I asked with a smile only to feel his fingers brushing against my face while he moved some of my hair out of my face. You will survive, Muffin. Just take a deep breath, all right. Rome wasn't built in one day. He said with a sweet voice, leaving goosebumps all over my body. Emily Duke. Zachariah, but you can call me Zach Muffin. He said with a smirk this time. He said with a smirk this time. Well, it is nice to meet you. Now, would you excuse me? I have to get to a client. I set about to walk past him only to be stopped by his words. If you are free this afternoon, come, you might want to have lunch with me. I. I don't bite, but I do wish that you could say yes. He said with a wink. I'll think about it all right. I said then left before things could have taken another turn for the worst. I felt attracted to this man, was that even possible? I drove to the client's work only to wait patiently for him. I took a seat and started to go through a magazine just so that time could fly by. I heard a very familiar voice coming from the hallway as I looked up I saw Bridget in front of me. The moment that she saw me she started to stutter. Emily how lovely to see you again, please follow me. I will be there in a second Grant. I said so that he could leave us alone. Once we were alone she walked up to me with a sour face, guess I just made her day. Looked at what the cat has dragged in. I said looking at her from head to toe. Disappointed much sister, I just came here to do a deal on poor Lucas's behalf. She said sliding her handbag on her shoulder. Oh, you didn't know the poor guy is in the hospital. So you thought that this little stunt is going to make everything right between you and Raphael? It will if I get the deal done baby sister and trust me it will, so a piece of advice stay the hell away from Raphael he is mine. You know you always got your hopes up to high sister, may the best sister win. I said taking a step closer leaving her to back up a bit. You will never touch him again not over my dead body you bitch. That could easily be arranged Bridget, one rule that I had learned from Raphael is never underestimate your opponent. I said seeing the shock on her face with those last words I left her standing like that. I walked down the hall and greeted Grant in his office. You know I love you Em, but Haunt Towers has the best deals. Grant. You're like family to me Emily, but unfortunately the best deal always wins. He said with a smirk on his face. Do you say that when you're fucking your maid as well Grant? I said leaving him speechless. How did you? Please I can practically smell her all over you, you know your wife talks right just such a shame that she does not know the truth. I said looking at him while he seemed to be shocked. What do you want Emily? He asked folding his hands across his chest. You're going to seal the deal with me and not Bridget Grant, if you still want a marriage? You're blackmailing me now Emily. I got up then turned on my heels only to be stopped by his voice screaming my name. Quote you have a deal, Emily. Good now make sure that Raphael knows that as well. Raphael P.O.V. I just came from a meeting when my phone ringed as I picked it up it felt like someone was busy choking me having the hopes that it will be Emily. Mr. Haunt, I am so sorry to have bothered you this time of the day, but the reason for my phone call is because of the business proposal. I knew that Lucas was supposed to have met Grant today, but since he has been in the hospital I postponed most of his deals. Grant the meeting was moved? Mr. Haunt Bridget was here on behalf of your company, but unfortunately I had to go with another business proposal. I felt how I was busy losing my shit slowly with that slut. Who was her opponent Grant? I asked in a low key only to hear the next few words. Emily Duke. I ended my cal trying to take a deep breath only to feel the anger rising in me. I lost my shit just there and then. I threw some punches against the wall while others landed on my desk. Emily P.O.V. My first day went rather well with the first deal that was done. I took my handbag to leave only to be stopped by a tall figure that was in front of me. Congratulations, sunshine. Congratulations, sunshine. He said giving me a bunch of flowers. I took it from him then smelled it. The smell was amazing lavender with a bit of vanilla. I remember the last time I had received flowers from Raphael, he made love to me endlessly that night. I really missed him with every heartbeat, yet I knew that we could not be together. Thank you, but it wasn't really necessary you know? I think you deserve them, how about we celebrate tonight? 
ICA dash. Dinner, please. I will make sure that you are at home before bedtime. He asked with a husky voice. I tried to think of an excuse only to find him staring at me intensely. If you get an excuse I'm all ears you know. Look I'm just going to be straightforward with you, I am not looking for a relationship or a one night stand. Good cause neither am I. He said with a huge smile. He placed his hands on my shoulder leaving me to feel half of his body weight. Quote I just got out of a bad breakup and trust me when I say this to you, I don't want anything more than just to be friends, so how about that dinner we talked about? He asked with a simple nod I agreed to his idea. He asked with a simple nod I agreed to his idea. He gave me the location and asked that I meet him there since I wanted to drive in my car. I felt half disappointed that he wasn't so much interested in me. Oh well I guess a breaking heart does take a toll on you. I drove towards the location while phoning Mr. Haunt just to inform him not to wait up for me. He cared a lot about me even after what I did to Raphael and his company. Hey, I will be home late tonight. No that is fine my dear, please just be safe and cal if you need anything. He said in a formal voice with a simple thought I knew that he could only be that formal if his son is there or his arguing with his wife. I'll do so. I said hanging up the phone focusing on the road ahead. My song came on the radio pour some sugar on me leaving me to turn it up a bit. I didn't feel so alone at this moment, yet I missed Raphael since it reminded me of him, I switched the music of since most of the the things we had already done a while ago. Saying it like that made me wonder how he was doing and why I haven't seen him yet especially after the deal that went down. Raphael P. O. V. I waited patiently for my father while he was on the phone with someone. Once he saw me his face turned pale with shock seeing me in his house once again. He ended the cal and walked up to me greeting me with a handshake and a simple smile. What a surprise to see you here son. He said throwing both hands in the air. I know that I only come here once a blue moon, but my father and I always had seen things differently. We could not be in the same room for an hour before we are climbing down each other's throats like animals, yet I knew he understood most of my problems except when it came to Emily. He had a really soft spot for her where my mother had one for Bridget. I came to inform you about Emily father, I said taking a seat across his desk. What about Emily, son, have you found her yet? Oh, I have found her father, I said seeing how his face lost all expression once those words were out there in the open. Why so pale father? You see I have found her with your mark written all over her. He said taking a sip of his cold brandy. I got up walking towards him with a smile I stood in front of him with my hands in my pockets. Please give her my congrats on the deal that she took for me today. Also, please advise her that hiding from me is going to solve absolutely nothing. I said about to turn around when my father stopped me asking how he would know about her whereabouts. We are the same person father. Plus you have a soft spot for Emily and you would like to see me suffer from her work. You have said that time and again. She is a work of art son, so how does it feel to be beaten by your very own creation? I did not create her like this. No you might not have, but you sure as hell broke her to that point son. I was about to answer when he interrupted me. Haven't you? He asked in a low tone only to get my blood boiling. I never created this side of Emily or so I thought. A broken person is dangerous son they know how to survive always remember that for one day if you find yourself in those exact same shoes. Let it go, farther, I said walking out of the room. I left my father's house to go straight home after I said goodbye to Alexis. She still didn't want to come home not with Bridget there. Once I arrived at home I took a cold shower to cool off. I got dressed in my shorts then headed downstairs to watch some television. I must have fallen asleep when my butler came to wake me up. Sir please wake up, breakfast is ready. I got up taking a hot shower just to feel even more tired. I dressed in my plain jeans with a grey shirt with my white sneakers. I took a seat by the table when I called my butler forward. Did the men report anything to you this morning? Yes sir seems like she has been staying there for a while now. He said looking down to the ground scared of what I might say or do. After breakfast, I need to sort out some documents then we can leave for the ball thing, how late does this event even start? I asked with an irritated voice. This afternoon sir around 4 but I will have everything ready before then. 
He said then took a step back. He said then took a step back. After I had breakfast and enjoyed my morning newspaper I left for the office. I must have been there for several hours, cause I had just finished most of my work after one. I took my car keys and headed back home to change into my formal clothes. I took a sip of my whiskey then asked my butler if he had any new information regarding Emily. No sir, she arrived late last night at Mr. Hans' property. With those words I felt anger taking over my body. She just knew what type of buttons to press to get me mad as fuck. Well find out where the fuck she was and if she was with someone I want to know. I decided to take my white Mustang from all of the cars that I had lined up driving towards the destination where the ball will be held. I parked the car then got out handing my keys to the valley that stood there waiting on me. I buttoned up my jacket then walked into the building. There must have been more than 50 people here, I guess these people knew how to throw a party. I walked up to the bar ordering myself a scotch on the rocks then walked through the crowd of people. I felt a hand on my shoulder with a swift move I saw who it was. Roberto my dear old friend. I thought you would not be able to make it. I would never miss the chance of irritating the shit out of you. Of course, you know the deal of Russia will be back on the table soon. I heard do you think that you will be able to get it since we both lost it a few months ago? Thanks to the wonderful feud of the Petrova family, he said with laughter. I was about to say something when a young man came walking up to us. He asked that Roberto must follow him. I'll be back, I just have some announcements to make, he said leaving me alone until my butler gave me a cow. Sir, Mrs. Duke had dinner with a man named Zach, he said so I hung up with a swift move I was about to leave when I heard a part of Roberto's announcement. Something about his choice of words seemed familiar to me. She joined us a few days ago and has already sealed a deal. It is with great pleasure that I welcome Emily Duke, one of our new employees, he said leaving everyone to cheer. That is when I saw her coming down the stairs with a beautiful light blue dress that complemented her hourglass body perfectly. Her black hair was hanging down her neck with natural makeup she looked like a queen. My heart stopped when our eyes met for the first time she smiled at me. I was about to approach her when a young man walked up to her. She seemed to know this man until I saw his face. I walked up to them with speed taking over my entire body. Sorry to interrupt you Emily. But can I have this dance? I asked hoping that she would say yes with a smirk on my face. Who was this sunshine? He asked leaving me sick to my stomach guess the asshole didn't know who I was. Well I wasn't going to ruin his surprise now. She is my wife, now I won't ask again M? I asked in a very demanding tone leaving her to take my hand while I gave a death glare at the man beside me. He looked confused until I whispered into his ears. Raphael Hunt is the name cunt. Emily P.O.V. As I came down the stairs my eyes caught the most beautiful eyes that were looking at me. I felt a warm sensation spreading all over my body just thinking of him being here made me go crazy. I had to play it cool so I threw a small smile at him. As soon as I reached the end of the stairs Zach came up to me with an amused smile. You look beautiful. Before I could thank him for the compliment Raphael pitched up looking all devilish handsome with his black tux and messy hair. Sorry to interrupt you Emily, but can I have this dance? Raphael asked with a smirk on his face. Who is this sunshine? Zach had asked Raph only to see his eyes darken. With a quick comeback he answered Zach only leaving me more shocked than before. She is my wife, now I won't ask again M? He asked in a very dominating tone sending chills down my spine. I knew that if I don't move he will do something that we both will regret after all he looked a bit mad as fuck. I liked this side of him. In all of these years, I would never have imagined him being this jealous of another man. He offered his hand so I decided to take this dance with him. You look breathtaking love. He whispered into my ear before the music began to play. He pulled me closer to him until my chest was against his. I felt a heat wave running down my body as he took my hand in his leading the dance. His one hand slipped down from my lower back, till it was on my ass. I'm glad to see that I still have some influence on your body love. Don't flatter yourself, Raphael. I said until he pulled me a bit closer leaving me to gasp for air. Shit, I needed to get out of this position before I ran out of common sense. 
I looked up at him since he was a bit taller than me with a smile on his face he looked rather handsome. You were supposed to be mad at me, why aren't you? I asked a bit confused. A business's deal is worth nothing to me if I can't have you next to my side love. So what is your next plan? I asked when his hold on Maya's tightened. Next plan? He asked with a smirk leaving me to rethink my situation and my choice of words. He pushed me away turning me around letting me free fall into his strong muscular arms. As I lifted my head his eyes were piercing right through me. He then lifted me slowly only to continue dancing. His grip didn't loosen for a minute and he made sure that everyone here knew that I was his. He looked like a beast marking his mate with one touch he had me begging for more. Why did you kill that man? He tried to kill you and trust me Emily it is not over yet. He said bringing me in for another turn only to be stopped right in front of his juicy lips. Can I please have this dance with the beautiful young lady? Zack came up asking with a challenging voice only to be ignored. I wanted to open my mouth telling him to back of only to see how Raphael placed my hand in his. What was going on? A few minutes ago he showed everyone here that I was his now he is handing me over to another man with a cocky smile. He stopped right next to me only to whisper into my ears. Behave love he is just a poor soul seeking for another man's wife. Raphael P.O.V. I didn't dare to leave the party only, because Emily was there, she looked amazing making me hard for her, yet furious at the same time since every male here in the room looked at her with desire. Something that will never happen since she was mine. I walked closer to the bar to get myself another drink to calm the nerves also my member that wanted to take her here and now. I hope that you are not mad friend. I heard Roberto say with a serious face. On the contrary I can thank you enough, but how did you know? Oh please, the Petrova family hates us with every gut they still have left. So why give her a job? I took it and placed it into my jacket only to see both of them gone. Will you excuse me I have some business that needs my urgent attention? He knew me better than anyone since he was my best friend. We just kept it on the low as we had a lot of enemies and competition out there. I walked towards the terrace only to find Emily standing there furious. She walked up to the man that I hated the most only to slap him right through his face. I walked out leaving them to stare at me until my eyes landed on Bridget who was standing behind the bastard. I noticed how her lipstick was all ruined and her dress almost ripped off. Their faces were priceless when they saw how calm I was. It is none of your business. She tried to walk away from him so he grabbed her by her arm. Oh please, the Petrova family hates us with every gut they still have left. So why give her a job? True yet so unpredictable. Well here you go. He said giving me an envelope of the man that was dancing with Emily. I took it and placed it into my jacket only to see both of them gone. Will you excuse me I have some business that needs my urgent attention? Don't kill him here brother. He said laughing out loud. He knew me better than anyone since he was my best friend. We just kept it on the low as we had a lot of enemies and competition out there. I walked towards the terrace only to find Emily standing there furious. She walked up to the man that I hated the most only to slap him right through his face. I walked out leaving them to stare at me until my eyes landed on Bridget who was standing behind the bastard. I noticed how her lipstick was all ruined and her dress almost ripped off. What the fuck is going on here? I asked taking a sip of my drink. Their faces were priceless when they saw how calm I was. It is none of your business. The man said turning towards Emily trying to talk to her, yet she wanted to know nothing. She tried to walk away from him so he grabbed her by her arm. Get your fucking hands off of her now. I said out loud with a terrifying tone. Bridget came running towards me only to be stopped by my death glare. Emily P.O.V. Raphael looked to calm for me even a bear would be scared as fuck right now. He stopped Bridget with only one look then he looked at me. I hope that you informed her over diner that you fucked Bridget not long ago also the reason for her abduction. He said laughing which sent goosebumps down my spine with a swift move he left my arm. Wait what? I asked with pure confusion only to be grabbed by Zack's hand once again. Don't listen to him sunshine. He said while shaking my body so that I could listen to him. 
The next moment I felt a strong body in front of me throwing Zack across the floor with a swift move he kicked him then he pulled out his gun leaving me and Bridget to gasp. I did fucking warn you didn't I mate? He said aiming at his head in just a minute I was standing in front of him. He is not worth it Raphael, let's just go. I asked in a soft tone seeing him fighting the urge to shoot him right here and now. Instead, he kicked him a bit more than he hit his weapon again. He threw his arms around my shoulders leaving then stopped at the entrance of the hall. If any two of you tried to hurt Emily, I will find out, and trust me a bullet to the brain will be the least of your fucking worries. He said with a very scary high-toned voice. We walked inside straight to the bar where he got us something to drink. While his back was facing me I realized that he has been protecting me more than I thought. All this time when I thought that he was watching me he was just looking out for me. Are you alright Em? He said taking me from my thoughts when he handed me a glass of wine. He looked stressed for a moment as if I meant something to him. Mrs. Duke it is an honor to meet you finally. An old man said with excitement. The pleasure is all mine, Mr. Henry. This man was the head member of the Petrova family. They hated everyone especially Raphael. Their empire fell apart when Raphael started to work his way up at Haunt's Towers. He was treated like any other employee that worked there until he could prove his loyalty to his father. With long hours and endless nights, he took over his father's seat at the company. I never pictured you as a businesswoman. I mean it is hard for any female to get where you are standing today. Because I'm a woman or because I got here with luck Mr. Petrova? I asked irritated as hell. Maybe both my dear, but you have a keeper here Raphael. I know Henry, just to be clear she got here on her own. She didn't need my help and I think that she can turn your company's share into a double amount, it is just a shame that you can't see past your ego. Now if you will excuse us. He said pulling me away towards a quiet corner. Look I just had a long day I think that I should just go home. Nonsense, I want you here with me. You sound sweet I almost forget that you're a total asshole. I said looking away from his perfect grayish eyes. Come on I'll take you home then. He said taking my hand in his. He opened the car door for me like the gentleman that he is. I took the liberty to book a hotel room, since I was scared to get home too late and driving intoxicated wasn't one of my likings. We came to my hotel like a gentleman he walked me up to my room. Why do I always get the men who fuck women over just, because they can? I asked him out of the blue feeling hopeless. Look Emily I know that I screwed up, but I will always fight for you. I'm just done fighting against you. There is this saying that says that it's a matter of time a thousand days when the sun won't shine before I'm coming back to you. I'm happy and nothing is going to stop me, and I'll make my way home, good night my love sweet dreams. He said kissing me on my cheek he threw a smile with a wink he turned around to walk away, but before I knew it I stopped him. Raphael wait- My back was facing her waiting patiently for her to continue her sentence. I felt her hand on my shoulder sending sparks through my entire body as Elle stood still. Her hand slides down towards my hand awakening the monster in me once again. She took all of her power that she had to turn me around to face her pretty little face. Why protect someone that you could barely love Raphael? It has been a long evening Em, I think that I should rather leave. Why? I know that you're running a cartel business Raphael. So my secret is finally out there, yet I should feel relieved only I feel differently about this matter. I took my hand and combed my hair making it extra messy. How the fuck did you know? I asked with a sigh. How? You might have maids working for you, but sometimes I used to do your laundry. I saw the blood marks all over your shirts so I burned them. I knew something was up with you when you stayed out late, but I never could have placed my fingers on it until I got kidnapped. I'm protecting you Emily. I could hardly get my sentence finished when she cut me off. From who Raphael? You're only protecting your ignorant as like usual. She said and that is when I just lost my patience with her. I pushed her up against the wall with one hand on her chin so that she can face me. Her eyes showed anger with sadness. I knew that feeling that she had inside of her. Don't you ever fucking say that again, 
Do you understand me? You have been my priority since I set eyes on you as well as the vows we took. Vows that you broke, Raphael. Tell me then, Emily, if it took hurting you to protect you, I would do it again in a blink of an eye without hesitation. Without thinking, she slapped me through my face. The slap burned from her tiny hands, yet I felt turned on by this side of her. We're done here, Emily, I said trying to control my beast looking into her eyes. You don't get to play that card anymore, Raph. You can just come into my life only to walk away again. What do you want from me, Emily? You see that we are toxic to each other, don't you? I want you, Raphael. She said pulling my tie closer to her enough to crash her lips on mine. The kiss was hot and intimate, I tried to pull away only to hear her statement. If you truly love me the way you claim then show it. I'm not going to show it through fucking you, Em. Fine then, I will find someone who can do both of those things. Her tone was cold almost emotionless, yet I got angry by the simple thought of her finding another man. She is mine and mine fucking alone, I will get an ignorant fuckface who dares to just look at her nor to touch her perfect body. I walked closer to her grabbing her by her jaw pulling her closer to me. I kissed her deeply with a struggle I got dominance over her entire body. I took her room key out of my hands picking her up while opening the door for us to go in. Our lips have not left each other since I picked her up. Her beautiful long legs were wrapped around my waist. As soon as I got into her room I laid her softly down on the bed kissing her even more deeply and rough. Our lips were burning from all of the passion that was going on, yet we could not stop not now not ever. She pulled me away taking my jacket of with a smile on her face she kissed me again. She was going to be the death of me. I took her hands making her stand in front of me with a quick turn her back was now facing me. I unzipped her dress and let it fall to the ground. The dress slid smoothly over her perfect hourglass body. I felt my member begging for her so I kissed her on her neck softly. The kisses to her body were heavenly almost like it was a secret affair. I heard how a soft moan escaped her mouth with that I let my hands slide down to her as grabbing it as tightly as possible. She then turned around with a smirk to unbutton my shirt with every loose button she placed a kiss down my body. She kneeled down looking up at me while biting her rosy lips. My pants were barely of when she took my member into her mouth. She started to move her head back and forth. Taking my dick deep into her mouth, I felt how all of my muscles were pulling together with pleasure. She took my member to the back of her throat with a quick move, I picked her up throwing her onto the bed. I opened her legs wide enough so that I can see the wetness through her blue lace panties. I kissed her deeply then trailed kisses down her body past her full breast to her wet paradise. Without thinking I ripped her panties by plunging my mouth over her clit. With every movement of my tongue, her body tightened, so bad that she threw her legs around my neck. I added a finger only to hear her breathing increasing. As I looked up her eyes were filled with lust with a hint of danger. I started to kiss her slowly up towards her full breasts. With a swift move, she was on top of me with a smirk she bent down letting me kiss her on her neck. She started to grind on my dick. I felt out of control the moment that she bit my neck. You're so fucking perfect. I mumbled into her ears feeling how her body reacted to my voice left me speechless. I picked her up pulling her onto me with a swift move I broke through her walls. Hearing how she screamed of pleasure, yet it was not enough until she screamed my name. I picked up the paste hitting her G-spot harder with every move. Her full breast was now bouncing up and down. I grabbed her by the neck pulling her in closer for a kiss. The pleasure took her over as she did not fight for dominance anymore. Her lips were juicy and I wanted more so I went a bit deeper increasing my speed. She threw her body back picking up her dark hair screaming my name, yet this time she was riding my dick all by herself. I was about to turn her around when she pushed me to fall back on the bed. She took my hands placing it on her full breast while she rode me like a fucking wild child. I felt how her walls got tightened around my dick leaving me to gasp for air. Shit, I have forgotten how good she felt. I moved one of my hands playing with her clit leaving her to cry with pleasure. R.A. I said in my dominating voice only to see how she bit her lip. I started to kiss her breast while she rode me. I felt like I was on the edge of the excitement that shot straight through my body. 
She was digging her nails into my skin as I looked up her eyes were closed with red rosy lips I lost the control that I had. I picked her up throwing her on her back while I thrust into her with full speed hitting her g-spot non-stop. I kissed her deeply so that she could not make any noise. I played with her clit teasing her as she was on the urge to come, yet I was not ready yet. Don't fucking dare love as this will be your fucking lesson, if you ever think that another man will fuck you, you are wrong. I said while I kissed her down to her breast picking her legs up wrapping them around my neck moving with the same speed I felt how I was about to let go so that was at the moment she screamed my name, I went deeper and harder feeling how her legs tightened around my neck. Come for me, baby, I said when we both had reached our climax. I fell on her chest feeling exhausted. I laid on her chest while she caught her breath hearing her heartbeat that fast for me was the most amazing sound ever. I tried to get up only to be pulled back. Stay? Always. I said laying beside her feeling how her arms crept around my waist. I was about to say something when I saw that she was fast asleep. Emily P.O.V. I woke up feeling a warm sensation between my legs only to find Raphael still in bed with me. I looked at his perfect body feeling a smile forming in my mouth. I was about to move closer when I heard a phone making noise. I saw my phone on the floor next to me so I decided to move slowly to pick it up without waking Raphael up otherwise hell knows what might happen next. Once my feet had hit the ground I felt the soreness in my body. Last night was more passionate than before fuck he never even fucked me that hard. I saw a message that came through to my phone leaving me speechless. I'm pregnant with Raphael's child, so don't even think for one second that your tricks are going to work after all you did lose his child. I saw from who it came from leaving me sick to my stomach. I got dressed only to feel two strong arms around my waist. Where are you going it is Sunday love? Raphael. Come back to bed for a few minutes please. He begged me. Mistake my fucking ass, you practice begged me to stay with you last night remember? Yes, I just needed to get this out of my system. I said slipping my shoes on while he looked dumbfounded on the bed with his messy hair. What is exactly out of your system? You. Just me so what, you're telling me after last night that you don't love me anymore. You're making things harder than it already is. Seems like I make it way too easy for you since you're the one walking out of the fucking room. Look I just wanted to have one last night with you so that I can close the chapter on you and... Our baby? He said looking at me with dark eyes waiting on my response, cause even I was taken back by this. You haven't spoken to me about losing our child Emily, I know that you don't want to. I said with tears in my eyes. Just thinking of the family we could have been, yet that was taken away from me. I tried looking for you Emily, fuck I even threatened the police. He got up walking up to me before he could close in on me I continued my sentence. Face it me and you will never work out plus I just had to use you like garbage as you did to me. I said seeing a reflection of hurt in his eyes. I turned on my heels and left as soon as those words were put out there. Emily P.O.V. It has been a few weeks that I had peace of quietness. I went to work and even moved back into my old house. I should say things started to go back to normal like it was before. I haven't heard anything from Raphael nor his butler which made me happy with a bit of sadness. Today was going to be a lot different or so I hoped. I went into the office only to find Zach waiting for me. Emily. Get the hell out of my office. Please I can explain everything. There is nothing to explain, now please get the fuck out of my office. I understand that you might. Might? Might may be an understatement, Zach. I know trust me, there is more to the story than you know. He said walking towards my office door. Bridget is dangerous Emily. He said before he left me in silence. I could hardly concentrate on those words the whole morning, I spent trying to convince myself that this was just a sick little bad joke. Well, at least it took my mind of Raphael's baby issues. I was about to go on lunch when one of the employees came to cow me. Apparently, I was needed in the boardroom so I took my notepad with a pen. Once I arrived at the second floor where the boardroom was I got invited in with a huge smile by Roberto my boss. Please come in Emily, I have some wonderful news. He said showing me to my seat. 
Zack was also in the room looking down not even thinking of facing me. There is a business deal that I would like to offer you. I'm listing. The Russians are looking for an investment, and I decided that you can represent our company. That is impossible, Roberto. We all know that the Petrova family gets their deals. Not this one, Emily. The Petrova family is under pressure from the police. Like always, they turn a blind eye, leaving us with more opportunities than before. Why not, Zach? I asked in a harsh tone, leaving him to face me. He insisted that you take it, since they asked for you directly. I should have been happy, yet I felt like I was making a mistake by taking this opportunity. I thanked them and left to get my purse. I thought of going for lunch by a small cafe not far from here only to be surprised by the one and only. It hasn't even been three weeks and you're already showing up here. I said throwing my notepad and pen on the table leaving him to take a step back bowing his head. I'm so sorry miss to come by and announced. Can we hurry this up I have a meeting in a few hours that I would like to attend to. I said placing my hands on my hips. I didn't know where else to go Mrs. Duke it's Raphael. Talk to Bridget, I'm sure she would love to hear about this more than I would. I said walking towards the door. Mr. Haunt is in trouble and I know that you would help me. He said with a worried face. I felt like my heart dropped down to the floor and shattered into a million pieces. I know that I said that, that night meant nothing, but he was more on my brain than before. What type of trouble? I asked in a low tone. He has not left his office in a week nor has he eaten. Every time that I try to enter his office he shoots at me. I took my phone without hesitation giving him a cowl only to reach his voicemail. I looked at the butler with a simple nod I left the office with my car keys. I made an excuse to take the afternoon of so that I can see what is going on. Like always he would want attention through his actions. I pulled into the driveway finding most of the employees outside looking scared as hell. Mrs. Duke, I don't think that you should be here at all, not now. I can handle him. Where is he? In his office. He said that everyone must leave the mansion taking a day of. All right, please take the day of I'll take care of this. I said walking through the front door. This house felt cold as if death was written all over it. I walked down the long as hallway hearing glasses break, making my heart skip a beat. As soon as the door went open I heard a glass being thrown against the wall near me, making me rethink my decision. As soon as silence took over I opened the door with full force finding him on his chair with a whiskey in his hand glaring at me. I noticed the firearm on the table with a piece of paper in his hand. Come to gloat? He asked with a smirk on his face. He smelled of clean alcohol making my nose burn. He looked horrible he looked like he hadn't slept in days nor shaved. He took a sip of his whiskey then looked at the paper in front of him. I saw how broken glass covered most of the surface of the floor. I have never seen him like this, not even when he lost the deal with the Russians. I took a step closer thanking myself for wearing boots on this day. Our eyes met once again and all that I could see was a broken man that had no hope left in him. As soon as I walked up to him my heart sank when I saw what he was holding in his hands. Where did you get that? I asked softly holding my tears back. Where you left it? He said taking another sip of his whiskey. It was not your fault Raphael. I said trying to fix what I had broken, yet I could not. I have never seen him like this yet this was all of my fault. I, I am not better than him, yes, he did hurt me and I could live with that but not with this. I tried to get closer to get the picture of our ultrasound only to see Raphael snatching it away from me. He stood up walking towards his office door opening it. Leave now. I'm going nowhere until I have seen you eaten and had proper sleep. It is a little too late for that don't you think? I tried to walk up to him only to see the anger rising in his eyes. Your chapter ended here today Emily, now leave I cannot bear to see you any longer. Tough shit Raphael, you're done with me when I say so. I said while walking into the kitchen. I decided to make some steak and chips since he loved his steak. I felt his eyes piercing right through me with hatred. You can wash up dinner will be ready in a few. I said while my back faced him. I could not bear to look at him, 
not like this. I create this beast with my own words. How are you so calm about this? He asked me making me think of my pain. I, I said before the back door flew open. Diane came in with a worried face walking up to her son embracing him. He tried to pull away, but she didn't give him that satisfaction. What have you done to my son? Mother, please. Don't mother me. You should leave this place and never come back. Look what you bring to people, to your own family. She said walking up to me with a straight face. Raphael stood up walking up to us then looked at both of us. What has she done to her own family? He asked waiting for a reply from his mother. She dragged their name through the mud when she left you. Luckily Bridget is here to fix everything. Bridget? Fuck do you hear yourself, mother? He said throwing his hands in the air of frustration. I don't want her mother, fuck I despise her more than before, yet here you were standing trying to tell Emily what disappointment she is. Have you ever thought of yourself? He said making me feel even more of a drag. I killed his feelings, yet he stood up for me as he promised. I'm pregnant Raphael. We heard a low voice say from behind us only to find Bridget feeling her tummy with a smile. Raphael. I heard a soft voice saying from behind me. I'm pregnant Raphael. What the fuck was happening? I turned around to find Bridget with a smile while her one hand was on her flat stomach. My mother rushed up to her embracing her with a huge smile. The happiness was filled in the room except me and Emily. That is wonderful, isn't it, Raphael? My mother asked looking at me with sparkling eyes. I could think of anything to say at this moment, yet the words was not there. I looked at Emily then saw how her eye color faded. She was upset with this news, but why would she be I mean she hated me with all that she had in her. I looked at Bridget with an emotionless face. You can't be Bridget, we use protection. At first yes, but not after the few times Raphael. You're going to be a father aren't you happy? Her concerning voice made me feel ill. We both know that this is not going to save our relationship, Bridget. I know Raphael, I just want the baby to know his or her father is that too much to ask for. Emily can you please leave? This is a family situation, and as you probably know that you will no longer be welcome here. My mother said looking at Emily with a smile. Emily was about to move when I had stopped her in her tracks. Emily will always be welcome here and in my life as well as in my bed. I think that you should be the one that is not welcome here anymore mother. I said then looked at Bridget. If I was you I would pray that you're carrying my child, cause if this is one of your stunts Bridget I will tear you apart with my own two hands. I looked at them then at Emily who stood as silent as a mouse, wishing that she was not part of this. You knew didn't you? I asked her in a furious tone. It doesn't matter anymore Raphael, a few minutes you were in a state, because we lost ours yet here you were given a second chance. She said wiping her hands up with the napkin only to walk past me. I felt like an idiot. After Emily left us I left the room to take a cold shower. How could this even be possible? As soon as I was done I called my butler asking him to come to my room. I waited patiently for him while thinking of Emily and me. Every time that things seems to go right shit always seems to show up at my front door. Sir may I come in? The butler asked with a knock on the door. Yes, come in and close the door behind you. I said walking up and down the room. How can I be of assistance sir? Get me all the tapes that were taken a few weeks ago in my hideout as well as two guards on Bridget and my mother. Yes sir. And get me the trackers that went into the woods to find Emily. Yes sir anything else? he asked before he bowed his head to leave. I knew that something was up with this whole drama with Bridget and I needed to sort it out before anything bad happens. I sent an email to my assistant saying that I will be taking leave for the next few days until she replied to me with a fascinating email. Sir, there is a meeting of the Russian that will take place tomorrow with the Petrovas and a representative of Roberto's company. Would you like to reschedule? I could not possibly let this slip out of my hands. I have been waiting for this opportunity for over two years. The Petrova family is under a magnifying glass for the police, since their undercover business took a toll on them. I might have thrown a hint somewhere in the pipeline, cause they had pissed me off by taking one of my deals from me. That is when it hits me like a brick to the face. 
What if the attacks on Emily were actually from them? The night went slowly by with the thoughts running through my head of Emily and Bridget. Emily. It was a restless night although I got an hour to sleep. How could any of this be possible out of the blue my alarm went of leaving me to get up? I took a hot shower then got dressed in my blue channel office dress that had a slit by the right side. I made a bubble and let most of my hair fall behind my back with the half curls. I had hoops in and added a watch to complete the look. My makeup was well done a bit natural with a smoky eye and perfect black stilettos to cover the look. I took my handbag and left for the office. As I came out of the elevator Lucas was waiting for me with a cup of coffee. I walked up to him wondering what the hell was going on here. Coffee? No thank you, I will be late for my meeting. I said laying out of my teeth. I was Pinocchio right now even he would laugh at the way my nose will be growing. I understand what you are going through M. He tried to get my attention only to see that I had no interest in him so whatever. I walked past Zack's office seeing him packing up. I stopped in my tracks walking into his office with a blank face he looked up. Emily. Taking Bridget with you? Hell no, now that she is in town I asked for a transfer to another site. Well that is too bad, I would have liked it if you could have taken her with you. I turned on my heels stopping by the door once I had heard his words. She tried to kill my family a week ago Emily. I don't believe you. I said turning around to face him. Bridget was a selfish bitch, but she would never try to kill someone. Raffle can stop her Emily, but me and you don't stand a chance. He said continuing backing up. She is going to take everything from you if you don't back off from Raffle, the start was your child what do you think is next? Yeah, then why didn't they ask for any ransom? I. You know what I mean, just be careful Em. He said kissing me on my cheek before he left. I turned around a few minutes after that walking towards the boardroom only to find Raphael and Lucas there with one of the Petrova family members. Roberto was missing in action like always leaving me to do the business. As I walked into the boardroom a man walked up to me with a smile. You must be the famous Emily Duke. Yes, it is a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Rodionoff. The pleasure is all mine, please take a seat. He said showing me to the seat across Raphael. I saw how Raphael threw daggers at me, yet I was just happy that he was back to normal. I am looking for a very good investment and between the two companies, I am unsure who to pick. So please do tell me why I should pick the company that you represent. He said in a snarky voice looking at all of us. I heard how Lucas tried to talk to the man only to be shut down ever time, so I asked the question that made the whole boardroom quiet. With all due respect Mr. Rodionoff, but I don't think that you are here to listen to our proposals. I said with a smile while walking up to him. Oh, really and what am I doing here Mrs. Duke? He asked hearing Raphael growl in a low key. She is going to take everything from you if you don't back off from Raffle, the start was your child what do you think is next? It was a kidnapping. Yeah, then why didn't they ask for any ransom? I. You know what I mean, just be careful M. He said kissing me on my cheek before he left. I turned around a few minutes after that walking towards the boardroom only to find Raphael and Lucas there with one of the Petrova family members. Roberto was missing in action like always leaving me to do the business. As I walked into the boardroom a man walked up to me with a smile. You must be the famous Emily Duke. Yes, it is a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Rodionoff. The pleasure is all mine, please take a seat. He said showing me to the seat across Raphael. I saw how Raphael threw daggers at me, yet I was just happy that he was back to normal. I am looking for a very good investment and between the two companies, I am unsure who to pick. So please do tell me why I should pick the company that you represent. He said in a snarky voice looking at all of us. I heard how Lucas tried to talk to the man only to be shut down ever time, so I asked the question that made the whole boardroom quiet. With all due respect Mr. Rodionoff, but I don't think that you are here to listen to our proposals. I said with a smile while walking up to him. Oh, really and what am I doing here Mrs. Duke? He asked hearing Raphael growl in a low key. Raphael. Fuck she was so hot standing up with those perfect long legs and tight dress. I felt a bit uneased when I saw her walking up to one of my enemies, 
her cleavage was clear as daylight and that made me mad as fuck, but I kept quiet only to hear what she had said to him. She has become a different type of person and I should say that I like this side of her even more. Cause your company is under the spotlight, so why would we risk everything for you after all you did do business with the Petrova family? She said with a sweet and innocent voice. Fuck she was good at business and in bed. Bridget could never be Emily not in million years. My phone buzzed with a message from my butler which left me extremely happy. Sir we have found the two men that kidnapped Mrs. Hunt. I will keep them in the storage units by the docks. Who knew what fun was on the horizon to come after all's fair in love and war? Emily. Everyone kept quiet only to hear a deep voice from beside me, seeing that Raphael stood up buttoning his jacket closed. Mississippi Duke is right Rodianoff. Your company is under a lot of stress as well as the Petrovas. I think that we are done here. He set about to walk out of the door when Rodionov stopped him by calling his name. Miss Duke, what do you propose we do? You invest in our company while we invest in Hans Towers, that is the only way you will be able to invest in Hans Towers since your company is under the magnifying glass as if a few weeks ago. I said looking at him with a devilish smile. I knew Raphael wanted this deal as bad as anything. I knew that it would be impossible for him to go straight to Raphael since Hans Towers were under very strict rules. Plus let's face it I needed to find a way to get my daughter back now that Bridget is back in town. How do I know that I can trust both of you? Rodionov asked with a laugh leaving Raphael to turn around to face us. Leap of faith I guess, if you're willing to take the chance I can work with this deal. Raphael is right. People have done it before as you invested in the Petrovas while they invested in George. His eyes turned dark as if I was seeing right through him. I saw the lust in Raphael's eyes once I stood right in front of him. Do we have a deal, Mr. Haunt? I asked with a cocky smile. On one condition. He said looking into my eyes deeper than facing Rodianoff. What will that be, Mr. Haunt? I work with Emily and Emily alone if not the deal is of. He said leaving me to think twice about what had just taken place. I think we have people to do most of the work, plus it would just be sightseeing. I think Mr. Rodionov needs your advice, not a total stranger's love, am I right Rod? Raphael said while his hands were in his pockets. He asked Rodionov as if they were best friends and with a simple nod Rodionov agreed to his selfish terms. Raphael is right, who better than you? I would like to discuss this further laddies and gentlemen, but unfortunately, I have to leave. It was a pleasure to do business with both of you. He said shaking our hands before leaving the boardroom. Raphael stood his ground and with a smirk on his face, he looked at me from head to toe. Take a picture it will last longer. I said turning around only to find one of the Petrovas looking at me with total rage. He walked up to me with rage streaming through his body with a quick step he was now standing in front of me. I felt how the tension in the room started to stir up. You selfish little bitch. He said leaving everyone in the room to gawk at him with terror. Raphael tried to say something, but I was over it that guys can just walk all over me like I was worth shit so I showed him to shut the fuck up and let the man speak. Let's hear what this asshole has to say. I said hearing a few gasps in the air. Luckily it was just us that stood there and no outsider. You think that you can just take this away from me sweetheart, you are wrong. Really and why is that ha? Huh? I asked even more interested in his answer. I could feel Raphael backing up a bit looking amused with whatever is happening now. You should watch your attitude it might get you in trouble little slut. You know what, I am tired of men thinking that they fucking own me. You might be a big shot and an arms dealer with lab rats that do your killing but let me tell you something asshole you failed not me. If you think of threatening me I would rethink that, cause if I can take this deal away from you imagine what I can do to you in the press. I said seeing how his face turned pale with a lack of oxygen I turned around leaving the room without any hassles. I walked straight to Zack's office as fast as I could. You are going nowhere Zack, you have some explaining to do. I said with an alarming voice. Raphael. I saw how she left the boardroom with a swift move shaking her side to side. She had changed and it has become a very high concerning point for me. The Petrovas was under the magnifying glass, 
but that did not stop them from killing innocent people. She will be the next target of the Petrova family since she just took one of their clients away from them. Once she had left he walked up to me with a sick smile he said that he liked that type of woman. In all of my years of marriage, I made sure that no one knew about her up until now. My fist was already in a ball shape ready to hit his face, but I stopped and threw him a death glare. Don't even think about it, I will fucking end you. I said then left the boardroom. I headed straight for the elevator when I saw Emily coming out of an office that seemed to be Zach's office. He threw a smile then walked past me as if nothing has ever happened. Emily. Later that evening I left to grab dinner with Zach since I felt uncomfortable with him coming over to my house. I met up with him at a small restaurant on the east side of town. He wore his formal tux with his hair all wet and messy. He was quite the catch just sorry that I knew what type of person he was. He waved his hand to show me where he was seated. A small smile came across my face hiding what I felt deep down inside. I walked up to him taking a seat across him. A glass of red wine and a whiskey for me. Please make it a bottle of wine. I said leaving Zach to glare at me. Cut to the chase Zach what is going on? Bridget is dangerous Emily, she is not that lovable person that everyone thinks she is. Says the one who ran away with that lovable girl. I snapped back at him with a bit of irritation. The waitress brought us our drinks then left again since Zach wanted to talk a bit more private as if the het felt that the walls were listening in on us. Yes, I was in love with Bridget so in love that I turned against my morals. She turned me against my own beliefs. Why is that? We were indeed in love when we left for Europe until I found a job at one of the richest families in Russia. The Petrovas? Correct, I worked most of the time leaving our relationship on a hill, yet I never gave up until one day that I saw her true colors. What she replaced you with a Petrova? I asked seeing the hurt in his face made me feel bad. I knew of betrayal the same way as he did, yet here I sat hoping to find a different story and a different lie. You're right she replaces me in a wink of eye I tried to fight for her telling her that I will lead the Petrovas only to be threatened by her. A week before the police came crashing down on the Petrovas I was asked to do a deal by the docks for them until Roberto found me. Wink of an eye. He saved me since the whole business deal by the docks was a massive setup. They were going to blame you, they wanted to make you look like the killer. Yes, but before anything could have taken place it blew up into their faces. I flew from them and Bridget before anything bad could happen. So you came to work for Roberto's company? just to stay out of their way right? Yes, but when Bridget found me the other day she warned me about even thinking of going go, raffle, Emily, she threatened to kill my baby sister. His words were like daggers into my heart. What is her plan with me? I said out loud without noticing it until he answered my question in a straightforward way. She wants raffle back, word on the streets is that she has pissed of the Petrovas by sleeping with one of the elder brothers. I felt how my face lost all color so I took a huge sip of red wine. I looked up at him seeing him looking at me with guilty eyes. So what, she wants fame and fortune? Not anymore M, she wants to be him so to do that. She needs to kill him and make sure that there is no heir to his fortune? Yes, you may think that your kidnapping was just normal people trying to get ransom, yet they never ask for any. M, she killed your baby and she will do it again in a blink of an eye. Bridget is not a killer, a bitch yes, but not this. Really, why go through all of the trouble to show up now, claiming that she had been kidnapped and raped? Guilty conscious. She is sick Emily, she has been in a mental hospital four times, now please tell me that you believe me. Yeah, I must tell Raphael this. I tried to get up only to be stopped by Zach's strong hands. No, he already knows, plus if you go near him now she will know Emily. I trust you enough and believe me when I say that I care about you. She hates you and despises you, so stay out of her way for the next few days until we have a plan. Well, that is going to be a bit hard. I said downing the entire glass of red wine hearing how he asked me why would it be hard. Cause I just took a deal from the Petrovas which makes me the number one on their hit list. So I just got involved in the most extremely shit of all time. So I just got involved in the most extremely shit of all time. I guess I had my work cut out for me since... I was now the number one hit on the list. After our dinner, I went home to get a good night's sleep. I made double sure that the alarms were switched on and that all of the doors were locked. I knew that if they wanted to get in hell they would have been in here already, but something is stopping them from coming after me. 
I must have fallen asleep on the couch when I heard my alarm going off. I got up taking a shower and wore one of my most favorite dresses a black sweetheart neckline with a blue lacy effect. I wore my heels and did my hair in a messy ponytail. The makeup was natural, yet elegant with Chanel perfume and my watch around my wrist I was ready to start my day. I got some coffee for the kitchen when my assistant called saying that I have a meeting with Mr. Haunt at the following address. I knew what that address was since I worked for them. I was in love with this site and with all honesty, I would have invested in it as well, the only sad part was is that I was the boring girl who never got a chance to learn anything until Raphael's father showed me some of the ropes. I was so in my thoughts that I had forgotten to answer my assistant. Yeah, thank you I will be there in a few minutes. Kindly just let him know that I am on my way, I don't want to stand there waiting for him like an idiot. I said then hung up the phone. I took my coffee then got into the car driving towards the site. I felt a bit uncomfortable with this deal, yet I had to see it through after all I am not going to get killed for anything. Raphael. I waited by the site looking at my watch time and again. I got here early just in case she tried to pull a stunt as well as to get away from home. Since Bridget announced her pregnancy, she and my mother had been talking about it day and night. I remember how I felt when Emily was pregnant that feeling was the most amazing feeling in the world, yet this time it had felt different. Almost like a piece of me was missing and no matter what I do that baby will still be mine, yes it was a mistake and it was mine. I saw a car pulling up by the parking area. It was Emily with her loud music. I stood there waiting for her by the entrance, thinking if I moved she would get a different idea, maybe I wanted a different idea. Fuck she was so hot when it came to an argument, she made sure that she knew her steps as well as her cards. She got out of the car looking like a total goddess. Her long dark hair was in a ponytail that hung down by her back. She wore a beautiful black number that complemented her body perfectly, while her long legs gave me goosebumps. Her lips were a rosy color that made my member hard as fuck. Looking at her perfect lips made me think back to what she used to do to me with that sexy mouth. Can we make this quick I have another meeting in a few minutes that will require my attention as well. She snapped at me leaving me wanting her even more. How the fuck have I missed this side of her while we were married? I kept asking myself the same questions over and over. I just agreed to her statement then showed her to follow me. I showed her the entire site leaving us at the end of the meeting. We came to one of the last rooms of the site leaving her to look around like usual she would be looking for a fault. I stood there watching her every move closely. She had turned into this beautiful masterpiece overnight fit for a king, yet she hated every bit of me. I could not blame her at all. Look, Raphael, I know that you want this deal more than anything in this world. Really? Yes, now let's talk business. She said taking a step towards me hearing how her heels made a loud noise on the ground towards me. She looked so fucking sexy right now that I was detaining myself. We are talking about business Miss Duke, this place is a good enough investment and we both know it. I said with a stern voice. Oh it is perfectly alright, but I was thinking a bit more about our situation. She said breaking eye contact. I'm listening. I said cool and calmly to her with a huge smile on my face. I want my rights back to see Alexis full time as it was. And you and me? There is no you and me Raphael, not this time not for the next few centuries. She said raising her voice a bit. Emily I'm the only one who can protect you. I know, but you're also the only one who can rip me to pieces. She said looking deep into my eyes. I made a mistake. You got Bridget pregnant and for that Raphael, I will never forgive you, maybe one day you will to see the pain that I had to go through. Emily please. Raphael, I will give you this deal if I can get my daughter back. I'm not asking for much here. Without any hesitation, I pulled my phone out dialing my butler's number. As soon as I heard his voice asking if he could help with something I looked out of the window. Please get Alexis things ready for this evening, after dinner, I will be dropping her by her mother. I said in a cold tone. Yes sir. That will be all thank you. I said dropping the phone then turning around to see her beautiful face. I took a step closer to her finding that she doesn't move a muscle makes me even more anxious. 
You will always be her mother, Emily. Don't ever think that I will keep her from you. I know. Then if you know why are you suggesting a business deal? I asked while I took a string of hair from her neck. She looked lost for a few moments until her eyes met mine. I know what the Petrovas do, Raphael. With a quick move I pulled her into my arms lifting her chin so that she can look into my eyes. I did not know how she had figured out all of this on her own, but she was smart enough to hide it for so long until now. I could handle killing the entire family line of Petrovas, but I could not handle the fact of living without her. She learned most of my tricks and trades so I could not be mad at her not for pushing me away nor for hating me. No one will ever touch you, do you hear me Em? I asked in a furious tone with a simple nod on my lips landed on her until she pushed me away. I will let you know what the answer will be, have a lovely day. She said before she left me standing alone. After she left I took this as a moment to visit my friends down by the docks. I pulled up seeing how my men were busy training. I might have built my empire with money, but half of it was built through blood. I had loyal men working for me, they knew what I was capable of, yet my enemies still tried to take me on. I walked into the warehouse seeing two men tied up to a chair with blindfolds on. As soon as they heard footsteps they started to scream. I heard the panic in their voices. What a rush this will be! I took of my jacket giving it to my butler then rolled up my sleeves. I walked up to them taking the blindfold of. Once their faces saw me they turned even paler. The irony was that one was yelling for help while the other was begging for his life. I threw a fake smile then walked up to the table taking along a blade into my hands. I turned around facing them with these last few words. It is time to sing like a canary boy. Their eyes had changed into complete fear. I carved their tattoos of from their body hearing their pain gave me a bit of satisfaction, but not completely. Stop please I beg of you. When my wife begged did you show her any mercy? I said as I walked over to my table with all of my toys on. I could not decide what to do next, but one thing I knew was that they will be tortured. I asked one of my men to bring blood bags from the refrigerator that was in the back then looked back at them. Look we kept her alive didn't we? Oh yes you did but you kept her alive so that she can bleed out, and do you boys, know what that meant? I asked in a calm tone leaving one of them to peace themselves. I took a bear trap from my table walking to them laying it on the ground before one of them. I then looked at the man that sat before me. They looked so powerless at this moment. So I will ask you one question and if you lie I will close this trap on your bare foot, Frankenstein. I said placing his foot in the trap while mine was on the lever. He nodded in agreement, leaving me to ask the questions. Did Petrova send you? I asked and once he said no that's when my foot had hit the lever causing the trap to slam shut into his foot. He screamed in pain. Wrong fucking answer shumbag. I said walking up to take a baseball bat. The room was filled with blood and screams, yet I still felt unsatisfied. I walked up to his friend and looked at him with a straight face I told him that it was his turn. Please, please. You see I am a nice man until you fuck me over and you two did more than fuck me over. Fuck, you took my unborn child from me now remind me why I should have mercy on the both of you? Look I'll talk just please stop the torture. He said then his friend replied to his statement. Don't tell him anything. He is just going to kill me and you at the end. If we die we can at least die in dignity. With those words I lost my cool walking up to him. You're right about one thing you're going to die, but in style. What do you mean? Finally a good question. You see you took from me so now I must take from you. Meaning that I know that you have a wife and kids. So here is what I was thinking, how about we execute them in front of you while my men rape your wife's the other can kill the. Don't you fucking dare, they did nothing. So did my fucking wife. I screamed at him with rage I hit him with the baseball bat in his stomach, causing him to spit out some blood. Please I will talk, just leave our family out of this. Good choice, now tell me who sent you for the very last time. The Petrovas, they found out that you ratted them out. Why Emily? She is your weakness, Bridget was never your weakness and he saw that too late. Was Bridget even kidnapped? Shut your fucking mouth Cole. You are starting to get on my nerves cunt. With that, I took my gun landing a shot right through his skull. Cole passed out of shock leaving me to grab a chair waiting for the bastard to wake up. Emily. A week has passed and it was the weekend. 
Finally, this was my of weekend since Alexis wanted to visit her grandfather. I dropped her a by Mr. Haunt then left to change since Stacy wanted to go out on the town a bit. I dressed in a golden shimmery dress with hoops and matching high heels. My hair was loose with a few loose curls with golden hoops I was ready for this. I needed this break from Raphael and the world. I drove up to pick Stacy up so that we can go downtown. We drove to one of the best clubs on the east side of town. We parked outside seeing the line outside with people waiting to go and made me rethink this entire evening. Stacy took my hand and walked past the bouncer with no hesitation at all. Once we were inside we got our favorite drinks mine was vodka while hers was a martini like always we took some tequila shots then left to find a table near the dance floor. This felt so unreal at this moment that it felt like a dream come true. I should say that I missed this side of life, Raphael used to do this with me, but after a few things changed a lot. I felt alive more than ever before. Our song came on with a quick move Stacy and I was on the dance floor busting our moves. Most of the females were on the floor some alone while other had their partners with them. We danced for hours until we went to take another shot before heading to the dance floor. I felt a hand slipping down on my waist leaving me to turn around to see who it was I stopped immediately. Zach? I didn't picture you as the club type. Well, it is girls night so sue me. Maybe I will. He said before he crashed his lips on mine. I didn't even try to fight it this time. I needed to get Raphael out of my system for good even if it meant sleeping with the enemy of the one person I had loved. I threw my hands around his neck while our bodies moved with the rhythm of the music. Before things went too far he asked that we leave and go somewhere private. We headed back to my house while I made coffee Zach waited outside patiently for me. I took our coffees out only to find him with a huge smile on his face. As I handed him his coffee I took a seat right next to him. You're different Emily. I get that a lot you know. Bridget found out about the deal that you landed with Raffle, she has been keeping a close eye on you. Those words sent shivers down my spine. Let her, I'm not scared of her anymore. I know and that scares me. I have been pushed around by too many people far too long, so for me to back of now will mean that I had worked hard for nothing. I know, but promise me that you will come to me if something is up or at least Raffle. I will trust me. I said taking a sip of coffee then I heard a knock coming from the front door. I had no idea who it would be in the middle of the night. I walked up to the door looking through the glass only to see Alexis crying. The moment I had opened the door she stormed past me straight to her bedroom. Bridget found out about the deal that you landed with Raffle, she has been keeping a close eye on you. Those words sent shivers down my spine. Those words sent shivers down my spine. Let her, I'm not scared of her anymore. I know and that scares me. He said looking into my eyes. I have been pushed around by too many people far too long, so for me to back of now will mean that I had worked hard for nothing. I know, but promise me that you will come to me if something is up or at least raffle. I will trust me. I said taking a sip of coffee then I heard a knock coming from the front door. I had no idea who it would be in the middle of the night. I walked up to the door looking through the glass only to see Alexis crying. The moment I had opened the door she stormed past me straight to her bedroom. Where is Alexis? Mind telling me why she had just come storming into my house with tears in her eyes? How about you explain where you have been? He asked almost like he owned me making me mad as hell. Not your business, now can you please tell me what the hell is going on with my daughter? My father stopped by to pick up a few documents, while we were busy in my office she and Bridget got into a fight. Fight you have to be fucking kidding me, Raphael. I said turning around walking to Alexis' room. Raphael. I was about to follow Emily when I heard someone in the kitchen. I walked up slowly to the kitchen pulling my gun out only to see who it was. I walked into the kitchen staring him down. What the fuck are you doing in Emily's house, Zach? The nightcap. He said leaving me to push him up against the wall. My hands were around his neck with the thought of him touching Emily drove me crazy. My man already informed me about their little kiss in the club which made me mad as fuck. What the hell is going on in here? I heard Emily's voice coming from behind me. I took a step back letting go of Zach. 
I turned to face Emily seeing her face right now made me regret half of my decisions. What the fuck is he doing here? None of your business. Look hell, leave the two of you to talk. See you tomorrow, baby. Zack said to Emily walking past her out by the front door. Every step he took made me think of what I could have done to him. You just keep surprising me, Emily, but this oh this is outstanding. You really outdid yourself this time. After my encounter with Emily last night, I could barely sleep. I tried to sleep only to find myself wandering of to the thoughts of her and Zack being together. I knew she had hated me and I understood why, yet I was unsure about her feelings towards me. It was two in the afternoon already and the first time that I got up and out of bed heading towards the shower. I stood in the cold shower for almost 20 minutes when I had decided to grab something to eat. I walked to the kitchen finding Bridget in with a bucket of ice cream. She reminded me of Emily at that moment. Flashback. Raph, wake up. I got woken up with a slap on my cheeks. I was hardly awake when I heard her soft voice once again in my ear. Her words were sweet and sexy. Raph wakes up, I want some ice cream and I would like you to get his please. I got up and walked downstairs looking for ice cream only to find none. We were all out of ice cream. How was that even possible? I walked upstairs finding Emily fast asleep on my side of the bed. I felt happy for the first time in decades this empty house felt like home. I climbed in next to her tiny body holding her as tightly against mine. Flashback ends. I'm sorry I will leave. What happened last night between you and Alexis? Nothing happened Raphael, now if you don't mind I need to go. She tried walking past me, but I stopped her dead in her tracks. As soon as my hand touched her skin I felt sick to my stomach. I hated having her still in my presence, but the fact that she was carrying my child changed the entire game for me. Sick your is down now. I said in a dominating voice and an instant she sat down. Now care to explain why my daughter was in tears after spending only five minutes with you in a room? She is my daughter to Raphael. You don't get to make that statement anymore Bridget, you left her all alone even when you were here. What the hell are you talking about Raphael? She asked raising her voice at me with one look she calmed down. You think that I don't know that half of the time that you were out sipping tea with what no whore, Emily had to look after Alexis. You dragged her name through the mud while she was nothing but good to you. Oh please, we both had jobs and images to uphold, and she offered to help out. Alexis is our daughter and not some toy that you can paw around. You never wanted kids that was the plan. Your plan? Now I will only be asking this one more time why was my daughter in a state last night? I just told her the truth about me being her mother and that she should show me more respect. Those words left me stunned with a laugh Bridget's face turned pale. I was about to say something when the butler came and handing me a phone. I heard crying on the other side of the line leaving me to question the butler. Raphael, listen I'm on my way to the hospital with Alexis. What? Why? I said taking my car keys running towards my car. She had trouble breathing. I'll meet you there. Emily. I rushed with Alexis towards the emergency room as fast as I could. As soon as they saw us they brought a bed then placed her on it pushing her towards a room. I followed after only to be stopped by one of the nurses. Ma'am is she allergic to anything that we should know of? No, she is not. What is going on? I asked with tears on my face. She is struggling to breathe it is just a lack of oxygen, but we can tell you for sure after we had a proper test run. He said then left I felt a strong hand on my shoulder as I turned around, there he stood in all of his glory. Raphael came and looked as shocked as I did. Without hesitation I started to cry not holding back only to feel his strong arms around my body made me feel a bit better. We must have stayed like that for an hour when I heard someone calling us from behind. The doctor walked up to us saying that she had a panic attack and that it is not that rare. Raphael asked that they must run even more tests just to make sure. When it came to Alexis he always tooks the extra mile. Can we see her? Of course she had asked for the two of you. He said Raphael and I entered the room finding our baby girl smiling on the bed. I gave her a big hug then Raphael kissed her on her forehead. How are you feeling baby? Raphael asked her with a smile. Fine daddy, sorry mommy for scaring both of you. 
Lollipop did that lady say anything to you that might have upset you? She said that you are not my real mommy and that I will be the same as you a disappointment. With those words, I lost my mind. I could take all the hits and pain, but this was something different. Where are you going? I'm just going to get some of her clothes then I will be back. Thinking of the most believable lie in the book and thank heavens that he bought it. I got into my car driving towards Raphael's mansion as soon as I stopped by the entrance his butler came running towards me with a pale face. He tried to calm me down, but I wanted to hear nothing. I never wanted my life to turn out this way, yet it did in a chaotic way of a fucking circus. I walked into the house asking the first maid where she was only to be pointed towards the living room. I walked in to find her reading a book about unborn babies. The most ironic part was that she had a baby, yet she left her all alone to fight for herself. I walked up to her slapping the book out of her hands. She looked shocked then started to laugh. Well well well, look at what the cat is dragged in. I'm here to give you a friendly warning and take note that it will be the last. The last of what sister? If you ever try to harm my daughter again or so much be disrespectful towards her I will fucking beat you up. You will beat a pregnant lady? Yes, I will maybe then we could be even. What are you talking about? She asked shocked looking at me as if I was a ghost that stood in front of her. They say that blood is thicker than water, yet I feel completely different now I should say one thing to you and take this as a friendly warning. Please we all know that your mouth is bigger than your actual bite. She said only to push my anger a bit more. I was at that point where I was ready to strangle her with my own bare hands. I looked at her then placed my hands on my hips. You forgot something Bridget I was married to haunt one of the most powerful men, if you think that he is scary you haven't met me at my fullest. I said looking at her every second that I said something looked even more scared as shit. She might have an international killer on her side but I was not going to lose against her not today and not tomorrow. Please, just leave before I call the cops and have you charged. Charged with what, Bridget? I asked in a sarcastic tone. I will have you charged for trespassing. She said standing up with her eyes fixed on mine, I started to laugh at her. Please if you want to charge me with something, at least charge me with something decent. I hate you. She said and that is when I pulled out my weapon firing one shot to the roof seeing how she backed up immediately leaving me a bit satisfied with her reaction. Now there is another story to add to the family book don't you think is. I said ready to leave I turned around facing her one last time. Stay away from Alexis and me if you still want air in those plastic lungs of yours. I was busy making a hot sauce for the spaghetti when Stacy came through the door with Alexis behind her. The two of them looked like Batman and Robin together. Stacy had a bag with her leaving me even more curious. Since Alexis is going to Raphael this weekend I thought me and you can have a girl's night? I guess there is booze in the bag right? You really should become a fortune teller. She said with a laugh taking out two bottles of red wine. Alexis left to play with her Barbie dolls leaving me and Stacy to enjoy ourselves. Stacy took out the glasses and poured some wine with ice cubes in. She handed me my glass with a smile taking a seat by the kitchen table. So how are things between you and Raphael? We haven't spoken since the night in the hospital. I said taking a sip of my wine hoping that she would drop this conversation, but with my luck, she will just ask even more questions. Not even about Alexis? Nope, I meant it when I said that our relationship is over. So you haven't seen him since the hospital two weeks ago? I said with annoyance. I heard the doorbell ringing knowing that it will be Raphael, cause my phone buzzed endlessly. I had my assistant send most of the documents to him on my behalf hoping that he would buy the trick, yet he did not maybe the first two times after that nope. I declined most of his calls and deleted his messages. To a surprise, I was busy getting him out of my system. I saw Alexis running towards her room after she came from the front door making me a bit upset. I had asked her to get her stuff ready so that when her father comes around she can leave easily without us seeing each other. I took my wine taking a sip then walked over to the fridge taking out some ingredients to make a salad for us. As I turned around I was face to face with the sexy devil. Raphael stood in front of me with a smirk on his face. 
He wore black jeans with a simple plain white shirt. He had his white BMW Pumas with his messy hair, I was staring so bad that the drool must have escaped from my mouth. His shirt exposed most of his muscles especially his V-fucking line. I looked down as soon as I realized that his eyes were watching me. Sorry, Alexis just forgot her teddy and the door was open so. It is fine Raph Alexis mentions something about packing her blankly, I will just quickly grab it. Stacy said leaving the room as fast as possible leaving us alone with tension in the room. I then decided to open another bottle of wine since I was going to get drunk tonight. You have been avoiding me. You call it avoiding while I, on the other hand, call it cutting ties, now I will check on Alexis I can see that you are in a hurry. I said walking past him only to be stopped by him. His grip on my hand was tight. With a quick move, he pulled me into his arms kissing me deeply. I tried to fight against it and failed miserably. I am still going to fight for you do you understand me? I rather have you not. A second ago you were not fighting against it, so baby girl deal with it and oh there is something else. The next moment Alexis came running in with Stacy right behind her. I stood there looking at them with a huge smile even if I just imagine what his next few words might be. Raphael gave Alexis his car keys then turned to me whispering into my ears with the most dominating voice that I had ever heard. That was the turn on that I had forgotten about. I hope next time that when you are aiming it will not be at the ceiling my love, oh and keep Zack out of sight he might just get hit by a car. He left shortly after his last words leaving me to reconsider my options. A few minutes ago he was out of my system and now I am back to square one. I walked back to the counter downing my enter glass of wine. I saw how Stacy was looking at me all judgmental. I knew what she was thinking since she had a huge smile on her face. The two of you are meant for each other. Stacy. No serious M, have you seen the way he has been looking at you lately? Get your mind out of the gutter. I said finishing our dinner. Raphael. After I stopped at my house I grabbed most of Alexis's stuff only to see her vanishing on me. You went without me? You were busy today Raphael, this is ours. You know I spoke to my assistant and she said that you didn't even call her in connection with the previous appointment. She must have forgotten or. Or what bridge? If you don't want this baby then I will leave and raise it on my own. Like you did with Alexis? No. I called my butler waving with approval to let him come closer. Yes, sir. Please arrange a doctor's appointment for Mrs. Duke tomorrow morning. Of course, sir. Anything else? Yes. Please contact the previous doctor as well I would like to have a word with. It's a lady and I won't go to any other doctor I trust this doctor more and feel comfortable. Well to bad Bridget, cause I am just doing what is right for the baby, not you. Are you sure about that? Oh, I am dead sure, by the way, I hope that there is a baby inside of you if not I will plant a bullet right here. I said pointing in between her eyes. Her entire face turned pale so pale that she almost looked like a ghost. I turn on my heels leaving her shocked by what is to come. I know what had happened a few nights ago with Emily and Bridget. I always thought protecting Emily against my deals was the best way, but I was starting to underestimate my opponent. I walked out getting into my car driving up to the docks where my men waited for me. I got out and walked up to them with a respectful bow they all kept quiet. I want you to deliver me a message to an old friend of mine, tell him if he wants a war he will get it. How would you like the message to be delivered boss? My head guard asked the most interested. Torture him a bit, but don't kill him he is after all needed for a very important deal. I said handing him a piece of paper with the address on it. I left them and drove down to Emily's house to see her lights still on. I decided to betray my feelings one last time. I took my phone from my pocket calling her from an unknown number. Emily, hello? Please come out I need to give you some documents. I said with a smile thinking of her beautiful face and gorgeous body. I will pick it up tomorrow Raphael. That won't work, your client had asked for it before midnight tonight. Fine, wait by the car I'm coming. I heard her sweet voice say before she hung up. I waited for her like the instruction she had provided. When she approached the car I got out only to see what she was wearing. The moonlight fell on her perfect hourglass body with her long hair hanging loose. I was about to take out the papers when I saw a slit in her black satin nightgown. 
Without thinking I pulled her closer trapping her in my arms against the car. Her chest was so tight against my body that she had extra cleavage. With my surprise she did not even try to fight against my actions. Her eyes changed into lust the same that I had in mind. You do look beautiful my love, now how about that punishment? I said with a smirk. I was trapped in his arms not knowing what to do. This felt so good that I could not think of moving a muscle. Once his sweet words were announced I felt how my entire body begged for mercy. I felt his body being pressed against mine with a dangerous heat. His lips crashed on mine without hesitation I kissed him back. At this moment it felt like the earth stood still and that it was just us left. I felt how he moved me without even moving from my lips. He laid me down in the back seat of his car. I felt how his hands moved over my body pulling my nightdress up. I knew what his intentions were at that moment. Raphael we need to stop. I said only to feel his burning kisses on my neck leaving a moan to escape from my mouth. This is your punishment my love. He said in a demanding voice which made my heart race even more. He removed my hands that were trying to stop him only to be placed above my head. My body became weak once our lips had met once again with an urgent need, I wanted him so badly like never before. This side of Raphael I didn't even know was possible. He was so demanding and I could not help but be submissive to his every touch and words. I stopped fighting against him since I had an urge to feel him beside me desperately. Behave baby or I will stop. He said sending electric vibes across my body. I grabbed him by his neck deepening the kiss. I felt his hard member being pressed against me. Stacy? Sleeping. I said with the last few words that I had left in me when I felt his hand moving my underwear to the side. His hands rubbed over my clit making my back arch of excitement. He entered me softly with that I lost all the senses that I had. He moved his kisses down my neck leaving me feeling intoxicated as fuck. His movement was slow yet deep with every kiss he made me gasp for air. My grip became tighter around his neck as he started to increase his pace leaving me to moan. He pressed his lips on mine when he went faster and deeper leaving me to plead with him. This excitement made me go crazy for this man. I felt how his one hand went between us rubbing my clit. His movement hit my G-spot even harder. I grabbed his shirt bidding my lower lip with the beautiful toxic feeling that was exploding inside of me. Come for me baby. Those words drifted me over the edge leaving me to release at the same time with him. I love you, Emily. He said pecking my lips. He pulled away fixing himself then helped me up to do the same. We need to stop doing this Raphael. I'll never stop Emily not until you're mine. He said with a meaningful voice. He kissed me goodnight then told me to go back into the house. I did as he requested without hesitation I left him and headed inside. Once I got inside Stacy was still fast asleep leaving me to get into bed without answering any questions. Raphael. I was up early and ready for what was waiting for me. I made an appointment with the doctor and had Bridget right where I wanted her. I got dressed then headed downstairs finding her already waiting on me. Are you ready? I asked taking my gun from my butler. What are you planning on doing with that? She asked in a fearful voice. Oh, this? I am just sticking to my word Bridget. I love you Raphael just know that. I bet you do dollface, now let's get going. I said walking past her. The drive towards the hospital was very quiet and tension filled the air. Once we had arrived at the hospital we went straight into the doctor's office. Good morning doctor, I assume that you have been informed about what we are doing here? Yes, Mrs. Duke you can just change into these clothes so that we can start. Bridget took the clothes from the doctor and headed into the bathroom. I knew that if she tries her luck here, she will fail miserably. I had the doctor prepared and informed about what I will do to him if he dares to lie to me. Bridget came from the bathroom and took a seat on the examination bed. The doctor told her to relax and explained the process in detail, he then opened her legs. I will be doing a transvaginal ultrasound. Now just relax for me. He said then took a long thin transducer that was covered in gel. He then pushed it into her vagina. 
I saw how images came up to the computer screen. He looked at her then at me. He removed the transducer then asked Bridget to get dressed while he wrote his report. I was running out of patience with this entire situation. After what seemed like ten minutes Bridget came out taking a seat next to me. I looked up at the doctor then saw his facial expression change. I have seen the pictures that you sent me Mr. Haunt, and I did my examination today only to find that the womb is clean. What do you mean clean? I have the pictures. Are you saying that Bridget is not a pregnant doctor? Indeed, Mr. Haunt. His words made me the happiest man on earth. I looked over at her seeing how her facial expressions has changed. I looked up to the doctor asking for some privacy. I know all about your silly little games Bridget, remember those cops that brought you back? I asked then she nodded with tears in her eyes. I killed them, but before they died they sung like fucking canaries about everything my dear, now give me one good reason why I should not end your life right here? You owe me that. With those words I slapped her through her face letting her fall on the ground. It's haunting season Bridget, leave the country before midnight if you would still like to see tomorrow. I said calling the butler into the room. Make sure she leaves the country and if she tries anything funny, shoot to fucking kill. I said leaving the hospital. I got into my car driving towards Emily's house. Emily. After Stacy left I took a long hot shower. I was about to get dressed when I heard someone banging on my front door. I knew that something was up. I took a small handgun from my bedside table heading downstairs. The banging got louder when I saw my death right in front of me. I opened the door taking a quick step back behind the door pointing at the gap. A tall figure came walking in and before I knew it I was backed up against the wall. You were about to shoot me love. Fuck Raphael, you scared the shit out of me. I said when he took the gun from me pushing the door close with his foot. The dominant side was showing of once again making me horny as shit. You're soaking wet my dear. Yes, I was taking a shower what on earth are you doing here? Finishing what we started last night. He said with a smirk on his face. Raphael. I took Bridget to the doctor today. Congratulations. Bridget is not pregnant Emily, now I am here to stay whether you like it or not. He said locking his eyes on mine. I felt how my heart raced with happiness without even noticing I had asked him if he is sure about what he is talking about. Yes, you're not going to fight her alone anymore Emily. You have me on your side. But. You are still a target until I kill the bastard who was behind this, so you will be stuck with me. Really? Yes, baby. I pushed him away walking up the stairs dropping the towel on the ground. Well then you better get sucking on something asshole, Emily. I got woken up by the amazing smell of freshly baked food. I got up remembering what had happened last night. I grabbed his shirt pulling it over my head then headed downstairs towards the kitchen. He stood there with his back facing me. He must have just gotten out of the shower as his messy hair was still wet. This was the best part to wake up every morning to see him like this. He was a Greek goddess with a hint of danger. Morning love, like what you see. He said taking me out of my thoughts. I looked up at him seeing a smirk on his face. Maybe. I said taking a step towards him when he picked me up placing me on the kitchen counter. Morning baby, how did you sleep? He asked not giving me time to answer him back as his lips were already on mine. He pulled away once my hands found his neck with a smile he landed a kiss on my forehead. Wonderful, now are you going to tell me what is your plan with Bridget? Am I have it all covered, now tell me are you hungry? Starving. I said with a smile feeling so much happiness taking over my entire body. I moved from him getting the orange juice from the fridge feeling his arms around my waist. How about you take a seat, while I do most of the work baby? Raphael. I can. You can nothing, take a seat and relax. He said leaving me a bit confused with his words. This man's attitude has changed tremendously in these last few months that I started to feel bad for divorcing him. I took a seat by the counter where he had already placed my delicious breakfast down. He took a seat next to me giving my orange juice while he had his coffee in his hands. I could not help but smile at this man that was in front of me. 
so I have a business meeting that will be for a few days in Hawaii. No worries, I can take care of Alexis while you attend to that. I felt how his strong arms lifted me placing me on top of his lap. I would like you to come with me, just the two of us. In Hawaii? Yes, princes. He said with a huge smile on his face leaving me to rethink what can happen while we are gone. Stop overthinking it Emily, Alexis will stay with my father since she loves spending time with her grandparents. I don't think that it would be a good idea. We're going to Hawaii together Emily, now there is one thing that you need to learn. And what is that Raph? The difference between a statement and a question. He said just before I felt his lips on my neck knowing that the breakfast that he had just made is not going to be eaten at all. He moved my legs open with a swift move his hand was rubbing my clit leaving moans to escape my mouth. He trailed kisses down my neck sending goosebumps down my spine. I felt how his grip got tighter around my as with a burning desire he kissed me deeply feeling his finger entering me. I threw my head back of the pleasure that I was getting, holding on to him until he picked me up placing me on the table. I stopped fighting for dominance letting him take over. I felt a warm feeling taking over my body looking up to see his eyes darkened with lust. I tried to move feeling how he added another finger making me bit my lip in frustration. What did I just ask you baby girl? He asked in a low growl making me feel high of all of the pleasure coming from his fingers. He stopped when I did not answer him thinking fast I had a comeback. The difference between a statement and a question. His fingers increased feeling his tongue sucking on my clit while his fingers were still moving at a quick pace. Shit. I stuttered feeling how he lifted my legs throwing them around his neck making me beg for mercy like never before. His fingers kept hitting my g-spot while he was busy licking my wet pussy. I screamed with pleasure and frustration. He was dominating in the bedroom as fuck and that made me fucking horny as shit. Don't fucking dare to come princes. He said feeling my walls tightening around him. I did as requested feeling tears escaping my eyes from the pleasure that was given to me. I felt how his one hand moved upwards towards my breast. Raphael. This will make you remember what is a statement my love. He said increasing his speed leaving me to scream even louder. He moved up crashing his lips on mine and with a whisper in my ear I reached my peak. Come for me princes. I felt weak with shivering all over my body. I felt his hands around my body picking me up bridal style walking towards the bathroom. We took a shower and I thanked the heavens above that Raphael was helping me. Raphael. After Emily and I took a shower I waited for her patiently to be dressed. I was thinking of making us public. What? She asked shock leaving me to laugh at her expression. You heard me correct Em, I am staying with you and that is that. What happened to taking it slow? I'm done taking it slow Emily, I need my queen and I do owe that to you. I said taking her hand placing it on my lap. I knew what I wanted and it took a long for me to get to this point. Her eyes changed into a lighter shade. Do remember the difference between a statement and a question? Yes, boss. She said with a giggle leading me to smile at her. We stopped at the house and my butler came out to greet us both. We headed inside to find Alexis fast asleep by the television. I threw a smile at Emily then showed her that I will be back soon with a simple nod. I left heading straight to my study feeling my butler following me all the way. As soon as I took a seat my butler came and closing the door behind him. He looked up to me asking for permission to speak with approval I nodded. Sir we have been tracking her since she left town. Good. Did she go to where we have been expecting? Yes, sir. Well, keep a close eye on them since the message will be delivered tonight. Indeed, sir. Anything else? Yes, set up a meeting with one of the magazines. I would like to go public with my relationship with Mrs. Haunt. I will have that arranged, sir. One last thing. Make sure to notify the housekeeper in Hawaii that I will be bringing a very special person. Of course, sir. Anything else? No, that will be all. Thank you. I said giving him permission to leave. I did a few paperwork before I headed back out to Emily and Alexis. They were playing in the pool laughing. In front of me, I saw a beautiful family one that I cherished the most. I was head over heels for Emily and if anyone had a thought to harm Emily all hell will break loose. I walked up to them seeing how she was in the water with one of my shirts. 
Our eyes met and she threw a smile at me. Sorry, I don't have clothes here so I decided to. Steal my clothes? I said looking at her with a smirk then I leaned and whispering a few words in her ear. You look fucking hot, just imagine how many times I can make you scream. I said seeing how her eyes changed into a need. I found her very amused at that point. Daddy come play with us. Daddy just needs to change alright. I said kissing her on her forehead. Raphael, the week has passed fast enough for my taste. I just arranged for the jet to be prepared for our trip to Hawaii. The business deal is not that important to me, yet I only took this as an excuse to enjoy some quality time with Emily. After what we have been through I wanted her to relax a bit. I had arranged with my father for taking care of Alexis, he was so pleased that he wanted us to leave early in the week already. I sent Emily a message saying that I will be picking her up in the next 30 minutes since I had to pick Alexis up first. I got into my car driving up to the school picking Alexis up then headed straight to Emily. What is up sugar? Daddy are you and mommy getting back together? She asked with a sad face. Maybe baby, why what is wrong? I just want a normal family daddy like it used to be. She said with a sad voice breaking my heart. I could have had all of this one entire happy family, yet I was blinded by my desires. I looked into the rearview mirror staring into her eyes puffy eyes. Can daddy make a promise to you sugar? Yes, daddy. How about if daddy tries to amend things with mommy? Promise? I promise sugar, now how about we turn that frown into a smile? I said seeing a smile creeping onto her small face. I knew what I had to do at that point. I stopped by Emily's house getting out to help her with her suitcases. She wore a yellow summer's dress with plain sandals. She had hoops in her ears with her hair all tied up in a messy bun. She looked beautiful like always even in my darkest days she saved me with just one look. Our eyes met seeing a smirk on her face. Hi. You look, breathtaking baby, I really must be an asshole for letting you go. Stop begging for attention Raph if you want it, just say I know of quite a few friends. Before she could finish her sentence my lips crashed on hers. I felt her arms around my neck making me feel at home once again. What was that for? Just to remind you that I don't want anyone else but you Emily. I could live with that. She said with a small laugh escaping her mouth. I took her hand in mine walking up to the car. I opened the door for her then placed her suitcases in the back. By the time that I got into the car, Alexis and Emily were already hugging each other and catching up on the day's events. The drive towards my father's house was short as he lived very close by. We arrived at my parents' house just in time for them to pick up the conversation that we had to drop. I got out saying goodbye to Alexis while Emily greeted my father only to be shocked by my mother's attitude. She walked up to Emily greeting her nicely, as well as complimenting her which scared the living shit out of me, making me feel anxious about what had just taken place. Mother, Father thank you once again for taking care of Alexis for us. It is a pleasure son, you two must enjoy your time in Hawaii, and Emily please do try the scuba diving there it is fantastic. My mother said with a real smile on her face. I did not know what had gotten into my mother and to my surprise, Emily didn't act hostile towards her at all. Something was up with these two and I could smell it from a mile away. I will Diana, maybe Raphael and I can go on that nice walk that we spoke about. Of course just remember to take pictures. Alright ladies enough chit chat, the kids are going to miss their flight if you keep telling them what to do. My father said throwing a wink at me. What the fuck was going on? I played along like always then we greeted everyone including Alexis. We got into the car and drove towards the airport where our plane was already waiting on us. I kept looking at her hoping that she could give some sort of explanation of what had just happened a few minutes ago at my parents' house only to find her playing on her phone. Keep staring, you might get rich buddy. She said with a smile with that I took her phone away from her hoping to see some sort of tantrum only to see nothing. She was cool and calm leaving me scared for my life. You might want to explain when have you and my mother become besties? Oh, from that entire conversation that we just had back there. That is the only thing that you took knowledge of? I feel like whatever I am supposed to say now will not be counting in my favor at all. Oh please, you're such an as do you know that? I am your as. 
I said with a smirk leaving her to laugh saying that I am indeed her as. Seriously M, when did you and my mother start seeing eye to eye? After I almost shot Bridget. What would have happened if, she was pregnant and your shot hit her accidentally? Well shit happens to shitty people, not my fault. Are you that surprised by my relationship with your mother? Fuck yes. I screamed at her making her laugh out loud with tears running down her face from all of the laughter. Raphael, I already saw your baby pictures, so you have nothing to be ashamed of. Baby, I just want you to be careful with all of this shit going down. Raph I know that I am not supposed to be asking, but do you know who is behind all of this? If I tell you will you relax for me? Yes. I might have my suspicions, yes, but I give it a few weeks then I will know for sure. What are you planning on doing? Baby, I love you a lot stop asking questions, I got everything covered and it is best if you don't know. I said kissing her soft hand. We stopped by the airport and as soon as my butler saw us he ran up to us welcoming us. Bridget. I walked into the long hallway of hell. I hated being here, but I had to survive one way or another. I walked into a room that was filled with security guards and the one person I had hated the most. Back so soon? I missed you. Did you say that to the cops to that showed up on my doorstep? I am not a snitch maybe one of your guards was. I said taking a step closer only to be stopped by a knife that flew past me hitting a painting right behind me. I looked at the painting then back at the person who threw it with fearful eyes. I do love you Bridget, but you see a message was delivered to one of my friends. Did it involve kisses? Always so sarcastic about life, but unfortunately no. You see he got beaten up badly and that the only reason he is still breathing is that he tried to save the baby of the biggest mafia lord. Great for him don't you think? He is also my younger brother, the man that you sent to assassinate the wife of the mafia king. He screamed at me with rage he threw the table over, leaving me to back up a bit into the corner of the room. I knew I was going to be in deep shit, but I was underestimating him. I didn't know. I gave you everything Bridget, I had one fucking rule, and what was that? He asked walking up to me with white fists. Not to fuck around. With who? The. Do you want me to shoot you? I blurted out hoping for him to calm down after those words had left my mouth. Please. Men you can have fun with her, make sure she can't walk after you had fucked the living shit out of her. As for me Bridget I need to fix your fuck ups once again. He said leaving me in fear I tried to head for the nearest exit, only to be stopped by two men. I backed up hearing how they were laughing at me. One thing that was clear was that if I got out of this fucking alive, I was going to kill em Emily. As soon as we had reached our destination it was about night time. The stars were bright and shiny reminding me of how much I have missed seeing them. In the city it was difficult to see them this beautiful. I felt Raphael's hand slipping into mine with a cute smirk on his face he guided me towards the car. We got into a black SUV that headed straight to our hotel that turned out to be a huge as palace. I looked at the view that was in front of me busy unraveling before my eyes. The house was beautiful with palm trees overshadowing it. As soon as the car stood still the door went open seeing Raphael's face. This is beautiful Raph, I don't recall to ever seeing something this beautiful. Well, you can enjoy it love this will be your room as I will be taking the guest bedroom. Why? So that you can enjoy your view without me spoiling it for you. You will spoil it if you don't sleep here tonight, look I didn't come all this way to sleep in a room without your arms around me. Fine, I'll stay only on one condition. Since when are we doing terms and conditions? Since I found out that you my love like to drive hard bargains. Business is business a wise man said that once to me. I said with a smirk on my face feeling him pulling me closer into him. I took his hands and saw the bright lights that were coming from the entrance as we walked in. We were welcomed by a lady that gave us cocktails while another walked up to Raphael. Good evening sir, I do hope that you have found your flight pleased. I did, now tell me is everything ready as asked for? Yes sir, I had arranged for the main bedroom and guest bedroom to be prepped and ready. The lady said bowing her head to Raphael then she showed the men where to go with the suitcases. I kept quiet the entire time just admiring the beauty of this place. The lights were bright, yet soft and the refreshing smell of seawater made me feel at ease. Follow me I need to show you something. 
he said taking my hand walking down a long hall until he stopped in front of a door. He turned around facing me with a blindfold in his hands waving it towards me. If you want to kill me, I suggest that we do it face to face Mr. Haunt. I said with a smile taking the blindfold from his hands feeling his hand around my waist pulling me closer. We can do something else face to face baby. Now that sounds like fun. I said putting the blindfold on with a quirky smile. Don't open until I say so. I heard a minuscular voice say from behind me. I followed the directions that he had given me only to stop when felt a cool breeze hitting my body leaving me to wonder what was going on. He said with a soft voice in my ears leaving my hair to stand up from the seductive tone that he had spoken in. I did as requested only to see the most beautiful view. The ceiling was made entirely out of glass leaving me to see the beautiful stars as clear as daylight while hearing a waterfall with fresh spring water running. I gasped as the view left me breathless. I turned around seeing Raphael standing there with his hands in his pockets looking classy as hell. His lips crashed on mine with a soft moan that escaped my mouth I felt how he was busy moving his kisses down my neck. This man was truly a work of art, hell he turned me on with just one touch. I felt how my body was busy sinking into his hands. I felt how his grip got packed around my waist. I should warn you that I have a mafia boyfriend that will possibly harm you if you try something with me Mr. Haunt. I said feeling his hard member pressing up against my body leaving my deepest desires to come back to life once again. Well that is one thing that we have in common my dear. He whispered into my ears without thinking I just had to ask the dumbest question ever. Oh really and what is that? We both would kill for you. He said as his kisses trailed down towards my breast with a quick move I felt my dress falling to my feet. I looked down then up at him. Second thing we have in common is that we love to make love to you, hearing our names being moaned from those sweet rosy lips. I must have forgotten Mr. It is sir my love and it seems like that I have to show you all over again. Bridget. I must have passed out from what had happened earlier. I got woken up by a maid that threw water all over my face, giving me a bottle of water and some painkillers. My body was so sore from most of the beating that I took last night, not to mention what they did after that. I pulled my tears back knowing that I will be out of this shithole soon enough and into Raphael's arms, but this time I will be doing it right. With right, I mean killing Emily for good. I hated that bitch ever since she took her first breath. I got up and dressed then left since I was escorted out in a blink of an eye. I was far from home and I had a long night. I got to one of my friend's workplace where he had waited patiently for me. As soon as he saw me he ran up to me with a heavy sigh he looked at me. Oh my goodness what had happened to you? Nothing, look can we just leave please? With those words he took my hand and helped me to the car. The drive was unbearable since there was more silence than actual words being used. I looked out of the window imaging myself with Raphael at this moment. I knew that he had loved me and for him not to kill me proved it. We stopped at a small house that was next to a lakeside. This was relaxing and I think that this would help me to speed up my healing process. I was helped out of the car then into the house straight into the guest bedroom. Bridget, what had happened out there? The bitch beat me to it, what do you think huh? I practically yelled at him with frustration taking over my entire body. He came to take a seat right next to me. Does he know about me? No, we can leave that for the element of surprise do you think? Bridget, what is your plan forward? I mean look around you got raped and beaten up for just crossing the line. What do you think is going to happen if you continue to go on with the absurd plan? The difference between the two will be that the bitch will be dead and I will be back where I belong. Easy we planned it after that I can hack into their system finding out their exact schedule after that it is easy PC. I said feeling the pain that was bucked into my body. I might have pissed a lot of people off in these last few weeks, but trust me I was going to kill Emily, and this time I will be doing it with a smile without her even suspecting it. How do you want this to play out? I want it to end with the element of surprise. And that will be? You. Raphael P.O.V. I got up to my alarm that one of seeing an angel sleeping right next to me in my arms. I got up moving slowly so that she doesn't wake up. I took a shower and got breakfast after that I headed out to the meeting that I was here for. I got into the black SUV where my butler handed me a phone. He looked at me with a straight face knowing that face only meant shit was about to go down. I took the phone from him already giving him the order to triple the guards around Emily today. 
Talk, demanded with a strict voice hearing a familiar voice on the other side of the line. I want to make a deal with you. Before or after I kill you, I asked looking at my driver to drive as I don't want to be late for my meeting. I had your back before Raphael. Yes, you had and then you stabbed me in that same back from behind. Now you have five minutes to tell me why I should spare you? Maybe, because I have some intel on her next step. You're a dumb fuck for calling me, do you know that? I just want to fix things between us, that is all. Remember that pretty young lady that you had eyes for and marked years ago? Veronica. I must say she does look pretty in a swimsuit. I said sending him a video of her having a drink with a stranger. Don't you fucking dare. I heard his angry voice say with a few shattered glasses in the back. Keep your dog on a leash or you might end up without a Veronica. I said giving this stranger an order to stand up leaving her with a smirk on his face. I knew this man's soft spot since I met him years ago. How the fuck do you want me to do that? Figure it out, you are indeed a big boy. I hope that you take this seriously, cause that man that was with her is a professional rapist, don't get me going on the torture part. Leave her out of this. I would just like to remind you who runs the game and if anything happens to Emily, Veronica is as good as dead. I said hanging up the phone. My tone was harsh feeling nothing, but sweet revenge. We stopped at the hotel where the meeting was going to be held. I got out of the car walking into the office seeing no other than Emily's father. Haunt. He said it as if I was supposed to be scared at his tone. I walked up to him greeting him with a casual handshake looking him straight into his eyes. Thank you for coming Haunt, I was looking forward to seeing Emily. Really and why is that? Simply because she is my daughter. He said throwing a smile making me chuckle at his words. The bastard never cared for Emily, yet here he is trying to play the innocent man. I looked at his colleagues and were now looking at my expression. I see, well you have a very remarkable way of showing that Mr. Duke. I see, well you have a very remarkable way of showing that Mr. Duke. I said taking a seat right across from him. The table was filled with his colleagues while it was only me and my butler. The butler walked up to me whispering into my ear. Sir, Mrs. Hoant is still sleeping in and the guards have been rotating every 10 minutes as requested. He said leaving me to nod and to focus on the man that sat in front of me. He looked overconfident for a simple business meeting that was about to go down. I didn't move my eyes from him seeing how his eyes changed from color made me feel powerful. I had that influence on people except for Emily. From day one she was different and difficult as hell making me work for her friends only to tear it apart. One of his colleagues handed me a file with some information on a new business deal that they would like to invest in. This looks very. Before I could even finish my sentence he had already started to talk again making me mad as fuck. I know I told my colleagues who better to invest than Raphael Haunt as we are practically family. Family? Yes, you are married to both of my daughters. He said, and with that something in me just snapped. I had one rule for him and that was to never mention Emily and my relationship in front of others. I then threw a smile acting as calmly as possible. Gentlemen, would you like to excuse Mr. Duke and me for a minute? I demanded seeing how each one of them got up leaving one by one with their hands in their pockets. I looked at my butler showing him to block whatever these bastards were about to post online. Come on now son this is just business. Business? You call this business this right here? I asked throwing the folder at him seeing how his face turned red with embarrassment. This idea of yours is shitty and don't get me started on your little act. So my idea is shitty. Why well, you took my daughter's freedom to be your puppet for years and now that idea right there was brilliant Raphael. She had a choice the same as you, yet you forgot how you pushed her into this as much as I did. I gave her a choice. What fucking choice choosing between her family's health or being without one? I said with white fists slamming down on the table. His facial expression changed the moment I had said that. How did you know? He asked softly leaving me to laugh at his ridiculous words. Flashback I was on my way to say goodnight to Alexis when I heard noises coming from the library near Emily's room. I walked up to the room hearing voices being whispered to each other. I went a bit closer listening to the intense conversation that was going on between Emily and her father. Don't you think of walking out on this marriage Emily? I can't live like this anymore father, he is out late doing heavens knows what. Suck it up buttercup, 
You will stay in this marriage even if he is unfaithful to you. This is my life and... I will fucking ruin your reputation that is still left, now you either sit with a family or without one my dear you can't have both. Father... You're nothing Emily you are only there to look after us since we had raised you. Now be a good girl and go fuck your husband, we need to keep him happy for us to survive. I heard her father say I was furious at what was happening. She stormed out of the room past me with tears in her eyes. I could not believe that her father would be this selfish. Flashback ends. I was her husband did you think that I would not have found out what your plan was? I asked standing up walking over to the window watching out on the beauty of the island. Please you hated that bitch as much as I did. With those words I grabbed him by his collar throwing him over the table against the wall. The loud noise of his back hitting the wall made me even angrier. Don't ever call her a bitch you might just end up dead somewhere in a ditch. You will never understand her Raphael. I do understand her. What I don't understand is why would she protect trash like you? Cause I raised her. You were right, but you my friend should be more careful around her. I said about to turn around when I had heard his voice calling me. Please, she can't even fight. I would not get my hopes up to high if I was you, cause image, Bridget. Then imagine her ten times smarter, faster and fearless. I said turning around walking out of the room towards the waiting room, where they had waited on us for about half an hour. Once their eyes met mine they were shocked by what had happened. Your idea is horses should do it over I will give you 24 hours or this deal is over. I said walking out of the room. Bridget POV. After I got hold of the man who hated Emily as much as I did, I headed to his mansion to make a deal. I knew what I was getting myself into, yet I could not see Raphael with another woman besides me. The Petrovas wanted her dead, but did not want to take the hit, as they were scared of Raphael. Who am I kidding everyone in the mafia groups was scared of him. He just had to be fucking dark and sweet at the same time. I walked into the territory of the Petrovas with my head held high. One of his men walked up to me with a deep voice he asked if I was Bridget with a smile I said yes. He asked that I must follow him as his boss was already waiting on me in anticipation. I followed him down a long hall past a room that was filled with random men smoking cigars and drinking while playing cards, you guess was that they were playing poker. As I walked into the room that was on the far end there he stood waiting for me with a devilish smile. You have guts for coming here, unprepared. Who said that I came here unprepared Petrova? You have no one Bridget, not even a husband or a boyfriend to run to. You're right about that, but I am not here, so that we can talk about my pathetic life choices, now am I right? He said showing me to take a seat. I know that you lost a deal, because of a young lady that goes by the name of Emily Duke. How do you know her Bridget, sisters? Correct, but she just keeps pissing me off, and I am at that point where I would like to kill her the same as you did a while ago, so by this I hope that you do understand my intentions. Why should I trust you? Because, if you don't you will be out of business before Christmas, and if you are wise enough to take the leap of faith you might still have an income on Christmas. I said with a smile only to see his face turn upset at those few words. Why are you so worried about my problems, Bridget? Cause, I would just like to eliminate the problem. That one person who is fucking everything up for you and your precious business. He got up then walked around the table sitting on the edge staring straight at me. He threw a smirk before he answered me. I don't want to have trouble with Raphael, I already have cops up my ace. I will kill her myself, no strings attached to you. He wouldn't even know about it. I just need you to get me back in town so that I can kill her. Raphael will find out about this Bridget. Then it will already be too late, if you think that she is going to stop here, you are wrong. So let me get this straight, you would like me to sneak you back into the city, where you can kill Duke, who happens to be your sister? Yes, now that was not even that hard to explain. I have one question for you, Bridget. What? What are you getting out of this entire business deal? I get my family back, now tell me are you interested? Well I am happy with the idea of your hands being dirty and not mine, so I think we can make this deal. Great, when are we leaving? I asked looking up into his green eyes. I knew how easy it was to turn him against his own beliefs. I wish I could say that they teach you that in class, yet they did not. He walked up to me with a quick move he whispered into my ears in the answer that I wanted to hear, so for the next few days, I knew that he will keep to the deal. I got up thanking him then left as soon as I could. I just had to wait on his phone call. Raphael P.O.V. I went home after the incident that had happened at the office. I had hated her father ever since that day. 
I always thought that he was a decent man that loved his daughters endlessly only to find out how he treated Emily most of the time. After what I had heard that night I started to figure out why she was so protective over Alexis and that made my heart swell in pride. Emily was never the type of woman to back down from a fight, yet I didn't want her to fight anymore at least not alone. I parked my car outside walking into the house only to hear laughter coming from the living room. I took a peek at what was happening in my living room only to be surprised. Emily sat on the couch with a bowl of fruits in her hands while laughing at her favorite series. The Big Bang Theory of course. She had one of my t-shirts on while her hair was loose and let down falling behind her back. She had no filter and looked amazing. I could not believe that she was once my wife. I was about to walk past the room when she called me into the living room. Her puppy dog eyes said everything that there was to say no hassles were needed at that moment. I took a seat right next to her feeling her eyes watching me intensely. Long meeting or just a waste of time? Fuck I had forgotten how well she had known me. All these years she knew the smallest details of me while I didn't even know half of hers. I looked up into her eyes seeing the most beautiful eyes in the entire galaxy. Both, oh and I should add that the head mastermind ended up against the wall. Ouch. The poor guy who was it? She asked interested like a newspaper waiting on the headlines to be released into the wild. Your father? I said looking at the television in front of me hoping to avoid a fight only to be shocked by her response. He's in us anyway, did you at least offer the rest of the board a second chance? Yes my lady, now what do I get for being such a gentleman? I asked taking the bowl from replacing it on the small coffee table that was standing next to me. A simple pat on the back love, but you should watch out for that temper of yours it might get you into trouble one day. She said when I picked her up placing her on my lap. I felt how her legs went around my body pushing hers right on top of my member. I love trouble, now how about we make some trouble? I love trouble, now how about we make some trouble? I said pulling her closer to me, feeling her lips on mine. The touch was warm and passionate. I felt how her hands fell around my neck while she kissed me deeply. I could not help but push my hands underneath her clothes. Hers was just perfectly shaped and boy I wanted to eat hers right here and right now. Her hands moved towards my tie leaving her to take it off slowly. Our kiss deepened only to feel the high that she was giving me at this moment. I was about to take of her shirt when my phone went crazy. I tried to ignore it, but it only got louder by the minute. Emily moved a bit back still resting her as on my lap with a simple smile she kissed me then stood up. She was about to walk away when I grabbed her hand pulling her closer until the loud noise interrupted us once again. I need to take a shower, take that cal it might be important. I will cal them back. We both know that you don't cal people back, now finish your phone cal and if you are done in time maybe meet me in the shower? She said in a soft tone making me shiver of just thinking of her body in the soaking wet shower. I let go of her tiny body watching her walk away then took my phone out to see that I had a few missed calls from one of my men. I called them back and with a very demanding voice, I asked what the problem was. Like always they would explain from the fucking start only to finish with the most important part. Sir the container that was on high alert has been found and is on a ship back that will be docking in the next few days. Could I want all hands on board, oh, and I would like you to visit the Dukes this afternoon. I said with a fainted smile knowing that it was the right thing to do. Give them a pound of flesh in a box that is neatly wrapped, oh and address it for Mr. Duke. Sir, she is still at home like requested. Well let's keep it that way. Raphael P.O.V. After my phone call, I headed upstairs to find Emily dressed in a short summer's dress. I walked up to her landing a kiss on her neck while she was busy doing her makeup. I'll just change then we can leave. I said seeing her eyes widen in total surprise. Where are we going? I'm taking you on an adventure be sure to pack your swimsuit in. I said only to feel her body turning around facing me with a huge smile. Her arms were wrapped around my neck while mine rested around her waist. She was my queen and with every breath that I took, I will always choose her no matter what. Now get changed Mr. Haunt, the time is ticking. I would like to tick something else. I said hearing her chuckle underneath me. I gave her a kiss on the forehead then headed to change quickly into some comfortable clothing. 
As soon as I was finished I found her waiting for me by the door of our room. I took her hand and headed downstairs grabbing my car keys opening the car door for her so that she could climb in. I saw a small smile creeping onto her face making me happy. I could never change the past, but I can work on our future together that was all that mattered. I got into the car driving up to a special place that I wanted her to see. I kept quiet most of the time hearing how her angel voice filled my car. She loved the club type of music, which made sense. I remember how her father told me that I took away his daughter's life making me realize that it was the truth. I hated her at that time, but things changed so quickly that I could not imagine my life without her anymore. I stopped by a beach where a big yacht was waited on us. I wanted to show her the other side of me that no one has ever seen. I got up walking to her side opening the door for her. She got up with a smile on her face with a quick move I pinned her up against the car. Never pictured you as a yacht guy babe? Well, I never pictured feeling this way about you, my dear. I said feeling her arms around my neck. I hope that it is in a good way. Now are you ready for an adventure? Hell yes, Peter Pan. She said leaving me to laugh at her statement. I closed the door then pulled her close to me. We walked up to the yacht to be greeted by the captain and staff members. We greeted them then we walked up to the captain with Emily underneath my arms. Please take us to my spot on the south side. Yes sir, he said with a huge smile. This was probably the first time that they saw me with someone on this island. I took Emily walking past them guiding her towards the upper deck, where our champagne was waiting for us. I showed her to take a seat then handed her some champagne. What are you up to Raph? Nothing much why? I know you better than anyone else, now spill it. I just want to spoil my baby, is it that inappropriate? I asked raising a brow only to feel her hands around my neck pulling me into a kiss. Our kiss deepened only to be stopped by the captain who came to inform us that we are close to the spot. I gave him a nod while I mentally cursed him about ten times. I know that I am not supposed to be asking questions about Bridget, but I have to know. She has left the country, babe, and I have been tracking her since she left. Do you miss her? She asked me in a low tone, yet keeping eye contact. I mean if you do I do understand. Those words were like a dagger that went straight through my heart. I pulled her close to me picking her up walking towards the railing. I made her sit on it while her hands were around my neck. I saw the fear in her eyes as she looked down at the water then at me. That fear that you are feeling at this second is just a teardrop in the fountain of fear that I feel when the idea of you leaving pops up. I am not leaving you Raphael, but I would like you to be honest with me from today. Look I know that it is going to be hard, but I am not Bridget and you know that. I know, but I don't want to have that innocence being taken away from you, I have already taken enough from you. Emily P.O.V. He was about to talk when we got interrupted by the captain saying that we had arrived. Being in his arms time seems to fly by fast to my taste. I looked at him while he nodded in approval to the captain. We have been coming very close to each other and I know that this time he is trying harder. His eyes used to lie, but now they had changed into loving eyes making me wonder what we could have been if I did not divorce this bastard years ago. He picked me up placing my feet on the ground. My hand slipped into his then I followed him down to the deck by the back of the boat. There stood another man who looked a lot like an instructor. What are we going to do? Strip now! I heard him say, I was about to when he stopped my hand then looking at the man that stood there. Get the fuck out of my sight, I will cal if we need you. Yes sir. He said then Raphael looked at the captain standing there on the edge. If he is so much dares to look, shoot to fucking kill. I gasped when I had heard those words. His demanding voice turned me on leaving me to only smile at him. I know that it was wrong, but I wished that I got to know this side more. He was acting so possessive over me and I fucking liked it. Jealous much? I did as he told standing there in my black swimsuit. He looked at me then walked up to me, with a swift move he let my hair down. You look sexy my love, now take these. He said giving me the scuba diving gear. I looked at it then back at him. Raphael I do. I will teach you, baby, now let me help you gear up. He said doing as he said that he would. 
After that we went scuba diving for hours, just relaxing and talking most of the time in. By the time that we got back on the yacht, it was already noon making me wonder what his plans were with me. As we got onto the boat I took of all of the gear while Raphael did the same. I looked at him with strict eyes taking his hand in mine walking closer to him. What is up next boss? I said with a smirk knowing that he was now looking down at my breasts. His eyes changed into total lust. Let's have a shower then dinner. He said with a quick come back. Wait, we're not going back to the island? I asked surprised only to feel him picking me up then headed into one of the rooms. This room was huge hell, his room at home was not even this big. Everything started to make sense why he was a badass at work. There was a huge as bed that had a black covers on it with grey pillows. There was a fish tank in the room that made the room even more beautiful. I looked at him then back at the room hoping that he was just making a joke only to feel his hands around my waist. He then handed me a remote and asked me to press the button on it only to see the curtains being pulled away revealing the clear beautiful night sky. The image that was in front of me was beautiful. I felt his breath on my skin sending sparks all over my body. My breathing started to accelerate minute by minute. He stroked my arm making me feel a high voltage of pleasure. Dinner upstairs? He asked before he started to kiss my neck slowly. Mmm. I tried to speak, but my words seemed to disappear into thin air. I was about to say something until I felt his hand gripping my breast tightly against him. His hand moved down my body leaving an intoxicated moan to escape my lips. The next thing I knew he called one of his men into the room. Sir, you called. Tell the chef that we will be having dinner in the room as well as that I aspect dinner to be ready in an hour. He said with a very demanding tone. I will do as asked, sir. The man said before he had left the room. I love this side of you. I whispered into his ear. Good, cause I only have a few minutes so follow me, princes. Pushed me up against the shower door kissing me deeply. Every kiss was filled with passion that burned inside of me. I tried to move only to feel his strong body leaning up against me. He moved me a bit so that he can open the shower with that I had time to breathe for a quick minute or two. He then turned around pulling me into the shower where the drops of the water fell on my skin leaving me to gasp. His hands moved my hair from my neck letting it fall behind my back while his eyes were on mine. I started to kiss him deeply only to move my kisses down his neck, before I could do anything he had me against the shower wall kissing me deeply and rougher. I tried to fight for dominance only to lose as I felt his arms pressing my hands above my head. His eyes were filled with lust the same as mine was. He trailed kisses down my neck only to feel his hands untying my swimsuit. Once it fell to the ground his mouth was all over my body. Raphael P.O.V. I started to kiss her softly down her neck towards her full breast. I sucked on her nipple while my other hand played with her full breast. I felt how her body started to feel limps. She let out a moan making me even more ready to taste her. I moved down towards her wet pussy. I felt how she lifted her leg up and with that, I had to wrap her legs around my neck. I started to suck on her clit while my one hand was still playing with her breasts. Raf. Those words were better than torture that she had whispered. Her eyes were closed while she bit her rosy lips making me even hornier. I then moved my one finger into her pussy feeling how she started to move with my finger. Her moans became louder by the second only motivating me to add another finger. I kept sucking her clit while she rode my fingers. I felt how her walls came closing by my fingers leading me to pull out. I looked up seeing her eyes on mine with a swift move she was standing right in front of me. We kissed each other deeply only to feel her moving my swimsuit of my body. She then went on her knees taking my heart member into her mouth. Fuck! Was all that came out once I felt her mouth taking my entire member into her mouth. I felt how she started to move her mouth up and down making me flinch in pleasure that overtook me. My hand dropped down on her head moving her a bit faster. No one has ever mouth fucked me like this. I was about to come when she stopped looking up at me with an evil smirk. That is going to cost you, my love. I said only to see her licking her lips with lust in her eyes. 
I said only to see her licking her lips with lust in her eyes. I pulled her closer then whispered into her ears. You want me to be demanding baby? Yes, Papa. She replied leaving me in total shock at her agreement. I picked her up walking up to the zinc that had a small table laying her flat on her back. I then started to enter her with two fingers slowly feeling her whimper underneath me with that I added another finger feeling her nails in my arm. I loved the way her body was reacting to my touch. I bent down licking her juices only to feel her getting tighter with that I stopped moving my hands. She was about to move when I entered her with a swift hard move. I heard her screaming my name endlessly. I opened her legs so that I can be hitting her more right on her G-spot. Don't fucking dare to come love. I said seeing how her nipples got harder with every move of my dick entering her. Her screams became louder and with that feeling how her juices were all over my dick. I kept increasing my speed until I had reached my climax. I felt how her body rested on mine making me extremely happy. After our shower, we headed into the room only to find our dinner already waiting on us. This time the chef outdid himself. He liked to make food that was part of their culture which was delicious. I took Emily's hand leading her out to the balcony where our food was waiting on us patiently. As soon as she took a seat, I poured us some red wine knowing that it was her favorite. I then took a seat next to her. We started to talk about random topics until one came up with one topic. Can I ask you a question? Sure baby girl. I said seeing how her eyes changed color meaning that this conversation was going to be intense. How did you get involved with all of this mafia empire crap? Easy, I wanted to be someone that everyone feared from miles away, and having money helped me a bit. Your father knows Raphael. With those words I broke out a laugh only to see her looking speechless AR my reaction. I know honey, who did you think gave it to me? How on earth do you people sleep at night? Same as you my love. Bridget, was she part of your business? In the beginning no, but after a while, I introduced her to the life of a mafia king. I said with total confidence. So? Em, I brought you here so we can talk about us, not about Bridget or the shit before that. I know it's just. Just what baby? Fine, I will stop talking about her as if now promise. Now that baby girl there is what we like to call it, selling the deal. Oh please. I think you have mistaken this entire situation, Mr. Haunt. Oh really, please do elaborate on how that is? I said noticing how her foot moved up my leg towards my lap making me feel a bit uneasy. I learned you how to sell a simple deal the same as I am doing now my dear, while you are so distracted on my foot you could have been saying yes, to every possible proposal. She said seductively with her rosy lips. She was right she had skills that I have never seen in a woman. Emily P.O.V. After our week in paradise, I returned home safe and sound. The entire trip was amazing. We talked more than we had before and this time it was about us. Raphael was more open to me than before, even though sometimes he would shoot some of my questions of, but still, the poor guy was trying his best to win me back. He didn't ask me out again during the week that we had spent together which made me feel a bit better since the last time went to well. I got home late from one of my meetings feeling so blessed that Raph took Alexis as I was deadly tired. I was about to climb into a warm bath only to be stopped by my phone that was ringing of the hook. I took the cal only to see who it was. Seriously Raph, I told you that I will call you back after I had my bath. Didn't mother teach you any manners? I heard the familiar voice only to freak out deep inside of me, yet I kept it smooth and calmly. She tried but failed but I guess that you can survive the failure sister. I should say Raphael has given you balls lately, but I think that it is time that I take them back, after all L, they don't belong to a little bitch like you. Never going to happen and we both know that they are watching you every single day. You know Emily I do hope that you are right my dear sister, cause once I get my chance I am coming for you. Those were the last words before she had dropped the phone into my ear. My breathing became faster and harder until I heard a voice coming from behind me. The shock of hearing Bridget's voice took me so far that I could not even turn around to look at the person who was right behind me. Hey are you alright? Yes, yes, I am. You sure honey, you look pale as fuck. It was Stacy who looked at me with curious eyes, 
I knew she was my best friend as well as the one person that I could trust. Emily, who was that on the phone? It was, um, Bridget Stacy. Emily, she's just trying to get into your head. Stacy. Listen to me, Em. You need to call Raphael right away. He needs. No. I said in a quick tone, making it sound a bit harsh. I looked at her face. I removed all of my fear that I had built up for years, yet this time I was not going to be scared of her. Stacy, she wants my family. What can you possibly do, Em? Before she could have finished her sentence, I had cut her of by saying. Before she could have finished her sentence, I had cut her of by saying. I am going to kill Bridget Stacy. Emily P. O. V. I got up early in the morning so that I can catch my trainer for my first fighting class. After my cow last night with Bridget, I knew that one way or another she will be getting out of her situation like she always does. She made it very clear that I am on her next hit list. I can't blame her anymore, yet I had this bad feeling that something bad was going to happen very soon. I took my gym bag and headed downtown to the studio where my trainer waited for me. It was an old guy in his mid-fifties with dark hair, yet he looked strong and quirky as hell with his body being built like an ox. I walked up to him shaking his hand then headed inside after him. I followed him until he stopped by a green door then looked down at me. I give you five minutes to get changed and to get your ass back here, he said with a strict tone. I did as he told me and met him back outside by a huge bean bag as he requested. I looked at him then back at the bag. We all have a story when we walk through those doors, young lady, so what is yours? Trust me you don't want to know, I said with a smile, but he walked up to me taking my hands into his. He taped my hands and showed me to fold them into fists. Attitude is not going to bring you anywhere, my child. Now hit this bag as hard as you can. He said and with that, I threw a punch at the bag that was in front of me. Good, but we both know that you can do better than that. Now tell me why are you here, child? What does my problems have to do with me being here? I asked throwing my hands into the air showing the man that I was not into talking anymore. Cause for me to help you find the solution to your problem. I need to know why. I looked him straight into his light eyes while my hands rested on my hips. My sister is trying to kill me with all of the might that she has in her. I said looking down to the ground reminding me of why I was here in the first place. Look at that bag my child, imagine just for a split second that it was her who stood in front of you. I did as he asked me to imaging. I imagined her standing in front of me with her whore of a body. My trainer's words kept me on a leash until he asked me to throw a punch, which left him in shock as well as me. You are stronger than you think, my dear. Now please keep this anger in you, and throw about 30 punches. Raphael P.O.V. I was about to drop Alexis of when I thought of calling Emily. I remembered how she mentioned that her car might be going in for a service last night so I decided to call her. Hi this is Emily, please leave a message and I will get back to you was all I heard was the soft angelic voice that she had. I had checked in with the guys this morning saying that Bridget was still at home and has not left which made me feel at ease. I dropped Alexis of then headed straight to work. I was in and out of meetings today, I hardly had time to talk to Emily today so I decided to meet her up for lunch since she used to sit in her office alone. I grabbed my keys then drove towards the company that she had worked for. I headed upstairs only to find Zach in the reception area laughing at who knows what. He did piece me of, but I will try my best not to kill the guy for Emily's sake. I walked past him towards Emily's office only to find her walking down the hall with no other than Bryce towards me. I never liked Bryce, but he had a loyalty that was a quality and that was hard to find these days in men. He had his own company since he was a biker. Trust me to never MES with those bastards, even the mafia knows them by their names. I stopped in my tracks once Emily and Bryce had reached me. Emily wore a nice black dress with red heels and loose curly hair. She did look sexy, but one thing that made me boil was the fact that the dress was tight around her curves and she had shown some cleavage. Raphael Haunt, fancy seeing you here. Well if it isn't Bryce, you know I travel a lot. You two know each other? Emily had asked curiously with a huge smile on her face. Of course, we were roommates in university, until he took over his daddy's business and grew a big dick. Oh, 
Please we both knew that we were going to take over our old men's work. That is very true, he said with a laugh. How is your old lady doing, still hard to handle? Abby is easy to handle almost like this spicy woman that you have right here. We are not together. Emily stated quickly only to receive a laugh from Bryce. I guess Bryce knew more than I thought leaving me to smirk at her. I pulled her closer to my side only to see how she gave me a dead stare. Say I told you, just be careful this one might kill you, brother. Emily said with a smile not even fighting my hand that was now resting on her ass. Well, I have to be going now if you would excuse me, I have a snitch to kill. Nah, on the inside. It was an honor to meet the Mafia Queen and King. Take care brother. He said before he left making me chuckle in total shock that was coming from Emily's face. I took her hand walking into her office leaving her to walk past me. I closed her office door only to be met by her beautiful eyes. She could see right through me and I would not mind it a bit. Mafia King? Why yes, my love did you think I was going to be the weakest? No, but I didn't know that you and Bryce were such good friends. I took her hand pulling her closer to me so close that I could feel her breast being pressed against my chest. I should admit that I was a bit jealous of him back there. Really? Yes, he had you for the entire morning while I had no attention whatsoever, by the way since we are talking about attention, I said leaning in closer to whisper into her ears. What the fuck are you wearing my love? I said feeling her back straightening up from the shivers of my touch on her body. I love the way her body reacted to my every single touch. Relax Raphael, this is only a work dress. Really, why would you like to be so sexy at work? I have clients plus, I need to look professional at work. Hearing a bit of attitude in her voice. Talking about provisional, what was Bryce doing here? Just wanted to sort out a few things unfortunately, I won't be able to elaborate on that. She said with a pure tortured face. Then Elle looked at the clock on the wall asking her if we can go and grab some lunch only to feel her pulling away from my grip that was on her small body. Can I get a rain check? I have a lot of clients coming in today. Sure how about dinner then? I would love that. She said before we got interrupted by her assistant. Sorry to bother you Mrs. Duke. But Zack is already waiting for you in the conference room. Of course, I will be there in a minute. She said making me feel a bit unhappy just thinking of that rat's bastard who would be sitting next to her. I threw a fake smile hoping that she would buy my trick. Will you pick Alexis up babe? I might be overthrown by paperwork this afternoon. I just agreed to what she said and hugged her before I left. I was starting to get irritated by just being away from her for so long not to mention the room full of men that she will be sitting in. I got into my car driving back to work only to find my butler already waiting for me. Sir? Speak up. I said as I took a seat behind my desk feeling exhausted from working and being away from Emily. Sir, this is about Bridget. What about that whore? Sir, Mrs. Bridget had an overdose this morning. Did she die? You are getting better, child. You are more focused than before. Yes, well I am a moving target so what the hell? I said before drinking water. Well I should say for a girl that has been here only two weeks, you have improved. Thank you, will tomorrow be fine with you? How about you rest tomorrow child? He said then left me alone so that I can take a shower and get dressed. After my hot shower, I got dressed in a simple spaghetti shirt with dark jeggings. I then headed out the door only to be pumped in by someone. I looked up only to see Lucas in front of me. I kept my cool looking at him hoping that he won't ask any questions. Emily, what are you doing here? He asked surprisingly. Nothing, now if you would excuse me. I said about to leave only to be stopped by his arm that was wrapped around my wrist. I looked down to where his hand was then up again. Emily, please just... Let go of me Lucas. What I do is none of your fucking business nor concern. Real look around you Emily, you are at a fighting gym with the gym bag which means... Means nothing Lucas, now if you would excuse me I have to get going. I was about to turn around when he asked me another question leaving me to look at him. Does Raphael know that you are here? Just mind your own fucking business like you minded your head between Bridget's.
I said turning around leaving the gym without any hassles. I knew that what I said was a lie or so I had hoped for, but I needed this to be kept quiet. I got into my car driving towards Raphael's house since we had dinner plans. I felt bad for keeping this from him, but I had no other option. I parked the car then headed inside only to find Alexis fast asleep by the television. I kissed her on her forehead feeling a bit bad for not spending so much time with her anymore, but I was doing this for all of us, not just me. I felt a warm embrace locking onto my body. The shivers went down my spine as I smelled his scent. I was about to turn around when I felt his lips on my neck. I tried to move only to feel his grip getting tighter. Please take Alexis up to her room so that so that she can be more comfortable love. Anything for my princess. He said when he had taken her into his arms leaving me to start with dinner. Raphael P.O.V. I took Alexis in my arms carrying her up into her room. I then left again to go downstairs only to see the chef leaving with a smile on his face. I walked into the kitchen to find Emily busy making food and the smell was intoxicating. I then took a seat by the counter as she showed me with total surprise. These last two weeks we didn't get to spend time with each other as there was always something going on or happening. Emily looked different to me in a way that I could not describe. She handed me a bottle of wine with two glasses before she headed into the fridge. I was about to place her glass down only to hear a buzz coming from her phone. I took a peek only to find a text message from another man on her phone. Jeff hi, I just wanted to let you know that I will be a bit late tomorrow, but I will see you. Something was up with Emily, my instincts were right and I was going to find out what she was up to. I knew that she was not the type to cheat on me, but the idea of something like that happening made me mad as fuck. From the corner of my eye, I saw Emily walking up to me planting a kiss on my cheek. I forgot that I have something important to finish before tomorrow morning, will you excuse me? Of course, I will call you once I am finished with dinner. She said giving me a smile on her face with that I just nodded and left the kitchen. As soon as I had entered my office the butler came in as well. He looked at me with wondering eyes. I walked up to my minibar taking a drink from the top shelf. I threw it down my throat letting it burn then looked at the butler. I need someone to look after Emily. Sir, she asked that we don't do that anymore. He said leaving me to walk up to him grabbing him by his throat. I then pushed him up against the wall then spoke to him. I gave you a fucking order, now do your job. With those words he left the room with speed attending to what I had asked. I took a few minutes when I had left the room walking into the kitchen seeing her standing there deep in her thoughts. Did you miss me that much? I asked seeing her face turning into a faint smile. Oh, you wish. Or did you miss Jeff, my love? I said seeing no change in her reaction leaving me stone cold. Jeff is just a client where you my love are something different. So different that he has your personal number, sweetheart? I said with a different tone. I loved Emily and I could not see her with another not now not ever. She walked over to me with a smile all over her face. Jealous really doesn't suit you, love. She said before she whispered something into my right ear. I won't betray you, now how about you help me with dinner? After dinner, we talked only to fall asleep not long after we had laid on the bed. I got woken up by a bright light that came through the window. I tried to reach for Emily only to find her side of the bed empty. I was about to get up only to see her coming from the closest. She was already dressed and ready for work where I on the other hand just got woken up. Morning beautiful, I thought we are driving to work together today. I must have forgotten to mention that I have a client early this morning. Will I be seeing you this afternoon then? I asked a bit irritated by her reaction. I have meetings planned this entire day, as soon as I get out of them I will call you, alright? She said leaving me to nod to her words. She then walked up to me kissing me on my lips before she left for work. Not long after she had left I followed her example to take a shower and to get dressed. I knew that this entire morning was going to be a huge screw-up since I was on the edge of breaking. After my shower, I got dressed in a black suit and took my Rolex watch putting it on. I left to go straight to the office after making sure that Alexis was fine. I arrived at work just in time for a recap of meetings that I would be having today not to mention attending. I headed into my first meeting with Lucas. 
This deal was just a small deal, but with a shitload of publicity that my company could benefit from. The price was set to a maximum of 80% Mr. Haunt. Your company is not worth that much, yes publicity-wise, but as far as business goes there is a loss in income. We break average every month Mr. Haunt. Exactly, my point I need business not a fucking funeral, now take my deal or leave it. I said standing up walking towards my office. I did not have time for stupid people. I took a glass throwing whiskey and then went to take a seat only to see Lucas coming into my office. What happened to be reasonable towards our clients? I said looking at him with a death stare. You look pissed of. Not your business, now fuck of. It is Emily, isn't it? With those words he grabbed my attention, I knew that she was on my mind after what had happened last night. I found her yesterday at a gym downtown. She also reminded me that it was none of my business. Oh, you didn't notice- Emily P.O.V. This entire morning was just a rush from the minute I set foot into the office. I had a bad headache coming along feeling a bit nauseous. I drank mostly coffee to keep me awake since World War II was happening here in the office. I just came from an intense meeting where the client was mostly unhappy with our company's standards. I knew that Haunts Towers were the best investment company and that had the best standards, but I could not tell that to the client. I felt hunger taking over me, I looked at my watch seeing that I have at least another 15 minutes before I have to get back into another meeting. I was on my way towards the cafeteria only to remember that I had left my purse in my office. I felt so irritated and upset that I could cry. I walked towards my office only to find Raphael in front of me. He was sitting on my chair behind the desk looking at me with dark eyes. I hoped that he had the same morning minutes by the look of things he did not. Raph, what are you doing here? I asked surprisingly. Close the fucking door, Emily. I was shocked by his words only to hear his voice deepen. Now. Jeff is a nice gentleman I should say, he can't stop talking about you. Those words made me tremble in fear. I loved Raphael, but sometimes he can be scary as shit. Raph. I am not finished yet, you see you have forgotten to mention that he is an owner of a fighting club as well as your trainer. Okay, with those last words he was highly pissed of. I didn't dare to take a step closer knowing that I would most probably land against the wall with his body up against mine. Shit. How the hell would have he found out, I kept it as low-key as possible. That is when it had hit me, he must have probably had me followed or that bastard had ratted me out. Why so quiet are you thinking of a next lie to tell me? How did you find out? I am a multimillionaire that runs the mafia for fuck's sakes Emily, how dumb did you think I would be? Why are you mad Raphael, I did nothing wrong. Nothing. Nothing. He said standing up walking towards me with a laugh that sent chills down my spine. The man that trained you are a hitman, that once tried to kill me. If he knew that you were close to me, he would have killed you instantly without thinking. I tried to defend myself only to be backed up against the wall as I predicted before. Secondly you lied to me with open eyes. I could not ask you to train me, we both know that you would have said no, plus asking you that is too much. Too much? He said out loud making me rethink my sentence that I had just spoken. He looked up into my eyes with total darkness. What happened to us we are in this together or so was your exact words. We are it is just. Just what Emily, this time I kept my word while you went behind my back while laying to my face. I was going to tell you. When Emily? He whispered into my ear making my heart beat a bit faster. I felt how his hands wrapped around my waist making me feel speechless, as if all of the words were taken right from my mouth. You want to learn to fight babe, you ask me got it. Rap. I asked if you understand baby, did you forget the difference between a statement and a question again? He asked while his hands roamed all over my body. He started to kiss my neck slowly leaving a soft moan to escape my mouth. He locked the door then picked me up, placing me on my desk. When is your next meeting? He asked leaving me to check my watch to see that I had at least 10 minutes left. 10 minutes. I said looking into his calming eyes. He pulled my dress up till it was by my waist removing my underwear while I felt a finger slipping into me. 
I tried to fight against him only to be pushed down on the desk with his strong arms. He lifted my legs while he started to kiss my wet pussy. He then slipped a finger in while his mouth was sucking on my clit. The pleasure was sky high and made me crazy as fuck. I tried my best to keep quiet leaving me to moan a bit. I saw how he took of his tie pushing it into my mouth leaving me to gasp as he increased his speed. I felt how his fingers moved away feeling how he was busy eating my pussy out. I tried to move only to be pulled back into him. I was losing my marbles with his touch and the pleasure that he was giving me. I felt how he added two fingers that started slowly only to increase making me beg for release. I was on the edge only to feel Raphael removing his fingers from me as well as his mouth. He licked his lips of then helped me to stand up. I got dressed again feeling mad as fuck. You're not going to finish are you? No, you can come again once I have forgiven you. Raphael P.O.V. I went back to the office just in time for my next meeting. I felt happy with what had just happened between me and Emily. I was a bit harsh on her, but she needed to know who was the boss. After a few meetings, I was tired as hell. I took my car keys about to leave my office until Emily's father came bursting into my office. Is it true? By one guess I knew about who he was speaking about. I wanted to punch him in the face, but I had an audience that was watching. I showed my assistant to close the door while I take care of the situation that was in front of me. I decided to stand my ground while he was trying to get into my head. What are you doing here? Is it true of Bridget? He asked very demanding. From his side, I fully understood if something had ever to happen to Alexis I would be beside myself. I looked him straight in the eyes giving him a little nod that would prove to what he had heard was true. My daughter had died because of you. I narrowed my eyes at him making him back up a bit. Who else is there to blame? Is it true of Bridget? He asked very demanding. From his side, I fully understood if something had ever to happen to Alexis I would be beside myself. I looked him straight in the eyes giving him a little nod that would prove to what he had heard was true. My daughter had died because of you. I am not going to stand here and listen to you blaming every single detail on me. Who else is there to blame? Yourself, if you kept your daughter in line maybe she would not have died from one single dosage. I said out loud with a harsh voice that I felt bad for the poor guy. I was about to say something when Emily came barging and only to be stopped by her father's gaze on her. She closed the door behind her knowing that this matter was not for outsiders to be seen. He walked up to her making me take a step closer to him only to hear her words. Let him speak. She said if only she knew why he was here for. You are a disgrace to our family filled with regret and denial. I should have killed you the moment that I held you in my hands. Guessing Bridget is dead or doing something tragic again. With that, her father slapped her right through her face leading me to walk closer only to be stopped once again. I dare you to do that again Pops. His facial expression changed when he tried again only to be stopped by her hands then she punched him with a fist in his face. The punch was so hard that he took a few steps back. Emily looked satisfied by her actions only to laugh out loud. I have never seen this side of her, it was like my sweet little angel has changed into a beautiful goddess right in front of me. Next time it will be a fucking bullet to your head, don't ever try to touch me again do we understand each other? She had asked him. With a pale face, he just nodded leaving me stunned at what had just happened. Bridget was a whore that deserves to die and trust me if I could have gotten the chance I would have killed her myself. I would have made her so unrecognizable that no one could have identified her. Now pops take my word for it I think that it is better if one line of coke took her than me. She said with a devious smirk on her face. Fuck she was so hot and that is when I knew that I had found my soulmate. Emily P.O.V. After my encounter with my father, I headed towards my car that was in the parking lot. As I walked up to my car I found a note that was stuck to the door. It was a photo of Alexis playing in the park. My heart stopped immediately with the thought of her being in danger. I placed the picture in my bag then decided to head up towards Raphael's office. I was about to head into the elevator when I was greeted by my father's eyes. He looked so pissed at me that I could not decide if I should stay or run, yet I did punch the man who raised me in the face. 
He walked past me like I meant nothing leaving without any words. I got into the elevator where I found Raphael's office empty. His assistant came walking in asking if she could leave a message for him, but that was not going to happen. Where is Raphael? I asked in a demanding tone seeing her hesitating a bit making me walk up to her asking the same bloody question again. He is in a meeting with. With those words I headed straight towards the boardroom where the meeting was held. I burst into the room seeing everyone's eyes looking up to me in total shock. Raphael sat in the far corner laying back a bit in his chair, just showing some of the power that he had. He looked at me with intense eyes then I heard his assistant voice coming from behind me. Sorry sir, I tried to stop her, but... He showed her to shut the hell up then looked up at me. Is there something that you would like to discuss my love? Those words with his posture sent shivers down my spine leaving me to regret my decision. I pulled myself together looking at him with demanding eyes only to hear his demanding voice once again. Or is there something that you want? He said with a smirk leaving me embarrassed. I took a step closer towards the table then with a pretty smile I asked to see him just for a few seconds alone. No one moved as they were waiting on Raphael's orders. This man had so much power that I forget sometimes who he truly is. I knew that he was not going to give up that moment. Would you like me to fuck one of these men before you have a word with me love? I said seeing how his facial expression had changed completely. With a loud bang of his fist that had hit the table, everyone had left the room. I walked closer to him placing the picture of Alexis in front of him. I want you to double the guards on Alexis Raff. He looked at the photo then up at me with the scariest eyes ever. Where did you find this Emily? It was placed on my windscreen Raphael. How sure are you that Bridget is dead? Dead sure Emily, they are bringing her body in this afternoon. So that you can say. Goodbye, or so that you can make sure that she is dead? What has gotten into you lately? If something happens to Alexis Raphael, the last thing that you need to worry about is Bridget's body. You think that she is not dead? He asks standing up walking towards me with eyes as dark as the night. You think that she is not dead? He asks standing up walking towards me with eyes as dark as the night. No, I don't. Who else would do something like this Raphael, if she is alive? Then I will kill her myself M, please just relax for me, I will arrange for extra protection for Alexis and you. If you fail this time Raphael I will kill her myself. I said before leaving him standing there full of wonder and words. I left and went straight to my office where I had found a letter that was sent to me. As I opened it, it had the funeral information of Bridget's ceremony on it. I took a look at the paper then threw it away. I could not deal with this feeling anymore. Raphael P.O.V. After Emily showed me the picture and also the thoughts that she had shared on this subject. I felt the same as she did since Bridget had a lot of tricks up her sleeve. I arranged for her body to be delivered by midnight tonight. I postponed the meeting walking into my office only to find Lucas there waiting for me. This came for you, he said handing me a letter that had Bridget's name on with her married surname haunt on it. I already felt sick to my stomach knowing that she did not deserve that name nor my love. I opened it and found all the information about the ceremony that will be held for her. I threw the letter on my desk walking up to the minibar that I had in my office. I took a shot of clean whiskey then turned around facing Lucas. You still love Bridget, don't you? I don't. I just want the shit over Lucas. I hope so, cause Emily does not deserve any of this crap Raphael, but she sticks with you and I don't know why. You don't have to. I said staring him down from where he sat. He looked pissed at me then he got up walking out of the room. I got home late that night only to find Alexis and Emily fast asleep in front of the television in my room. I picked Alexis up taking her to her bedroom. I placed her into her bed then tucked her in. I went into my room only to find Emily awake and looking at me. I took a seat on the corner of the bed hoping that she would not notice the smell of whiskey. She stood up walking over to me untying my tie then looked down at me with admiration in her eyes. I received a letter for the funeral of Bridget. I said looking into her eyes feeling her body against mine. She sat on my lap taking my tie of. 
Me too, what do you think we should do? I don't want to go, Emily, I have never hated someone as I did with her. The public will ask questions Raph and you know that they added your surname meaning you must be there. I am not going alone. I will go with you, maybe then I will get some peace as well. She said locking her eyes with mine. Her eyes were the most beautiful thing that I had ever seen in my entire life. It is tomorrow M? That is fine. I bought a new dress and I was wondering for what occasion I would wear it. And this one is the perfect occasion love? More than. She said kissing me out of the blue. Her lips tasted like strawberries with a hint of mint. I pulled her closer deepening the kiss. Emily P.O.V. After last night's passionate kisses and hugs, we slowly drifted up to sleep. After last night's passionate kisses and hugs, we slowly drifted up to sleep. I got woken up taking a shower then got dressed in my red satin dress. I then did my makeup and added a messy bun, before I headed towards Alexis' room. By the time I got there she was already up and ready waiting for me. She stood in front of her closet wondering what to wear. Struggling baby? I asked startling her from behind. Baby, are you alright, cause it is normal to feel sad or emotional? I never liked her mommy, yet she always used to play with me, and now. Baby, remember how mommy told you that one day we would have wings? Now she has gotten her wings with a huge smile. I said laying to her face knowing deep down inside that Bridget did not deserve a happy ending. I picked out a beautiful black dress, but she quickly changed her mind. Raphael P.O.V. I waited downstairs for my two girls patiently. I looked at the time then heard a giggle coming from a tone that I loved. I looked up only to find Alexis and Emily descending the stairs. Both of them wore red dresses and like always Alexis wanted to be like Emily. I picked Alexis up taking Emily's hand into mine asking the one question that I was not sure of. Are you ready love? Ready as can be. She said with a small smile making my heart beat faster. She was the love of my life and I hope that after today we can rest this case? Parked the car then took one last look at Emily making sure that she is fine with this idea. With a simple nod, I got out opening the door for her and Alexis. We walked into the church only to be greeted by her father with sad music playing in the background. The man looked like shit with dark circles around his eyes with an alcohol breath he welcomed us. Emily's aunt came up to us asking if she can show us where to sit. The church was full of people that wore black with tears in their eyes. Of course. No need for that Elizabeth, Emily is not welcome here and you of all people should know that. His words made me mad as fuck, but with people standing all around us watching made it very difficult for me to react to his shitty comments. You already lost one daughter brother. I don't think that you would like to lose another. If it was up to me. Emily P.O.V. Aunt Elizabeth can you please show Raphael and Alexis to their seat, I will follow shortly. I said with a smile leaving Raphael to hesitate to my words. Are you sure love? Of course, it is not like we are going to bury two people at once. I said with a smile making my father raise an eyebrow. Raphael left us at the front door following Aunt Elizabeth to their seat. I turned my gaze from them to my father who looked even more upset to see me. My grandchild could not even have greeted me, do you know what a disgrace that is? Maybe you should have been more present in her life father. I said as calmly as possible. Yes, I did keep Alexis from him since he felt that I was not the perfect person to look after her. Well not after a week of being married to Raphael. He stopped coming by and calling even on her birthdays he would not even pick up the phone. I guess I just wanted to protect her from the monster he was even if that meant that I needed to be selfish. Don't give me that smart tone Emily, you should have been dead not Bridget. That is enough brother. I heard my aunt say from behind me. I looked over to her then back at my father. You should be careful with your words father, it might be you in that coffin. He asked taking a step closer to me. I wanted to back up, but I didn't want him to know that I was scared of him so I stood my ground. I felt his hand grip getting tightly around my wrist. That is a fucking promise Duke, now get your fucking hands off of my wife or we will have a problem. I heard a strong dark voice say from behind me. 
This time I didn't have the guts to fight against his words. I felt how my father's hands grip got loose only to feel Raphael pulling me closer to him. I looked at the people around us who were now staring at us. We will be taking our seat now if you would excuse us. He said then guiding me towards our seat that was in the second row right next to my aunt. My father took a seat in front of us while the rest of us sat behind him like followers. I looked around the room not seeing her coffin making me suspicious. I turned towards my aunt asking in a low voice where the coffin was. She has been cremated my dear, your father could not bear to look at her. She said making the hair on my arms raise in fear. I knew that she was still alive and that I was still a walking target. After the two long hour ceremony, we had a little lunch afterwards. Raphael and I took a seat by the far corner outside so that Alexis can play a bit and also to be away from the crowd. You know that you called me your wife in front of all of those people. That is all that you took out of the words that I said? Well yes, those were the highlighted part of your sentence. I said with a smile then I heard his response that placed an extra huge smile on my face. You are and was my love. Really, yet you seem to forget that we are divorced? That is just paper baby. He said pulling me closer to kiss me only to be interrupted by a soft feminine voice. It was my aunt that stood in front of us with a smile on her face. Can I please have a word with Emily Raphael, if you don't mind? Not at all. He said in a friendly tone then walked up to where Alexis was playing. He was truly a great father and although he had his asshole of moments, he was still pretty damn good. How have you been Emily? I have been good thank you aunt, how have you been? Well my dear, it is truly a tragedy of what had happened to Bridget. She said looking at me with an emotional face while I could not show any emotion since there was nothing left of me to feel. Truly. I said with a straight face. Emily there is something that I need to tell you, I have been wanting to tell you this for years, but I just had no idea how. I said with a laugh making her smile for a quick second. Emily you and Bridget are half-sisters. Wait what? I said almost spitting her with my tea. What did she just say? Did I hear the words clearly or do I have hearing problems? It is true Emily you and Bridget do not have the same father, you see your father never really accepted you into the family. Your father was furious about the fact that he was raising another man's daughter, but once he found out about the friendship of you and Raphael. What does Raphael have to do with any of this? You see your father was in love with his mother and when she told him that he would never be good enough he made a vow to himself, that if he ever has a daughter that she will marry the next heir of the Haunt family which is Raphael. He wanted to prove to her that he was worth it right? Correct my dear, but after the disappearance of Bridget you had to take her place, so he was furious about how the situation had turned out. He wanted his blood to be married to a haunt, but you my dear were the lucky winner who stole Raphael's heart. So what, I should pay for his childish behavior? Unfortunately that is how he sees it my dear, but give him time my dear he will come around. I know, but I might fear that, that day might be just too late. What do you mean child? I looked up into her face and without hesitation, I told her. She tried to kill me Aunt Elizabeth and I think that she is still alive. Does Raphael know? Yes, but I am not sure about the alive part anymore. I said looking at Raphael once again. He looked so happy with Alexis that it made my heart swell in happiness. I felt her hand on mine making me look at her instead of Raphael. I was sat there for a few seconds recapturing of what had just happened a few minutes ago. I took my bag walking up to Raphael. As we walked up to the car my father stood by the gate. As we passed him I decided to turn around and to give him a hug knowing that he would be shocked by my actions. I then whispered into his ear. She tried to kill me Aunt Elizabeth and I think that she is still alive. Does Raphael know? Yes but I am not sure about the alive part anymore. I said looking at Raphael once again. He looked so happy with Alexis that it made my heart swell in happiness. I felt her hand on mine making me look at her instead of Raphael. I was sat there for a few seconds recapturing of what had just happened a few minutes ago. I took my bag walking up to Raphael. As we walked up to the car my father stood by the gate. 
As we passed him I decided to turn around and to give him a hug knowing that he would be shocked by my actions. I then whispered into his ear. Does Raphael know? Yes, but I am not sure about the alive part anymore. I said looking at Raphael once again. He looked so happy with Alexis that it made my heart swell in happiness. I felt her hand on mine making me look at her instead of Raphael. Well my dear at least now you have protection, something that your mother would have wanted for you. She said before she greeted me and walked away. I was sat there for a few seconds recapturing of what had just happened a few minutes ago. I took my bag walking up to Raphael. Are you ready to go? Of course my love. He said taking my hand in his. As we walked up to the car my father stood by the gate. As we passed him I decided to turn around and to give him a hug knowing that he would be shocked by my actions. I then whispered into his ear. If Bridget is alive I am going to kill her father, maybe then I would be worthy of your attention. I said with a smile. As I pulled back he still had that shock written all over his face leaving me satisfied. Raphael P.O.V. After we got into the car we drove back home in total silence. I took the gap to ask Emily what she had whispered into her father's ear that left him so shocked. What did you say to your father back there that left him so shocked? Nothing much just how you're going to kill him. She said with a smirk on her face leaving me to chuckle. The next moment I felt her hand against my chest noticing her with a pale face. Pull over. She said then I saw her hand covering her mouth. Now, Raphael. With those words, I pulled the car over to the side of the road. The car did not even stop when she opened the door throwing up. Her body became weak and she fell asleep while we drove home. I took my phone out calling one of my men asking that they must investigate if there was anything strange given to Emily that might have not been given to me. As we arrived home I woke Alexis up so that she can walk on her own while I carry Emily to our room. As soon as I placed her on the bed I went straight to the bathroom running a bath for her. I just came walking through the bathroom door when I saw her waking up. Her face turned pale, but she still managed to put up a smile for me. How are you feeling baby? I asked walked up to her stroking her rosy cheeks. I asked walked up to her stroking her rosy cheeks. Better, why didn't you wake me up? You looked so peaceful I could not have taken that away from you. Look at you caring. She said with a laugh that made me smile at her. She looked beautiful, but something was wrong. She looked tired, yet she had strength. I helped her up then picked her up taking her straight to the bathroom. I helped her to get undressed then helped her into the warm bath that was waiting on her. I wanted to leave when she had stopped me. Join me please? Em, are you sure that you are fine? Yes, I think that I just had one nasty allergic reaction to the food. You promise? Promise, tomorrow I will be better. She said leaving me to join her. After we took our hour-long bath we went to bed. Unlike Emily, I could hardly get an eye close due to the fact of her being sick right after we had left the memorial service of Bridget. I got up walking to my office waiting on my butler. I poured myself a glass of whiskey then took a seat behind my desk. I took a file out that had all the information on Bridget. I was about to open the file when a sudden knock took me from my thoughts. My butler came and asking if he can talk with approval of course. Go ahead. Sir, I had spoken to the men as well as the chef that made the dishes for the memorial as you have requested. And? It is clean sir, there were no traces of poisoning or tricks being played. I had asked to take a look at the camera's footage as well. So you are saying that there was no dirty work in this situation? It does not appear that way sir. He said giving me a paper that had all the information on of a shipment that was coming in. What is this? Sir, one of the people that had betrayed you have sent a gift for you. On a fucking ship? Yes sir, the entire ship's containers belong to you as an apology as I understood. If that ship docks, have men search it before moving it to the warehouse. What is this? Sir, one of the people that had betrayed you have sent a gift for you. On a fucking ship? Yes sir, the entire ship's containers belong to you as an apology as I understood. If that ship docks, have men search it before moving it to the warehouse. Sir, one of the people that had betrayed you have sent a gift for you. On a fucking ship? 
Yes, sir, the entire ship's containers belong to you as an apology as I understood. If that ship docks, have men search it before moving it to the warehouse. I don't want any surprises along the way. Of course, sir, anything else? No, that will be all, thank you. I said letting him of with a nod. I felt my phone buzzing leading me irritated as hell. I looked at the caller ID with a demanding tone I answered it. I am giving you five minutes before I am ending this cal. Well look at you Raphael Haunt. Did you take my advice? True, but this is me trying to make a menace. Did you know of him sending a gift? Oh well, you see he is very unpredictable with that department, but I don't think that he will try anything stupid with you. Really and why is that? Cause you my friend are the only supplier that will do business with him. He said with a sarcastic tone in his voice. Well you have a point there, now I am going to hang up this phone. Before you do, I heard about Bridget's death. Let me guess you would like to find out if it is true. Yes. I heard his voice tone increase with the speed of lightning. She had an overdose, but her father had her cremated since that shithead could not have sacked up and identified her out. So she might still be alive. No, and if she is coming here that would be the baitest idea ever. I said taking a sip from my drink. I hope that you are all right. He said after I ended the cal I headed upstairs. He said after I ended the cal I headed upstairs. I was walking down the hall when Alexis came walking down the hall. She had tears in her eyes. The moment her eyes landed on mine she ran towards me jumping into my arms. I picked her up carrying her to her bed. I tucked her and then laid by her until she fell asleep. This feeling of a house in a home was now making more sense to me than before. I had always wanted a family and even if Emily and I have a year to go to fix what is broken it will be fine, as long as she is here with me in my house. I almost fell asleep when I decided to go back to my room where I fell asleep right next to Emily. Emily P.O.V. Emily P.O.V. I got woken up by a pounding in my head. I felt dizzy and nauseous at the same time. I got up only to feel worse. My eye had caught the time seeing that it is only 6 in the morning. I tried to move feeling every muscle in my body screaming in pain. The next thing I knew I ran towards the bathroom throwing up once again. This time it had hurt even more than yesterday. I felt strong hands from behind me helping me up. I felt dizzy and weak. Emily, I am taking you to the hospital. I heard his strong voice say before I had drifted of into the darkness. I got woken up by a peeping sounds and a very bright light. As soon as my eyes opened I saw a nurse standing right next to me. She was busy taking some blood from me while Raphael stood at the end of my bed walking over to me. He looked so stressed out that I started to feel bad for what was happening. How are you feeling, baby? He said taking a step closer to me. Fine. I am just tired. I know my angel, but I think that we should run all the necessary tests that there is before we go home. He said stroking my cheeks while he planted a kiss on the top of my head. I knew that I should have been thankful, but I just really wanted to go home. I would like to feel this bad at home where I felt safe. I looked at the nurse then at Raphael hoping that he would change his mind, yet he did not. Raf I told you that it is just an allergic reaction that I had. Em, that does not get you to that point where you turn pale and can hardly walk. The moment I brought you and you were dehydrated. I know. Trust me, I love you and me doing this is for your own free will. He looked up at me then at Raphael with a smile he started to talk. How are you feeling Mrs. Hart? No allergic reaction can lead to any of this. Now I have taken some blood samples so that I can test them for a few factors that I might think are the reason. Trust me, I love you and me doing this is for your own free will. He said before the doctor came rushing in with his clipboard. He looked up at me then at Raphael with a smile he started to talk. How are you feeling Mrs. Haunt? I am just feeling very tired that is all. Mrs. Haunt, I understand that you might feel the urge to go home, but Mr. Haunt is right. No allergic reaction can lead to any of this. Now I have taken some blood samples so that I can test them for a few factors that I might think are the reason. The results will take a few hours, but I will try to get it to the both of you as soon as possible. He said before he nodded leaving the room. The poor doctor always seems to find his way around me and Raphael. 
I knew that on the one side that the doctor was right that no allergic reaction could have caused this, but I was not going to put my thoughts out there for Raphael to hear. I felt how his arms wrapped around my body pulling me into a tight hug. You are going to be fine my angel, I promise, take some rest as you look very tired. He said about to pull away. Please don't leave me Raph. I said in a shaky tone feeling scared of what might happen if he does. Last night, I could hardly close my eyes. This thought of not knowing what is going on with Emily was busy killing me silently. I knew that I had one of the best doctors looking after her as well at the best security, yet that did not settle my feelings at all. The camera footage was clean and no foul play was found the same with the food. I had the chef taste it leaving me even more confused than before. I got up thinking of getting myself a cup of coffee from the cafeteria downstairs. My butler did try to do it himself, but I had stopped him before he could even get far. I needed some fresh air as this hospital was sucking all the air out of my lungs. I walked to the cafeteria that was not far from where Emily was staying. I got myself a strong black coffee hoping that this would bring some calmness into my life. I knew what type of a target Emily would be, but her own blood that turned against her made me mad as fuck. I took a seat on the bench outside that was empty. I took a few sips from my coffee until I saw my butler approaching me. His hair was out of place while his tux was unbuttoned, but as soon as he stopped in front of me he fixed himself with a bright smile. Sir, I'm sorry to bother you but the doctor would like to see you regarding Mrs. Hans file. After hearing those words I got up walking towards Emily's room so that I can wake her up. I promised her that I will be right by her side if they have found something wrong with her. I got into the elevator and headed straight for her room. Once I got there, there was no one in sight. The butler saw my facial expression that I had leaving him to cal the rest of the man asking for a sweep to be done. I then walked into her room where I found it empty hoping that she was in the bathroom since the door was closed. It was then when I had noticed her bedding missing as soon as I saw that I knocked on the door. After no answer, I kicked the door down only to find two dead bodies that belonged to the security guards. I knew what this meant that Emily was just kidnapped leaving me mad as fuck. Mr. Haunt please calm down, we will find your wife. My butler assured me not making things any easier. Don't fucking tell me to calm down. I said throwing him a death glare only to see the doctor by the door. Yes, the doctor can you speak up as time is running out. Sir, I have gotten the last test results back of Mrs. Haunt. Well, what the fuck is wrong with my wife doctor you can see she is clearly missing. Mr. Haunt your wife is pregnant. Emily. I felt a horrible pain that pressed against my chest. Save your energy, my child, focus on my voice. Father. I said hoping for a dull moment that it was him leaving me breathless when I heard him confirming my thoughts. What is going on? Where are we? I asked him noticing that we were in a lounge type of room. I heard someone clapping their hands together making me jump from the moment only to see Stacy in front of me. Stacy, please untie us now so that we can get out of here. I said to her only to see a smile on her face knowing that something was up with her. She had that sinister smile on her pale face which made me want to punch it out of her. Father and daughter finally reunited as it should have been from the very fucking start. I heard a familiar voice say. I looked around only to see Bridget walking up to Stacy with the same smile. What the fuck is going on? I asked only to feel her hand against my face leaving a warm feeling. I swear that I could have tasted the blood from that hit that she gave me. Not so brave without a gun are we? Fuck you. I said only to feel another punch in my face. Stacy why don't you go and practice on your tears for the performance that awaits you? She said to Stacy with a satisfying smile. With that Stacy took her chance to leave so that it was only the three of us together. How nice to see father finally in one room with his only daughter. Bridget. Then why tie him up huh? Oh, I see what you did father all these years you lied to her didn't you? She said, and when my father tried to talk she punched him in his face. Tell her the fucking truth or would you like me to do the honor father? She said placing her hands on her hips waiting for my father's choice. I was about to open my mouth when my father started to talk silencing me. Bridget is adopted Emily. He said leaving me shocked while Bridget stood there with a smile gazing down on me. 
I think she loved the reaction that she got from me after my father said those words. You are wrong father. Emily we adopted Bridget not long after you were born, cause we wanted another child and her mother. My mother died Emily you see she was your maid. What the actual hell was happening at this moment? Could this be the truth or was this just another sick little story to keep them entertained? It is the truth Emily, we decided to lie to you, because we were scared of what Bridget might do to you. Do to me? Did you see where we are sitting father? I know I made a mistake I tried to protect you, but I was doing more harm than good. I was about to say something when I got interrupted by Stacy yelling at Bridget. Raphael has his men out looking for Emily, he has a target on our head. Now that is interesting. Shoot to fucking kill Bridget, you said that before he will get the chance to cal that order that we will be long gone. Stacy said walking up to Bridget with an angry face. I looked at them then back at my father seeing how his face was all bruised up. Well things took a turn so then we will just get on with the plan, why don't you go back to your little rehearsal while I finish my talk with our lovely guests. She said looking down at me with a smile. I could not tame my words anymore so I opened my mouth. If Raphael does not put a bullet in your head I will and that sister is a promise. Well you better keep it little sis. She said walking away while Stacy stayed behind looking at me and my father. If they move shoot them. Bridget said with a laugh while walking out of the door. What are you doing Stacy? What does it look like Emily, I am making money from you and your father. Is that what you believe Stacy? Yes, I was getting money to keep you in place, until the end, I will still be getting. Raphael is going to kill you, did you not hear what you had just said? Maybe or maybe not, Bridget has a contact that will help us out. You mean the same contact that sent Raphael a heartwarming gift to apologize? I said knowing who she spoke of. That is not the truth. I hope for your sake so Stacy if you help us. What did I take from you Stacy? I asked confused about what she had just meant by that sentence. You took Raphael from me. Wait what? I practically screamed at her with a sarcastic tone. She never liked Raphael, hate yes, she hated the bastard more than I did at a point, but liked was some next level shit. Stacy, enough of this chit chat of yours, will you be so kind to take my lovely father to another room? I have some unfinished business to take care of. Bridget said as she came walking into the room. I could see how Stacy was getting mad at Bridget, yet she held it in. I wish I had known that Stacy was part of this shit, then maybe I could have turned her thoughts around somehow. I saw how Stacy took Bridget to the one side of the room leaving me alone with my father. He looked at me with eyes full of regret. I have never seen this side of him ever. Listen I will signal you if I get free from Stacy, then play along, and if it comes to killing. Then I will take care of it father. I said feeling a tear almost leaving me. I could not imagine what had just happened in these last few hours ever. I saw how Stacy walked up to my father choking him until he was passed out stone cold, before she had moved him to another room. Feeling the silence in the room I saw Bridget looking at me with a smirk on her plastic face. She looked evil as hell, but that is not going to scare me not even one fucking bit. My father was right about one thing and that was if push comes to shove I will kill her even if it means that I will be killing my sister. You should have listened to my threats earlier Emily. Why so that you can make Alexis' life a living hell as well as Raphael's? I asked only to feel a strong punch hitting my face. I felt how the punch had bruised the inside of my mouth as I could taste the blood from the inside. I remember how my trainer told me that patience is a virtue that cannot be taught so, I will let her hit me as much as she wants before I attack. Raphael. I rushed down to one of the guards that were guarding the door only to find my men in a circle kicking a woman. I could not see clearly who it was until I came closer. I found my mother on the ground being curled up in a small bundle. I yelled at my men to stop this insanity until one of them came running up to me. Sir, Mrs. Horn took Mrs. Horn from the hospital. If you don't believe us, you can see it on the camera footage. He said looking down to the ground. I was mad as fuck and could not believe that my mother would possibly be part of the circus. I helped her from the ground calling my butler forward. Get me the footage now, and if any of you are wrong I will fucking kill you. Make no mistake but I will not tolerate any of this fucking crap anymore.
I said taking my mother to a room where a nurse can take care of the wounds that she had taken from my man. Raphael, please you. Before she could have said anything my butler handed me the iPad with the video playing on it. I was taken back by what took place right in front of me. If you have anything to say, please say it fucking now. I can explain. She said before I interrupted her. I signaled the nurse to leave while my mother's bodyguards stood right next to me. How long has my mother been up to the shit? I asked the guards with a straight face seeing how he was unsure to answer my question I punched him in the face. How long? I asked him as calmly as I possibly could. A while sir, she met with Miss Bridget the night before she made her return. Well, that settles that, so you knew about what was going on behind my back, yet you looked the other way without telling me? Sir, I... You know what you are to me? I said seeing how he nods his head not knowing what to say. I was mad as fuck at that point I could kill my mother. I took out my gun aiming it at the bastard who stood in front of me. I said pulling the trigger hearing his body falling to the ground I looked back at my dear mother who sat there with fear in her eyes. I made a vow to protect Emily and I am going to do that, now is there anything else that you would like to tell me before I find it out for myself? I asked her as I pointed the gun at her. The door flew open by my father walking in with total surprise. He looked down at the body then up at me with a worried face. Son I will take care of your mother, go find Emily. Raphael listen to your father, please. My father said as he slapped my mother across the face. I walked out of the room walking down the hallway when I heard a lady's voice calling my name. I tried to avoid it, but I remembered the tone it was Emily's aunt. I turned around to find her running up to me. I know you hate our family son, but I need your help. I have problems of my own. I said only to walk away that was until she stopped me in my tracks. Emily is missing isn't she? How did you? Her father is missing as well, trust me if we don't find them soon enough then we might find their bodies. Is her father in on this? Tell me the fucking truth. No, he loves Emily more than anything in this world more than Bridget. That is not true and we both know it. I said walking up to her with a quick step forward. It is true, Bridget has been a danger for Emily since she came into the family Raphael. She hates Emily and if we don't find her. She said before she bursts out into tears. I knew deep down inside of me she was telling the truth, but this was not solving my problems. Emily. Bridget helped me up then made me walk in front of her out on the balcony. There was a plank laid out waiting for me as I assumed. Bridget pushed me knowing that I was scared of heights my entire life. I knew that I had to stay calm and not show her any affection but it was hard when you are about three stories high. Walk bitch. She said pushing me a bit feeling uneasy, yet I kept my pose. So what? You plan to make it look like an accident? Of course, you see you jumped since you could not live with what you have done to me. Oh so you want to play the victim here, just tell me what are you going to do with Stacy? Kill her or something, maybe Raphael likes threesomes. She said with a huge smile on her face leaving me speechless. Why would I be suicide if I had everything that I had ever dreamed of having Bridget? I asked taking a step closer making her notice so she pointed the gun at my head. Easy, guilty consumers. Then let me start by getting that side clean, you remember that boy named Jerry that you dated in school? What about him? He never left you, Bridget, he died. I said seeing how her attention has been taken a bit back. No, Jerry was a nice guy he had everything that I wanted until he disappeared. Every summer when he came to visit he would try his luck with me until I caught him. You see he tried to rape me in your room while you were with mom in town. I took father's gun and shot him when I got the chance to break free. You're laying. Am I? I asked taking a step closer to the balcony. Her eyes changed and the smile fell from her face. You see Bridget if I get off of this ledge I am going to kill you like I killed Jerry, and maybe you two can fuck each other in hell. I said taking another step towards her only to see her noticing it making me think fast. The next moment a gunshot went off, causing me to take a step back. Raphael. My phone went off with a quick move I took it out only to see that it was an unknown number. I answered the cal hoping that it would be Emily. 
Raphael, an old burned-down house in the woods not far from town maybe five meters out of town. Come quickly. I heard a voice say only to hear a gunshot in the back making me run towards my car. Emily. The pain was nothing compared to what I had felt from every situation she had placed me in. I took another step back trying to keep my balance. The next one is going to be in your head bitch. Bridget said leaving me to nod at her statement. I then looked down seeing how high of the ground I was. I needed to get out of here alive or at least beat Bridget. You can't cheat death, Bridget. Who said I was about you cheat death? She asked in a harsh tone leaving me to laugh at her with a sinister tone making her back of a bit. The next moment I heard my father calling my name from behind Bridget, causing her to turn around focusing on my father who stood free by the door. My window of opportunity was small, yet I took this chance of running towards Bridget jumping on her from behind. Her legs could not take the extra weight so we fell on the ground making her yell in frustration. I then looked up at the weapon that was not far from her hand. With a swift move, I tried to pick the gun up, only to fail miserably. Her aiming was at me so I ran inside pushing my father out of the way. Another shot went of, filling the empty house with a loud noise. I ran down the dark hall taking cover from the pillar that was not far from the room that she was in. I looked around hoping to find a gun or a weapon that can be of good use, yet I had found nothing but burned furniture. I knew that it was not going to help as it was already fragile and if it had to take a blow it will break immediately. I spotted a chair that was not far from my reach that has not have been damaged by the fire. I took quick but soft steps towards the chair hearing her heels coming down the hallway. I heard a groan coming from her mouth. I moved faster knowing that my father had tried his luck so I took the chair breaking it into pieces. I took a look at all of the pieces that were laying in front of me on the ground. There was at least one piece that was of use since it had a sharp side. I picked it up standing behind the door waiting on her. I slowed down my breathing remembering the training that I took, hoping deep down inside that it would be enough to take down this suicidal bitch. Come out come out wherever you are. I heard her voice getting closer than I heard my father yelling at her to leave me the fuck alone. She's wounded and will not get far, so I am just going to put her out of her misery. She said as I saw her shadow entering the door. The first thing that came to light was the weapon that was pointing forward, meaning she can easily kill me if she would like. I decided to wait until she is completely past the door and her back is facing me. The moment that her back was visible that was my moment. I kicked her from behind making her tremble forward falling over her own two feet, before she could respond I had kicked her weapon away from her. I looked down at her seeing her nose bleeding from the fall that she had just taken. That shot is going to fucking cost you. You will not kill me, Emily, you don't have the fucking balls. She said standing up taking a step back leaving me to laugh at her pathetic words. I had balls to kill your little Jerry, imagine what I have in store for you. I said taking a step closer making her back up a bit. She tried to throw a punch leaving me to duck making her mad as fuck. I took my advantage hitting her in her stomach making her back up a bit. I took her by her hair throwing her through the wooden table that was not far from us. I heard her laughing at me making me even more furious, I then took a step closer to her kicking her until she threw me of of her, and the next thing I knew she was on me. She had me pinned down on the floor punching me as hard as she can with her fists. I tried to stop most of the punches, but took most of them in my face. She was about to throw another when I headbutt her making her fall on her as with that I got up to my knees punching her till she fell to the floor. I got up walking over to where the weapon was laying only to feel her hands around my legs pulling me back making me lose control of my feet. I then felt her choking me from behind making me gasp for air. I saw that she had an injury from the fall that she took earlier with that I pressed hard on her making her release me. I moved away from her kicking her so hard that she took a few steps back going right through the window leaving her on the balcony. What is it with this place and fucking balconies? I said picking a stick up that laid on the ground walking outside. Bridget's facial expression has changed into something different. Let's fucking finish this now. I said hitting her across her face with the stick leaving her to take another step back. 
I had noticed how her foot was now on the edge of the balcony. The next moment she pulled out a knife from her leg. Great, just fucking great. Anything else that you have been hiding from me sister? Just your fucking taste in men. Says the one who fucked him first. I said only to see how she ran towards me, with a quick move I had dodged her making her trip. Just your fucking taste in men. Says the one who fucked him first. I said only to see how she ran towards me, with a quick move I had dodged her making her trip. She fell to the ground hearing her scream in pain from the knife that had cut through her skin. Didn't you learn not to play with fucking knives? I said taking a step closer to her seeing as this was the advantage that I had. I sat on her back chalking her with the knife feeling how she gasps for air until I felt a sharp pain. As I looked down I saw the knife that had pierced right through my skin. If I die you die, sister. Well, that is fair enough. I said moving away from her letting her breathe. You don't have long left sister before you bleed out. Well, then we better make this quick. I said with a smirk on my face leaving her to feel her throat. I got up with the bit of power that I had left in me. I felt weaker than before but knew that I was not going to give up now not while she can still breathe. She tried to stand with the power that she had left. She ran towards me trying to choke me once again so I grabbed the stick pushing her away with it. I then ran towards her pulling the knife out. Raphael. I got into the car with my men right behind me. I knew that Emily's aunt was right that if we don't get there right away, Emily might be dead. I tried to get rid of my thoughts then focused on the road ahead of me. My butler had already had the place scanned a month ago when we were looking for another man so finding them was going to be very easy. The road took a left not far from town. The road was mostly a gravel road until you get to the view of the house. I saw the big gates standing open leaving me to drive faster. The road up until the house was long, but even I could see the dark clouds on top of the house waiting for the horror to take place. As I had reached the house I saw a shadow sitting in front of the house looking out on the gate. It was no other than Stacy who sat there. I stopped the car taking my weapon out running towards her. She looked up at me with a smile, this does not make fucking sense. Where is Emily Stacy? Raphael I am. What the fuck are you doing here? Whose blood is this? I didn't ask her this time I had demanded her with fear written all over her face. Raphael Emily. Emily is what Stacy? I tried to warn her Raphael, but she did not listen. She said seeing tears dropping from her face. Emily is dead Raph. She said making me feel weak from what I had just heard. I stood there in shock not even noticing Stacy's hands around my neck. I was about to push her away when I heard a gunshot making us all flinch at the loud noise. I was about to move Stacy out of the way when her body had dropped to the floor. Get the fuck away from my husband. I heard a familiar voice say. As I looked up I could not believe who was standing in front of me. Raphael. Her eyes were dark as night making me fear that the worst had happened. I looked at the body that lay silently on the ground before me. I looked at the body then back to the person who came out of the front door. She was covered in blood and looked like she went through a window with marks that could be seen on her body. I ran up to her in disbelief of what had just taken place, but I was more focused on the blood that was all over her body. Can we go home please? I heard her voice say in pain. We can go home after you have seen the doctor. With those words I lifted her bridal style walking towards the car. I had hardly reached the car when she blacked out leaving me to walk faster. I heard my butler yelling that there is another survivor, but I was not interested in that at this point. I got into my car speeding towards the hospital. There was not a second that had passed without me checking up on her. I spoke to her so that she can just stay conscious. Baby wake up. I said out loud making her open her eyes before she was about to drift of into a deep sleep I shook her body making her look up at me with a small smile. Her face was busy turning pale from all the blood loss. Listen after all of this is done I need to tell you something. I said trying to get her attention, but she just threw me a smile then closed her eyes. I knew that she was not doing this on purpose, but I could not let her go not now not ever. I took the shorts cut then stopped where the ambulance was supposed to stop. 
I flew out walking around to her side with the nurses already rushing out of the hospital with a stretcher. The moment I laid her on the stretcher the nurses pushed her down the hall into a private room. I walked in, but I got stopped by the doctor. Please wait here son, he said in a stern voice, but I could not see her fighting alone for her life. I looked at the doctor's hand that was on my chest noticing her blood on my clothes. I'm not leaving her, now move out of the way. Son, we will be opening her, and you should not see that. Now I am well aware of the situation. I will yell if there is a problem, he said making me back up a bit. After the door closed I heard footsteps coming down the hallway towards me. I looked up into my mother's eyes. Son. Get the fuck away from me. Relax son, we are just here to support you. I heard my father's voice say from behind me. I turned around looking at him with a blank face not knowing what to say to him. At that moment I felt my mother's hand on my shoulder with a swift move I caught her by her wrist. You better fucking hope that she makes this out alive, if not I will kill and gut you myself. I said walking away from her towards my butler that came rushing through the front door down the hall. Sir how is Mrs. Haunt? She is hanging in there, please tell me who was the survivor. Mr. Duke sir but he is upstairs being taken care of. He was badly injured by Bridget. He said looking me straight into the eye. Bridget? Sir, Bridget is dead. How sure are you? Cause the last time we were sure that she was a thousand miles from here on another continent. I said taking a step closer to him seeing how his eyes changed into a different shade of fear. Sir, there is a bullet right through her head. Good. Throw her body in the ocean as well as Stacy's. I said turning around walking towards the room Emily was in. Emily. I felt a sharp pain in my body as I tried to move a bit. I slowly opened my eyes hearing a beeping sound and noises around me. I opened my eyes seeing a white ceiling at that moment I knew where I was. I tried to move up a bit only to see Raphael by the chair next to me. He looked down to the ground and he was still wearing the bloody clothes from before. His fists were white from anger if I could take a quick guess. I was about to open my mouth when Raphael's mother came walking in. I brought you a coffee, son. I think that you will need. I don't fucking need your coffee. Raphael. You can be glad, mother. I heard his angry voice say, I decided to open my eyes just in time to stop whatever was going on here. Raph. I said slowly moving a bit to get his attention. I felt his hands on my shoulders helping me a bit up. I almost screamed at the pain when he helped me up. I will call the doctor, I heard his mother say before she walked out of the door. I looked at Raphael. You could have changed. I'm not leading you baby, how are you feeling? I feel like a train ran right over me with a pure purpose. I said hoping that he would ask the nurse for some pain medication. Good morning Mrs. Haunt, I heard a familiar voice say. As I looked up I saw the doctor in front of me with a huge smile. Hi, there doc. I said remembering how I had made this poor doctor's life a living hell these last few months. How are you feeling on a scale from 1 to 10? 11. Can you give me something for the pain maybe a painkiller or something? I wish I could my dear, but unfortunately it will be very harmful to your baby. The doctor said leaving me to gawk at his statement. Did I just hear him correctly? What the hell was happening? That cannot be possible. It is quite normal for you to be pregnant after losing a child. You see your body is more fertile than before. He said still with a smile on his face. Now I understand why Raphael does not want to leave me at all. I looked at him then at his mother with shock. Wait, that means that when I was being kidnapped I was pregnant? I asked looking at the doctor who just simply nodded with an agreement to my words. I am going to keep you here just for a few days but I want you to take it slowly since you have stitches and you are not completely out of danger with your pregnancy. He said before he left asking the nurse just to give me a normal painkiller tablet that will help ease the pain. I looked at Raphael with a shocked face, yet he had a smile on his face. Stop smiling Raphael. Make me. He said leaving me to laugh at his words, but I stopped immediately as soon as I felt the shocking pain through my body. Raphael's mother walked up to me but stopped immediately when Raphael threw her an evil glare. What is going on? 
I asked leaving Raphael to show his mother out of the room. He walked back to my bedside with an angry face. Em, what can you remember about what had happened? Mostly just what had happened. My father? I asked remembering how Bridget had beat up the guy twice for helping me. He is fine, he is at home resting, now Em, please tell me what you do remember? He asked me with pain in his voice. I knew that look that was on his face. Raph, none of this was your fault you know that right? I should have been here. Listen to me, this was not your fault. I knew that she was coming after me when I heard that she was cremated. It is not your fault that I got a sister that was a psychopath. I said placing my hand on his cheek making his eyes turn back to normal. I love you so much, Emily. I know, and I love you just as much my love, now are you going to tell me what the hell is going on with you and your mother? Nothing that I can't take care of my love. He said leaving me to wonder what the hell had happened while I was fast asleep. It has been a few days while I was still in the hospital. The doctor kept me on close observation since I was a flight risk as usual. Raphael only went to work to do the most important meetings after that he was back at the hospital with me. I saw Alexis more than once since she had school and I was supposed to rest as requested by the doctor. I was busy eating my jelly when Raphael came through the door with the doctor talking about something. They both looked quite happy to see me. I almost felt like a lab rat that was a successful creation of some sort. Guess what baby? I can go home out of this hell hole. I said in a sarcastic tone only to see Raphael's eyes looking at me intensely. He gave me a smirk then nodded with approval. Wait, you're serious, cause I can always stay and give birth here? We can always arrange for that. I was just kidding. I said practically screaming at them. I was not going to spend one more night in this hell hole. I wanted to go home and with home, I meant my bed. I have asked the nurse to get your medication ready so that when you leave, you can take it. Thank you, doctor. Oh, and Mrs. Haunt, I do not want to see you in my hospital again. He said with a smile making me laugh at him. I knew what he meant with those words. I guess I was attracted to hospitals lately. The doctor greeted us then left to attend to his other patients. Raphael came closer taking the jelly out of my hands helping me up to get dressed. I still had pain from the fight, but I was grateful to be breathing so I could deal with the pain. After I got dressed Raphael helped me into the car. We drove towards home only to paw the turn that lead towards his house. I think that you had just missed the turn? No, I did not. Really? I asked with confusion looking at his face since he had a smirk written all over it. Just relax baby. I can't it is not in my nature. Now will you please tell me where we are going? Home. He said taking my hand in his. I knew whatever he was up to was too good to be true. He then turned off by a small lavender bush that led right up to huge gates. Please tell me we are not meeting clients right now. Maybe. Raphael are you fucking kidding me, did you not just release me from the hospital? Maybe or maybe not, plus watch your language since we have ears listening to us. Great. I said showing him my middle finger as we pulled through the big gates that led straight to the most beautiful house that I had ever seen. The house almost looked like the house in France making my heart melt from the beauty in front of me. I gasped when I saw the most beautiful roses. Are those? Your favorite roses, yes my love. He said he kissed my hand. He stopped in front of the huge house that looked empty. There was no curtains that were hanging and people were waiting outside on us. They had smiles all over their faces with sparkling eyes. What the hell was happening? Raphael opened my door helping me out of the car. He then took my hand leading me towards the house. The house had a dark brown color that suited perfectly with the landscapes around it. There was a fountain by the entrance with huge doors while we walked through the doors my eyes landed on the inside of the house. My breath was immediately taken away from the beauty it held on the inside. I felt his arms around my waist with a soft kiss on my cheeks. Welcome home my love. He said softly in my ear. I felt goosebumps all over my body from just those few words. Raph, I.
You don't have to say anything, my love. From now on we are going to do things together since we will be a family in a few months. He said with his hands over my stomach. I never thought that I would hear those words from the cold-hearted man. He accepted me and my baby which was a pretty big deal. Are you sure that you are not just doing this because you have a guilty conscience would I have a guilty conscience? He whispered into my ears. Cause, you sold my house. I said with laughter until he spun me around now leaving me to facing him. I just want to give you what you deserve my love, and I don't see anything wrong with that. I never thought that you can be this romantic. You have not seen me romantic yet. He said as our lips touched. I felt a rush running right through my body from his touch. I love you, Emily Duke. I love you to Mr. Haunt. Raphael. After I showed her the house I took her home only to find my mother waiting on us. Emily was not even inside when my mother came over to greet her, but I stood in the way before she could have reached Emily. I just want to greet my daughter-in-law Raphael. Emily is tired and needs rest. Be so kind to see yourself out. Raphael. I heard my mother say when I felt Emily behind me looking confused. What is going on here? She asked curiously. Nothing my mother was just leaving, I said looking at my mother with hateful eyes. She looked at me then back at Emily with a smile. Are you sure? Yes, go upstairs I will be there in a few, I said to Emily with a dominant voice. She looked at me then took the smart decision to go upstairs. I took a step closer to my mother the moment Emily was out of sight. Please let me. It is my grandchild Raphael. Oh don't talk shit. A few days ago you tried to kill that baby, now out of the blue you have developed a feeling for my child? I said trying to hold back my anger. Just thinking of it made me sick to my stomach. I did not know. Get the fuck out of my house now. I said before she moved I grabbed her by her arm so that she can face me. If Emily finds out do you think for even one second that she will allow you to see your grandchild mother? I asked in a harsh tone. Please don't. Stay the fuck away from my wife and child, do you understand? I do son, but what do you think will happen if she finds out that the two of you are still married? Are you threatening me? If it comes to that, then yes. I do promise you that before you go their mother to have a funeral policy, cause then I will fucking kill you myself and this time father won't be around to save your little ass. I said letting go of her. I walked up the stairs making sure that she had left before I went to our room. I walked into the room seeing Emily already in bed with a smile on her face. Why are you smiling? Cause I am finally out of that place of hell. She said taking a strand of hair out of her face. Trust me I am just as glad that you are home, but I won't be able to stay long since I still have to pick Alexis up from school. I understand, how long do you have before you have to leave? She asked with a naughty smile. About hour or so. I said taking a step closer to her than taking a seat next to her. I said taking a step closer to her than taking a seat next to her. With a total surprise, she got up and removed my tie from my neck leaving me to glare at her. You said an hour right? You need to rest M. I can rest when I am dead, now how about I just say thank you? She said before she gave me her puppy eyes. I could not resist those eyes so I pulled her closer by her neck till our lips crashed on each other. The moment her lips had landed on mine it was like a fresh breath that I had taken. I felt alive more than I did before. I picked her up laying her down on the bed. I kissed her deeply until a moan had escaped her as my fingers were on her clit. Raph, Emily P.O.V. After what seemed like a week I had decided to start packing since Raphael went out of his way and quit my job on my behalf. Things were starting to look good since there was not a Bridget anymore near us. I spend the entire day just packing and trust me when I say this that I did not even pack half a room. Raphael came home after he had picked Alexis up from school seeing that I could not drive yet as orders by the boss himself. Sometimes he made me forget what type of as he could be, yet I was head over heels for him. We went to a doctor's appointment a few days ago and found out that I was about a month and a half pregnant which was pretty good news to both of us. I was busy closing a box when I heard laughter coming from the front door meaning that my baby girl is home with her father. 
I decided to wash up so that I can prepare lunch only to be greeted by two dark eyes. Hi, mommy. Hi baby, why don't you go and wash up then come down to help me with the food? I asked with a smile after I had hugged her tiny body. Okie dokie. She said before she left me and Raphael alone hopping along to wash up. I threw a small smile at Raphael hoping that he would return a smile, yet he stood there with a blank face. The next moment I felt him pulling me into his strong arms. What happened to take it slow? People that we pay? He said with a small smile creeping onto his devilish face. I should mention that he smelled heavenly. He looked super sexy in his suit that showed most of his muscles driving me insane. This feeling got me pregnant don't I ever learn from my mistakes? I looked up to him with a smile asking him to wash up as well so that we can have lunch. How about I help you with the lunch? I can manage to make lunch on my own love. I was not asking if you could manage baby, are we going to go back to that part of a statement again? Oh please. I said trying to walk away from him only to feel his lips on my neck. Those soft kisses that he had placed on my neck had me at the next level of excitement. The previous time that I punished you, you ended up pregnant my love, do you want to go there again? He asked as he kissed me even more passionately. How about you help me with the lunch or this pregnant lady of yours will starve to death? I said laughing as I escaped his strong hands with luck walking down the hall into the kitchen. I took out some bread with eggs. What are we having mommy? Your favorite my love. I said as I was busy baking the eggs as Alexis liked it. I was about to take the bread when Raphael grabbed it out of my hands. I heard that there is a chef needed in here. He said as took out the bread from the plastic bag hearing Alexis giggles made me happy. I could never imagine us being like this close enough as a family. Daddy? Yes, baby? I heard his soft voice say to Alexis. Am I going to have another sister or brother? Her words placed a huge smile on Raphael's face making me smile at this image. You will be having a sister or a brother my dear. I would like a sister so that we can play with my dolls. And if it is a boy? I asked looking at the two of them. Alexis might have not been like Bridget, but she had her father's way of doing and thinking. Give him to Grandpa. Why would we do that baby? Raphael asked taking a step closer to her. He knew that she didn't want a brother, but like always daddy to the rescue. Think about it, if you have a brother he will always protect you against the evil that is outside in the world. He will be the superhero that will always be there for you. He said kissing her on the head before he walked back around the table helping me with lunch. Daddy is right my baby. I said seeing a small smile on her face. I know mommy. She said happily. We had our lunch not long after our total discussion about superheroes. That was the topic that Raphael had placed into Alexis's head. Great. I took the dishes into the kitchen while I left them to argue about some sort of hero or was it a villain? I was about to wash the dishes when I felt Raphael's arms embracing me from behind. You could help me you know? I said strictly leaving him to smirk at my words. You have it covered my love, but unfortunately due to circumstances you will not do dishes. He said as he pulled me away from the base. Before I knew it there was already a lady busy cleaning it herself making me look up at Raphael with a sweet glare. I am just pregnant not an invalid. Oh really, there is a difference? He said mocking me. You should know by now that you will not be doing the dishes, my love. Today was long day and I think that you should take it slow remember what the doctor said. He said lifting my chin to look into his dreamy eyes. Yes, but... No buts, now how about I get the popcorn so that we can watch that movie of yours? Wait, you're going to watch a chick movie with me? Of course anything for you my dear. He said as I left the kitchen headed towards the lounge. Alexis was busy playing with her dolls upstairs while Raphael and I could enjoy our little time alone. We watched the notebook that left me crying due to my hormones while Raphael almost fell asleep. After our movie was done I felt Raphael moving his hands down my hips pulling me closer to him. His hand rested on my stomach while he looked up at me with the most beautiful eyes ever. What would you like it to be? A girl? 
I said seeing him with a smirk on his face. You? I asked him with pure curiosity. A boy. If it is a boy, will he be taking over the family business? I asked him hoping that he would say no, but he just nodded slowly. Yes, but only when he is ready for it until then I will be in charge. Raphael I don't want any secrets anymore between us, not after what had happened with Bridget and Stacy. I said knowing that we have not talked about any of this since after the accident. I know if we had a son that he would have to take over the family business, but I could not let him make the same mistakes we did. I know my love, from now on I will tell you everything, but just know that this will be hard for me after. She is dead Raph, and I am not her for one second. I know. Good, cause I am not going to die again. You're not dying on my watch my love not now and not ever. He said leaving a tear to fall from my eyes. Why are you crying? It is the bloody hormones. Just say it you need me. He said with a smirk I playfully punched him before the doorbell rang. I looked at him and he back at me. Are you expecting someone? No you? No. Sir, I am sort to disturb you but it is Mr. Haunt that would like to have a word with you. He said then with a simple nod from Raphael he left the room. Why don't you go and see what Alexis is up to while I attended to my father's needs? He said kissing me on my head. I then just nodded with a smile before I had left the room. Raphael P.O.V. I walked into my office where my father had waited on me. He had already poured himself a drink before I had opened the door. Now let's talk about that plan of your son. He said leaving me dumbfounded only to hear him say again. The plan of killing your mother. He said in a cold tone. I was shocked by the words that had left my father's mouth, but he had a point. I am not going to kill her father. Is that so? Well not yet anyway. So you are planning on killing the woman who gave birth to you? My father said handing me a short glass of whiskey. What does any of this have to do with you? She tried to kill the next heir to our business, so I think it has something to do with me. He said taking a sip of his whiskey while he took a seat on the leather couch in the corner. I then walked over to my desk sitting behind it watching my father intensely. She knows that you and Emily are not divorced son, so why not just kill her while you still have the guts? Why don't you just divorce her? You are a smart young man Raphael, just remember that this time you were lucky what about next time? There is not going to be a next time father. I hope so son. He said before he downed his drink then left as quickly as he could. I sat there looking at the closed door thinking about what had taken place these last few months. My mother never liked Emily so why the hell would she start to like her now? Why would she betray her blood? These questions kept coming up to my thoughts leading me to throw a punch at the table hard enough to break the glass. Sir, what is it? I asked irritated by his presence. Is everything all right? You tell me? Well sir, you have been through worse situations like this, but I understand how you are feeling at this moment. He said leading me to look up into his face. How the fuck would you know how I feel? I lost a son about your age a while ago. He was smart just like you, but unfortunately too smart. I did not know. I said feeling sorry for the poor guy, just thinking about what I had felt before with Emily. The baby was still an unknown person to us at the time where he spent his life with his son knowing him and then he just gets taken away from him. There is a lot of things that you do not know sir, but I am proud of the person that you have become. I kill people and trick them, how could you possibly be proud of that? Cuz, you never give up not for a second. If you do feel the urge to see your plan through, just know that I will help you do it. He said folding his hands behind his back with a simple nod. In all of the years never had I imagined my butler trying to take a bullet for me. Killing your mother is not going to be easy. I know, but I need to know who was behind the kidnapping before there is just something that is not adding up to me at all. I will start the investigation as quickly as possible and will keep you up to date. Good, and I want you to keep an eye on my mother since I don't trust her at all. I said with a blank face leaving my butler to nod and to leave in silence. I then headed upstairs where Alexis was already fast asleep leaving me to go to bed. Today I had more questions than answers than before. I needed to find out what the hell was going on if there was another person they need to pay the same way as Bridget did. Emily P. O. V.
I woke up in the morning feeling well rested out knowing that Raphael will be at work already while Alexis was at school. I got up deciding to take a long hot bath while reading one of my favorite books. As soon as I had finished I then got dressed into a summer's dress that fitted me just perfectly until out of the blue I felt nauseous. I ran up to the toilet throwing up for what almost seemed like hours. I had no idea where it all came from, but this sucked. I heard a voice in the back that almost sounded like Raphael's mother. I tried to look up only to throw up again. I felt soft hands taking my hair out of my face tying it like a ponytail. How long have you been throwing up? I heard her soft voice say not knowing what to do. She was never this nice to me at all. I guess for an hour or so. I said before another wave had hit me. I heard her calling one of the maids asking them why did they not attend to me, leaving me yet again shocked. After a while, she helped me up and took me downstairs towards the kitchen. I am not going to eat, the thought of food just makes me more nauseous. I said trying to avoid the fridge. I am not leaving until you have eaten something, plus I think I just have what might help for that nausea of yours. You do? Of course, when I was pregnant with Raphael I suffered from vomiting, so I found out drinking a little orange juice and eating a slice of toast the vomiting disappeared for a day or so, she said while she handed me a glass of orange juice. She was busy making the toast leaving me to watch her closely. Why are you so nice to me? You're my daughter-in-law plus you are carrying my grandchild. The other night you and Raphael did not look very friendly with each other, so is this your way of trying to get back at him? No, I am here for you while I still can be, she said hearing her shaky voice. There was something up with her. While you are still here. I asked her not getting a response so I pushed my luck and opened my mouth again. Someone is out there trying to kill you aren't they? I asked her knowing that what I was asking was the truth. Don't be silly, now here you go eat up, and you will feel better, she said giving me the plate with the toast on. I need to go, will you keep this between us? I said when she walked over to me hugging me before she had left. I knew that something was up between her and Raphael and I was going to get to the bottom of whatever it was. I sat there eating my toast and washed the dish after I had eaten. I felt a lot better and I think that the toast and juice idea actually worked for me. So I was going to keep it a secret. I was about to start packing when I heard a car pull up the driveway. It was no other than Raphael himself. He walked into the house with his shirt neatly tucked in his black pants while his tie was a bit loose. His hair was messy leaving him, even more hotter than before. I looked at him with a smile. I got a call from one of the ladies telling me that you were not feeling well. He said as he walked up to me. He checked me out to see if I had any fever or any other symptoms that can lead to a hospital. He threw a breath of relief. You scared me Em, how are you feeling? Better I just had something to eat, I think the morning sickness had just started. I said as the maid came in from behind Raphael. Thank you for calling me as well as looking after her. He said to her. It was not me sir it was. She said making me throw a evil glare at her. The one that says I will kill you if you say anything. It was Miss Emily herself sir, she is a marvelous woman. She said taking a bow leaving the room. Do you want to go to the doctor? I said kissing him on the cheek while turning on my heels to leave this situation, yet before I got half the words that came out of his mouth made me stop. Em, I know that something is up here. Em, I know that something is up here. I can practically smell it. Maybe you're just smelling the rotten fish that was thrown out this morning. Mm. I hope so cause if I find out that you are indeed hiding something from me there will be a punishment. Maybe if you do I won't be pregnant anymore and we can have a second child? I asked sarcastically hearing his footsteps increase towards me making my heart beat faster. You have a thing for punishment, don't you? You have no idea. I said thanking the heavens for saving my ass. The day came when we had to move from Raphael's house to our own home which will be ours. I spent most of my time with Raphael's mother and heard quite a lot of stories about how she became Mrs. Haunt in the first place. 
As the last box was loaded of I started to unpack most so that we don't have so many boxes left, but unfortunately with this big house, it will take days maybe weeks. I was about to take another box when Raphael stopped me in my tracks. I think that you have done enough my love. Just a few more than we can stop. Rosie please take care of this box and is everything ready in our bedroom? Yes, sir we have packed everything out as you asked. Thank you. He said to the maid that gave him a smile and left the room. I felt him picking me up bridal style and walking up to our room. This new saying of our room was going to be an adjustment. I didn't fight against him at all only gave him a smile and a kiss on the cheek. Once we were upstairs, he laid me down on the bed. Alexis will be sleeping at my father's tonight, so we will have this entire house to ourselves, so can think about a few things that we can do. He said taking a loose hair out of my face. He pulled me closer to him landing his lips on mine. His kiss was indeed deep and hold a lot of emotion to it. I kissed him back of the knee to feel him close to me. These damn hormones were getting the best of me. He moved me up while he took his place right next to my side. Raphael, you know we can't. I said throwing him a glare until I felt his hands creeping up underneath my clothes and around my hips. Who said that I was going to go all the way, I imagine with the hormones that right now you were begging for my touch. He said with a soft kiss on my neck. He was damn right I wanted him more than anything at this moment. I felt as if I could fucking explode from the burning sensation that traveled through my body. Don't bluff yourself. I said with cheeky tone leaving him to turn me on my back while his hands traveled down my body until he was underneath my skirt. I knew his intentions by this time, yet didn't I want him to stop, I felt his fingers entering me. I gasped at the pleasure that he was giving me. Raphael P.O.V. After Emily had reached her climax I got up taking a shower after she fell asleep. Her baby bump was visible since she was laying on her back. I could not wait to meet the person who was inside of her. All I knew was that I was going to protect the child no matter what. I knew that Alexis was going to be the best sister ever, but still, I wanted her to know that I still love her no matter what. I got dressed in short pants and a shirt then headed to my office. This time my office was a little bit bigger and had more room to throw someone against a wall if there was a serious need for that. I was about to take a seat when my butler came walking in. I have some news about the investigation that you asked I must do. Well go ahead I am listening. It seems like Mrs. Hahn spent time with Bridget when she had arrived in the country as well as... As for? Lucas, sir. He said before his face fell to the ground before him. I thought I heard the name Lucas that would mean that he was somehow involved in all of this. I just want you to say the last part again, cause I think that I might have heard wrong. I have some news about the investigation that you asked I must do. Well go ahead I am listening. It seems like Mrs. Hahn spent time with Bridget when she had arrived in the country as well as... As for? Lucas, sir. He said before his face fell to the ground before him. I thought I heard the name Lucas that would mean that he was somehow involved in all of this. I just want you to say the last part again, cause I think that I might have heard wrong. Unfortunately not sir. I want you to keep a close eye on Lucas for now, now advise what else could you find out? Sir Bridget had something on your mother if our sources are correct. What could she have possibly have had on my mother? I don't know sir, but we are working on it as we speak. Good and keep this between us, I don't want Emily to know. Understood sir, he said before he had left the room. Unfortunately not sir. I want you to keep a close eye on Lucas for now, now advise what else could you find out? Sir Bridget had something on your mother if our sources are correct. What could she have possibly have had on my mother? I don't know sir, but we are working on it as we speak. Good and keep this between us, I don't want Emily to know. Understood sir, he said before he had left the room. Sir Bridget had something on your mother if our sources are correct. What could she have possibly have had on my mother? I don't know sir, but we are working on it as we speak. Good and keep this between us, I don't want Emily to know. Understood sir, he said before he had left the room. I must have spent about an hour or two in my study with paperwork that was a bit behind. I checked the time deciding to get up and see what Emily is up to. I was about to close my study door when I heard voices coming down the hall from the lounge. 
I did not remember seeing a visitor or hearing the doorbell ring. I walked up slowly towards the lounge until I was near the door. The voices became a bit clearer. There Emily stood with a huge smile on her face while talking to none other than my mother. How the fuck did she get into my house and more importantly why have I not yet been informed? They spoke like two best friends leaving me even more stunned by what was happening right in front of me. I took a deep breath in while I threw a death glare but I stopped Rosie. What the hell is going on here? Sir? Why have I not been informed of my mother's presence? Sir, Mrs. Haunt has been visiting your wife lately. She said that you knew and was fine with the idea. Who told you this? I knew my mother would not go down without a fight until the maid had opened her mouth saying that Emily has given my mother permission to be here. I walked into the living room not taking my eye off of my mother. Raf, why don't you help your mother with those boxes? Emily said while she had all of her attention on the box in front of her with the photos in. Of course, mother why don't you lead the way? I said with a smile seeing my mother smiling back at me left me sick to my stomach. She got up and walked out of the room while I trailed right behind her, but before she could pick up the box I stopped her. I had asked you to stay away from Emily and my unborn child haven't I? I am just trying to help her out since you are too busy with work. I can take care of my family and that includes my pregnant wife. Like your previous wife as well. She said mocking me making me even more furious than before. I think that it is time that you leave, don't you? I asked taking a step closer to her making her attention shift to my feet. I don't think that you have a say in any of this Raphael. Oh really? Well that child that is in Emily's womb is mine and that child will never know your name. Try me how do you think Emily would feel if she finds out that you almost cost her, her second child? You don't know the truth son. I might not know a lot. But I know this that you are not needed in my life nor my children's. I said to her in a screaming whisper only to see her eyes turning into total darkness. She was a smart woman, but not smart enough. Really and is that the opinion of your wife's as well since you never divorced her and kept her like a dog? So tell me son how long do you think you would be able to withhold the truth from her? At your third wedding or when she asks about the certificate. Do not test me mother, I will not hesitate to kill you myself. Good, stand in line with your father that would like me dead as well. You are just like him and that makes me sick. You have no right to talk about what makes you sick mother none at all. Don't do something that you are going to regret in the next few years son. The only thing that I regret was making the mistake of trusting you with my pregnant wife. You see I did not try to kill an innocent child where you did. I said pushing my nails into my palms with the fists that were forming. I was on the edge of killing my mother knowing that she was threatening me was just the spark to the fire. And you who tricked her into thinking that she divorced you. She signed her life away that day with all of your terms and bullshit. I was about to say something when I heard a soft voice coming from behind us. What did you just say? There she stood with the most confusing face that I had ever seen in my life. I was fighting with myself on what to say to her in regards to what she had heard from our conversation. I am listening and don't even think about lying to me. Emily, I am so sorry. My mother tried to say only to see Emily taking a step closer to us. My mother did not really know what to do, cause backing up was no longer an option that she had. I had no choice was all I heard that came out from my mother's mouth until I heard a loud noise. I saw how Emily slapped my mother right through her face with one hard slap. My mother's face was red leaving me to feel bad for her, but I was not going to get in the middle of this until Emily took another step towards her. That is enough Emily, I also wanted to kill her, but unfortunately I could not. I said stepping in between them. I felt my mother's hand on my back thanking me for what I had just done. Get the fuck out of my house and don't ever think of coming near me or my child. Consider this as your last warning as Raphael might make empty promises, but I don't. Emily! Rosie get the guest bedroom ready for Mr. Haunt, if he does not want to sleep there, then I will. She said with so much hatred in her eyes. She turned around then stopped by one of the guards that looked at the blank wall thanking the heavens that he was not in my position right now. 
escort Mrs. Haunt out of my house and make sure that she has left the premises if she gives you hassles shoot to fucking kill. What Emily said left me a bit scared for my mother's life, knowing that Emily was not bluffing at all. I took a look at the guard throwing him a look of approval. My mother moved swiftly from behind me then just gave me a small smile. Once you have a child you would understand what it means to be a parent's son, she said before she left. I was stunned by the words that she had just spoken of. My mother was cruel and there is nothing that can explain her actions, yet the words that she had just said made me think that there was more to this than I thought. After I heard the front door closed I walked back into the lounge only to find it empty. I heard a noise coming from the kitchen and decided to see what was going on. There she stood with all of her power looking at me. The hatred was worse than before. I tried to take a step towards her only to see her lifting her eyebrow making me stop in my tracks. Emily. Just don't Raphael. When were you going to tell me, Raphael? Before I stood in front of a church full of people or after? She asked me with a soft voice. I could not let you just walk out of my life like that Emily. So I am bound to you like a dog on a leash? She said taking a step towards me. Emily, we can redo our vows or even get divorced if that is what you actually want. Oh so now I actually get an option in what happens to me and my broken marriage. She said throwing her hands in the air. I am sorry Emily, how can I fix this? I asked with hope in my voice hoping that she would react a bit more discreet about this situation until she took a step closer to me. I noticed that she took a plate from the counter then threw it on the ground before me. I looked down to the plate that was shattered into a million pieces in front of me. Say sorry to that plate Raphael. She demanded so I looked at her dumbfounded, but she threw me a glare so I had apologized to the plate like she had asked of me. Did that plate restore back into one piece? She asked with eyes full of tears leading me to take a step towards only to see her taking a step back. The day you get to fix that plate without glue, maybe then we could have a talk, but until then I do not want to see you or speak to you. She said before she walked past me brushing her shoulder against mine making me look down to the MES that I have made. Emily POV. I headed straight upstairs into our bedroom which was now only mine. This felt like the only safe place that I had from the rest of the world. I have never seen myself this way before miserable, depressed and overall just screwed up. Yes, I did love him more than anything in the world, but love had its limits and I for one was supposed to know that. I took a seat by the window looking out at the most beautiful night sky. Somehow the stars that were not shining so bright made me feel less alone. I must have sat there for a few moments until I heard the bedroom door open, looking up there he stood miserable and alone. I shifted my gaze from him back at the stars hoping that he would just leave me alone, but he walked up to me taking a seat behind me. I gave him no attention at all hoping that he would just get the message. I can't fix what I have done, nor what my mother had done Emily, but I could not see you in someone else's arms for the rest of my life Em. I kill people and the only peace I get is when I am with you, so if it cost me a contract then so be it. I will not apologize for wanting you more than I dreamt of having. I will also not apologize for wanting your body next to mine every single minute. Right next to you I know I don't have to be this perfect man. I never wanted you to be perfect Raphael, I just wanted you to be the man that I fell in love with and you could have told me the day when I left how you actually felt about me. I said with a cheeky tone hearing him sigh. I could not tell you, Emily, I am a proud man after Bridget I thought that it was best to let you be on your own and maybe one day, I will tell you the truth. I turned around facing him with the bit of dignity that I had left in me knowing what he meant. Did you fix the plate? I asked with a low tone seeing how he ran his hand through his hair. I got up lifting his chin up so that our eyes could meet. His eyes were full of pain and regret something that I have not seen in him for a long time. Tell me how do you love, cause I just want to learn how to give you enough without being a total asshole. Were you actually planning on killing my mother? No, the poor woman helped me out these last few weeks. Really how so? He asked intrigued by my sentence leaving me to smile at him. Did you know that you gave your mother bad morning sickness? I said hearing Raphael laugh at what I had just said to him. Do you know what else I can give? 
he said sweet and seductively in a low tone. Get your mind out of the gutter, you are still sleeping in the spare room tonight, otherwise I will be. I said seeing his smile turning into a frown. If he thought that this talk and his sweet lips were going to get him out of the trouble he was so wrong. Raphael POV. I got up the next morning feeling highly irritated by little sleep since I slept in the spare room as requested by my wife. I got up then walked back into our room finding her still fast asleep so I then decided to just take a shower leaving her to sleep since she looked peaceful. After my warm hot shower, I got dressed for work as I walked out of our closet, I saw that she was still asleep leaving me to only give her a kiss on the forehead then left her. Before I left I arranged that they serve her breakfast in bed today hoping that it will score me points. I arrived at work an hour earlier than usual, yet I blamed it on the lack of sleep that I had as I entered my office I saw my mother waiting for me by my desk. I closed the door behind me giving her approval to talk. I came in peace. You have five minutes to explain what the fuck you are doing here. I said pointing at my watch while I took a seat behind my desk wondering what her lie would be this time. I want to make a deal with you son. Why now? I asked with a surprised face. Cause I have nothing left to lose, either way, I will be killed and by the looks of it, it might be my daughter-in-law. She said with a hurtful face. I am listening. It is regarding Luke. I see that I have your full attention now. My mother said with a grin on her face. I laid closer on the table showing her how interested I really was in her words. I want a deal Raphael before I spill the beans, she said taking a seat in front of me with hopeful eyes. I gave her a simple nod showing that I was willing to make a deal with her. I want to see my grandchild grow up in peace. I thought that you would ask for protection mother. I asked her with confusion written all over my face. I can fight my own battles while that po child can't. I agree with you mother. Now please do continue with the story that you have in store for me regarding Lucas. He is madly in love with Emily since you got married to her, but he made sure that she lost the baby so that he does not have to raise the man's child that he despises the most so. He made a deal with you didn't he? Unfortunately not, you see he made this deal with Bridget, and she came to me popping all of these terrible ideas in my head. You should have known better mother from the first day. I said to her leaving her to smile at me. The next thing she took out was an envelope then handed it to me while looking at my face. I would do anything to protect my son and my grandchild, so yes I had no choice to accept her offer, but do understand that if I had known about her pregnancy then I would have stopped. I looked at the photos while she spoke to me with a heart full of hurt. I could not believe what Bridget was capable of I almost underestimated my opponent there. I looked up as soon as her voice faded only to come face to face with her eyes full of tears. I have never seen my mother cry in all of these years that I have known her. Her actions surprised me making me feel like the worst son ever, but how could I have known? You should have come to me mother from the start. I said standing up walking around the table taking a seat next to her. She was telling the truth and I would be an idiot if I did not believe it. I tried, but I was stopped immediately. Who stopped you? Bridget. She tied me up and punched me more than once just so that she can get the warning out there. She said breaking down in front of me like a child and with that, I pulled her closer to me I held her for a moment until I had felt her hiccups slowing down. I was about to get up when my father came bursting through the door. You are not killing your mother. I heard his dark voice say leaving me speechless. I slowly got up taking a step back as he pulled his revolver out pointing it directly at me. He looked like me only worse, cause this man was fighting for his wife and that is marriage. No matter how hard things get or what the other person has done you will always love and protect them with every gut you have. I looked down at my mother showing her to calm down before she burst into more tears. I am not going to kill her. Now can you relax and take the gun from my face? I said with a strong voice until I heard my phone ringing leading me to shift my face from my father to my phone. I saw who it was and chills went right through my body. It is Emily, now you can shoot me, cause I will be answering my phone whether you like it or not. I said grabbing my phone from the desk answering it immediately. Hi baby, 
Can I call you back? I asked with a deep calming voice hoping that she would not catch on to my lie. Sure, but Lucas is here and he is looking for you. I told him to wait in the study while I give you a cow. With those words I kicked the bin that was in front of me to the far corner leaving my father to lower his weapon and take my mother into his hands. Listen to me very carefully Emily. What is going on Raphael? I heard her say in a worried tone. Is my butler there? Yes, he just had to sort some shit out apparently one of your men had overstepped their duty line? Listen to me and don't say a fucking thing, talk like we are having a conversation about a weekend away in Paris or something. I said hearing her voice from the other side talking like I had requested from her. Listen now very carefully, go upstairs to our room locket then go into our closet and reach into the third drawer of my closet. There will be a gun already loaded and ready to shoot. Raf. SH I am on my way, but I don't have time to explain. Just trust me on this. Lucas is not a good man Emily. I love you. I said finally finishing my instructions. I dropped the phone coming face to face with my father. He looked just as pissed as I did. You still want to waste that bullet on me pops? I asked then grabbed my gun from my drawer still keeping an eye on my father since I could not afford any surprises at this point anymore. I'll go with you son. He said showing me to start walking. As soon as I had reached my car I phoned my butler which did not even ring twice. Sir. Where the fuck are you? I was about to. Lucas is in my office keep him as far away from Emily as possible, he is going to kill her. I said, but before he could have opened his mouth again I heard how he pushed his phone in his pocket. Emily P.O.V. I just got off the phone with Raphael taking in what he had just said to me. Could Lucas really be dangerous, I mean he had more than once a chance to kill me if he would have liked. I was about to go upstairs when I felt a hand pulling me back. I collided into a strong chest knowing who it was. I tried to keep my heartbeat at a slow normal pace, but I was scared as bloody hell. Where are you going beautiful? He asked me with sparkling eyes, I just threw a smile thinking of what to say without making it look obvious. Mrs. Duke, I have arranged that the ladies get your bath running as requested? I heard the butler say with a smile. His eyes showed me that he knew what was going on and with that, I just smiled back at him then at Lucas. Thank you, I will be upstairs while you wait on Raphael. I said trying to move, yet his hands stopped me from moving. I knew that the butler saw what was going on and by the look of things he was getting pretty mad. Is there a problem Lucas? I asked looking down at his hands that were still wrapped around my body tightly. I thought that we could have some alone time, I mean it has been a while since we got the chance to catch up. He said throwing me a smirk leaving me even more terrified of the man that was standing in front of me. I would just like to take a bath if that is fine with you? I said trying to sound all casually about this entire situation. Sir, I'm sorry but I must ask that you remove your hands of Mrs. Duke. I hear the butler say and with his eyes still looking right into mine making me flinch at the sick smile that was placed on his face. My breathing started to go faster making me wish that I had never opened the fucking door in the first place. She doesn't mind, do you baby? He said leaving me to gasp for air hoping that some lighting can hit him right now. He was busy freaking me out and by the looks of it, he enjoyed every moment of fear that he had given me. Sir, I would not be asking this again. The butler said taking a step closer to us making me swallow deeply. Do you have a problem Im? He asked as he ran his fingers over my lips making my face turn into total fear until I heard a deep voice say coming from the front door. She might not have a problem, but I did Raphael. Well, my day was going exceptionally good for starters I had to find out that my own family betrayed me and now, I had come face to face with the monster himself. He stood right in front of me holding the one person I most cared about. Not just her my unborn child that was already my everything. I knew what type of a man he was so taking a step closer will just startle him to do something stupid. I took a step back closer to my father showing him to put down the weapon that was in his hand, only to see him throwing me a death glare. I then pulled his weapon down to the floor while looking at his face. That is my wife and child that is standing there father, do remember that. I said before I turned around facing him again. 
Lucas, let Emily go this has nothing to do with her and you know that. I said with a soft yet demanding voice hoping that he would take my words into consideration. Don't you dare take another step closer, cause you will regret it. He said with a smile knowing by now that the son of a bitch was telling the truth. I can't bring back the past Lucas and neither can Emily. I said hoping that he would loosen his grip at least a little bit on Emily, but he increased his grip on her arm making her gasp of the pain. You are hurting me, Lucas. Oh stop it, Emily, you are such a bitch did you know that Bridgette could not stand you? Who the fuck cared? Emily said making Lucas even madder that he wanted to hit her, but was stopped by my butler that was not far from him. He grabbed Emily and shoved her behind his back protecting her from the angry man that was now standing in front of us. I am so sick and tired of you having everything that you want Raphael, first Bridget then Emily. He said shaking his head from side to side then he started to laugh diabolical. I was scared of how today might turn out, if I just stayed at home then all of this crap would have been over. Is this what everything is about? You have no idea Raphael, you see you took Bridget from me that night that you slept with her and treated her like she was your one fucking queen am I right em? He said looking at Emily waiting on an answer and she had answered his question agreeing with him that he was right. I was young and stupid. You made out with Emily downstairs, why not tell her why you two did not get far? He said with a smirk on his face. Lucas it was a long time ago, please let's just... Oh, I see you have not told her yet have ye? He said making my hands ball into fists. He was really getting on the last of my nerves, but I still could not do anything not until Emily is a safe distance from that maniac. Emily. After Lucas had mentioned those words I felt that there was something more to the story than I believed. I looked at Raphael only to see his face emotionless almost like the man that I have married a few years ago. That face had hidden a lot of secrets from me and I was not going to let it hide anymore. After Lucas had mentioned those words I felt that there was something more to the story than I believed. I looked at Raphael only to see his face emotionless almost like the man that I have married a few years ago. That face had hidden a lot of secrets from me and I was not going to let it hide anymore. Lucas asked you a question. I said only to see everyone speechless from my words that just came from my mouth. Tell her Raphael, it is not like you can get married again. Oh, wait. Yawn are not even divorced. I think that you should keep your fucking mouth or would you like me to spill the beans or should I say coffee beans? Raphael said throwing him a glare making me feel uncomfortable as hell. I could not understand what was going on right here in front of me so like always I open my big fat mouth. Wait, let me get the both of you straight so I am a victim who is being used a bloody fucking toy between the two of you. For what your own personal games to see who gets to fuck each over even harder. I said almost screaming at them seeing how both of their faces turned dark. I knew that the choice of speaking was a bad choice, but I did not know that it would be this bad. You are stupid, if you think, that I am using you Emily. After your breakup with Raphael and the most miserable times that you had with him, I stayed hoping that you would see me. Lucas. No, Emily how about that time that we went to the Hilton Hotel? Lucas said making me shift my gaze to Raphael. How could I ever forget that night in my life? The night that changed my feelings for him forever until recently. How can one man destroy you and build you up better than before? How is that even possible? What are you talking about, Lucas? Raphael asked demanding an answer and when he got none I was the next person in line to answer his question. You see Raphael, no matter what the outcome the pain will always be remembered after all you knew how to make a person's life a living hell didn't you? Emily, what is he speaking about? Raphael had asked me once again hearing how close he was to losing his shit made me wonder what was the next trick that Lucas had up his sleeve. Lucas and I followed you to the hotel after you had that meeting with the Russians. I was hoping that what I had expected was wrong, but I was unfortunately wrong. I saw how you got your room card walking up the stairs with a woman that was round and about my age into one room. M. Wait let me finish. I broke down in tears blaming myself for what had to happen not just to our marriage, but to me Oswell. After we got married I lost myself. It was where my voice and opinions were taken away by one little word and a ring that will bind us together forever. 
I have not for go ten what it felt like to be pushed down to the ground Lucas, so tell me this that you are doing here isn't it just as the same as he did years ago? You tried so hard to not be him that you actually turned into him. I said with tears running down my face. I knew that this time it was not the hormones that were talking, but rather the truth that was bolted up into my heart. I do love my husband no matter what he had done in the past, yes, he tore me down like he wanted to, yet I could not see another morning without him at the dining room table. So how could one person be so blind and selfish? I am not a mem, look at me I have changed, and I am doing well for myself. Lucas said trying to take a step closer only to be stopped by the butler who threw him a threatening look. Still you are worse than him Lucas. I said looking at Raphael then back to him. You drugged me, you almost killed me, and for what for this little fantasy of yours? Raphael. I remembered that night like it was yesterday if only she had known what had really happened to that poor girl. She was a close friend of mine that gave me some intel on most of the business deals that went down so that I could be updated all the time. I did make love to her more than once, but not that night. That night I had to kill the girl as she was giving away some valuable information about my life and deals that I have done. She was addicted to cocaine and my money bought her a stack every month. I remembered how I got home to find Emily in the kitchen with a glass of milk. Her eyes were the most beautiful ones that I had ever seen. I kept myself away from her to avoid any attachment being made. I looked at her then back at Lucas. I am going to kill you with my bare hands and so help the man or woman who will be standing in my way. I said shooting him with bloody eyes making it visible that I had enough of his shit. Hold your horses buddy, M. would you like to tell him, or should I? Lucas said making Emily turn pale as she was shocked by the question that Lucas had asked making me wonder what the fuck is going on. Lucas I beg he needs to know right? Fill the beans buttercup or should I do it for you? He said with a smirk on his face. I looked at my men around me who was waiting on my signal to go ahead. I kept calm, cause I wanted to know what they were talking about. I placed my hands in my pockets then focused on Emily that was now standing behind my butler with tears in her eyes. Why are you doing this? She asked him almost begging for him to answer her. Fine then I will tell him myself. He said looking at me while he had a smile on his face. Alexis is my daughter and not yours Raphael. He said making me laugh at the words that he had just spoken about. Really? I asked moving him to the edge seeing how uncomfortable he was at this moment it was heavenly. I took a step closer while keeping my eyes on him. Raphael. I wanted to tell you. Why would you write, babe? I said looking at Emily with no emotion whatsoever making tears run down her face even more. I got closer to see Lucas with a blank face that even the bastard looked terrified. Do you know why no one ever crosses me at a deal, Lucas? Maybe, because you are the billionaire that can buy anything. You are wrong, I rule the weapon industry as well as the black market. Why so confused, Lucas? I thought that we could take this time to get everything cleared out before I murder you in front of my wife. I said looking at Emily. Raphael. She said with a soft voice. She begs for me and screams my name every single time that we make love Lucas, yet Bridget was horrible in bed now I would say that I had won the jackpot with Emily so tell me do you want Emily? What is your catch Raphael? Well, I have life insurance on both her and the baby, making money is my top priority here. I said showing him my hand to make a deal with him. He looked down at my hand and back at Emily. She started to scream her lungs out from what I was about to do. He threw a smile then he placed his hand in mine with a tight grip I looked up to him with deadly eyes. Any last fucking words? I asked him seeing how he looked shocked. I looked down to see how he tried to pull away so I tightened my grip on his hand to see him falling on his knees of the pain. I took the gun that he had placed behind his back while he moaned of pain. Emily is mine and mine fucking alone, I think that it is time that you learn that. I said before I pulled the trigger on him. His body fell to the ground with blood running from him in every direction that it could. Seeing how Emily looked at me with a book full of questions. I walked up to her pulling her into my arms. I embraced every moment that we stood there in total silence, but I knew that she was scared of what could have happened. Why don't you go and take a bath love? What about? She had asked me, 
but I had stopped her before she could have said anything. I will be there in a few minutes. Alexis? I had Bridget run a DNA test when she was already pregnant, and no it was not tampered with my love I know a lot of thing, but I choose to stay quiet, now take that bath. I said showing her that everything will be fine. After she had left I had asked my butler to get a doctor to see Emily as I would not like to take any chances at all. Looks like you have it all under control son. Thank you, father. I said walking him out of the house while he took a cigar from his pocket. Emily. I got woken up late that night after my bath I had met the doctor who gave me some extra booster just for insurance. He said that the trauma might cause some problems, but I was fine I think more than fine. I got up only to find the bed empty next to me. I got up to find a huge black box on the chair in the corner. I walked up to it with the total fascination of what this could be only to find a card on it. Where me? Was what was written on the inside so as I had opened it my mouth fell with total amazement. I took out the most beautiful dress that I have ever seen in my entire life. It was a long blue dress that had the most beautiful lace and stones on it. I took a shower then got dressed after that I did my makeup with a smoky eye while my hair was loose. I just got my high heels on when I heard a knock on the door. Mrs. Duke? I heard before I had opened the door leaving the butler in a daze. Yes? I asked hoping that he would know what is going on, but he gave me another note. Hours could have passed us here, thinking back everything made more sense than before. I looked up to the butler with a simple smile he asked if I was ready. I gave him a slight nod then followed him down the stairs straight to his car. I got in the back seat hoping to find him there only to find it empty. I got in and found a chocolate that had another card on it. You have melted my heart completely since day one. I did not know how to react to any of this. We drove for merely a few minutes until we have reached our destination. I could not see out of the windows so when I was about to open the door the butler handed me a blindfold. Instructions from Mr. Haunt. Was all he said before he blindfolded me. He took my hand leading me towards what sounded like water. What the hell was going on? We stopped and my blindfold was taken of only to meet the most beautiful eyes. You look beautiful love. Is that a compliment, Mr. Haunt? I asked teasing him only to see him pulling a red rose from behind his back. I gave him a bright smile and accepted his rose. I took his hand and followed him through what seemed to be a tunnel. Bright lights were all over the sky and roses everywhere that I could have seen. Rose petals were on the ground making it even more breathtaking. I turned around only to find Raphael on one knee. Raph. I know I have been a pain in the ass, but I have my flaws and I do love you, Emily. Ever since I could remember you stole my heart so bad that I could not get myself to divorce you. So will you do me the honor Emily Duke to be my wife once again? He asked in the sweetest and seductive voice. His messy hair and sparkling eyes were enough to make me go insane. Em? Of course, I will marry you. I said as he slipped on the ring then he kissed me deeply. A few years later, I got home after I bought groceries as my babies were coming home finally. After my wedding, I gave birth to a healthy baby boy. Raphael was so happy and was already protective of his son from day one. We named him Jace and Alexis adored her baby brother every day. Both my kids went to university and graduate top of their class not that I am surprised, but with a father like Raphael it was possible. I got home only to find the boys talking about business once again. How about we have dinner first before we discuss the deals, both of you know the rules by now. I said placing the bags on the counter. They looked at me then nodded, but before they could have said anything Jace's phone went crazy. He got up and walked out of the door while Alexis came in. She hugged me and looked at her brother who just stormed out of the door. What has gotten into your brother? Just a girl getting under his skin after she rejected him twice and caused him a deal. Wait what? I almost screamed knowing that by now he must be thinking of ways to kill her, but something was different about my son. He was crueler than his father and emotionless, but he had a different personality these last few weeks. 
Will my cold-hearted son be broken by one girl or would he stay the man that he is? Ace Haunt, the son of the most famous billionaire, had decided to take over the family business as soon as he had finished college. Jace was rather known for his playboy ways, but lived every moment to the fullest. He was a ruthless man that showed no mercy to anyone who decided to betray him. What will happen if this ruthless man meets his one true match? She took a step closer to me leaning in to whisper into my ears while her hand guided mine down her hips only to stop by something that was sharp. I moved my hand only to feel an object that was hidden from plain sight. I felt the form of the object knowing that it was a knife. Her scent smelt like heaven on earth burning my body just by being in her presence. Try that shit again rich boy and I will kill you my fucking self. Will Jace fall for this girl or will he rather chose his empire over love seeing that he is a playboy after all? Will his burning desire save her from the life that is ahead or will it just make things worse?